Introducing Next Gen 50, the new home, School Up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, it's a great tackle here. It's not good enough. One, two, skip a few and with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What a kick! All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. much Dave. Amy, really excited to be here today. It's going to be a cracker, isn't it? Good morning. Yes, the sun is just about coming out, but you need sun for seven, so I'm assured it's going to be a fantastic day. Certainly is. And first up today, we begin with the Women's Open Tournament. We've got Sevens Fantastics against Fine Rugby Now. Sevens Fantastics come all the way from France, one of the best teams in France. I can't wait to see what they've got. Definitely a bit of French flair. I know that I love personally playing France and it'll be interesting to see what they bring. I'm hoping to see a bit of Jouet out there, a bit of um, out the backs, see just, what's happening. Just look at that logo as well. That tells you everything you need to know about them, doesn't it? 
girl power right there. <laughs> and of course, Find Rugby Now, who are they're, they're the organisers of this tournament in effect. Um, they are they're part of the Lit Sevens, London International Sevens. Find Rugby Now, wonderful, wonderful company. And they are our hosts today. They are the people that are going to be kicking us off here at WhatsApp FC. Sevens Fantastics just going through their last words. What, what are those last sort of words? You're, you're a Sevens expert here. The LA Le Bleu. Um, but Very <laughs> no, good. <laughs> <laughs> practicing my French, I've been ready. Um, no, probably it's the first game, so it's just about trying to keep those nerves down. You don't really know what to expect sometimes that first game, especially, I guess, if they're a touring side, playing English sides. So, um, yeah, just kind of let's see what we can do, girls, really. Have fun. Well, it's going to be an exciting one. We've got two fantastic teams out there and kickoff is underway. Ball claimed well under pressure. And a great offload out the back. So they cut back inside. Is that a slight hand in there from Sevens Fantastics? No, not quite. The referee says that's come off. Fine rugby now. Sevens Fantastic. Move the ball in field, but it's intercepted. The number eight, big fend in the offload. And away you go find Rugby now. Are they going to be able to get to the corner? No, that's brilliant cover. And great pressure on the floor and the penalty. Fantastic right. determination there. Definitely it shows what Seven's all about. I think straight from the kickoff, that's such an important area of the game. Thought find Rugby now had the momentum, but just see how quickly it turns. Both teams looking to get on the ball and, and that transition is so key, which both are doing so well. Certainly are. Seven fantastic on the attack from that penalty inside their own half. Spreading the ball wide, cutting back inside to the well taped up. Number 15 away for the opening try of the London International Sevens. And what a fitting try it is going to one of our international teams. Behind, Seven Fantastics in, get the opening from, from score. The yeah, excellent, excellent try there. You can just see like the skills to um, execute those passes out wide, but then you need that change of angle and it just slides through the defence. Um, you can see that she probably likes a few of those lines with her head strapped up like that. Looks like a recovering broken nose. I was going to say, she's done well to break her nose this early on, hasn't she? She's obviously a long-standing injury. Simple enough try, just cutting back on the inside against the soft shoulders and away she goes through the gap. Completely. Rugby is a simple game and I think we overcomplicate it a lot. So um, nice to see simple things done well there. That's where I was always going wrong then. Kickoff stays in field just about. So the French side retain possession. Looking at that same area of the field where that opening try came from. Clever play on the floor as well. Releasing the ball and then getting back up. Offload away. Find Rugby now under real pressure on the back foot here. Seven Fantastics out to the broken nose 15 again. That's her second try of the game. This time a hot step off the right foot. Again, a lovely change of angle. I think um, it's just that want to play. You can see how quickly um, they're getting the ball away from each breakdown or, or keeping it alive from the offload, which makes it really, really hard to defend. So Find Rugby now are just on that back foot. And again, coming from that kickoff, just keeping possession there. Talk to me about kickoffs. I mean, important in any aspect of rugby, but in sevens, almost all the more so. Definitely, I think you always see where, where people are dominant in kickoff. It quite often correlates to them being dominant in the game. Sevens so much about having that position and keeping the ball. Um, so I think all of these teams um, will be doing a lot of work on, on how they can get that ball back from the kick. And it is always that heart and mouth moment, isn't it? When you know that the touchline is in play and do you leave it, do you take it? You need a bit of help from a teammate at that point. Completely. I think um, the person yeah, under the ball is one. almost like just if they've just got to focus on, on that ball. So it is relying on those players around yeah, you to tell you if someone's about to smash you, if you've got time. It's a pretty scary place to be and it's definitely a huge skill and probably quite an underrated one in many, many aspects. But the good teams will be doing a lot of work in that area. They certainly will. It's something we'll be keeping an eye on through the day as it stands. Seven fantastic. 12 nil up. This kickoff not quite going 10. Oh, 10. So we'll come back for a free kick on halfway. Bounce of the ball working quite nicely to give the French players time to get back in not too much of a hurry. 
And a first real chance since that early intercept for Fine Rugby now to have a bit of a dart at this French line. Blind pass is intercepted though. Chance here for the French side and it's into the hands of the two try scorer on the right wing. She's going away for her hat trick, is she? Brilliant gas. And straight from the intercept, two passes and a third try and it's a hat trick for the number 15. The nose injury clearly causing no problems. Yeah, again, amazing transition. You can just see as soon as as soon as that intercept's happened, it's just it's not just the player who's done the intercept. The whole team are getting around um, to be there to support, and a really nice little finish in the corner. Just like to see fine rugby now try and keep a bit of momentum. I think they they need to really value this possession, like we said before. Can we get a bit more, a um, bit more? Well, there obviously it's not necessary support, but talk around that player again. We speak about that communication side. Are they talking to the players around them? It's almost as though there's a bit of uh, a slight bit of panic in the ranks at having gone two tries down, trying to force something rather than just probing and waiting for the opportunity to come. Definitely, or you get the ball and because you haven't had possession, it's suddenly like, oh, what what can I do? I need to do something. Whereas actually, you just need to play the processes. We have our first scrum of the tournament here. Knocked on from the kickoff. Seven Fantastics will have the put-in. One minute to go. A lot of early strapping. It's Bounce. a heavily strapped right left knee Bind. as well. Dead. Scrum half. Ball in and out very quickly. Recovered, but it's a bouncing ball. Fine rugby now. Getting up and putting the pressure on. But it's into the hands of the danger woman. And she's looking to go around the outside again. Is she going to go around the outside again? Four tries in six minutes, all from the number 15. She has got some gas. Fantastic, yeah. And I, it just shows that when you've got those speedsters on the edge, it's it's so hard to defend. Um, and, well, you can't really defend speed if, it, if it's used well. So they're just definitely getting the ball early into her hands. And it's so good to see her just open up there. And I don't know if it's just the angle I was looking at. It didn't look like she had a lot of space to get around the outside, but just showed a clean set of heels around there. I think sometimes it's just that, that confidence to know you're quick and to just have a go Half and time. you can see that it kind of just, if you have that confidence and go early, then it's so hard to recover sometimes in defence. And I guess a bit of that cliche of the old bouncing ball in rugby being a, being a nightmare, you get tempted into trying to go and gobble it up and you end up leaving space. I'm still waiting for that bouncing ball to go in my favour, to be honest. It seems to always go over my head. I know the feeling. Fortunately, you've got good hands, though. It, it's just, it, even if I get there, it's just bouncing off these fingers. It's useless. I just have to hope that I've got a speedster around me to, to do the rest of the work, though. Staying my old age, I'm not quite as quick as I used to be. <laughs> you were telling me earlier before the game as we move into half time 22 0, seven fantastic lead, fine rugby now. You were telling me earlier. About the fact that you've moved, you've moved in field as as the time's gone on. How have you found that transition? Yeah, I mean it's happened quite organically, to be fair. But yeah, definitely. I remember the days where I used to score tries for fun, and now if I get one a tournament, I'm happy. So um, I think it's just knowing where your super strengths at, and um, got got that experience side for me. And I just let the yeah the youngsters kind of well do what Seven's fantastic doing, and just open up on the edges. I know that that's not in my, well, not often in my, <laughs> my um, armory anymore. So find the lines and set it up and then make them look good, right? That's what it's all about. It's all about being the creative hub in the middle. That's where it's at. And you're off to the, uh, you're off to the Commonwealth Games in a couple of weeks. That's exciting. Looking forward to it. Yeah, super exciting. And the home games, I think like the, it's, I was just saying earlier, like the excitement's starting to bubble now. Team announcement was on um, Wednesday, so it's out in the open and we can kind of get a bit more excited about it. But it's going to be an amazing opportunity and we've got such a young, exciting squad that um, anything can happen. We're excited to see where we can go. Yeah, feeling confident looking ahead? Definitely. I think the last few weeks training have been really positive for us. And um, I think, again, that, that youthful kind of... Um, I think there's something about like having a young team and just that belief and that confidence to have a go and like nothing's impossible. It's it's really refreshing actually. 
Certainly is. We're about to get underway here in the second half. Fine Rugby now find themselves 22 nil down against an electric Seven Fantastics performance. The French side have been absolutely fantastic in the first half. But Fine Rugby now coming in with some physicality to start the second half. A hack through from the four try scoring. Number 15 from Seven Fantastics. But we'll come back for a scrum. Really good there, you saw the longer kickoff, which means that you have to put on that defensive pressure. With the longer kickoffs, you're trying to keep them in their own 22, and it's exactly what they did with that line speed coming in the middle. I'd like to see that physicality in this second half from Fine Rugby now, because I think that's where they're going to get their success. Another knock on there in the tackle. Means another scrum. Next up, by the way, I think we're staying in the women's open competition. We'll have Wild Dog Alphas against the Nomad Sevens. So stay with us for that. Fine Rugby now, probing down the blind side, looking for a first try of the game. Trying to keep the ball alive. It's a bit scrappy. And it's a penalty, seven fantastics. We've got over the ball well there. They go through the middle with the big step inside and now a big fend. And now it's all about the gas. Who's got more? And it looks as though Seven Fantastics, number six, has got the gas. And away she goes underneath the posts. How refreshing, a different try scorer. <laughs> Great finish. When you've got orange boots, you have to be able to finish those tries off. Everyone can see. This there's a lot of colours of boots out there today. There's, there's some players with high expectations on them. <laughs> I'm saying that I've got blue and orange boots, so, oh gosh, I've, I've set myself, dug myself a hole now. But no, great finish. But what I love as well, you can see, both in attack and defence, um, everyone is working back to that line. You've got the support players all around the ball carrier, but also find rugby now and not giving up. They're staying in there right to the end. Good blend of skills for that try as well as the footwork followed by the big heavy fend and then obviously the gas to just get away. Definitely, and it all came from that turnover, the breakdown. Fine rugby now just caught napping a little bit. It's another kickoff that's bounced out into touch, just not quite judging where those lines are on the field. In their defence, I did feel a big gust of wind just come up there. Maybe it's <laughs> not judging that one. You're very kind. Benefit of the doubt. There is a bit of a strong gust of wind blowing across the pitch though. Let's see how this line out goes. Stay straight. Fine rugby now. Trying really hard to get out of their own 22, but under huge pressure in defense from Seven Fantastics. And they've kept the numbers up, but Fine Rugby now doing well to keep this alive. But it's hurried, difficult possession. And the ball passed away to no one and seized upon for a sixth try. Yeah, just gifted that one a little bit. Again, that head turn before we pass, making sure that support plays around you. You just It just shows if you don't get that forward momentum when you're carrying, that offload game is really hard to play, and it just means that Fantastic Sevens could just stay on top. Sevens Fantastic, sorry, could just stay on top and keep putting that pressure on. Yeah, it felt like they were just constantly, although Fine Rugby now were finding a way to keep the ball alive, they were just under so much pressure, weren't they? Completely. I think it comes from those dominant tackles. They just they couldn't go forward, so that offload wasn't quite on their terms. And like you said, it was, they did a good job to keep it alive, but they just weren't going anywhere with it. It's been an outstanding performance so far from the French side. A lot was expected of them coming into this one, and they're living up to it, and now forcing the kick away from Fine Rugby now. Struggling to maintain possession. Possibly held up in the tackle here. Has the referee called more thinking about it, but he hasn't. The ball's squirted loose. And a chance now for Fine Rugby now to get themselves away. Get the offload. The intercept was gone for. Now it's a foot race. Foot race won by 
seven fantastics though and now they have a chance to counter looking for the offload out the back not quite going to hand but they keep possession going the bounce of the ball going their way every time now was that one forward the referee doesn't think so so away we go for a seventh try what a start this is to the tournament here the lit sevens from seven fantastics and earning a very nice breather here as they walk in to score this try yeah, great bit of play from Find Rugby now. You saw when they did offload on their terms, really nice support line, but there's just too much pace in the defence, and you can just see again that transition. They seem to have pace all over the board, which means that it's it's really hard when you've got... Suddenly you're going from attack, from a line break, and then you're having to go back into defence. kind of opens the field up a lot, and, and Seven's fantastic, just made the most of that. I thought they were away for their first try of the game when the uh, when the defender came sweeping up to try and grab the intercept. There's that, this is that final pass. I think it may have drifted forward. Referee perhaps obscured by one of the players in the way. But in the end, it's not gonna make much of a difference to the outcome of this game. Question is, can Find Rugby now do something to just give themselves a bit of confidence heading into the rest of the tournament? Can they get themselves on the score sheet? Well, not with defence like that. Outstanding. Yeah, really good drills. Just getting on the ball so quickly. But again, look at that transition. Straight away, people around them able to move the ball one pass, and then they make, they make it look easy. It's not. It's really hard work. But having that energy off the ball to transition quickly just makes makes those tries just come in really quickly. Out of the way, the kick, well, as you say, just on on every turnover opportunity, they've got they've they've found a way to to create an overload of numbers somewhere and just cause huge problems as a result of it. Definitely, they look like a very fit side, and they've got such um, good skill set as well. But again, look that breakdown, just. It's just so, if you don't win those breakdowns, you, I mean, we talk about kickoffs, breakdowns, another one, you've just got to keep hold of the ball. You certainly do. You can't win a game of sevens without the ball. And that is it. Seven Fantastics win 46 points to nil against Fine Rugby now. What an opening performance from the French side. Yeah, we wanted a bit French flair, didn't we? And I think we got that there. Um, fantastic display. I mean, what a way to start a tournament. They've got so much confidence now to go into their next game. Be interesting, fine rugby now, I've got to regroup, but that's the beauty of sevens. They've got an opportunity to turn it around next game. So it's important now that they reflect, refuel, and they can go again. Well, you heard it here first. Fantastic from Sevens Fantastics. They win 46 points to nil. nice to have the game to get into it which means that when we come into our next game the other teams are all going to be in like in the mindset for tackling and stuff so i think the girls are probably still gonna still gonna warm up play a touch game get into it a bit so good news but also also bad. yeah but we're expecting some great things from you guys today i mean you've got two teams here and also yeah. you're winners in the past of co competitions like this as well yeah yeah it should be good it's a relatively new squad but the girls are gelling well they're yeah they're ready to take it on so i wouldn't be surprised if you see them at the final today and you had some great success in down in the Isle of Wight. Yeah, we'll bring our, that here today. Yeah, our social team won the Isle of Wight, uh, but we did play fine rugby now. Um, so it's going to be another tough competition against them. They were, they were strong in the Isle of Wight, so it should be good to play them off against them again. Well, usually, Lucy, this is the bit where I say good luck in the game, <laughs> but that's not going to happen. So good luck with your warm-up, oh, I suppose. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Lucy there. We'll pass back over to our brilliant commentary team, the wonderful Amy and Angus. Well, Amy's just gone for a uh, a little wonder. She's going to talk to Dave, in fact. 
bit of chaos over here. So change the plan once again. Uh, I'm here with the brilliant Amy and Thirsty. A massive congratulations on being announced for the England squad for the upcoming Commonwealth Games. That's a huge success for you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I think this time last year I was on the wrong end of selection with the Olympic Games. So it's such a good feeling to be on the right side this year. Really good feeling camp. All the girls are so excited. Really young group. Um, I was mentioning it earlier on commentary. But yeah, I think that it's going to be a good one. It's I say it's almost like a new look side for the Commonwealth Games. It's almost like a new chapter in Rugby Sevens. Hundred percent. I mean, I say that if I wasn't in the squad, the average age would be a lot lower. Um, I'm just taking that on for the team. But no, I think it's so exciting. We've got girls who have played their first international tournament. A lot of girls have played their first international tournament this year. But to see their growth over the season, they've been plunged in the deep end. But that's the best way—you either sink or swim—and they've definitely swum. Um, so so excited to see them on that big stage in the home games. And for someone that's more experienced in that squad, you've success, you've had those sad moments as well. That's some brilliant kind of messages that you can bring to the rest of the squad at the Commonwealth Games, right? Definitely. I think, um, well, with all things, experiencing them is how you learn. So when you've got a shorter career, obviously you haven't been through some of those those things. So hopefully I can bring some of that. I think I, I bring a cool head when, when times get tough sometimes um, because I have, I've, I've lived a lot and had coming fourth in an Olympic Games, which is obviously one of the hardest place to come and then having a bronze medal last coming. So we're hoping obviously to, to go better and go for the gold. But um, yeah, I think hopefully if nothing else, I can impart some of, some of that knowledge. Well, I mean, you're a well placed to do it as well. A home crowd as well at the Commonwealth Games. That is going to be a huge factor. Definitely, and friends and family and everything. I think we've spoken a lot about the, the two sides of it because we don't want it to be a distraction, but I think um, for us and for, well, we had, a, we had an exhibition game in London and you just saw kind of a glimpse what a home crowd can do, how it feels. Um, but this is the first time and potentially the only time in some of these girls in my career that we'll have a home game, so we've got to make the most of it, enjoy every second. It's not just about the rugby as well, obviously a multi-sport event, there's so much going on. So we're there to win and that's, that doesn't change, but I think it's about embracing the atmosphere, embracing everything that's going on and soaking it up, soaking up these few weeks leading up to it as well as just the three days we play. Well, Isaac, we always talk about you know soaking up the atmosphere, being part of that atmosphere of all the different sports happening, but also the home crowd as well. But as an athlete, I know you're saying it makes a difference, but what is that feeling like walking out the tunnel and then just everybody screaming and cheering? Well, for normally, you? <laughs> normally with England, it's people booing us, so it's going to be really nice that they're happy cheers. Um, the last Commonwealth Games, we played Australia and Australia, so you can imagine the crowd was slightly different. Um, I think. It's a weird one because when you're playing, you, you're so focused on what you're doing that you don't hugely notice, but there's just kind of like this rumble that you sense, and it's like a feeling. Um, and I think almost it's the warming up that you really feel it because you're a bit more in tune with what's going around you, whereas at the game it's just like your next job. So I think it, it just like, I just want to smile. Even now I'm like smiling because it's just like that feeling, you just want to smile. And I know. There's a couple of us that we, when we run out, well, everyone I think in the squad smiles, but then we just look up and look around us and it's like, uh, we call it, I uh, can't, can't say the word on, on TV, but a uh, yeah moment, an F yeah moment, which is, it's true that you're looking yeah. up and you're like, oh, this is amazing, like, this is, this is what I do, this is, I've got the privilege of doing this and actually kind of understanding like the journey you've been on to get there and just yeah, embracing that, that I'm getting shivers that feeling there. Well this is it, I was going to say, I hope you can see this at home, it's like a vibration of excitement sitting next to me, I mean it's going to be, it must be a good omen, we're at the training ground of Wasps today and then you're going to be playing at Wasps home ground at the Rico Arena. And I'm a Wasps girl. So and you're, exactly, so it's, it's all meant to be. I know, this, this is the field of dreams right here, so um, yeah, and I think, uh, well, it's, we've got a few of the Wasps girls in our squad which is really cool because we've had the opportunity to play at the Commercial Building Society Arena a nice little mouthful there um, a few times um, so it's going to be like a little home from home like, well at home at home but yeah just being comfortable in that environment 
um, yeah, so it's I've got a good feeling, you know. <laughs> good. Well, I was going to say, like, give us those final few thoughts heading into the Commonwealth Games. What what can we expect to see apart from a gold medal, of course? Apart from that, <laughs> I think you're gonna you're gonna see a group of girls that have worked so hard over this year to form not just an on-field performance, but hopefully you'll see how close knit we are as a as a group. And the work we've done on culture has been huge, and I think that willingness to play for each other um, and just that confidence to show each individual to show what they've got and what they bring. We're not a team of machines, we're a team of all different strengths and we're hoping that we can showcase that and do our country proud. Well Amy, you're going to be staying with us for the rest of the day as well for interviews and for commentary as well. I mean, how important is Lit 7? So festivals like this for the game? So, so important. Honestly, I can't emphasise it enough. I think um, we're working, well there's been so many people that have influenced kind of like the path over sevens. There's not like a, a kind of a strict hard and fast rule on like with 15s you're very much like a stepping stone to each next step. So I think these tournaments are great to showcase. People do watch them and I think like to anybody watching this now who thinks oh how do I get into sevens, play these tournaments do see. Um, have an opportunity to show you case talent. It's being streamed as well, so you're on TV, say hi to your mum and dad while doing what you love to do. So I think it just gives people opportunities to play, showcase their skills, and actually um, you can see from some of the girls that have come in um, to our squad this year, it's from things like this. Um, and Lit's just fantastic because it's so well organised, there's so much going on, and it's a great day out as well. Well, this is, this is one of the crazy things today, and you haven't seen them yet at home, but we do have China's international team here, and it's just the moment where you see a bunch of guys from one team in dreadful Hawaiian shirts <laughs> and then the Chinese team rocking up in all their tracksuits. It's a really odd mixture, but it's a great atmosphere at the same time. Completely, but you get that on the international stage as well. Tournaments like Dubai, where everyone's mixed, you've got the social tournaments, the open tournaments. One of my favourites is to guess which team, like, are they in the open <laughs> competition or the social? Normally it's quite an easy guess based on attire more than anything else. Um, but it's also a fantastic opportunity for, for the social teams to actually see um, either where if some of them want to get to that point or just to sh see some excellent sevens being played and it shows as well those it gives opportunities for players to play against international teams and you get that quite a lot with sevens tournaments mm. which is great so the opportunity for um, amateur players to potentially play against professional well-drilled really serious sevens players um, and everyone likes to beat them as well so they always bring their a-game for it oh, absolutely it brings out the best in <laughs> yeah, them, absolutely completely. well we'll have all the action throughout the day you can probably see some of the action in the distance as well we'll have more games for you here on pitch one as well including amy on co-coms and joining me here for interviews as well but in the meantime we'll pass back over to the brilliant angus thank you very much dave uh, it's Bit of a delay here. We've got a cancer, well, a walkover game, the 1020 that was supposed to be between Wild Dog Alphas and Nomad Sevens. But on that international flavour that Dave and Amy have just been talking about, the next game on field at 1040, we move to the women's social competition, and that is going to be Hong Kong Football Club up against the Queen Bees, who are Queen's University Belfast. So we've got a bit of Northern Ireland versus Hong Kong, which is going to be pretty exciting. And for those of you who've ever been to Hong Kong, let me tell you, Hong Kong Football Club is a great place. Every single sport under the sun pretty much over there. And uh, I'll tell you a little story, actually. I was 2013 British and Irish Lions. They started their tour by playing the Barbarians in Hong Kong. And I, I got to go along and, uh, and watch that. And when I went there, the day after that game, we had an exhibition match between Hong Kong Football Club and London Scottish. And let me tell you, one of the most fun occasions I've ever been at. So it's going to be a cracker to see Hong Kong ladies up against the Queen Bees from uh, Queen's University, Belfast. It's going to be good fun. Got a couple of teams warming up as we sort of bounce around and wait for that next game to come up. But in the meantime, we're going to be cutting across to some adverts from some of our partners here at the Lit Sevens. <laughs>
Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and a regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. Introducing Next Gen 15, the new home of School Up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, they play tackle! Oh, they not got enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels! Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and a regular update of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's a kick? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15.
Introducing Next Gen 50, the new home. Screw up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, the great tackle here. It's not good enough. One, two, skip a few and with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's the kick? Well, where's he going, Bob? And how did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 15. Introducing Next Gen 50, the new home. Screw up. Well, where does this come from? Covering everything the school game has to offer in both the North and Southern Hemispheres. Oh, the great tackle here! Oh, it's not good enough! One, two, skip a few and with the wheels. Highlighting tomorrow's stars, Next Gen 15 will be bringing you live games and regular updates of all the news and in-depth views on the global game. What's the kick? Well, where's he come from and how did that happen? All your school rugby, all in one place. This is Next Gen 50. Hong football team, I mean, what a story you guys have. You almost have a connection to every single team here. Well, yes, we have uh, ex-teammates on the other team right now, on another team, her twin is playing, and then another player as well. And we got invited here just through Instagram, like DM. So we just saw who would be in the UK, and it worked out really well. And you are our first international team of the day here on yes. Pitch One, based in Hong Kong. It's a pleasure to have you all here joining us at London Sevens. Oh, this is... This is kind of our winter in a funny way. It's really nice. We're having a good time so far. It's kind of like a reunion for us as well. I think around half of our teammates today came down from like Northern England or wherever they're living, not in London. So it's really nice to see them again after a few years. So we can see behind us your team already underway. Who are those players that we should be watching out for? Ooh, okay. I am going to be biased and point out my sister. That's oh, well, of course. Oh, some, some action just happened just now, but... Aileen, she's our um, captain for our first team. Sure. There's also Monty, who's um, a current champion for, um, what's that um, sport? It's like, um, 
the kick. Oh, I don't know. It's some, <laughs> some key, sport. Some She's a champion. Current <laughs> champion in New Zealand for something. Oh I'll wow! I'll get back to her. <laughs> but um, that's the biggest undersell of all time. <laughs> it's, it's the game you play with the kicking, and then you catch with the it. kicking. Well, there's going to be hopefully be some <laughs> kicking kick. here today. What we'll do, Shana, we're going to pass you over to our brilliant commentary team, Amy and Angus. Thank you very much, Dave. And we are underway with an early try for Queen Bees. Maisie Wilkinson getting herself across the line, managing to survive that late tap tackle attempt. And Shona's going to be joining us for a bit of the uh, commentary on this one. Shona, team are behind what they got to do to get themselves back into it. Question asked and answered, they've got to get you on commentary. Job done. <laughs> Easy. Get them back through it. Or... And so the game just about leveled up. Bit of a helter-skelter helter start to this one after the, uh, the chaos of the lost game. Conversion just goes wide. Yeah. Five seven and Amy. Bit of a mad start to this game, isn't it? I know. I feel a bit discombobulated, but we we are here. <laughs> it's five seven to Queen Bees, um, just showing both tries actually, just showing what Pace can do again. In that case, going around the outside. Nice little offload. And that's Monty with the kickoff. Lydia Burns, the try scorer. I think kickoff is put down. So, Shona, have you, have you guys managed to get some practice in or has this been very much about the social? Well, it's a reunion, really. So I think people might remember how we play with each other from years ago. And um, I think half the team, we normally play with each other, train with each other throughout the season. But ma mainly a social team because we're not taking it super seriously. We're just happy to be back together and happy to be running around. Because actually at Hong Kong right now, we don't really have a season. It's not really working. We're still quite strict on COVID rules. Set. So this is really nice to get our, get moving. Get the ball through the hands or through the feet as Hong Kong stab it through. Ball oh, just off. pops up into the hands of Queen Bees. The Northern Irish side. And Amy, we're, look, we're looking forward to seeing what Queen Bees can do throughout the rest of the day. We've been looking through some of the fun facts about them and uh, from their Guinness drinking to their Irish dancing after a few, they're looking pretty exciting. Definitely, I'm looking on the sides to see where their social sec is downing her pint of Guinness in less than five seconds, to be honest. I'm hoping that's every um, try celebration. Yeah, this, this is the social team tournament. She needs to be taking her social okay. seriously. 100%. And if I don't see Irish dancing by the end, then something's gone wrong. We'll send you out to lead the charge. It'll be fine. Fun fact, the player Emma, who just knocked on the ball, uh, she's also one of our ex-teammates. We asked her if she could play, but she already had commitments with the other team. Scandalous. Defecting. Crouch. Point. Hong Kong scrum. Set. They trail seven points to five, having gone behind early on. Worked hard to get that score to draw things close. And Hong Kong All are opting side. for the boot quite often. Obviously backing the pace of Lydia Burns on the left-hand side. And why not, as Burns get us, gets herself across the line for her second try of the game, and Hong Kong Football Club have the lead. Yeah, it's a really nice option, offset piece. I think you've got the, everyone is kind of set in a flat line, so you don't often have a, a winger dropped, especially from that set piece position. So if you can get the kick to score there and you get the winger in that case, is she's already got the forward momentum. She's going to be ahead of the defensive line. You have to turn, and it just shows again when you get that bounce as well. Works really nicely. Yeah, absolutely. The kick working to great effect. Sadly, the kick not quite working to great effect from a conversion point of view. But as we look at the replay here, it was the big. It was quite a long kick actually. I, on first glance, I thought it was more cross field than that, but it was definitely a kick to space more than anything else, wasn't it? And the pace of Burns doing the job. Yeah, as long, all, as long as you're all on the same page, then quite often you can get a favourable result. Great, great little sevens try there. It's almost coaching speak that. <laughs> all on the same page, you get favourable result. Oh, oh, all the cliches. Oh, God, stop me now. Kickoff's a low one. Sits high on the bounce, though, so claimed 
by Queen Bees. But the penalty goes the way of Hong Kong Football Club. And from that early lead, Queen Bees now with a bit of work to do as we move towards half time. Hong Kong finding space, good footwork. Now looking to move the ball to the right hand side, but it's knocked on and then knocked on again. So we'll come back for the scrum. I say come back, we'll move about six inches for the scrum. More women's social after this one. Oxford University up against the local side, their home ground, Wasps. That should be a good one. Stay tuned for that. I try and stay unbiased for that one. A few Why teammates on? in that one. I'm not actually sure of the squad yet. I'll have to have a look. Ripped clear in the tackle by Hong Kong. Can they pounce for a third try? They're certainly making good headway. One. That was going close. Final pass out wide, cutting back inside footwork. Feet rather just giving way underneath the Hong Kong player. So now they look to switch to the right hand side. There's space right, but the pass doesn't go to hand and it's called forward. And we go into half time. Hong Kong Football Club leading 10 points to seven against Queen Bees. Shona, your team coming from behind to take the lead into the half time break. Happy with that, uh, with that res result in half time? Well, yes, after the Queen Bees scored their try, we managed to stay in their half for the rest of the game. So looks good for second half. Yeah, looking pretty good. And Amy, we're seeing uh, we're seeing a lot of different tactics. I suppose the social tournament, you know, you get a bit more uh, sort of weird variety in tactics. And we're seeing we're seeing from Hong Kong the use of the boot, which is something we didn't see in that earlier game in the in the open tournament, where it was much more about trying to sort of play through and play through and play through. Hong Kong very happy to just do whatever they can do. I mean, it's working for them, so I can see why they keep doing it. Um, I think the first one, uh, the first kick they did was actually um, gathered really well by the Queen Beans. But you could see again, we talked about the the pressure you can put on from a kick also works really favourably often if you if you can get that right. Um, yeah, I just I love the social tournaments because I think you quite often get teams that don't play sevens continuously, so you do see all sorts. You see kind of sometimes a bit more 15 style play. Not in the case of these two, though, but they're bringing that flair still. Um, and I'm just, yeah, excited to see what the second half brings, really. Yeah, it should be it should be a good one. And the social tournament really is the hub of what these tournaments are all about. You know, we've got 50 odd teams here. Well over half the teams are taking part in the social tournament, which kind of tells you everything about the spirit of this tournament. It's all about everyone coming out and having a good time off the field, but also having a good time on the field. That's the whole point of sevens, isn't it? Chuck it around and let's have a go and see. Definitely. I mean, I'm quite jealous. I, I was going to say, I can't wait till I am. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to retire anytime soon, but I'm definitely going to do a year of playing socially, I think, just to make up for lost time, because it is the smiles on faces. Everyone's having fun. I, they. Although they say it's not about winning, it's just about the social. They do all secretly really want to win as well, which just makes it even more fun. I thought we were about to get a Next Gen 15 exclusive there about your retirement. <laughs> I'm glad it's not coming soon, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hong Kong gather the kickoff and again well, opt to put boot to ball straight away. And why not? Will the bounce sit right? No, it doesn't quite. The bounce of a rugby ball not quite working for Hong Kong there. It could have been a try, but they're still in possession. Electric start here to this second half. Shifting the ball through the hands. There's space out wide if they can get it through. Out to the right hand side and they are going to open this second half with a try. And once again, it all comes from opting to put boot on ball and then the chaos ensues from there. What a score. Yeah, Anna Burke just going over the line there. Um, you can see the reason they're also kicking is because the the Queen Beans are staying as a flat seven, so they've got no one in behind. And it would just be interesting to see if they can react to that and maybe either drop one of their edges a little bit or drop a sweeper into play to try and counter that kick. But at the moment, again, if it ain't break, broke, don't fix it for, for Hong Kong. So keep kicking until they change it. And as you can see, we also have a few kickers. We have Aileen, we have Monty, and Anna Burke had just converted her own kick, um, her own try as well. 
a range of players in the Hong Kong setting that can get boot on ball. On. So they hang it high off the kickoff. Ball bounces <whistles> and is just knocked on. So we'll come back for a scrum. I remember my first Social Sevens tournament. They made us kick our own conversions, which for anyone who knows me is not a good thing. Did you get any? Yeah, but they weren't pretty. <laughs> as long as they go over it. That's all that counts. A scoop, I think, is a good way of describing it. Crouch! Bind! Set! Ball straight out of the scrum. Hong Kong. Darting inside. Cutting back against the grain. Lovely dummy. Can the offload get away? No, that's a really, really good bit of... Tackle. Tackling work there from Queen Bees just to prevent that offload because if it had gone, it was a try scoring pass. Opportunity still may exist for Hong Kong, but a foot just strays into touch. Yeah, you saw a bit of Anna Burkett there again. She's such a lovely balanced runner. Changed direction, making it really hard for the defence, but Queen Bees like covered it well in the end. I just want to go back to your point about dropping a sweeper in or trying to, trying to drop one of the edge players back a bit. And I guess that's always the real conundrum in sevens, particularly as you kind of drop down to a, a more sort of social level, is that the, the panic that if we don't have enough numbers in the front line, we're exposed at someone going out wide. But equally, if we if we don't drop a sweeper, we're, we're exposed to someone stabbing the ball through. Yeah, I mean, it's, and it's not just um, in social open tour, it's internationally. You see some teams have sweepers, some teams don't. Some teams play seven up and it's it's kind of entirely... <laughs> It kind of based on how you defend as a team. If you're very aggressive defence, you need to probably be aware that they might kick because there might not be another option. Oh, got another try there. Big. And that big was Kate hand. Palace with the try. A big-handed mitt stretching out from Kate Palace. That's why Shona's here to do to do it when we get carried away. <laughs> so, someone's got to have their eye on the ball here. Thank God Shona's here. And Shona, Hong Kong, having gone behind early on, as we said, and then worked their way into a lead at half time, s exploded into life in this second half. Two pretty quick tries. And suddenly, from a very tight game, it's a, it's a pretty big gap. I think it's our excitement wearing off, you know, and getting our heads down. Because I think we're all just saying hi to each other at warm up, do you know? And then, and then now, now I think we're, you know, enjoying it a bit more now interesting you say that because I think excitement's often thought of as a as a positive thing but like you said Stay sometimes back, it can make everyone a bit frantic and and kind of nerves kick in a little bit but definitely found their stride now looking very good they certainly have and they've rung the changes a little bit as well now that they've got a bit of a comfortable lead that and I suspect Tackle. a little bit of tiredness creeping in there's been some long sweeping moves going on and now we're seeing something a little tighter around the fringes of the breakdown and an offload off the deck into the hands of the dangerous Hong Kong attack. Forward pass. In a forward pass. Queen Bees with a bit of a chance for possession. All an Irish side. Okay, Haven't really had much of an opportunity to, to have an attack since that early try. Yeah, kind of similar to what we said in the first game. You can have um, the best attack in the world, but Five. if you don't have the ball, then it's Set. impossible to see it. So hopefully they'll manage to keep hold of it possession here and just showcase what they can do. Fire reset. Very nearly a, a little sneaky one there from the uh, scrum half for Queen Bees. Crouch. They should pluck that one back out and the Five. referee hadn't noticed, but he did. Set. <laughs> Put up. Free kick. No real intention to go fast from Queen Bees. They go now. Perhaps a bit of a confusion as to what had been awarded. Or perhaps they knew exactly what they were doing. Kiara Grogan. Well, she didn't go quick off the off the off the uh, free kick, but once she did go, my word, did she get away? <laughs> yeah, fantastic gas to finish that one off. I'm not sure if um, she really knew what she was doing, but then she kind of burst into life there, footwork, and then straight through. She looked a little bit surprised at first, but then you could see determination, head down, finishing that one off. Great to see the Queen, be queen Bees coming back into the game there. Look at that, it was like Henry Arundel last weekend, storming through the two tacklers. And then 
racing away to score. Hong it's Kong. still a good chase from Lydia. She chased her all the way down. Yeah, well, and we know that L Lydia Burns, we've seen her score two tries in the first half. We know she's got gas. The pressure was on to keep the pace going from Queen Bees there. We've seen it so many let's times. Go, go. Thing like tackles happening over the line, managing to grab an arm as, as they try to put it down. So those chases often aren't wasted. They're definitely worth doing. It could be the difference between winning or losing a game. Well, there is that famous that famous example. I'm showing my age here because I'm going to be bringing up Will Carling. But the famous example of Will Carling at the Middlesex Sevens all those years ago of showboating his way across the try line, being picked up by the defender and taken over the dead ball line. No try. Absolute embarrassment. Serves him right for showboating, that's what I say. Crouch. Let's put it down with two hands. <laughs> I have to because I'm panic. See, this is, this is the wise head on you starting to come through. <laughs> Hong Kong burning around the outside. Eleanor Udall, she's going to get herself across the line and under the posts. And Hong Kong are going to round off this game with a fifth try. It's been a fantastic performance from Hong Kong Football Club. The team that only came together this morning. And they start the day with a fantastic victory. And that is full-time Hong Kong Football Club win. 29 points to 14 against Queen Bees. We're going to be handing you over very shortly to Dave, who's going to be here with some guests as we just look through the replay of that try. Brother Nayudal. And now we'll hand over to Dave, who's got some guests with him before we get into the next match. So I'm here with Emily, a player in our next match representing Wasps. I mean, you're taking some time out of your busy schedule before running on to the pitch. I know, I know. I slot this in though, don't worry. <laughs> I wanted to show up. <laughs> well, I mean, you're the hometown team here. Your home training round, that's surely going to be a little bit of an advantage. It is, and I think just the one thing is the pride with the jersey, and we've rustled up a few barbarians, so they either have never played for Wasps or have played many years ago, um, and everyone is just super excited to get this on this gorgeous day. Um, but yeah, we can't wait. We'll Absolutely. Do it. Thanks for hosting us. No, pro no problem at all. No problem. Who are those players that we should be watching out for before we let them um, go? So we've got a few from Brunel, so that's Olivia um, and Brandy. They are smashing it. We've got a lovely Italian who is bloody fast, and also um, an Austrian international player. So keep an eye out for her her name's um pudding or bella so <laughs> amazing well emily look i'll let you run on the pitch i'll let you go and get ready thank you so much for your time we'll pass over back once more to our brilliant commentary team thank you very much dave we're going to be getting underway very very shortly looking forward to this one amy with her uh, her home side who are going to be taking part and Amy, obviously was split between the amateurs and the and the and the pros nowadays, but still your team excited. Hundred percent. And uh, as I said um, earlier, the field of dreams. What more can you want on this lovely first team pitch here, down in Acton? Sun has come out as well to see some of the wasps buzzing around. Yeah, it's as it's as if it's all gone to plan here, isn't it? Sun sun comes out just in the nick of time. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be fun times. Just waiting for the two teams to come out. We've got Oxford University missing at the moment. Wasps, you can see, you may or may not be able to tell. Yellow, yellow and black hoops, that means it's wasps. They'll be out in just a second. So we wait for Oxford University. I can't see them anywhere, students. You can't trust them, can you? Oh, here they come in their dark blue. This is, this is also Elaine's... Um team, isn't it, with uh, organiser and founder of Fine Rugby now, and organiser of Lit Sevens, Oxford girl, Oxford University alumni. And I've just been told they've got an Austrian international in their side, by the name of Pudding. So we're really looking forward to that one. We're almost underway. So, alongside me, Amy and Wassane Alex. It's a bit, a bit of a Wass heavy lineup, this one, actually, isn't it? I'm going to have to bring the Oxford University. I'd like to claim that I could bring the Oxford University. Promise not to be biased. Try really hard. Here we go then. Wass with the ball in hand. 
But an early penalty, Oxford University. So Oxford will go quick down this left-hand side. Lovely pass in field. Still in the social competition, by the way. As we dart between the four competitions here at the London International Sevens. Oxford University probing away. Cleverly kept in field with the boot. Really brutal breakdown work at the moment. Offload game from Oxford University is really good. Spreading it wide. There's not a lot of space. Or rather, there's a lot of space, but not a lot of numbers. My tackle comes in. As Oxford looked to go around the right-hand side, ball just spilled in contact. Thought it might have gone backwards, but the referee agrees with the initial assessment that it went forward. And a very narrow start to this game. At one point there, I looked up and all 14 players were within the same sort of segment of the field. Definitely. I think that sometimes, as we we said before, kind of if, if teams are used to playing 15s and they're coming into sevens, sometimes you forget that you've got a little bit more Set. space to run around and play. But one thing that's great is seeing both teams with that intention to keep the ball alive in that first period of play. Woff's going straight in with that out the back offload from the first play. And then Oxford showing that they just they just want to play. Is that something you came into the game with? Uh, absolutely. I think Oxford are doing really well just to phase after phase, keep that ball alive, doing very well and seem to be going forward. You're looking for a, quite an aggressive defence though, it looks like. I think so. I think so, yes. I think Wasps still have to get going. They're still warming up, getting getting in their game in play. That's the key to a social tournament, isn't it? You've got to take it. The first half of the first game is all about remembering how to do all this again. Absolutely. And I think this is the first game for Wasps and for Oxford as well. So they're all warming up. Certainly are. A few dusty heads after last night, no doubt as well. Absolutely. It's, a, it's an early start, a sevens tournament. Wasps working down. The left hand side. Akpa Bome is the one taking it in. We saw that telescopic arm coming out for an, off an offload earlier on. Another great offload from Wass. Oxford defence comes in, but again getting it off the deck. Wass' ambition to keep the ball alive. Can it pay dividends? No, the ball just spilled. The referees awarded the try, I think. It did look like a bit of a knock on, really. but. Take what you can get, eh? <laughs> Absolutely. Play to the whistle. Um, yeah, I think well, the intent was that she was trying to release the ball as she wasn't held in the tackle and, and get back up. It did look like a knock on, but hey. We're, we're, we're away, away, really, so <laughs> we can't see what's on the pitch. The key point, though, I suppose, being in all this, Wasp's ambition to keep the ball alive is incredible. The amount of offloads we're seeing within the, the opening couple of minutes of this game, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely. And I'd say that goes for both, both teams, really. The physicality in the tackles as well just means that they're able to get their hands free and actually like sight that sight that um, support player. See here, break comes through. Three defenders swarm around, but the offload off the deck, and it's that charge for the right hand side. Well, yeah. referee can't see everything, can they? Play to the whistle. Although the touch judge on the near side possibly can. <laughs> Boss then, 7-0 lead, kick long. Challenging Oxford University to go from deep. And they're more than happy to take on that challenge. Oh, steal by Wasps. Bouncing ball. The sun is absolutely beating down. Definitely gone off about 10 degrees in the last five minutes. It certainly has. I'm, I'm very grateful to the fact that uh, Richard has handed me a cap to protect my head. Good, good defence there from Oxford. You saw the initial turnover, though. When you have teams that are offloading defensively, if you get in those channels, those offloading channels, it means that you quite often can get that intercept, you can get on the ball, and that's exactly what Wasps did. And then that transition again, we've spe been speaking about it all day, that transition from de defence into attack, 
really positive to see. Just unlucky there to be tackling to touch. Line out one, oh. but seized upon by Wass. Almost. Ball just knocked on. Oh, so close to a second try for Wasps. Oxford University, well, they got fingertips to it to tap it back, but didn't go to the, to the hands of the dummy half. Oxford. With the scrum in their own 22. Ball bouncing again, though. A lot not quite going to hand at the moment. Roll away. Feel is good. Tackle now. I think Wasps have definitely found their mojo. Offside. On the line. On the line. I think we've spotted the danger player for Wasps as well. Brandy. Akpabome wearing number five is having a real influence. It's all those players who are just everywhere, wherever you look, she's there hustling the whole time. Be careful. She certainly is. And her side are rewarded for her hustle on that right hand side with a try on the left hand side. Second try for Wasps as we approach half time. Take your time on the kickoff, you might get yourselves into half time. The other player, I think, making a lot of ground. Emily playing at number. She's the captain. Emily Tuck. Emily Tuck, yes. I have the benefit of a team sheet. I'm not I'm not just that, a weird, that, that, that a, a weird expert on social <laughs> rugby. That's half time though. Wasps go in 12 0 to the good. And a really strong performance so far from Wasps. They're, they're showing a lot of ambition. Absolutely. I mean, they started, they were a little bit slow to get going. Um, but I think once they, once they got going, they, I think they're, they're really being very, putting on a very strong performance. And Amy, at half time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you about Oxford now because we can't have all this Wasp, all this wasp bias. <laughs> half time, what do Oxford University say to each other to turn this thing around? I'd say it's 12-0, it's, it's not huge, it's easy easy to come back from that score, so to keep heads high, I think they need to focus on how they started the game, they kept the ball alive really well, some really physical carries, if they can go in with that intent from the off and get that first try after the after the kickoff, then they'll be in a really good place to, to contest and be in contention for this game. Definitely not over yet, so both teams have got to come out and show us what they can do, give us their best seven minutes in the second half. Wise words indeed. Just to let you know, after this, we move across to the men's tournaments um, for about an hour or so with the men's social South Island Sevens against SW7s. And then it's three men's open games in a row, which leads us into about 12.30. And then we're back across to the women's competition. So we're jumping around. There's women's social at the moment. Was leading 12-0 against Oxford University. Oxford University on the left-hand side of your screens in blue. And on the attack, looking to get back in this game. As Amy says, 12 0 is no real margin when it comes to sevens. Oxford hitting the offload away and doing really well to stay in field. Managing to generate reasonably quick ball given the number of players that were in that area. Ball squirting out of rucks. Again, we're seeing all 14 players bunched in a very, very tight area of the pitch. Penalty goes Oxford's way. Does there need to be more communication to try and get that the, the players spread out? Who's, who's the onus on there, or is it just in, individuals? It's definitely the players play is the opposite direction from play, which is obviously your kind of opposite opposite edges of the eyes in this case. Um, a lot of it comes from the vision, where are they looking? I think it's interesting if you if you kind of like track a player, see how often they're looking at their breakdown as opposed to looking what's in front of them. Um, and then obviously you've got to communicate that, but it all, all comes from that early scan and actually playing the right areas. Having said that, <coughs> Oxford and Wasps are both, when they're playing tight, actually they're looking after the ball well and because they're offloading, um, they're actually getting high success rate, but it'll be Ready? interesting. Go. Once they've done a couple of phases tight, Go. can they have that killer blow, have the execution Sorry. and then the hit on outside to, to finish off because then the fence are bunching. 
in one sentence, I think you've just summarized everything that every school coach should have taught me through my years, which is stop looking at the breakdown, start looking at what's in front of you. <laughs> it's very easy said, not as easily done. You get a bit carried away in the moment. <laughs> but maybe Oxford were listening too. Oxford must have been <laughs> listening because they are away for their first try of the game. Loaz wearing number seven, uh, getting herself across the line. And a well worked try, stretching the game from touchline to touchline there. That was Kick. nice to watch. It's nice to see executed. Exactly what we said. Like they did the hard work, they bun the wasps got wasps got a bit bunched there because of the hard carries and offload runners coming coming tight to the breakdown and then just that execution to to get that final pass which has potentially been missing from a few teams today. But <clears throat> that final pass it's, it looks easy but when the pressure's on and you need to score actually it can be quite a difficult difficult skill to execute. Certainly can. See it then. A very composed finish actually because the wasp cover came flying across but took her time to get the ball down. Knew what she was doing. Oxford go long and find space and the ball bounces and rolls and rolls and on this hard ground will it stop rolling? No, it's quite a short dead ball area. Yeah, that's brutal, isn't it? You've just scored and then a, a kicking error yep. just brings you straight back and then you're on the defence again. And an unfortunate kicking error because you know, what you want to do on a kickoff is find space. But it's just such hard ground at the moment that the ball just runs away. Definitely. I mean, fair play to anyone doing kickoffs. I cannot c comment on, <laughs> on on kicking skill or ability. That is not my forte. But yeah, definitely a tough one. And it is a it is a tight ball dead uh, tight dead ball area here. Does that affect? I mean, not so much in sevens because you're going to kick it less, obviously. But in in general, when in, in the fifteens game particularly, does that affect the way that you're going to be playing the game when you're playing in, in, with with a tight dead ball area like that? Definitely, I think yeah, you um you know that you've got more room to play with. I think I don't think it has a huge impact with how you'd play, but you, I think it's just be mindful of those. When, especially when you're kicking to score, I say more than a kick off, it's the, those kick to scores that maybe you know that you can put a bit more on it, knowing to give the winger or whoever's chasing a little bit more time to get on it. Used to be a real feature of Murrayfield, huge dead ball areas. I think it was that, that period of the, uh, the mid-2000s where uh, Scotland didn't have necessarily the best teams in the world, but one, one thing they could do was know that they could put boot to ball and it was unlikely to go dead and just send the flyers through to chase after it. I feel we also missed an opportunity. Oh, look at that scrum. The opportunity to look at a huge handoff there from Jasmine. Now she's just being pivotal in a pretty dominant scrum there from Wasps. A monster of a scrum. Not held. As wasps. Look to score their third try. Tackle roll away. Working towards the try line. Space on the right hand side if they can get the ball through the hands. They managed to get it through the hands the first time. Cut back inside. There was perhaps an opportunity to pass, but they get across the line anyway. Fantastic power and strength from wasps. That was I think, one. I think that's that's the area where I think wasps are clearly dominating in, in the the power and the strength as we saw in the scrum just earlier. The fact that they even, rather than kicking off, they, they played from played from hand at a kickoff rather than proper kickoff. That was one of those where your teammates are shouting at you, you better score this if you don't give the two and one, but fair play that, like you said, that physicality got over the line, but if she hadn't scored, then I think there would be a slightly frustrated winger or edge player having a go for the two and one that she missed first. Yeah, there have been, be, been some fairly strong words being issued if she hadn't crossed the line for that one. She did cross the line for that one, though. We see the replay here. As you say, just really powerful work around the fringes. The offload gets away. Let's go, guys. Come on. Great strength to get across the line. Oxford, well, we've seen what they can do. They got themselves on the score sheet. They're 19-5 behind. Can they do more? Well, it's a knock-on. 
Bit of a commentator's curse there as I try and talk them up. That was a knock on, knock on, it's gone down. Wasp ball. Mark's here, ladies. Mark's here. Wasp ball, and this is probably going to be the last play. Don't come across these, Mark. We saw what Wasp did on that last scrum. Absolutely brutal work. Can they do it again? Putting the ball in from the wrong side, as it were. And that cost them a little bit. Oxford getting their, their foot on the ball first. But then it's knocked on. So a chance for Was to have a go. And it's there. Well, it may not have been the try that they were trying to orchestrate, but a try nonetheless. Was pouncing on the error. Such excellent support play. Just always a player there. Winning that collision first, controlled offload. Just so hard to defend. You can see that, that non-conventional put in from the scrum is actually it's, it's seen uh, an awful lot more. Um, and it is very, very helpful because it means the nines have got more freedom to get away. They can scoot from that side. They're a, they're a lot more open. But the flip side of that is that obviously your hooker's a little bit further away. So you can get a turnover, as you see there. But Wasp then capitalise, show that hustle again. And then straight on that ball, that transition that we've spoken about all day. So, so good. And I guess that's the key, isn't it? When when an error comes or when a turnover comes, it's about how you react and what's there. Reacting absolutely perfectly. And that reaction gives Wasps the win here in their opening game of this social tournament here at the London International Sevens. They beat Oxford University 24 points to five. A fantastic performance from Wasps. Big thank you to Alex, who's just headed off. And we're going to throw over to Dave now, who's got someone from South Island. I'm here with Fergus from South Island Sevens who are competing in our next match. And you've really built a whole community hub of Rugby Sevens down at the Isle of Wight, right? Yeah, we're trying to, Dave. That's, uh, that's what it's all about, really, building up the community and trying to get everyone involved and competing for a place uh, to play better rugby. Well, I mean, you hosted a brilliant tournament down in the Isle of Wight as well, and so to see that being built into a side, that's fantastic. Yeah, great, thanks. Yeah, the, the uh, mastermind behind is that guy called Chris Fletcher. Uh, he's the brains behind the operation, makes everything happen, but it was very much his idea to sort of build the tournament and to build a team alongside it, to integrate the two and show what he always says is show what rugby can do. It can be a great force, show what it does. So let's talk about the side that you've got here today then, Fergus. What are those players that we should be looking out for? A couple of lads, so our main man's our captain, obviously uh, a guy called Zach Chiverton. Uh, he leads from the front on everything he does. He ups the standard, he's got the right attitude to lead our team and that's, that's something that Chris was really hot on from the start, having the right attitude, having the guys who are leaders and you see them at training, they come to the top and they, and they, and they push on and Zach's a great example of that. Amazing, amazing. And for anyone from the Isle of Wight who's maybe watching this stream, how can they get involved with South Island? Oh, well, so there's plenty of ways to get involved. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we've got loads of things going on. The Isle of Wight's a small community, everybody knows everybody. Uh, so that, that helps a little bit as well to get the word around. Um, but by all means, yeah, like I say, get on the socials, have a little look uh, and come and get involved. Uh, teams are open to everybody. Show up and see what you got. Well, Fergus, thank you so much for your time and massive good luck for the rest of the day. And we'll pass back over to Angus and our commentary team. Apologies for the delay there, just uh, doing, doing a little bit of side media, as you do. So we're about to get underway in the men's social tournament. Well, I say underway, we're about to get underway for the first time here on pitch one, where we're going to have South Island Sevens up against SW Sevens. The two sides are out. I think they're just waiting for a referee. So for 20 seconds or so, I'm just going to have a route around for our team sheets. Good news, everyone. Team cheats found. Referee still not found, but we'll be we'll be ready to go pretty soon. Joined once more by Amy Wilson Hardy. 
keeping the sevens and fifteen superstar. And Fergus from South Island Sundays. You excited? We don't know that. <laughs> I have no evidence that says that's not true. Don't put yourself down. <laughs> Could be a commentary superstar for all we know. No pressure. Oh, well, you know. It got to big people up to give them to give them the opportunity to shine, haven't you? Absolutely. So I think we've finally found a referee. He's uh, he's trotting out, still getting dressed, I think. Just about ready. In fairness to him. In fairness to him. I don't actually think he's too far behind schedule. And it's a busy day for the referees, these as well. It's an enormous squad. Now, you, you're going to be able to help me out here, Fergus. I'm assuming South, South Island are on the left of our screens, aren't they? No, they're on the right. Right. Well, in fact, I can ask you the very question I'm thinking about. Then. That is an enormous squad. Well, we've got a, uh, we brought 12 up um, and uh, yeah, they're all, they're all good fit lads and they're going to have a go today. We'll see what we can get. This is our first game. So uh, let's see how we get on. Straight off the ferry, straight onto the pitch. Straight off the ferry, straight onto the pitch. Fantastic. Did you travel here this morning? Yep. Wowsies. We, uh, we missed the first game because we weren't willing to get the 4.30 a.m. boat, so maybe that's our bad. I have a lot of sympathy with that, in fairness. So we kick off, Great time. and it's a good start for South Island, taking the ball straight from the kickoff. Bouncing ball, though. And it's spilled. We'll have a scrum down. SW7s, who won this tournament last year. So we'll see how they got on. It's a bit. It's a, that's a tough opening start, isn't it? Up against the champions. That is a tough, a tough break. But we'll see what we've got. That was a fabulous kickoff, though. The height on that, and then the chase. Goes back to what we were saying in that opening game, doesn't it? The kickoffs are such a key part of the game now. I say now like it's new news. It's been about 15 years they've been really important. I won't put too much pressure on them, but uh, Kai, who's restarting, and Zach, who's our captain, taking the kickoffs is a real strength for his. He gets above the head, takes the ball above his head, which a lot of rugby players don't naturally do. Definitely, that's one of the main differences with 15s and 7s. I think in 15s you get coached more of that kind of bucket catch. And in sevens, it's, I know when I've coached young kids before, it's flipping that on its head and I ask them how to catch the ball and then I say, oh, turn on your side, catch it in your bucket and you're like, I'm going to tell you everything that's different. But there you go, look, that dominance there just shown. Absolutely ruthless. Straight under the post. Absolutely right, straight under the post. And ju just to go back to that point about... Uh, the differing techniques on catching the ball. I mean, I suppose you have the advantage of often playing in uh, in dry, summery weather. But is that a skill then that everyone's working on? Is adapting that way of taking the ball? Yeah, being being dry and sunny definitely helps. But for sure, if you if you just think it's if you can catch it above head and you're confident and you're staying square onto that ball, you you're instantly a good few meters higher than if you were trying to catch it in in this what we call the bucket kind of catch. There's a time and place for that if you don't have that heat on, but if you're kicking to compete, that's when you want to get in the air, get as high as you can, get the highest point of the ball. And I'm excited to see a repeat of it when we finally get a ball back after that first. I'll tell you what though, guys, it's not easy standing here and not running up and down the touchline well, shouting my lungs out. <laughs> really hard. <laughs> you're more than welcome to shout your lungs out on the mic, though. <laughs> By the end of the day, I won't be able to talk. I think that cable's fairly long. I reckon you can get <laughs> up and down a little bit. Here we go then. We've got a ball back. Kai to restart. That one a little unlucky. A huge gust of wind started to blow just as he kicked off and it just pushed it a little further forward. We see some great pace oh, here pace. on the outside from SW7s. That is absolutely outstanding. George Nelany is going to get away for a try, and he has just identified himself as one of the most dangerous players we've seen so far today. You can see everyone was on the same page there. Get the ball to the speedster on the edge, have a go. Sometimes you don't need 
when you've got you've got pace and physicality like that, you don't need a huge amount of space necessarily. It's just about getting the ball into the hands early and see what they can do, test that defence. It looks like he's tired himself out and he's just going for a little um, water break now. So quick sub on and off. Really got that hand off in, didn't he, to get himself away. Yeah, you see it on the replay there, it's a huge fend and then just almost Dan Carter-like is the example I always use of being able to accelerate by using the handoff. Definitely great physicality, great speed, it's got it all. Not very social though. <laughs> really Try a piece then, South Island on the ball. Looking to get it through the hands but oh, no. spilled no, and a chance here for SW7s to get back on the attack. Oh, great ball back inside. Back, back, back. Working the ball now. Numbers are there for South Island. As SW7s just bounce back in field, get the pass on the inside. Good cover defence. But South Island has stretched now. SW7s, they've got men outside. Can they get the ball through the hands? No, they go for the skip pass, but it works perfectly out to the outside channel and James judging by the handwriting it's tricky to say I'm going to call him James Edmund he could be called something else James someone on the right hand side getting himself across the line just a little handling error there that let them in wasn't it an half side from the set from the Sundays the thing with sevens like one error and it quite often does lead to a score it's, it's such a brutal game there's nowhere to hide, and unfortunately, um, SW7 just capitalised on that then. But you could see it was, it was a great defence, it was a great scramble, and they did keep them out wide, so scores are still tight. Everything to play for in this game. That bit of cover there was the one for me, I thought. The, the try looked like it was on, but the defender just came away, and, and as you say, that's, that's stopped the score in field and forced them out wide. Definitely, and, and that is a, a difference between winning and losing half the time. You need to, and that's why we talk about that work rate back to try line when people are chasing back. If that's the difference back between ten. seven points and five, then that could be you going through a quarter no, no. to a quarter yeah, final or not. So it's so important. Error from the kickoff though from SW Sevens doesn't go ten, so we'll have a free kick South Island working towards the left hand side. Oh, big tackle coming in, but still ground made from South Island. It. Keeping it tight. Now looking for the offload. The big man keeping that arm well away from contact and getting the offload away. Huge physicality coming through and a dart back inside. SW7's having to work really, really hard in defence. South Island go wide. Offload. Well, offloads to himself. You don't often see that, but manages to take it. I think we got away with that one. One for the highlights reel there. Okay. Spilled forward. Chaos in and around that five meter line. Can't help it, sorry. Fer Fergus, the cheerleader, <laughs> can't contain himself. I can feel the energy shaking, <laughs> jumping up and down. I just think maybe um, maybe pick the wrong option there. I think if they went open, they had a lot of space, even though technically <clears throat> still a 2v2, but they had a 2v2 with with pretty much three quarters of the width of the pitch as opposed to go a bit down the yeah, blind alley. Yeah, I think they, they might have yeah. had the extra man this side as well, actually in defence. Uh, yeah, not, not the right choice, but that's all right. We've still got the ball. See what we can build off here. It almost looks like a bit of a sort of 15s play to set up a phase so that you had the width of the field to work with. We've spent weeks trying not to do that. <laughs> Sometimes the old habits die hard, though. I was going to say, how, lo how long have you been kind of transitioning to your sev summer of sevens? Well, this is the first uh, first summer we've done it, actually, and the South Island sevens in uh, the end of May was the first tournament we played in. So we did six weeks before that, and we've done about four or five weeks before this. South Island trying to work a move off the scrum, but it goes to deck, and SW7s with... Absolute gas, get themselves away, but it's great cover from South Island to work their way back. Stabbed through now, across to the right-hand side. Who's going to get there first? South Island get there. I thought the penalty was going to go their way. I thought there wasn't a release, but the referee saw the release. So it's a penalty to SW7s and a try for SW7s. And it's the same try scorer, James Edmund, we'll call him once more, who started the move off by gathering the ball from the spillage off the scrum way back at the other end of the field and it's him that finishes it off for his second try and that is just a case 
of exploding off the turnover. I mean, sevens is brutal, nice. isn't it? Like you've got an attacking scrum in a perfect position down on um, 10 metres out from the try line and then get scored against. It's, it's savage, but I tell you what, again, I mean, this game is not over. You can see both teams at half time will still think they've got opportunity to win, obviously. South Island it's just, it's just hand, got a little bit more to do, but it's not impossible. I think we've seen the uh, the strength of the opposition there. They've got the pace on us, I think, in two uh, two uh, examples now. So what we've got to do is try and shepherd them into the space and, uh, and marshal them a little bit better. Hopefully the lads have left them with their own subs at the moment, so hopefully they'll recognise that the two big chasers back must be blowing hard now, and they'll bring on some uh, bring on some fresh legs for a couple of minutes now. I mean, do you want to run over? I want to <laughs> run on. <laughs> Half time then is SW7's 19-5 up against South Island 7s. It's been a cracking first half. I think you know, it, this is the first we've seen of the men's social, but we've obviously got the reigning champions here. We, we can be fairly certain that they're going to be one of the top sides. So actually competing hard against them, that's got to give your guys confidence, confidence that over the course of the tournament, you're probably going to be competing well. Absolutely, this is what we want, you know, although although we see the score line and we think well, that's not ideal for us, we want to be playing these good teams, you know, um, we don't want to be playing local rugby against the next uh, next club to us, we want to be playing against people from all over the country and seeing what they've got, that's what we're about. The beauty of sevens, bringing everyone together, I love it. Very, very, very <laughs> poignant. <laughs> have a little tear here. I can bring more if you want, I'm good at my emotional speaking. So when, when we played our, our first tournament, uh, we had three games in our pool there. We ended up playing the tournament winners in, our, in one game uh, and another team that got through to, I think, the semi-final. So we've played a few tough teams. We're not afraid of this lot. We'll see what we can give them in the second half. Ready for the next cliche? Strong words coming <laughs> through. Strong words coming through. We're about to kick off then. SW7s are getting ready to kick off. South Island take the ball well from the kickoff. An early score here would do them the power of good as they look to come back from 19-5 down and perhaps the early try is on one-on-one -on -one with the sweeper he might Go carry South him over Ireland. up into the 22 gets the deep offload off the ground that's really really good play to keep that ball alive and away they go stretching towards the line not quite making it isolated himself a little bit oh it's wonderful clear out work from South Island and then great hustle and across the yes, line they go Oh dear, my heart was in my mouth a little bit there. What a start to the second half. So we had a great break on the far side there and we saw that as you pulled out the really the deep offload off the ground from a bit more experienced player. Our younger lad Sam got caught in the middle here, didn't quite have that same experience, got a bit tied up and I thought, oh no, here we go, we're going to lose this. But uh, really hard work from the lads to, uh, to get there and support him and that's an unlucky strike there. So I, I always think, Amy, you'll be able to sort of correct me if I'm wrong, but I think one of the hardest things to transition from 15s to 7s is that idea of what to do when you get tackled, which is, yeah, so often the, the actual thing is exactly what we saw there. Just get the ball away from that breakdown. Don't let yourself get turned over. Definitely. If, if he hadn't offloaded the ball then, that, that would have been a turnover, 100%. There was no supporting attacking players around and the defence were all over him. So that, that bit of nous to, to give that deep offload and that vision still when you're on the floor and a bit discombobulated to, to kind of sight that player, that is, that's a great bit of skill. A great bit of skill and it's a bit of skill that's narrowed the gap to 19 points to 10. Although... I was about to say, there goes there goes the first try scorer for SW7s around the outside, but shackled well this time. Managed to shepherd him into touch. I'm not quite sure how high that tackle was. I couldn't quite see it from here. Any, anything will do on him, I suspect. Absolutely. We'll just hold on to him if we can. It's exactly what you said. Although you weren't in that huddle, they must have listened. Shepherd, shepherd the fast players. Use those angles, especially when you've got more ground behind you. It's about... We say about the shepherding, it's about using the space behind you so you can get the angle on these quicker players. I know it's a skill that I've had to learn. <laughs> learn and learn well. We'll have a scrum down South Island. And another try here would make this game very, very interesting as we move into the last four or five minutes. Let's see if we can execute here. We've got quite a good platform. Thirty-one. 
Okay. Training ground move. It didn't quite work there, did it? Almost over complex. <laughs> I think that's what they'd argue, yeah. Kill it. Missed a bit of an opportunity in defence there. Their, their guy came back. He was the last man back with the ball. If we'd have had two up on him, we could have put some real pressure on, but only the one man there, we couldn't do that. Well, another good platform. There's going to be options both ways here for South Island. Centre field scrum, absolute dream, especially if you've got a speedster, have a play around with the positioning. Oh, Fergus is shaking his head. <laughs> no speed to Zom, but Unfortunately, not this time, no. <laughs> we're, going, we're going with experience and Naus, but still. <laughs> He's still shaking his head. What have you got then? Come on, give me something. <laughs> we'll go for hard work, shall hard we? Hard work, I like that, yeah. I like that. Goes a long way. Okay, player. Turned over SW7s. They can take advantage. It could be the pivotal point in the match. Trying hard yep. to keep it alive, but South Island chasing hard. You can hear get it to George. He's obviously the quick guy. Here he is. The gas man on the outside. We've seen the fend Sink in the step Louis. already. Yeah, good lad. Tackled well. That's the joy of bringing number nines from 15 into sevens. That They're not afraid of tackling anyone. <laughs> Sometimes the most unlikely matchups, they still get them down. Closer to the ankles. That's the, that's the big advantage. <laughs> you have to look out for the tooth marks. In sevens, I think so much more, it's just about getting them down. It doesn't really matter how. We're just looking at finding a way, unfortunately. Oh, he's beat him that time. Yeah, just a bit too much gas that time. George is through. Do you know what, though? <laughs> George Nelani. That is really outstanding pace, because he had three yards to work in there. And he's, uh, he's repeated it as well, hasn't he? Two, two sort of attacks on the outside there within the space of a minute or so. He's obviously got an engine too. Wherever you want and, the and tell me, Amy, what's the, you know, if, if you are that edge defender and you, you know that the guy's got you on toast for pace, what's it like? What, do you, what, do you, what are you thinking and what do you do in that situation? So much it's about the, actually the, the players around you. So it's about that inside player giving you confidence, telling you when you can push off. Because obviously if you push off too early, then you're just giving that over chase. You're going to turn your hips and then actually there's an opportunity for that cutback. So it's initially that, that inside support to tell you to when to go. And then there's two options. We've spoken about that shepherding option, but sometimes if you don't have that ground behind you, it, 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 you can't do that. So then it's about just getting them early, trying to be brave. Really, as soon as you've got that permission to go and get them, to really be brave, go make that tackle, to not give them time to, to kind of accelerate and get around you. I love the cry of Harry No from the opposition there. He clearly does that all day long. Taking the carrot. Looking to go for the direct approach there was Harry, but his teammates urged him to move it, and they've urged him to move it because they are pushing and probing to find space, and they've engineered a three-on-one here. Oh, no. Sort of eaten up the space in the end, but they may yet find their way across. And out it goes to the big man. No, he's just hold short. Tired tackling there from our lads. Staying up a bit high. Big pass comes in, drifts Word. forward. The big wind up on that pass had this may go forward <laughs> written all over it. There was no gust of wind with that one. Some lovely attack there, but you can just see it just that kind of running almost like you said running out of options he's almost run himself out of options if he actually there was a nice short line that came in I think potentially if he'd just a little lift to that short line runner he'd be under the post but kind of maybe thought he could do it himself yeah it seemed almost like once he'd once he'd engineered what was effectively a three-on-one it was like just find a way of straightening it be that through passing or through your own footwork find a way of straightening just so that all of those options still exist I don't know if this uh, happens further up the levels but certainly we see a lot of lads who are good carriers and we see a lot of lads who have good vision um, and we rarely see the two together. So you, like you say, they create the overlap, they create the space. And you think, brilliant, just straighten up and give the pass. And then suddenly a three on one becomes a one on one on the outside uh, and he's frustrated. You also generally get players are a lot quicker over the board. Of course, there's always a variety, but it means that they can cover that ground. So we always talk about like spaces. Oh, look at this. Sorry, I've got to, got to stop because we've had a break of tackle. 
Oh, unlucky there. Unfortunately, he had 80 yards to go. <laughs> Didn't want to say. <laughs> so he needed someone to help him finish that one off. He had 80 yards to go, and his team are going to be on the losing end of this one. But they've put in a great shift. SW7's the reigning champions take the victory against South Island. 27 points to 10. But a really strong showing from both sides. Fergus, thank you so much for that. Really great to get your insight. We're going to be handing over to Dave shortly, but not yet. Because we've got microphones to pass around. Let me tell you, we're, we're, we're moving microphones left, right and centre here today. Because we've got so many guests from so many teams. Because the teams around us have been such a pleasure to work with. So we're going to hand over to Dave now, who's going to be talking to one of the Midlands mob. Yeah, absolutely. Moving microphones about left, right and centre. I'm joined by George from Midlands mob. And George, what you guys have created really is unique in a way. You're creating a club and creating a culture that offers a pathway for athletes to carry on with Rugby Sevens. Yeah. I think, you know, how we look at Midlands Mob is just creating a platform for, for people to, to play on the biggest of stages. And it's not just about the players as well, it's about our staff that we've got working with us. You know, they're all university guys and, and we just understand that people just need that, that little foot in the door to gain their experience to hopefully go on to, to do bigger and better things. You're almost like a shop window for not only yeah. the players, but all the backing staff and coaches as well. Yeah, I think even big events like this and getting time on, on the stream, it's just an opportunity for people to look at what we are and what we can provide um, you know a lot of these players here are playing top level university rugby and things like that and they just as I said if we can give them an opportunity to, to show off their talent which hopefully we're going to do against now against one of the biggest teams in, in sevens this year it's a win-win for us so who are those key players that we should be watching out for <sighs> Uh, to be honest, I, I think each player brings something different, different to the game. Um, we've got a lot of pace today, um, and we've got sort of a lot of sort of playmaking ability. Um, so I think for us, it's just going to be able to try and keep the ball moving as quickly as possible and hopefully exploit it around the outside. And of course, you won yourselves your first bit of silverware yeah. just last weekend. That's some we great did. form coming into this competition with. Yeah, we'll, we'll take the great <laughs> form. Um, hey, look, it, it's, it's, it's all part of the building process. You know, silverware is great, but that's not how we regulate our success. Our success is, you know, building and, and hopefully by the end of the season we can look back and, and, and we've had a great great sort of thing and a great season and, and uh, the success is our players or staff going on to bigger and better things. Well George, thank you for your time and we'll keep you with us on the commentary stream as well. Come on the mob! <laughs> so we wish good luck to Midlands mob. And we are indeed underway and almost underway with a score. In fact we are underway with a score. Oh no, I had my back to that one. <laughs> Can we just say it didn't happen? Oh, no, we're not underway with a oh, score. We're underway that. with a 22. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't see it, it didn't happen, right? Exactly. <laughs> only, only we score. That's the only ones I'm taking. <laughs> Go, Bev. Yeah, shot. So. Seven tees against Midland Mob. Sadly... We don't have a team sheet for 70s, but we do have one for Midlands Mob. So if this gets a bit Midlands Mob heavy, it's because they've put in the yards and they've given us a team sheet. And I'm we have not one complaining. Of them. <laughs> 70s have come all the way from France. So in fairness to them, they've put in a shift just to even be here. 70s, seven ties. I don't know. Uh, I was going to say, I kind of 70s. I kind of like shot. it. Oh, a huge, huge fend comes in. Some big physicality <laughs> over here. And I think we're seeing the difference between the social and the open as that massive physicality comes in. And follow through with a try for 70s. The French side early on with the advantage. Yeah, not bad group, the 70s, by the way. I've, I've, I've worked out seven tournaments out of uh, this year and they've won six of them. I agree. Oh, wow. That's not bad stats. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, we, uh, where were you when the research was happening? <laughs> um, and they've had, I think, eight or nine French Sevens Internationals this year go through their pathway. You can stay all day. <laughs> yeah. You're not, yeah. You're not going anywhere. Have you got this on every team? Uh, I've got the teams that we're playing, yeah. I mean, how, how, how often do you want to put <laughs> the mob on the, on the front pitch and then, then we'll, we'll negotiate? <laughs> I'm sure we can work out something. Yeah, I'm sure. So, I'm <laughs> sure something can be arranged. <laughs> now nah, they're they're a good little outfit. Um, they've done they've done a couple of England tours um, so far and have been successful in both both attempts. So looking for three out of three today. 
That's a lov lovely kickoff. Lovely height, great chase. Just enough, it, the, the height gives the, the supporting players time to get underneath. You normally have one kind of nominated good aerial player going after that ball and then you can see the players around ready to gather that tap back. Keeping possession, which means more time to attack, more opportunity to score. We potentially will see here. Lovely finish. Change of angle, straight under post. C'est parfait. Oh, a little bit of French. <laughs> Outstanding. And Amy, I, I, almost instantly, <coughs> I think we're seeing a, a step up in just the the intensity of every small bit of play. Sort of seeing that it's the quicker footwork, the quicker handling, the more precise running lines. Definitely, and also the areas in which we're, they're playing in the pitch. You can see these, these guys are drilled to play sevens, and you can see that in the way they're playing as well. I've just noticed on the near side to us, a shocking mullet followed by oh, an even, God that you an even more Jesus. shocking moustache. <laughs> One, one or they the like other. They stand out, don't they? <laughs> what is it with mullets coming back? Sorry. It's is that just me? <laughs> in fairness, it's the only haircut I could grow, so I'm tempted. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't judge you too much. Good, Jamesy. Go on, Jamesy. Give it him. Go on, Bello. Go, Bello. <laughs> Jouet. Jouet. <laughs> The Midland That's mob. a bit of the mob for you. If you haven't worked out, I think Midland Mob just scored. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding work from Midland Mob. Aaron Bello with a try. First appearance for us this year. Yeah, he loves a bit. bit right again next week, hopefully, for us at six ways. Fingers crossed. Bit of pace to him. Yeah, he's got a bit of pace, got a bit of physicality. He, loves, he just loves goo. He just loves it. <laughs> Opportunity atta to attack, first real opportunity to attack, and executed. That was beautiful. Again, we're seeing both the tries are coming from these change of angles. You're taking the defence one way, then it's savage because you, all the defence are going one way because they're having to work really hard. The hips are turning, and then it's just impossible then to pick up those players coming on those cut angles. How's your kickoff? Mm -hmm. How's your kickoff? You gonna get it back? We'll soon see. Our ten currently isn't on the field, so we haven't practiced without him. But I'm, I'm all for that. Oh yeah, yeah, we oh. got oh, knock on first by the French. There we go. See, pile on the pressure, guys. Hundred percent. Midland mob. Yeah. I'll take credit for the kit. Thank you. Tell you what, that is that is a big set of forwards you've got there. Towering over above the French. I was, I was just about to say, when did sevens players start getting so tall? <laughs> oh, feet. Here we go. Used to be the game for short guys like me. No longer. Yeah, yeah there we go. Keep the tempo. Hard line. Middle and mob on the attack. Oh, that's great feet. Searching for a second score. Ah, Played on the deck, though, so 70s will get the ball back. And really, it's the first time since they're trying. A bit of chat back from Midland Mob. Sees their march back 10 and the yellow card. They're down to six. The double whammy, that is, I don't like that. You just can't get away with that anymore. Bit of naivety there, you can't chuck the ball away. Maybe a few years ago you'd get away with it, but now straight in the bin. Unsportsmanlike, they say. And 70s looking to take advantage straight away. Intercepted well by the middle of mob. On, Jamesy. Yeah, you've got to be a bit more subtle on those ones, haven't you? You walk backwards with the ball out and then roll it back towards them once you back ten, sir? something like I'm that. I'm not in trouble, am I? <laughs> I like it when you when you just try and take the penalty yourself. That's probably the only one you still sometimes sure get away with. There. Didn't hear the whistle ref, sorry. <laughs> the, the stadium's yeah, so full. Good day, good day. <laughs> Half time so, yeah. then, that half has absolutely story. flown by. And 70s lead, 12 points to five against the Midland mob. Are you happy with that performance so far? I mean, I can't really complain. You know, the caliber of player that these guys have got, um, you know, they've shown what they've got for some week. And I think if we, if we can bring the tempo for the last seven, you know, who knows? You know, sevens can be won, it's a margins game. It is a margins game. It can be won just from a random play, like a random step, but hopefully we get the first score of the second half and we can hopefully just push on for that, really. Have you practiced playing with a player down? 
Um, we have, uh, unfortunately, it's become a bit of a common occurrence. Um, but yeah, look, I think the key thing for, for sevens, and it doesn't matter whether you've got a player down or, or, or your player on, if you keep the ball, they can't score. And I think maybe just trying to ride the wave for the final hopeful minute. Um, and then, just, as I said, foot on the gas, full seven, and leave everything out there. Because we've got a nice little sort of hour and a half break after this. So if they've not left everything out there, I'm going to be slightly concerned. They hear, they see a mob in the name and they think, I'd better get my cards ready, I think. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to change the perception <laughs> of that name. But at the moment, uh, you know, Peaky, kettle black and all that. Peaky blinders. Yeah. A, a quick, a quick mi mid uh, tournament name change Midlands Gents. <laughs> yes, sir. No, sir. Giselle, our, our coach at Wasp, was convinced that we got more yellow cards when we played in white. So she, not the name, but whenever Wasp played in the away kit white, she said, yep, that's it. That's why we get more yellow cards, because they can see us better. <laughs> well, there always used to be a thing of uh, wearing bright socks was always a problem. Because re refs, refs would notice that when it was hanging over a ball in a ruck or something where it shouldn't have been. All the tricks of the trade. Wear dark socks. The best one I've seen is pick a very different kit to the opposition, but make sure you've got the same colour socks on. <laughs> then the ref's got no idea who's in the wrong place at a breakdown. It's fine. Not that I'm condoning trying to find little tricks, but you know. You're I not am. trying to sway the referee there, are you? So, so it's the only thing I'm good at in rugby. <laughs> Here we go. Back underway then. 70s, the French side. Won six of their seven tournaments this year, as we heard before. They're up 12-5 against the Midlands mob, and they're in possession as things stand at the moment. They're on the right-hand side of your screens. And they're away, are they, for a second or a third try, rather? Yes, they are. The number 11 scorching away to get himself underneath the sticks. What a start to the second half from 70s. They did the first bit well there. They closed him down. Just let's see again, just overworking a little bit. Meant those hips turned really hard to recover. Weak shoulders, weak arms. Yeah, we, we, we worked like really focused on in training. It's just defending within our 15s. And then just as they look to go around the outside, just shutting that door. Um, and yeah, it's just a little bit of communication in the midfield there. We've got three guys focused on one player and it's just one step on the inside and it's, it, it's see you later, which is there. You know, it's, 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 it's a frustrating occurrence when, it, when that happens because, it's, you, as you said, we've already shut them out on the outside. We don't need to buy over too much. 70s then. How's their kickoff routine? Not too bad, but it's tapped back by the Midlands mob and then regathered. But 70s go off their feet as it turns out. So Midlands mob have the penalty. Reset, reset, reset. Why are we going? Why are we going? That's another thing in, in sevens as opposed to fifteens. The breakdowns are a lot more easy to see. You can't get away with as much. So if you're off your feet, you're gonna get pinged. If you're holding on, you're gonna get pinged. It's it's you've got to be so hot on it. Little stab through off the outside of the boot. Almost out of the Carlos Spencer playbook that. Drifts out into touch. That touch judge on the far side has refereed me. He sent you off? He didn't. His pre-game talk focused very much on the fact that he would only be concentrating on the front row that day, which was excellent. I was in the back row. I love that. It's great still. We won that. Ball ends up on the 7 side. Could have gone either way there. 7 Well, we know they're a threat when they get quick ball. This one doesn't quite get a hand, though. Yeah, and it's there we go. In the end. Touchy's getting involved. We love it. They're actually mic'd up and using them today. <laughs> the Midlands mob have the scrum. And as we saw in the first half, their scrum is absolutely enormous. Both props standing at, to my eye, well over six foot three, six foot four. Props. I got told pack weight matters. Pick the side. Is that is that still true? I mean, it's coming down. <laughs> paying off so far. <laughs> it's definitely a stat you see all the time in sevens. Yeah, oh, pack weight. Oscar, go on, Oscar. Uh, well, that's a that's, oh, that's a great clear actually. Entry fourteen, attacking. Penalty seventies. 
just can't over, just, just under committed out wide there. You know, left the breakdown too open. Oh, he doesn't like it. Again, ball spilled though as as seven T's look to go wide. And that's twice now they've had an opportunity to have a look at the outside channel. But the ball's not gone to hand or it's been spilled by that second to last man out. It just looks like they're trying to force it wide way too quickly. They didn't actually have to give that, that forceful pass. They had us on a, on a three on one if they actually brought that ball there. But you know, maybe they're just a little bit rusty. Maybe they're not liking the English soil. I've just noticed that not one of them has got a proper sock on as well. I oh, know one of them has, that's all right. Well, straight off his feet there, come on. Midlands Bob. All for Looking the feet, for a all second. for the I'm on the outside, Oscar. That's great hands. Oh, you've got to back out get now. Up, get up. That's so annoying. That's, that's something that we've worked so hard on is, is having that pull out out wide. And it's just that, oh, am I going to beat him on the outside? And it's the hesitation that, that absolutely kills you. <clears throat> Another major, major difference from 15s and 7s, it's, it's that ability to almost like run yourself out of trouble, like you said. Are you going down a blind alley? Who's with you actually? Is it not on for me? Can I actually run backwards? Which kind of sounds so alien to to kind of conventional rugby where we always think about metres forward, metres forward, metres forwards. But as long as we've got that work rate behind the ball to then have those players to link up with, it can be really successful because actually there's space yeah, that's open. That's a great line out. What's well, the thing you see from some of the great Fijian sides, isn't it, where they're, they're prepared to just bounce out and, and almost John walk Jody. themselves backwards, almost the outside, all the way to their own try line. Yeah, that's great. They make it look so easy. Um, they look like they've got all the time in the world, but it's 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 hard when you've got players, the defence, that want to come and get you at the same time, and you're kind of it feels like running backwards just doesn't feel natural. Well, I guess the onus becomes on your teammates at that point doesn't it to, to get back behind you as you as you're going back they've got to be sprinting back to get some depth on the attack in fact we mentioned we mentioned earlier china sevens being here dan norton one of the best got called for foul play we stopped the game one of the best um at it running himself out of trouble and you think he's like what is he doing and then the next thing he's under the post because he's, he's found a gap somewhere else it helps okay, when you've got on. five yards extra pace anything. on everyone yeah and you can step someone in the phone box report. Not foul play incident. Oh, it's not for me. <laughs> no, it's just for me, I'm dropping the mic and I'm gone. <laughs> it wasn't my over. team. <laughs> You're going to get a yellow card for... So, number three. three. Oh, he's pointing our way. OK, so let me repeat that back to you. Three gold, holding onto a player on the ground. Fifteen blue, then kick that player in the leg. I wasn't, I wasn't really paying attention. I was just hoping that we made the tackle Look, and they made it. He's up. Yeah. Looks like okay, it's going to be I'm a penalty. Two yellow cards then. And we're going to stick with the original penalty, uh, which is going to be against three. So we're going to have a yellow Three card for 50. both sides, and we're going to have a penalty Pass. to the Midlands mob. What's harder than 7v7? 6v6. Where's the mark? Game of sixes, is Thank it? God you're here to do the maths. <laughs> yep. That's what I did five years in uniform. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is international sevens insight. <laughs> It is six on six, though, and that does mean lots of extra space, which was the ultimate point there. So if I'm not there. mistaken, the three for 70 is one player of the series at Super Series. Or Samurai, if I'm not mistaken. He is literally a, a walking encyclopedia next to me here. <laughs> I was commentating on that series as well, and I don't even know. I need to do oh, better research. Yeah, Bello! <laughs> oh, I think he's butchered that. That's pretty poor from them. Away, Midlands! Oh, uh, I do think they've got a slight overlap on. Seven tees. It's a great shot. Offload out the back, but it's Love spilled. Love it, great shot. Not going into touch, option. <coughs> the chance was there, the opportunity was there. Scramble line out. But it doesn't option. quite Scramble line out. work out for seven tees. Scrum. But with only 30 seconds left. Is that how long we've got? You've got to think, it's going to be tough for Midlands Mob to get two tries. Yeah, they need one instantly, and then they need to be getting back on the horse very quick. In fact, I take it back. <laughs> By my maths, I don't think they can do it. I was going to say, uh, maybe need my math skills again there. Crouch. be nice to see a score again. Find. Maybe in the second half, eh? Set. Tell you what, pool games, every score counts. You never know what's going to happen in the other games, so... Yeah, exactly. it is. I'm pretty sure it's top six and bottom six is how they're splitting it. So it is vital that you get all those points on the board. You see, you see teams like slowing the game down and kicking it out in some instances, but in this case, 
for the Midlands more, but a score on the board will be really helpful. High tackle, number nine. But it's going to be seven tees that are looking for that extra score. Oh, you know they what? have the penalty. Not Clever play from seven tees. The slow retreating Midlands mob player deliberately had the ball passed into him. They've bought themselves an extra 10 metres. Seven tees. They want a fourth try. Midlands mob determined. Oh, that's a turn off. All for us there, please, sir. Got the ball. Thank you. What? You got the ball, ball and let go. Did, pops was out. it just me or did somebody see the referee put his hand up there and then stop? It was turned over by Midlands <laughs> Mob, but then they turned it over, threw it into space, and there was no one in that space. So 70s grabbed the ball and scorched away for their fourth try of the game. It's going to give them the victory. Puts them 24-5 ahead. They'll probably be 26-5 with the conversion. They are indeed. And that is a big opening statement from 70s. Hey. For what I'm saying, it's a good job that I thought that could have gone slightly worse. Okay, I thought we played really well, kept them. They were frustrated. It looked like they were very frustrated. They were forcing a few things. But, uh, hey, they got the win in the end, but we played well, and I'm proud of the boys. Great work. Definitely a good game. On to the next one. Thank you very much. Great words there from the Midlands mob. Amy, real step up in quality from social to open there, I thought. Big, big performance from both teams. 100% so good to watch. I think, like like you said, that speed to everything, the ferociousness of it all is great. We're going to hand over to Dave now, who's going to be talking to one of the Akuma Beavers. They're up next against Nadi UK Rugby. So on to our next game here at Lit Sevens. I'm with Ross from Akuma Beavers. And you guys are a charity side. You've done some phenomenal work. Uh, yes, uh, thank you. Yeah, we have. Um, we raise money for a local You'll children's hospice near Guildford, well, Shooting Star Chase. Fabulous charity, uh, looking after kids with life-ending illnesses. Uh, Pedro's um, my other But they look after everyone, the family, the brothers, the sisters. Um, I've done a tour in the facility. It's absolutely amazing what they've done over there. Uh, and yeah, great. We've raised about £50,000 since we've since we've started. Um, and it's, it's great to be playing for, not only playing the rugby, but doing something outside to help other people. Absolutely. I mean, for those who maybe aren't familiar with Shooting Star Chase, they really are a focal point of that Guildford community there. And so it's amazing to see the work that you guys are doing. But that's not just to say you guys are here for a good time. You've had some success in your time as well as the organisation. Uh, yeah, uh, we've uh, won a fair few tournaments. Uh, we do like coming second, that's unfortunately, <laughs> in quite a few finals. But, you know, someone's got to. Uh, I think the men's team have won Dorking and Farnham this year. Our ladies side have won a few as well. They I think they're reigning champions here as well. They won here last year. So yeah, it's um, it's fun just to be playing, I suppose, after COVID. And of course, we'll be seeing your players as they are now walking onto the pitch at the moment. Who are those that we should be looking out for? Um, well, I, I can't see all the numbers, but definitely the man closest to us, number one, Conrad Limpinski. Um, great step, great speed. Um, and I think the black scrum cap out there, Mr. Ollie Wil Millwood, vice captain of the side. <laughs> Again, another class yeah, player, great workhorse, great tackling, great Jacqueline. Nick, so hopefully him? we'll see some stuff at the breakdown from him. Well, Ross, you're going to stay with us and join our commentary team as hopefully it's a win for you guys next. Uh, well, yeah, fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. <laughs> we'll pass yeah, back over to Angus and Amy. Yeah, Thank you very much, Dave. No worries. We'll be joined by Ross very shortly. So up now, we've got Akuma Beavers against Nadi Rugby UK. Now, Nadi Rugby, it's worth us just talking a little bit about them before we start because they are all from one area of Fiji. They've got two teams in the tournament. Uh, Amy, we were talking earlier about uh, about some of that sort of Fijian style of play, of just putting your foot on the brakes and walking backwards. I think there's a fair chance we might see a bit of that. Yeah, I think it's going to be tasty. I'm excited to see this one. And by the way, look out. I think, well, in fact, Ross, you'll be able to tell me if I'm wrong. Have you got a lad called Ryan Apps in your team? We do not, as far as I'm aware. Unless he's turned up late and I didn't give him his shirt, but play on tackle mate. Uh, well, apologies, be... Ryan. But no, I, I don't think we have anyone called Ryan playing today. Oh, there we go. You see, I told you correct me if I'm wrong, and I was wrong. If he's good though and he wants to play next week, tell him to get in touch. Yeah, he's pretty good. He's pretty go good. on, Blue. Akuma then on the attack. They, oh, they've tried to get that one away from the breakdown, but it's just rolled out into touch. So we'll have a line out. Now we have the Akuma team sheet, but sadly, no Nadi Rugby UK team sheet, which does save you all from my butchering of Fijian pronunciations. So perhaps it's for the best, although a shame for the lads. 
that was a lovely bit of initial play from Akuma. You could hear from from even from the other side of the pitch the shoot the the, the call for the shooter, i.e. that edge defender coming up hard and then that bridge ball. So playing over the top to the edge player, really effective play when you get kind of more aggressive defences. Akuma trying to spread the ball wide, but Nadi Rugby pouncing on it, getting a loose ball. Great now tackle big there fin. by Seb Reese, captain there, making that cover tackle there. <coughs> Taking one for the two. Great effort from Reese. Nadi Rugby looked like they were away. And we see there just when they they almost spotted that big pass coming in and just the whole line came up in that umbrella just to close off the space. It's a very Fijian style of play, isn't it? The press up, play it, play it softly, but just push up in the middle, not take away those passes and then hassle when they get the opportunity. Very effective. Equally as effective as they run in for their first try of the game, Denadi Rugby UK. It's a strong start from them. Finding that field position and taking advantage and ringing the changes after the try as well, utilizing that full squad because it is hot out there now. It's hot. I'm sweating just standing here, so. <laughs> It's going to be hard work out there. But going, yeah, going back to the defences, you're going to see different teams kind of defending in different ways. But And it's, it's how teams adapt then in attack to these different defences. And it's quite hard because you can get a com kind of find your groove with one defence and then the next game it's something completely different. These guys, as Ross was saying, they, they're there, they push hard, they're in the picture the whole time. So actually, like, the, the, the hard work that you to play around them, you've got to work so hard off the ball. Um, if you want to play around the edge. So actually, is the option to play through the middle? Is it to, to cut some lines off and try and isolate these runners that come up and try and... They're trying to basically smoke you, essentially. Great Towering there. kickoff. Launches yeah, high into great the air. Take. There we go, there's the press. Ooh. Akuma, under pressure on their own try line, but staying calm. To be fair to them, good. taking it into contact. Nadi ah. Rugby UK get the penalty though. Putting real pressure on in both attack and defence. Akuma defence is up on, hard Seb. though. Almost pouncing to be able to go the length, but they do have possession. Get the offload away. Move the ball, move the ball, move the ball. Nobody home at the minute. Oh, nine's dropped in. Probing this way and that, through the middle, looking for the offload. Over the ball, though, go Nadi Rugby UK. Working hard on the deck, and they've got the turnover. Offside. The noise coming from the pitch has gone up a level, hasn't it? We're seeing huge communication. Definitely, it's so important in, well, in, in any form of the game, but Grumble. I think what's also critical, it's when you get tired, that's when you see if team, teams go a bit quieter, and it's how do you, when you feel like outside. you literally have nothing else to give, keep opening your mouth and just say something. And you'll probably find that, whereas at the start of the game, you say three words or something, by the end, it's just get one word out, just anything to kind of give your teammates information, because it's so much about being on the same page, both in attack and defence. And like, especially the way the Fijians play, it's all about that offload game, keeping the ball alive, which you can't do without speaking to each other. And it's often, uh, as we see here, Nadi Rugby, I thought they were through the gap. Still keeping it alive, get the offload away. Big, big carry from the tall 13. Fierce competition Same, on the yeah, floor. Lovely. Let's go, let's go. Let's. Akuma, go quick. Kicks charged down into touch. Seb Reese. See Ross on screen, run off to get the ball. Ross, <laughs> a, a man of many skills. You had it right in the four <laughs> shot, don't you worry. Yeah, <laughs> let's go, let's go, up the tempo, let's go, Seb. Thanks, Pedro. Turn on. Okay. Nadi Rugby 
not quite got all of their players in the right part of the field. Yeah. Referee just making James. sure of it. And poaching the line out. Spreading the ball. <coughs> Straight from right to left, and that is huge power and huge pace. Great hit by Conrad Lipsinski. Ah, oh, same. That is absolutely electric play from the Natty Rugby number five. The pace and the power, outstanding. It's the pace that he had when he when he got the ball. He instantly is accelerated. He's into that. It's so hard for a defender. The defender actually did really well, but the physicality just of the, these Fijians is phenomenal. I tell you, tell you no, what. No, still 20 seconds to go. You, you make a hit and you think you're making a great hit, and then the next thing you know, they're either still going or or they've offloaded the ball. It's so hard to defend these guys. They're so skillful, so powerful, so strong. And it's this ability, isn't it, that when the when the ball comes your way, you just you're just on. And they just seem to switch into gear so quickly. Completely. You look here, as soon as he's got the ball, accelerate, accelerate, power. Hey, come on. Well to stop him originally. But... Unreal pace and unreal power, and it's that low squat centre of gravity helping out so much. We saw a towering kickoff before, but this time Fiji go long. Not Fiji, sorry, Nadi Rugby UK from Fiji. Balls one dead, free kick. But as we've seen, and perhaps they weren't watching the earlier games, going long is a risky business when the field is this dry. Definitely, you can see what they're trying to do. It's, it's coming gentlemen. up to the end of the first half. You just want to get Akuma playing out of their own half. Big defensive pressure, but yeah, unfortunately, Scrum. this ball is flying. Scrum called. We've called the Scrum. That's interesting. What do you think of that one, Ross? Akuma going for the Scrum? I can only imagine what they want to try and do is tie in a few of their players to maybe stop that press, but big pack for the for Natty Rugby. See how they get on. You're seeing the scrums being used a lot more now for these for free kicks or, or penalties as well. And exactly as Ross said, it's it's about tying those players in, giving the speedsters, giving the backs a bit more room to work with. You've suddenly got four of the players from the opposition in the middle of the pitch or or in one area. And there you go, lost it. The gamble has not paid off. Nadi Rugby out to the try scorer on the right hand side, winds himself up for half a goose step, gets the offload away. They do really yeah, that's well. Yeah, it's got to be a turnover. Yeah, field. good, good, Seb. Let's go, let's go. Let's go. Come on. Akuma eventually get that penalty taken and spread the ball. Move it back, move it back. Across the width of the field. Knock on advantage blue. Turned over. Now you rugby. Real patience as they look for the right option here. Not afraid to go backwards, as Amy was talking about earlier. Taking their time. It's like a, it's like a wind up clock. Stepped out into touch that time, but every time he gets the ball, it's like his legs are thinking about what he's going to do next. It's, it's that change, like we said said before, it's that change of pace, isn't it? Sometimes, if you if you think about how if you are defending, if somebody stops, you're going to stop. So it's about how you manipulate the, those those defenders. It's not always about going 100 miles an hour instantly. It's about manipulation and that change of speed, change of angle, change of tempo that really gets defenders on a bit um, stuck and kind of chasing shadows a little bit. That's, that's where I struggle. My, my only pace is slow. All I can do is go from stationary to slow. <laughs> that, that's good because I've only got reverse gear now. So. <laughs> Half time then, 12 0 Natty Rugby. Ross, what do you think your lads have got to do to, to just get their way into this game? Oh, it's, it's, it's a simple game sometimes. I've just got to look after the ball. You know, it's a tough task at best of time, very physical. And as we say, they like to press. But if we can move the ball around, look after it. Like there's scores out there. I think we've got got the ability, we've got the speed. Just got to find it. Um, but as we've seen, when they've got the ball, very, very dangerous. So and that's going to come down to it. We keep the possession, get a quick score. We'll be right back in it. Bit of patience required once in possession. Absolutely. Keep away from them. <laughs> Easier said than done. Indeed. But we'll have we'll just have a little chat about some of the the uh, the Nadi rugby players. I mean that the number five, the try scorer, or second try scorer, just looks electric every time the ball goes near him. 
Yeah, definitely. And and it's now the case he's done that a few times, and it's now that Akuma not overthinking it, just defensively doing the same as they always like we said about closing the space down, not giving him an opportunity to get into that acceleration period, like. Because he does like to manipulate, it's it's kind of we obviously when you're coaching kids, you're talking about looking not at what he's doing with the ball, not about his head. We're looking at the hips, we're looking at the knees, the feet, because that will give you like a kind of a little bit more of a head start, and then you can try and work out where he's going. But I think it's it's that bravery. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that bravery to just keep going up and closing down his space, and then obviously yeah, you just got to win that like physicality. It's, it's not over committing as well, and I think I've seen the last couple of times as he's been on this side, uh, the wingers waiting for his centre to get over and help him. Out. Just yeah. hovering off that little bit, yeah. You know, not not biting in too much because he's obviously a, a big, quick chap. So having a second player there just to help you out if needed, um, <coughs> that's just a bit clever play. So it's nice to see them thinking about it, how to deal with it. We always think we think it's easy to look at in defence. You look at the person who maybe f fell off a tackle or something, but it's so much more than that. Sevens defence is so much of a unit game, um, and like you said, you need that confidence from the inside players so that you can push, you can be a bit more aggressive. If you don't have that, it's a very isolating place to be. So we're underway again, a huge towering kickoff. Both sides almost go on, gathered, go on, but it ends up go, in Seb, Go, hands. Seb, go, Seb, go! Back yourself! Yes, Seb! Yes, That's Cap Captain Seb Reese there. Anyone who's interested, recently released the uh, running up the hill version on YouTube, his own remix version of it. It's absolutely incredible. That's Seb Reese on YouTube running up that hill. Check it out. Is it now? Is it incredible? It's really good, actually. I, I, I was actually quite surprised. I mean, I'm quite old, so technology is a bit of a weird thing. Um, but he's obviously doing this DJ and stuff up, up from the north. He's down from Newcastle today, so he's travelled a long way. Saw it online this week. And actually, it's, it's quite good. Fair play. Yeah. Things I never thought there I'd hear go. today. Seb Reese, YouTube running up that hill. <laughs> yeah, oh. YouTube now. Seb Reese running very much downhill to score that try, though. Absolutely flying along. Well, here we go. That's the early score we asked for. Now we just need to get the ball back, see if we can put them under some pressure. Let's go, boys! How quick the game of sevens can change. Exactly. So good. And, and it, we talk about momentum kind of changing opportunities at moments. Different times to score are really pivotal. Great kick off. Seb Reese again. Oh, unlucky. Yeah, Wonder Man, Superman, nope. should I say, okay, Seb. No, no. Didn't go 10. That's it. Wonder Man, Which Superman, one of them. One of them, doing it for Akuma. But now they have Good to decision. quickly Good transition. That classic one, isn't it? It's, you just scored, then it's getting that mindset for your next job and not, it's in all sports, in football and everything. How often do you quickly get then scored against because you're not thinking about your next job, your next thing to do? There's the mistake. Ooh. Just a knock on. Much better start for the Beavers, I think, this half. Hassling a little bit more in defence, seems to be managing them a little bit better. Hopefully, if I can get this scrum right, another chance for an attacking platform. Well, and you've got to think, if you get that second try, it puts, a, it puts pressure on as well. It's not just about scoring the points, but about putting putting the pressure on and giving the opportunity the opposition some problems and a few doubts start to creep in. Great. I mean, one score game in the minute, so. Scrum Akuma then, centre field options both ways. Much better, much better. They choose to go right, Ooh, an and now they choose version. to go aerially. Lucky and bounce. if the ball sits well, there's an opportunity. And I think that ball had stayed in field personally, but. The touch judge disagrees, but we've just seen a brilliant bit of athleticism. I agree with you. He started inside the field, didn't touch the ball, came back in. Actually, quite lucky in the end because he went to a Natty player. So, uh, thank you, touch judge. Yeah, we'll, we'll take that one. Natty line out then. Hey, hey, stop. I know we're we're priding ourselves here at Lit Sevens for doesn't matter what gender, what ability. We're put all games on on pitch one, and I know Akuma have got a decent women's side as well. A lot of the England development girls have come through Akuma Beaver Women's. Will they are they supporting you today, the women's team? Will they? Women's team are here. They're they're playing. <laughs> I know um, they're playing. Are they? Are they playing now? Are they? Over there I was going to say. I, I've seen in previous tournaments that so it's so good. A proper family here supporting each other. 
boys watching the girls' games, girls watching the boys' games of Akuma? Yeah, our director of rugby, Alex Place, has done a fabulous job since its inception. Um, just wanted to build something that people wanted to come and play for. You know, try to take it seriously, but have a good time along the way. I think, sorry. Go on. What's going on? Let's see. Oh, they turned it over. Uh, yeah. Just tried to build something that people want to come play for. As I say, we've got players coming down from Newcastle to play, and that happens regularly. Uh, a lot of the tournaments we play are in the south. It just shows ball. a great commitment. Uh, we went to them this year, up to Newcastle, and I can tell you it's a hell of a trip up there. Um, so yeah, it's fabulous. So Nutty Rugby UK down to six. Yellow card for that infringement offside. right on their own try line. They were offside, so a chance here for Akuma to level things up. They've got the extra man. Secure possession at that breakdown as well. Get into space, Blue! Into space, Blue! Searching through yeah, the middle, on, using the handoff as a springboard yes! and getting themselves across the try line. Our Akuma, that levels the game at 12 points each. Two minutes left to go and a conversion to come. Akuma could take the lead here. Young Liam Driscoll showing great strength there for a man of small stature. Often the most surprisingly strong, I find. I find if you if you're smaller, you've had to always have to fight for every meter. So actually, you're often probably some of the best at just nuzzling your way through a few gaps that you're not meant to. Uh, about a minute and a half. <laughs> yes, I have been told before sizes and everything. So uh, that's proven there by Liam. I am assured they are. Definitely there. We see there the replay of the try gets himself over. Just about has enough size to be able to reach out an arm and get the ball over the line. Uh, and with the conversion, Akuma have turned a 12 0 half time deficit into a 14 12 lead. Who, who could have seen it coming at half time? Just over a minute left to play. <laughs> go, 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 Simi, go, Simi, go! Yes! Score it, score it. It's fine. Severis, his second try of the game. Skipper Severis. El Capitano. Yes, yes. Running up that hill. YouTube, Severis. Uh, we've, just heard, we've just heard from the ref there. And Amy, I'm going to ask you this one. Yeah, I'll tell there is got. time to play after the kick. If you're Akuma, what do you do in that scenario? It's a one, try, it's a one score game. 19, 12, so you need the ball back. What do you do? Your maths is failing you again. <laughs> so that right there takes the pressure off. So that does mean that even if Nelly Rugby score, that the Akuma are going to get the win. But I think for the sake of pride, you don't you don't want to be um, conceding a try here. So they're still going to be looking to. No, it'd be nice to see, especially with the game, hopefully one that they stick to the process. You know, great chance another practice, another kickoff. Vital restarts in sevens. So. so, so this is a good question then. So that's a good one. So you still think you'd go short to compete and practice that skill ready I, for later I, absolutely. on? Absolutely. I mean, okay, that's, nice. that, although not short, is completely contestable. Another option not is that some teams do gobs for. Um, um, is to go long and, and try and close people down, close the game off. But they didn't need to. They got the victory, and it shows that 12 0 down at half time, anything does happen in sevens. You can't lose heart, you can't lose fight. Excellent fight back and some really good rugby in that second half. Yeah. Absolutely. It all finishes up. Akuma come from 12 0 down to beat Nadi Rugby UK 19 points to 12. What a start here on pitch one from Akuma Rugby. Ross, you must be happy with that. Uh, absolutely delighted. I think Natty won their first game, so um, it's obviously good now for us to be two from two, going in to play Ratting in the final pool stage. Um, but yeah, very pleased, very good side, very physical. So it's nice to see a bit of heart from the boys. Now hopefully get to find some shade, get some water on board. Uh, we all know that a wet beaver is a happy beaver. So um, hopefully find a bit of a soaking somewhere. Thank you very much, Ross. You. We'll catch up with you later, I hope. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully see you for the, for the knockouts. Cheers, guys. Yeah. Cheers, Ross. Amy, cracking game that. What a comeback it was. So good. And that's, I mean, we spoke about it all day, but I, I can't get bored of it. That's what I love about Sevens is that you can never write anybody off. Um, I and mean, you've seen bigger comebacks from that in the past, but it was so good in terms of like that mental switch on to just make sure that they, they executed to get the win. 
Absolutely. And just before this next game, we're going to hand over to Dave. He's going to be chatting to one of the Rambling Jesters. They're up next. Rambling Jesters. And you're one of those sides that everyone knows the name Rambling Jesters, don't I, they? Every, I think everyone can recognise the... The colourful kit. Yeah. <laughs> and you had some lots of success in the past, you know, yeah, the Super just, Series uh, win and stuff like yeah, that. It's, it's been a long, like, mm. 10 years, but we've got a few trophies under our belts, different countries, America, France, Scandinavia. There's England. a legacy there. Absolutely, yeah. And, and so, uh, so still, still smiling, still doing our thing. And that's the important thing, there's highs, there's lows, but yeah. hopefully there's a few highs today here at Lit 7. Absolutely, like this is a really enjoyable tournament. We've got quite a few uh, young, young bucks, first time playing for us. So there's some pretty top teams here. We just played China. So it um, doesn't get bigger than that. You well, know? absolutely. And of course, we'll hear from China later today. But who are some of those players that we should be watching out for from the Jesters? Who um, got on the pitch so tonight? we've got Seb Roach, Zimbabwe International. We have um, um, Alex Humphreys, played for Bath. Um, and a few youngsters I definitely would look at. Mike Austin, want to look out for. And Will Bowley, you know, up-and-coming player, so there's quite a few, it's a nice mix. This is it, you haven't just turned up, this is a proper professional outfit. Yeah, yeah definitely, but that ultimately, you know, we're here to um, develop rugby and enjoy ourselves and, you know, um, you know, represent the clothing, play with the smile <laughs> on your face, you know. Plug in the clothing, you might have a clothing deal at this rate, you never know. <laughs> no. Well, you know what, we'll let you join our commentary team and guide us through the match, give us that inside knowledge of some of the players on the Absolutely. pitch, all right? Okay, cool. And we'll pass things back over to Angus and Amy. And you pass us over as Tim Andrew gets across the line for the opening try of the game. Rambling Jesters, what a start. Tom, you may have missed it. You had your back turn to it there, but a, a, an opening score for Rambling Jesters. What, nice. a, what a start. Nice. Born to score early, I think, in these games. Um, last game, play China, and I think it was... Uh, we just lost in the end, but it was a lot of hard work coming from two tries down. So, nice that we just got a try. And the conversion as well. For a 7-0 start for Rambling Jesters, we see the replay here. It was just good pace around the outside. Gas to burn. Plenty of gas to burn. It's knowing that where that touchline is as well, though, he's he's playing with fire a little bit, but just that awareness to stay in the field is so good. Yeah, just where he's not as well, he's not wearing the wide fit shoe. Uh, commentator's guy, so I was about to say, <laughs> just need a good kickoff now. Well, what you need and what you get, they're not always the same thing, are they? Um, now we can see our defence, see how, see, see how we shape up. Nice chat, good tackle. On the ball. By the way, just to uh, update you on the, the other side, it's Ramblin' Jesters up against Hearn Airport Windsox. That's a mouthful. It is a mouthful. I think I'm going to just start referring to them as the wind socks when nice the time comes. Nice counter up there. Just managed to keep the ball alive. Is this your tactic? Are you are you going? Are you looking for those turnovers? Absolutely. I think um, against like a scratch team, there's always opportunity. Billy <laughs> Roberts taking that one in, but it's turned over by Ramblin' Jesters. Mike See what Austin. We can do now. On to the big boy. By the way, Ramblin' Jesters, I heard you mention him on the uh, in your chat beforehand, but you've got a player, Will Bowley, who I think is going to be an extraordinary player in the next few years. Yeah, he's As from um, Seaford, Seaford College. Lots of pace to burn. Played with us 17, so got um, 18. A top, top player and a top, top start to this game for Ramblin' Jesters, their second try of the game. Can I just um, plug, um, you know, I don't know the score yet, I've recorded it, England, Australia, but one Jester playing out there, Ellis Genge. Who, who oh, Majester. Who, yep, who I have to say was awesome at sevens. He just basically wanted to hurt people, and uh, he was like a rhino, just get out of his way. Still is. I remember seeing Ellis Genge as a, as a 16, 17 year old. And in those days, uh, I think he was at Hartbury College and they, yeah. were, they were playing him as a number eight. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, why not? I mean, Eddie Jones was using him as a fullback against France and Six Nations, wasn't he? But he was uh, he was a frightening player at that time. And I remember yeah, when a, they moved him to Loosehead, I thought, that's an interesting yeah, call. You think, I think a lot of the top props, you know, especially in New Zealand, like um, hybrids, 
anchors on great, got that extra pace to burn. Definitely seeing a transition, but I, also going back to that, I think you, you automatically think of sevens as just speed and, and kind of footwork and everything, but that physicality side of it is so important. You need that blend and actually to have those players like an Ellis getting, I mean. It's, it's, it's definitely a point of difference because, um, you know, you look at the World Series, every team, you know, even South Africa, they have some quick, fast guys, but they also have, you know, Zane Davids, someone to just crash it up, someone who's just going to keep the ball and not get turned over. Exactly, and also if you've got a player that you know is going to take a couple to take you down, two defenders out of the game, and then you get a couple tight around the breakdown, that, that changes just the picture, and then it gives you that space for your speedsters to, to do the work. It's so important. It's a little turnover now. Jester's 12 0 up. On. Looking for a third. It's out to the opening try scorer. Doing really well to keep the ball alive. Uh, Seb Roach, Zimbabwe International. And Zimbabwe International is, is no small matter. Zimbabwe have been at two Rugby World Cups. Yeah, he was just a bit unlucky. He just he's just come back from injury, so he kind of missed current selection for them. But um, super physical, just as we were talking about, super physical specimen, Seb Roach. Also, that physical side when it comes to to defence, I think, like you said, you obviously you've gone down the road of of kind of contesting for those breakdowns, which I really like. It's actually like, can you? As soon as, as soon as that person has made a tackle, can you be the next person there? Can you win that race to get the ball back? You see kind of normally two approaches to defence. You're either doing that or you're leaving the breakdown to completely to keep players on feet and I, give that kind of... I think a lot of time, like, oof, that kick, I don't know what that was doing. Um, I think a lot of times that's when you get stuck when you do in between, where you kind of half go for it, yeah. half spread out. They say only, only kind of contest if you're 100% on. You can see there, just pays off. Just a straight in there, getting that turnover and then that transition, which we know, as we've seen all today, that transition of a defence to attack is just proving um, so hard to defend. Harrison Friday, son of USA Sevens coach, Mike Friday. I've also coached him. Have you? I think, I think so. <laughs> Yet more, yet more credence to that post rugby career. <laughs> so it's not, it's not Mike Friday's coaching that's made him good. It's obviously my ten minute rotation in one camp that I. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, your dad's a, your dad might be a legend of the coaching world, but he knows nothing. Absolutely. Ramblin Jesters then at half time have the lead, and it's a big one. They have been super impressive. Twenty four points to nil against the Hearn Airport Windsox. Hopefully now um, see a few changes. Time. Hopefully. Yeah, and it's been a it's been a it's been a big half. Jester's going well. Impressed, Amy. Definitely, they're they're ruthless, and I think that's going to be important going into the second half. I know we speak about games not being being finished until they're finished, which is so true. You never know, like, they, there could still be a fight back here, but it's how do the Rambling Justice keep their foot on the gas? How do they stay ruthless when they are the dominating team? Can they keep executing um, and keep this standard playing? And, and like you said, Tom, bringing those, those players potentially that wouldn't have as much game time normally, giving them a run around, giving them confidence because um, you need them to be to be raring if, if they have to get the call up for the next game. Definitely, I, th I think also just, Hopefully there'll be no complacency because um, it just takes sevens, takes one or two tries and they're back in the game and you give them hope and hope takes you a long way. Concentration required as well with the smell of that barbecue that's just kicked off over at the, uh, at the top end of the field. Concentration is going to be important for us all. That's all I can think about right now. Ramblin' Jesses then, 24 points to the good against the Hearn Airport Windsocks. Or the wind socks, as I've we said, I was going to start off. calling them. I do like their kit, I must say. Like in the ombre orange to white. Backwards, play on! Well, I'm glad someone likes it. That's good. <laughs> Jesters, leaving off where they started, or starting where they left off, I suppose. Got more skills that? than Michael Jackson. Look at him. <laughs> Oof. Oof. Held up. 
Ball held up. Get, get the TMO out. Got the Weepay here. Here we go. Trump. Good last ditch defense there. I think from the kickoff again, you can see that although there wasn't like a clean take from the kickoff, it's the players around the ball. The Jesters got all around the ball so that then that loose ball, they could pounce straight on and then they're into attack straight away. Guys, let's make sure we bind onto the hooker, please. Onto the hooker, yeah? Scrum five then. Whole the line, field the to play with for Rambling Crunch. Jesters. Bind. Got to get the first part done. Set. And then every option yeah, they could need. Go, tap and go, tap and go. They get the penalty and they go quick. Look to put a bit of width. No, they step back inside, darting off the right and then off the left and across the try line. They go. Aidan Barry getting yes. himself across the line. You need to, Jester's you need to, you need to on straight. fire here. We went, we went up as well, straight and flat. Is this your opening game or have you already no, had one? We just, we, we lost to China. Tough, tough game. 22 Yeah, that China side is pretty good. From previous tournaments I've seen them in, that China side is pretty good. Looking forward uh, to seeing them at some point. I mean, point. they've been, I don't know if you know, they've been around for the last, I think, six weeks playing every tournament, every week another tournament. And they're just getting better and better. Could you see um, Dan Norton and Ollie Phillips getting their Absolutely. mark on the game? Tom, Can Tom you see Biggs. little bits coming, coming out? In I, I was disappointed. I was hoping they were going to get the boots on. <laughs> Show everyone how to play it, but um, I think Norts would probably be itching to get them on, really. Another good, oh, great kickoff. Yeah, although he's retired, he definitely wants to get those boots on as often two as possible. Two on, two on one. Nice little switch there. He's got the strength and pace to get over. Yeah, great try. I mean, they're not even ready to get. Again, we, we've. You said that that possession is so key and and you guys have just had the ball the whole time but also it's what you're doing you're so clinical so efficient and I, it does seem a well-oiled unit right now i'd say i think i'll be honest i think that first game woke a lot of players up because it was you didn't watch the game but there was lots of little errors it was a really close game and we just we didn't keep the ball enough and uh, against better teams it's a possession game they, they have enough skills and space and, and pace to hurt you so it's nice that we're keeping possession. How about that conversion from Will Bowley as well? From the touchline, lands it on top of the crossbar. Bounce goes his way. You've got to love that. Let's see if we can do a positive with a positive. I've seen a lot of Bowley and his kickoff routine is pretty handy. Wow, here we go. Backwards, he's got an advantage. That's over now. Can the Windsox get themselves on the score sheet? 38 0 down, but they've got four minutes to play with and a bit of decent possession in their hands. First time for a long time that they've had the ball. First time we've seen them out wide. Hit. And a high tackle from the Jesters gives them a penalty from which to try and launch something. Jesters just, just waiting like a pack of wolves. Some pace here by the Windsox charging down that left hand side, but great gas from the Jesters to manage to get back to make the tackle. Now the Windsox attack around that break. Jesters on the pressure and made a turnover. I think that was. Jesters. Two on one, two on one. Really good when he released that ball or when he, he could nice. see the last defender was, wasn't was up with the line. So it was about that, that second attacker in from the edge, just engaging that player so that yeah. we, otherwise the defense have an opportunity to recover. By engaging that player, that last defender, just means that they're getting that easy option, that two and one. And then it's just about finishing off, keeping those legs going, although he is asking for a sub now, so. That's where it comes down to, like, I think, like, that, that looked really simple, but actually Guys, engaging that player. Floor players were just going, oh, just going to give the ball, give it to the fast person. But that extra second allowed it to have that two and one. And without it, judging by the look on his face once he got the ball, he yeah. wasn't scoring. He, he, he was, was running through mate. treacle at one yeah. point there. He's, he's come off now. He's, he's, We've had that a few times today. A try scorer literally giving the little little sign, being like, "Sub me off now. I'm, I'm done. I need a rest." Round a minute. 
Well, this is one of the most dominant performances we've seen here on pitch one. The Jesters are absolutely clued in here. Will Bowley again, the kick-off. That's, that's a screamer. Nice. Oh. Works well, perfectly, but it's great work Play in on. response to that. Jesters need to fan out. Sam Walker it was that got himself in position to claim the tap back for the Windsox. One, they run pretty hard, this Windsock team. Yeah. I need a clear release, please, clear release. Another <coughs> penalty. Windsocks searching. Can they finish with a try? Well, perhaps not. It's going to be a penalty to the Jesters. What happened? And we're going to have a bit of a break. I think it's a bit of an injury. Do you have a physio, Windsocks? Had a bit of a yelp. Windsocks. Gents. You can see from the players around. Players injured. Have you got a physio? If, if there's no contest around the breakdown, it's probably because someone's had a yelp and they're, they're keeping clear. Always frustrating when you're the, the injured player and you end up giving away a penalty for not rolling or something, you're going, well, it's because it's I can't. It was, yeah. on the, it was on this pitch, actually, um, just before yeah, Christmas, that I, um, I yelped as my ankle ligament ruptured and then knocked it on. Oh, no. And looking back, I was just too focused on me knocking the ball on afterwards. I was more annoyed at that than actually <laughs> having to hobble off. That's a, that's a tough injury. Okay, so is it going to be ball to scrum, ball to, ball to them? They're in possession, so if I'm right in saying so, it should be. Right, gents, that'll be last play now, it'll be their scrum. Slightly amusing moment there as his teammate looked to take him the long way off Mark and he's turned him around and gone, it's, it's five yards if we turn it around and go this way. He's just eager. Scrum down wind socks. Yep, not a problem. How was the recovery process on the ankle? It's a tough one. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, injuries are always frustrating, but it's kind of eight weeks, ten weeks in a boot, and then luckily I'm looked after Crouch. by good people, so managed to, to get back in about three, three, three and a half, four months. Set. Straight back out. Straight back out the tunnel. Never an easy one. Ankle ligaments. How much time's left? Their time for another try. This Mark is, is here. last play of the game. Last play. Question is, Crouch. can the Jesters get an eight, or Five. can the Windsocks get their first try Set. of the game for their endeavour? You've got to think they deserve Answer. something. Done the first part. They have the ball. Let's see what they can do. Some Jouet. There you go. There's the goose step by the big man. Let's go. Offload out the back as well, and now out to the gas. On the left-hand side. Some pace, he's stepping in. Go on. Not that I'm biased, but... Hugo Lee on. Watts is the man. He's got himself <laughs> over counter, the line. Counter. But the referee's going to say it's held up. Oh, brutal. The Jester's defending <laughs> to the last. Questionable decision, but... Um... Unlucky, unlucky. A fight to the end. It was actually a really, really good passage of play. You can see that early... Um, give the ball centre early, let them have a go, and then release the speedsters. But convincing win for the Jesters. On to the next one. Absolutely. And you, I tell you what, take nothing away from the Jesters there. Seven tries to the good and still working, straining every sinew to get five, six bodies back there and hold the ball up over the try line. And that is a fantastic win for the Rambling Jesters. 43-0, they beat her now for Windsox. They are on form. Tom, thank you very much for joining us. Happy with that one? Yeah, it's, it's Aaron. Get that, get that right, Aaron. Oh, sorry. I... <laughs> no, it was lovely, guys. Um, hopefully, Jesters can continue that and see you again, hopefully, in the quarter semi-final. We will catch you later. Enjoy the rest of the awesome. day. Thanks, enjoy. guys. Take it easy. Cheers. Thank you. And Amy, what a performance that was from Rambling Jesters. Yeah, absolutely brutal, eh? We said about being ruthless in that second half and they did not take the foot off the gas. They kept going. And I think it shows in that case it just, um, that pace, if you've got pace over the board and a team doesn't, it is really hard to play against. I think that was probably the one thing they just couldn't finish. The Windsocks just couldn't finish um, some really good passages to play off because the Rambling Jesters, Jesters just had all the pace to burn there. They certainly did. And I think we're going to be cutting across to our man Dave, who's there with with Aaron and he's been joined by Will Bowley as well. So Dave, we hand over to you for a bit of post-match chat. 
Well, thank you very much, Angus and Amy. I'm here with our man of the match, Will. What a performance that was. Thank you very much, yeah. It was good to get out there. I mean, Aaron was here besides cheerleading you on. He was going crazy for all the action that was going on. No, it was brilliant. Uh, yeah, great to see some new boys out there as well. So it's brilliant, yeah. Love it. I mean, we were saying, Aaron, it's one of the most dominating performances we've seen so far. You must be so happy with the side. Yeah, definitely. Like I said, um, first, first loss to China. So we had to pick ourselves back up and play some good rugby and work really hard. I think everyone came off the bench and like worked super hard. And it was nice getting the just rewards at the end. So it's a good omen. You obviously didn't quite do enough against China, but I mean, that's an international side. That doesn't count. That's a, that's a free hit. This game, absolutely dominating performance. That's some good form to take to the next game here at Lit Sevens. Yeah, it was exactly, yeah, exactly what we say. Um, great to bounce back from that first narrow defeat. But yeah, I'm knackered, but... Pretty, I want to know where he got that kicking from. He's like quiet in training, and then he's gone. You know what? I'm going to take the kicks. So, oh wow, I've had him enough. Yeah, yeah. They give away all the secrets. Got to turn oh, up on the day. Yeah, got surprised. Him, yeah. <laughs> well, Aaron, Will, thank you so much for joining us, and good luck for the rest of the tournament. Cheers, thanks. No worries, and we'll pass things back over once more to Angus at our commentary table. Thank you very much, Dave. Just getting ourselves. Ready for the next one. We're back to the women's social queen bees and wasps. We've had both of them on the live stream already today. Wasps, of course, the home side here today. Queen bees have made the trip over from Northern Ireland. Line out queen bees. So over in the women's social, Group B, other two teams in this group, Hong Kong Football Club and Wasps. On my own for this one currently is uh, Amy Wilson Hardy's been uh, whisked away for more media duties. This is what happens when you're a star, you see. Queen Bees, absolutely buzzing and away for a first try of the game. Over they go, a bit of a late shove there in frustration, but Queen Bees have the opening try of the game. 5-0 they lead. <laughs> See the replay there, storming through. Okay, the Queen Bees. What's now? In possession. Very nearly a delightful bit of skill. Was charging through. Leveling things up with a try of their own. Right, okay, so I've got to shout at you. Sorry. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Conversion is over. Great stuff for Wasps. Two point game, they scored conversion, you didn't. Moss lead, seven points to five. The home side enjoying themselves here on pitch one. Remember, they won earlier on against Oxford University back in that 11 o'clock kickoff. And we are racing through the day. About halfway through the group stages now. The group stages are running through till about three o'clock. 
before we switch into the knockouts after that. But we're going to have yet more treats for you on commentary. Well, not that I've been a treat, but you know, Amy, Amy's been a treat. Good. You'll play be joined on, by on, the on, good. Well done, wonderful Christmas. Dave Rogers Hi. and the England legend the that is Rachel Burford. Hi, hey. Hi, They'll be on the mics from three o'clock. Plenty of rugby before that, though, and Wasps are enjoying their rugby here on pitch Let's one. This side this time. You can come this side because of the angle. We've got someone there. Their second try Thank of the you. game. Yep, thanks, Harry. Well finished. Keep those tackles down, please. Nothing over the shoulder near the neck. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry, I thought you were after me. 12-5. And as you hear Two the referee say, 12-5 is the lead for, play this half. for Wasps. Right. So far, so good. Off to a fantastic start <laughs> here. Behind the kicker, please. And alongside me again is Amy Wilson-Hardy. I'm back. Media duties completed. Stick in the box. Play on. She wasn't relevant. That's backwards. Well, over here, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a cracker. Queen Bees took the lead, 5-0 up, yeah, but no. Wasps have come absolutely out, charging out. back to lead 12-5. Home crowd spurring them on. Certainly right. Still yet to see uh, the famous five-second Guinness from the Queen Bees, though. I was hoping it was going to be part of the try celebration. That's what I was thinking. Is there, there's social sec apparently. I don't know if she, she's playing or she's just socialing on the side. Maybe maybe it is happening every every try. We just can't see it from here. The best sort of so social sec is the sort of social sec that goes, I don't need to play. That's not what I'm here for. 100%. Here for the social. Here for the social. Release on the floor. Thank you. Fair steal. Wasps. Turn not it held. over. Play on. Not held. Now it's a tackle. Making great ground play on. No, and getting on. good ball off the back of it. They're keeping this straight through the middle. They go. Can they get an offload away? If they can, the try is on. They get the offload away, and that is the try. Charlotte Burns with the finish. Such good work. I couldn't. I couldn't see quite who it was, but that initial carry. She didn't give up the fight. She kept her legs going, which meant it gave the time for the support player to get there. Let's see how long she takes. If she had just given up then, this breakdown and then potential turnover. But no, stay in the fight, keep driving those legs. Um, then try and do post. We see so often the that, that if you can up. get those offloads away, particularly once you've made a sort of half a line break, it just makes all the difference, doesn't it? And, and so often that's where we see tries come from. Okay. But if we're taking a breakdown, it's giving the defence an opportunity Fine. to reset. They're getting numbers on feet, getting organised. Whereas to recover off an offload and defensively is just such a challenging thing to do. And you're quite often you're well, you are normally on the back foot as well. So you're you're having to retreat. You're having to scan, look up where the players are, and it's it's a really hard place to be defensively. Yeah, I've been doing probably the last six weeks. We've had a we've had a sevens tournament sort of al almost every week. So we've been watching a lot of it, and particularly at the more social level, but really at any level, but particularly at the social level, we've sort of developed a rule of thumb that is, if there are two offloads, there's going to be a try, because just everyone's on the back foot at that point chasing shadows. To be honest, it can probably translate all, all across the board. And I think if you look at some of the top teams performing performing right now, the Australia women's team, previously they were they would take a lot more breakdowns, they're a lot more structured, but actually you see them now looking for that offload game because defences are just also so good when they're set. And because, because a lot of teams are leaving the breakdown, keeping those numbers up, you look up an attack and you're like, you have to create something. Whereas if you are keeping it alive, you you have the ascendancy and you also have that control. You are dominating and, and controlling that, that play. You're not giving the, an opportunity for the defence to dominate. Absolutely right. So half time, Wasps leading 17 points to five against Queen Bees. Your girls doing all right. 
my girls. <laughs> Waspies for the win. And is there, I mean, the, I suppose it'd be hard for there to be in the sort of modern age, but is there much of a relationship between the sort of pro, pro sides and the, and, the amateur, and the amateur club, or is it, is it relatively separate, but there's kind of opportunities as you go through the age grades? I mean, I think I'd like to think that there is a is a huge opportunity, and I think we've we've kind of seesawed a little bit over the few years between having a big connection and having kind of like a first and a second team, to now being a bit more separate. I mean, they train they train at the same same place, obviously train here on the same evenings. I think for me, going in and out with sevens, it's a bit harder because I don't I don't see them as often. But I think some of the the club players who are here at the club a lot more. Um, would definitely have opportunity and I, in fact I know I know some of the girls in the in the 15 squad who I've, I've played with um, back in the day when they when they were playing for the first team um, before it's very cool it's great to retain those links we see it across the country where it's possible to do it's fantastic it just makes more people feel connected with with what's going on on the on the big pitch on a Saturday it's also a huge opportunity for young players to come through so it, it's not just about the players who want to play just just to have fun, but also the youngsters who aren't quite ready for the Premiership, but they get game time and they're they're um, they're ready to go when they get their call up. But look at that transition! Our, our superstar of wasps getting the try again. Akpabome once again, as you say, the superstar. She was absolutely fantastic in that game against Oxford Uni, wasn't she? She's been a little quieter in this one because her teammates have been doing some seriously fine work, but she was never going to be kept quiet for too long. <laughs> Definitely, and I think, I mean, it's easy It's easy to say, like the person who's kind of scoring the tries and you get a bit carried away, but like you said, you're only as good as the rest of your teammates. And I think everyone grafting just gives, gives Brandy the platform there to to get the try. And as if to illustrate the point that she does everything, she's going to take the kick off. Absolutely. I honestly, she must be absolutely blowing right now. But now it's about just kind of thinking, just next job, how can I just execute this skill and then keep going? you got to take these tactical little breaks when you can. And does execute, finds a bit of, a bit of space with that kick off. Queen Bees get the ball back. But then big aggressive defense forces the fumble. And Wasps had the ball turned over, back into the hands of the try scorer from earlier. And are they going to get across the line again? Yes, <laughs> they are. Over in the left-hand side. I've been extremely impressed with Jasmine, actually. The first game that we, we had on this pitch, her physicality shone through. Again, be part of that, the, the scrum turnover that we saw, but just showing then as well, just taking on players keeping that leg drive such a physical play and just showing that balance between between the physicality and the speed like you need a bit of everything and it's about everyone playing to their super strengths the super strengths i like that not just your strengths but your super strengths. super strengths conversion doesn't quite go but was have got to a point in this game where they have built themselves a very healthy lead indeed as we see a replay of that try as jasmine Fends off one, fends off the other, and then has the strength to just drop a shoulder on the third and get herself across the line. <coughs> All of that whilst keeping the field, the feet in the field of play. Outstanding. Clever kickoff as well, a low scudder, very difficult to pick up. Look at that counter ruck. <laughs> And away they go, Jasmine away for her second, but that was all about the kick and then the counter for Apabome. I mean, Jasmine and Brandy together, Cliff and Eck, they're, they're doing it all. It's but a I combo, think, isn't it? <laughs> such a lethal combo. But you see there again, another technique, I don't, it's not as often often used in sevens, but actually I think it is, it's such a good, good one to look for that counter ruck as opposed to the steal because you can't catch people off guard. If people have um, poor positioning over the breakdown, and and quite often they do, or or you just wait a second, they think they're safe, they think they've secured the ball, and then you can give that killer blow and, and keep driving those legs through. It's such an effective way to get a turnover. Yeah, I mean, we saw, we saw it there. It was a brutal bit of counter-rucking. 
I suppose it's all back to what you were talking about earlier about just decision making when you get to that breakdown area and just seeing what your options are. Definitely, because you, you see on the other end of the spectrum is, is people kind of going into a breakdown, l sniffing for an opportunity when there's not one there, where actually they'll be a lot more effective if they just kind of worked a little bit wider, push players out so you could hold a bit more width in defence. But I feel like generally today there's been really good decision making across all four competitions on when to when to contest for the ball. But I think you're seeing it a lot more as well because people realise that you need to defend to attack. You need to have that want and that desire to get the ball back. And if you don't, if you don't contest and push that breakdown, it's going to be really challenging to. Oh, there's a massive cricket on my <laughs> on my arm. Um, it's going to be really challenging to um, to get that ball. Sorry, a bit of a distraction there. That was huge. <laughs> All sorts of wildlife here at Twyford Avenue. <laughs> Got the bees, the wasps, and the crickets. Wasps could be away for another. Footballing skills coming out with the ball sit up. Oh, that's about as good a bounce as could have been asked for. And Wasps have another try. Duran, Olivia Duran gets the score. Tell you what, she made that look easy, but it really wasn't actually to, to be running at pace, putting the hustle on and actually not just, how many times do you see players absolutely hoofing those and they go off the dead ball line? We've already said it's a short dead ball line, so to control it just enough to to get that and yeah maybe a slightly lucky bounce but hey you've got to take them when you can well there's always a thing isn't there when you start when you start fly hacking the ball through you know the ball's going to sit up at some point and it often it's as much about anything else as judging how fast you approach the balls because you know you know it's going to sit up eventually you've just got you've got to wait it out definitely or like <laughs> i think i said it earlier those brutal ones where they actually manage to bounce over your head they're the worst. And then the opposition getting they're, the score. They're even a better. <laughs> I'm liking this tactic of this little cheeky kind of lower centre field kick. Like you said, it's so hard to defend. And actually, if you're expecting a, a kind of higher contestable kick um, on the edges and suddenly to come through with a, with a shorter, lower kick, it's, it's a hard transition if you're not, you're not paying attention. Yeah, and if you get that sort of awkward rotation on the ball it just it makes it so difficult to pick up you end up sort of hovering and waiting for it to as we would have as we've been saying for it to sit up which actually allows your chase to come storming through as well exactly it's hard enough without anybody chasing you then you've got somebody who wants to absolutely smash you coming right on your shoulder shoulder you can hear them breathing when you're trying to pick up the ball it definitely makes it a harder skill and wasps have more than got their tails up here but the referee blows his final whistle ends the pain it ends up was 39 <laughs> queen bees five and your girls ticking along very nicely in this tournament twice we've seen them twice they've performed outstandingly well yeah extremely co convincing results and extremely cohesive performances as well and i think they that's definitely a step up from the last game i think of i missed the very start but it looked like everyone was on the same page they kind of like turned an extra gear and that's really important as well that they just keep building and actually, that's where you get a lot of the time with sevens. The, some of the best rugby's played in the finals, not just because you've got the best teams there, but they've had a chance to bond. They've had a chance to rectify a few things. And although they're tired, they've got that adrenaline. And actually, um, I really love seeing how the teams grow over the day. And I guess that translates right across to, to the level that, that you're playing at. Is Although you all know each other really well, there are certain nuances on the day of just how the mood that a person is in and all the rest of it and how they're being influenced by what the opposition is doing. You just learn that through the day. Yeah, I think, well, it, the marks of a good side is how you adapt because I think you can do all the analysis in the world, but then if somebody comes and, and plays differently to how you expect, it's about how do you adapt, how do you, but not just from game to game, but on the pitch. And it, it'll be interesting to see these teams who potentially haven't, especially some of the teams that haven't played as much sevens, can they adapt on the field? Um, and, and the kind of grow within the game. And that's the difference between winning and losing sometimes. There's adaptions you can make to, to finish a game off. Are you going to ask me? Absolutely. I can see that Dave, across from us, has coerced someone who was just minding their own business, walking up and down the touchline with a broken arm, didn't want to be on TV, and he's just coerced them into it. So we're going to be handing over to him in just a second once he's ready. <laughs> I, think, I think he's ready now. So before we get diving into the next game, we're going to hand over to Dave, who's with a guest. 
I'm here with from the Hammers who are heading to pitch one next in just a few moments time. Miriam, tell us about the side. This is your what you were here last year for the sevens. Yeah, apparently so. I wasn't here, but yeah, <laughs> apparently we won the social cup last year. Um, we do a bit of sevens in general as a different team as well as Flamingos. So it's good to just get out here, really, have a bit of fun. And this is almost kind of like a home match for you. We're in your home region for this. Yeah, it's just down the road, isn't it? Got some games here next season as well, I think, in Wasp Lambs. So that'd be fun. Amazing. Well, this is going to be almost like a pre-prep for those games. Pre-pre-prep. <laughs> get that cardio in. <laughs> Absolutely. And who are those players that we should be looking out for from your side? Ooh, for us. So we've got Tappers. I don't know if she's starting right now, but she's a tank. Played every single minute of Summer Social. Wow. And I was like, that cardio, how do you do it? Uh, Teresa, Teresa McGilvery. She should be on there somewhere. That's Tappers there in the pink boots as well. And Rachel King, Rachel King's going to be really good. I've got high hopes for her. You'll see it because she'll probably score a try. Amazing. I'm liking this. This is a great confidence. We've asked all day the players to watch out for. You're the first ones to be like, yeah, they're amazing. They're amazing. They're yeah, people are going to be like, why didn't you talk about me? And be like, well, do something good. Well, you know what? You'll be joining our commentary team in just a few moments. And you can mention all the players that you want as we yeah. hand things back over to Amy and Angus. Thank you very much, Dave. We're just having a rummage around for team sheets, but I think sadly we don't have them for these. Fortunately, we're going to have a guest from one of the teams. Ladies, very nice to have you along. Excited for this one? Oh, you've brought a team sheet with you. Yeah. Consummate professionals. Now, Hammers, Hammersmith and Fulham, I'm judging by the kit. I love it. Go. Release it. Wild dogs in possession. And across the line, wild dogs get the first try of the game. I know she's head injury. We'll wait for that. Do your conversion and then we'll do the injury. No. Miss? Okay. I need to do this first. Will? Bit of an injury for the Hammers. Out, Hopefully nothing too serious. So a crunching tackle, two players coming in. <laughs> On Bram. Oh, Hammersmith and Fulham, I'm going to tell you a little story about them. I was playing in a game once where referee didn't turn up. So Hammersmith and Fulham, hooker, in fairness to him, when I'm a qualified ref, I'll do it. And we're going, this is going to be terrible. He's going to give everything to his side. Not a bit of it. Gave everything our way. We're so worried about being biased that he went the other way. You'd double down though, wouldn't you? Because you'd be like, you'd have it in the back of your mind and you'd have to be like, no, got to go to the other team. I was getting away with murder. No, 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 that's a testament to us. Integrity, that's what it is. Love it, classic rugby value there. <laughs> Release it, yeah. <clears throat> Turned over by Hammers. Let's see that carry. Getting some good ground. Tackle! High props to Laurel. High props. They only just started. Release tackle! Just good. It's a That's story you love to you hear. Only started a few months ago and making an impact at a Inside. tournament like the Lit Sevens. Scrum. Scrum down. So we're back on the women's social tournament just to just to keep you all abreast of where we are. This is over in Group A. The other two teams in this one, Millwall Venus and Bourneville Beavers. Eight teams in the women's social tournament. Okay, I'll go that. I'll go that way. No, no, I'll go that way. Yeah. 
So you're happy here? I'll just get out of your way. Thank you. This is our penultimate women's social tournament game. Fine. On this pitch from the group Set. stages. We'll be rounding off group B at 2.20 with Hong Kong Football Club against Wasps. And the Wild Dogs <laughs> are on form early on. Two tries to the good. Quick thinking from the nine there. Just turnover on the scrum. Didn't have time to think. Straight, straight over the line. Exactly what you want from your scrum half. Quick thinking. Have a lot of that. But well, we can try. <laughs> <laughs> We've bit, turned up. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of energy lacking, but I think girls can pick it up. We might be in it. And it looks like Teresa McGillivray, sister in the shadows of Nancy McGillivray <laughs> from Chiefs in England. Um, just made her way on the pitch. Peak athleticism. <laughs> I love I love the guest commentators coming in with the stats. It makes it makes our jobs easier. Give us all the facts. We want to know everything. Actually, I think Nancy's in the crowd, so watching over go. disapprovingly. <laughs> so, right send her over this way. <laughs> oh, great high ball! Unfortunately, oh no. Great take Tackle. on the kickoff from Wild Dogs. Two tries up and I'm in possession, fine. looking for a third. Really great athleticism to take that ball from the kickoff. And now great pace and power to go scorching through the middle. And the Wild Dogs have got their third. I would like to say that we did have Lucy Dale for a year. We did just catch that ball, so we'll take credit <laughs> for that. <laughs> Development all happened in West London. Love it. Great individual try there. Didn't really have a right to score that, but just used that physicality, the footwork through the middle. I think that was a classic case of potentially teams sometimes defend where they think the ball's gonna go, but actually, so they're already preempting that that, that ball's gonna go wide, but actually a player just taking yeah. it on the middle, just gotta hold, hold on that inside shoulder of the attacker, bef and then you're not moving off there until the ball's released. Just a bit guilty of going a bit too early. So got, uh, a little bit of business decision uh, tackling. There's that too. Okay. You got to be there to tackle. She, she found that gap. No one was there. Ball goes backwards, off the kickoff. So hammers have a chance. Hey! Wild dogs. Well, I tell you what, they're defending like wild dogs. They're, up so quickly, putting real pressure on Hammers, who are just trying everything they can to keep the ball alive at the moment. Tackle! Eventually goes to deck, but it's okay. well tidied. Can they put a bit of width on it? No, they come back against the grain. Now get the ball off the deck again. <laughs> Ferocious defending from Wild Dogs, though. Yeah, I'd just like to see if, if they can get the ball a bit wider. There is space there, but at the moment they're kind of playing into Wild Dog's hands. I think it's we again just kind of offloading, making sure they're offloading on their own terms, having a bit more leg drive and physicality, winning that contact battle first, and then that will put mean that there's a little bit less pressure to get the pass away wider. So it'd be it'd be nice to see if we can get that ball into the wide channels. I like that because we've got two hammers guest commentators along. You're now referring to them as we. I know. So I'd realised that as I was we saying. Love it. We. Yeah. You've heard it here. You've been brought thing. into the family. <laughs> Amy Wilson Heidi, <laughs> sponsoring hammers. Ball spilled by Wild Dogs. <laughs> Referee just waiting to see if anything happened, but we'll have a scrum instead. No, we won't. We'll have half time and the Wild Dogs lead 17 0 at the break. Have a look at me, have a look at me. A really impressive start from the Wild Dogs. For Hammers. Well it's been it's been a bit of a tough one, but you've shown a bit of a, a bit of spark when you get the ball. If you can just manage to get a, a bit more of a sustainability to sustain your possession a little bit, you may be yeah, alright. Like you say, like we've got Rachel on the wing and she's so fast. Like get it out and hopefully maybe get like one or two. Yeah, I think so. I think we've got optimistic. We're optimistic. Yeah, we knew it was going to be a tough game, to be fair. We played them at the final of Summer Social, lost by one try, so. I think the one thing we've got going is we are a bit of a second-half team, so I think if they can wake up a little bit at half-time, um, really just utilise the wings, 
expected big things in the second <laughs> half. Tell you what, it's hot though as well. How much? I mean, have we had complaints about the weather? It's probably the one time when you're in sevens that we complain about how hot it is. <laughs> a few complaints, not too much whinging, which is great, but a lot of burning. Yes. Not enough sun cream. <laughs> That's what dehydration as well. Do you yeah. know what? The, the, here's a fact for you. The worst place, um, as generally a female, although I know some guys plait their hair as well, but it's the worst place for sunburn when it's seven season is partings from people having their hair plaited. <laughs> so bad, so bad. Happens all the time. I also find that the head is a bad place for summer. <laughs> H- hence, people all around me throwing caps my way. Got a cool hat on today, though. Cheers, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's a real item of fashion. Wasn't just handed to me out of the blue. How about to scan? Got to keep yourself prepared, though. Always be prepared. Always, I've got my sun cream with me, Back sponsored by Nivea. That's quite Someone nicked the old one. I had, a, I had a much more upmarket one a couple of weeks back, but... You can never hold on for the, onto those for long. No, see it. Not far off the second half. I tell you what, the referee, as I look at him here, he could do with a cap, couldn't he? I think he got a bit tired. That first half was a bit short. <laughs> so we'll, we'll call it here. Drinks break time. It is hot. It is warm. I can sense that everybody was feeling it out there. Maybe it'll be an eight-minute second half. You never know. I feel like we need to give a bit of a shout out to number seven as well. Very first day playing rugby. Uh, really doing really well. Smashing it out. Good news, Recruited ladies and gentlemen. From... Your commentator for this afternoon has yeah. arrived, Dave Rogers, the superstar. Sorry, I cut you off there in my excitement. That's okay, because I can remember Gaelic football. We recruited her from Gaelic football. Oh, that's a great transition. Yeah, she's doing really well, to be fair. Yeah. Great take Rachel King. Yeah, the proper commentators come on this afternoon, right? Not the proper ones. <laughs> <laughs> Not the proper ones. You're on your first. I'm ready for myself. I ground first. They're, they're, putting you, they're putting you in front of the camera Stand this afternoon. Fine. I'd uh, <laughs> say that's a promotion, if anything. I get sacked at three. <laughs> Tackle. Get a chance to join the, enjoy the social. Find those five-second Guinness. Yeah, I'm going to find Queen Bees and <laughs> challenge them. As long as they don't rape me into the Irish dancing. Situation. Can she get there? That, that is great defense. Amazing. 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 up to the name. <laughs> You're offside. The Gilvery sisters. Yeah, well, great defense there. You just saw the patience. Like the easy thing to do would be to bite into the, the, attack, the attacker on the inside, offside, but she held offside, a patience, penalty. waited Red for that pass to happen, like you said, all. and then First made that killer blow. And it, First defense. Unfortunately, just a... Bit like an accidental offside there, but in the end, that great defence comes to naught because from the resulting penalty for that accidental offside, Wild Dogs get themselves across the line. But I do want to focus on that bit of defence because it's a it's a tackle you don't see quite so often anymore. Is this sort of round the legs from behind because it, it so much the game has become about dominant tackles and, and getting in people's faces but actually that patience as long as you've got as long as you've got the space to work with that patience it means your tackles much more likely to be made because you're tackling the bits of the body you want to tackle definitely it's a, it's a lot it, those tackles feel good like you kind of manipulated the attack to where you want them to be but also what's great about those tackles is if you can get the next player in on the ball because you've chopped them low they've got a really good opportunity to get the ball get the turnover so actually i think kind of you're seeing especially with sevens you're kind of seeing as the trend is now going back to kind of getting the ball back a bit more than from the seven on feet leaving the breakdown, you're seeing more more of those tackles happen, those chop, those low hits, so that then you can get that next pair on the ball, quick turnover, and then the most tries are scored from that transition, from that quick penalty, just being able to go quickly, transition from defence to attack. As we may well see here, the kick three from Hammers and Wild Dogs looking to counter. They get it taken into contact, but there's still a bit of space for them as they step inside. And now the big fend and the offload. I mean, are they going to have the pace to get away? The cover comes in, but the pace is still there. <laughs> the ball is, I thought it had been dropped, but she's just held on long enough. Because of course, nowadays you just got to have contact. 
Your girls are fighting hard. They're staying in the game right to the end. Yeah, you know, we, Wild Dogs are an amazing team, to be honest. And they're also have such a good kit. And I feel like that's a key part of sevens is having a fly kit. Look, look good, play good. Exactly. exactly. The flashier, the better. Yeah. But Not no. to say that we don't look good as well. But <laughs> no, you look great. Everyone looks great. <laughs> Um, but no, it is so good to see. I think it's it's easy to become despondent sometimes when you're a few tries down, but to still have that fight to chase back, to make those tackles, it's hot, people are tired, but there's that heart, that's the desire. And I think that's what's great about sevens, right, girls? You're fighting for each other, fighting for your teammates the whole time. Um, I think that adds, especially important in sevens because it's such hard work. Exactly, especially when you're completely oh, out of breath. Word. It's hot, beaten down a bit, but... Looks like they're still having a good time, so that's all that matters. In one of the most nice exciting developments. Jess, Jess Sass. Coming back to rugby after rugby. Good to get her back on the pitch. Okay. Very fast as well. Comes from nowhere as well. Doesn't even look like she's going that fast and then. Well, that side or this side? Keen that's netballer, too. Very good netballer. I'll go that way. Good footwork then. Out. That's almost the worst is when, when you're looking at someone like, why can't I get them? And they're still going deceptively Fine. fast. <laughs> a lot of transferable skills, to be fair, between, between rugby and netball. In my very low level of playing, netball was always a key part of the warm-up just, just to get people looking in different directions and trying to find space and get used to the idea of moving the ball to space rather than trying to move yourself to it. You what if that we did play a little netball at Bournemouth Sevens, had to but a team that came third, would you believe it? <laughs> Fantastic. Tell you what, that's, very transferable. that's not a bad option there with that long kick. You can see the chase is there and actually it put Wild Dogs under pressure. They tried to clear the ball themselves through another kick and it means that now... Oh, I'm not sure about that one. Here we go, here we go. Are we going to get there? Come on. She's going to get there. I think she might... Oh, dead ball. Just got it down. I, I'm going to say, I, I thought Attention. it was a questionable okay. kick, but fair play. It's all in the chase. <laughs> I thought Hans would have done it, but I like it. Two kicks, one to put the pressure on, get in the right area of the field, and then one um, kick to score. Fantastic finish over the line. That was a try from Natalie Pendleton. Lovely girl, Natalie Pendleton. Lovely Always girl. smiles. We'll be tackling people. So polite, too. So polite as well. We'll apologise profusely. They're always my favourite, the people that make an absolutely crunching tackle get up and say, sorry, are you okay? <laughs> Do they mean it though? Because, you know. <laughs> no one means it. <laughs> it's all part of the act. Hammers have their first try. And we see the replay here. Stretched it right the way to that left-hand touchline. Kept the ball alive. And then it was just that kick to space, as you say. And to join Team Cliche, kick's only as good as his chase. I mean, I mean it's true. <laughs> it's true. I think those, Sorry, those no, are my no, no, favourite no. ones, be it as a player. Try, 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 and I, I mean, still five. do it with my teammates as well. And I'm like, why did you kick it there? And then they five, end up five, scoring. And I'm like, okay, fair play. I get it now. <laughs> it was a nonchalant kick as well. It was just, just kind of a, just a, a look and a boot. kick sometimes. Bit hit and miss, yeah. well, like, more miss than hit. That was a good one, and that'll be out there. <laughs> and that will definitely be on the highlight reel. I was going to so. say, that'll be on the highlight reel for a long time to come. I'll show you now. There's always one of those You'll in the team. You'll use it as an excuse that any coach <laughs> in the future to be like, look at this. <laughs> look what I can do. Forward. But it's all about sevens. Well, especially these social sevens tournaments, why not have some fun? Why not try some new skills or, or not so new by the sounds of things, but... And look Absolute at that, though. Legs, look at the pace. Absolute wheels. Oh, Jess Sass chasing her down, but I think she's just got it. Yeah. I think that's going to be the final play of the game. And what a final play if it proves to be that. Unbelievable gas from the Wild Dogs. And a bit of a that tough outing for Hammers, but I tell you what, Wild Dogs are looking like they are going to be a serious threat in this tournament. I think they might actually be in it to win it. Yeah, I think they will be in it to win it. <laughs> that's not They're here for the silverware. As I've said before today, that's not very social. <laughs> not very social indeed, but they've got a very strong team, so props to them and they've put on quite yeah, yeah, to be fair, they seem to have a really good setup going on this summer. Been yeah. everywhere. And my mate says they're a really good team to play for. Big up to them. 
There you well go. Done. That's the main thing. An excellent team to play for. It sounds like two excellent teams to play for on the pitch. Great game. Thank you, girls. Thank, Thank you so much for having us. It was nice to meet you both. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you very much indeed. So it finishes up with the Wild Dogs. A superb victory for them. We're going to switch across to the men's tournament now, where it's going to be seven Fantastics up against Natty UK Rugby. In effect, France versus Fiji. So that's going to be very exciting. We're going to take a short break because someone's delivered a pizza to us. So we'll be back with you in about 30 seconds or so. Hi, T. I've got it all recorded. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you imagine. Yeah. Pizza break over. Just about ready to get underway. We're back in the men's open. Seven Fantastics against Natty UK Rugby. Seven Fantastics are going to be on the right hand side of your screen kicking off from France. And on the left hand side of your screens, Natty UK Rugby, who are from Fiji. So we have got some serious international flavour to this game. Pizza's wolfing down. We're all loving it out here. The sun shines out. All we need is for someone to bring us a beer or something, and it'd be absolutely perfect. But we are working. We are working. Natty Rugby, then. Have the ball in their control. Moving the ball from left to right. And away they go. And we've seen this man earlier, the number five. He's a danger man. Well tackled, though. And the penalty. And Amy, that is one way of dealing with the danger man. Definitely, I tell you what, I'm excited about this game. There is pace to match, pace to burn, and match pace over both squads. Physicality, Jue, everything is going on to go on in this game. It's going to be great. Yeah, as you say, we've seen both of these sides already. Both of them have provided plenty of excitement. As we see that little out the back spin pass, love it. Out to the mullet and the moustache on the right-hand side. I do actually have a team sheet for him. I can tell you his real name. Well, I could if I could pronounce it. Gurin Antoine is I'd his say, name. I'd say that's pretty good. Yeah, thank you. 
Let's see how many little here. French phrases we can bring into this one. I think I've run out. C'est pas fait. I'll have a think. Eh, c'est bon. Très bien. Terrible. Hopefully not any more then. Ironically, it seems like it's actually... Looks like the Fijians are playing in the France kit. It does rather, doesn't it? So they move the ball out to the gas man on the right-hand side. Takes it into contact this time. And you can see every time he gets the ball, people swarm <laughs> to him. Just creates space for his teammates. Oh, and Nadi Rugby holding the ball one-handed. Like a loaf of bread, it's fantastic. The offload, less fantastic. Yeah, I didn't quite put it off that, that time, but yeah, it just, it's so nonchalant, the way they just run around with the ball in one hand. I'm jealous, I can't, my little hand's nowhere near. Daddy, this is the <laughs> we drum into everyone in the world that you've got to have the ball in two hands, blah, blah, blah. But if you've got big enough hands to just be able to hold the ball with one hand and, and do, send it any which way anyway, what does it matter? I mean, I'd say that, that that case there is probably the example where you don't want to force that. But generally, yes. You can see then, the, also, they, you can see the tail gunner, but in the last game as well, tail gunner at the line out there in defence, being really alert to that overthrow and just managing to get on that ball. It wasn't even an overthrow, actually. It was like a tap from from the um, Sevens Fantastic team, and he's just the first one on that ball every time. So that staying high in defence that we talk about, it means that you're getting these opportunities to get on these loose balls. Yeah, it's impressive to watch. And it's been an impressively frantic, in the most positive sense of the word, start to this game. A seven fantastic, took a quick line out there. Or say a quick line out, a quick line out, a bit like the, uh, the line out in the England-Scotland game in the Six Nations where, that Scotland scored from, where it's not actually quick, the line out is form, you just play it quickly. I think it's good, we talk about having heads up rugby. Um, and it's about not just playing your process because you have that as a process, but seeing seeing where there's space. And they just saw that they they had no one there at the front, so why not play to that easy space? It's an easy line out to take. So fantastic. Trying to engineer a bit of space. They cut back on the inside, finding a little bit. Referee gets clattered, but the ball gets away. Slightly loose offload, but it goes to hand eventually. Working so hard Knock on. on both sides. Knock on. I can't believe this is still nil nil. It's, it's absolutely frantic, Bad isn't ball. it? I know. They're both on transition, the turnovers, just everyone's everywhere. These two sides, they're going to be knackered by the end of this because they are they're going flat out on every possession. But that's what you want. You want players. That's the reason you have a, a squad of 12. You want players to kind of give everything. You don't want players to hold back. Sevens isn't a game about pacing yourself. It's, a, it's about doing everything you can. And normally, like positionally, you get different players. Generally, a couple of the forwards, more of your powerful athletes, will have a bit more, a uh, bit less game time because of the way they play the game. Whereas your kind of playmakers, the ones in the middle, they can normally stay fresher a bit longer because of that just constant kind of more steady work in the middle. Great finish. Ben. Yeah, thank you. There speaks a top end sevens player talking about going full gas the whole time versus <laughs> versus me, the very, 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 very social player who's thinking about preserving his his minuscule fitness levels throughout an entire tournament. I mean, don't get me wrong, you take your moments, this being one now, straight after a score, but it's so important that you don't mentally completely switch off here, that you're thinking about that next job, what you're doing, where are you going to kick? So it, it's a rest in some sense. Look at that nudge, great conversion there. Score right in the corner, the winger didn't help, help him out, but confidence with that kick, straight through the uprights. Fantastic kick, and we see the replay here. It was from the scrum and it was just quick hands, ball right in front, stretching the outer limits of the passing. That one didn't go to hand, but it was just sat up enough and a tidy finish in the left-hand corner. Brings us the opening behind? score, seven fantastic lead, seven points to nil, and that kick, how crucial could that kick be by the end of this game? Definitely, we talk about the wingers making it easier by running in. In that case, he just had to finish and it was about just getting over the line. So 
we'll let him off for not going nearer the post, but so important. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. The kick still went over. And now a second try <laughs> over in the right-hand side. Suddenly, momentum completely with the French side. <coughs> Similar looking try in the end. You can see as well where so where they're playing from the the start point. So we spoke previously about about um, this team full of Fijian players who like to to push up hard. So it means that to actually play around them is really hard, and that's especially the case if it's from an edge breakdown or an edge set piece. However, if it's from midfield, they can't put as much heat on. So it means that potentially they can be a bit flatter, and that's what um, really Seven's fantastique, and I think that maybe <laughs> we should start saying. <laughs> um, that's what they've done well, is realising that from, from a mid midfield set point, they can actually be a bit flatter and, and get them for gas on the edge. Well, a good point, well made. And as you say, Seven's fantastic. Lead 12 points to nil against Nadi Rugby UK at half time. I just like how it sounds. It's not written like that, but. Wow. <laughs> it's the first of three men's open games in a row. And Amy, we've got a couple of teams coming up that I'm really excited to see. So next up, we've got Akuma Beavers, who we've seen already, but they are up against Racing Club Academy or Racing Club Academy, who've had some absolutely incredible players play for them through through the years. The likes of Manu Vunapola, I'm pretty sure uh, a whole bunch, I think Jacob Umanga might have played for them, Elliot Avoteimbo, a load, a load of, of young players that are starting to strut their stuff. So I'm really excited to watch them, if anything, just to scout a few people who are gonna be superstars in a couple of years time. And then after them at two o'clock, we've got Hearn Airport Windsocks, who again, we've already seen, but they're up against the China team, who are absolutely fantastic on the field, but off the field, it's like a sea of superstars. Ollie Phillips, Dan Norton, and Tom Biggs. Three absolute rugby legends. And of course, Dan Norton, chief amongst those. The uh, the re leading try scorer in seven series history. It's going to be exciting. 100%. I was, um, we were talking about when he had to um, begrudgingly put his put his boots on for a previous tournament. I think it was uh, um, in Richmond, wasn't it? But they've got a pretty big squad, so I'm not sure if we'll see him take the field, <laughs> field today, but we can see for sure if we can see how he's imparted his skill set from the pitch. If he can, if he's half, as good a coach as he is player, then I think we're in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, he'd be some coach, even if he's only half as good. What a player he was, or what a player he still is. Scrum advantage, knock on. Early error. Knock on. Scrum. From the Frenchman. Nadi will have the put in. 12-0 at half-time has been a common score today. We've seen it go both ways. So again, I mean, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it's so true. We've got a perfect attacking platform here. Can they execute and get on that scoreboard? Find, set. It's coming straight back out and reset. Same ball. There's definitely a plan in this Nadi rugby Let's let back line. I mean, just look, can we just look at the size of them as well in the scrum again, towering over. But we know that that doesn't mean everything for sure. But in this case, well, there you go, turnover. Although they had the dominance, the ball got spilled. It wasn't hooked. So Sevens Fantastic have the opportunity and lucky with the forward pass there. An even better attacking platform now. <laughs> Forward pass. It was scrum. a huge scrum, wasn't it? But as you say, priority number one has got to be getting the ball back. You've got to get the hook on it. But it's interesting. Obviously, technically, there should be a hook, whether the refs are allowing the step over. Um, it's a very contentious one in sevens. And you've kind of just got to play to the ref with it in, in a way. A lot of teams rely on just their power to drive over as opposed to hooking that ball, although technically you need to see a little... Little movement of that foot. Roll! 
Natty Rugby dancing inside and out, taking it to ground. Fantastic ball placement, managing to place it over the top of the tackle play, the tackling player. But the ball turned over in the end. Again, just defence getting in those offload channels, especially when teams like to offload hard to defend. <laughs> but if you can get in those channels, look at that skill. Oh, what a try this is going to be. The outrageous skill. Staying in the game, staying alert, staying alive. And this is going to be one of the tries of the day. The kick through from Sevens Fantastic looked as though it was going to put them under real pressure. But that offload out the back as he was being driven towards the touchline and then staying in the game to come and support again to break through and score the try that is surely going to be converted here to narrow the gap to five points. It is indeed. I must say as well, we're also seeing, as we always do, what's fantastic about um, Nadi Rugby teams made up of Fijian players is their fans, the people that follow them around, support them. And we've had, as we speak, people come around, the support is growing, you can, you can hear them resonating around this ground. The Fijians are here in full support. So good to see. It's a real family atmosphere with the, with the Fijian sides, isn't it? One of the best parts of any Sevens tournament. That kick, however, not one of the best parts of this Sevens tournament. It drifts straight into touch. Straight into sevens, touch. fantastic. We'll have a free kick on halfway. They still have a five point lead. Although after that try, Three. it is going to feel like it was a big punch in the gut. Felt like a momentum shifter. That handoff was so big, I think he's actually, he's, hand, he's handed himself off into touch. It was unlucky. I think he just, yeah, just <laughs> powered himself out there. So absolutely launched himself off the tackling player. I think one of the Nadi players is absolutely desperate to get himself off the field. But he's been told to stay on. Stay there. You know it's bad when you're asking to come off. Run over. Practically begging. <laughs> but now the ball's going to come his way. Let's see if he... Oh, no, he's got it. Oh, he's given the pass. I was going to say. <laughs> Seven's fantastic. Working really hard in defence. Can hear the heavy breathing coming across the ref's mic when he gets close to the breakdown. These guys are putting everything into this. And now the French side are playing with a bit of advantage. Go for the ambitious offload. It bounces off the foot. The ball's loose. Is it down? It is down. Fantastic hustle there. It was messy, but it doesn't matter. You realize it's come off the boot. So you stay alive in that chase. Utter chaos. But as you say, staying alert, staying alive. Playing as the cliche goes, to the whistle and earning the rewards for that. What's really exciting about these two teams as well is you know that they can score from anywhere on the pitch. Like, it doesn't matter where that set piece is. Like, you know that both of them are capable of getting a 100-metre try-in, so... It's done well to get the ball down as well. Good bravery in amongst a sea of boots. Fantastic Behind. setting here at Wasps. Tents pitched all around the grounds. All the teams trying to clamour for a bit of shade, I think. Barbecue going, music playing. I'm sure if you go over to some of the social teams, Fantastic. pitch areas, a couple of beers flowing light. as well. They're all out there having fun. But this open competition 
is really taking shape. Stay there. These two are going at it here on pitch Stay one. There. It looks like it's going to go the way go. of the French side, though. 19 7 up, and I think this is going to be the last play. Backwards play on. Backwards. Brutal defence there. Backwards by him. It's on the shoulder. Stop, four! Four, stop! Big hanging. Crossfield kick. Comes to nothing, but it matters not because that is the final whistle. Sevens fantastic. Take the win. 19 points to seven against Naddy Rugby UK. And the French side are looking impressive. Definitely. We knew it was going to be a good game and it delivered a bit of everything there bit of flair. I think what I was especially impressed with with um, Sevens Fantastique um, was that they've done their research. They've seen in the last game that the Nadi like to like to offload. They like to keep the ball alive, as we would expect. They, they got really well into those offload channels, which meant that when you did get the, the odd rye one, that they were there to pick up the ball and then that transition to then get over the line. Spot on. Spot on indeed. Up next here on Pitch One, we're going to be having Akuma Beavers against the Racing Club Academy. First time we've seen them on this pitch. Akuma we've already seen once. Pretty exciting performance from them in that opening game. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yes. Let's get them on too. It's a bit hot. And I think very shortly we're going to be handing over to our man Dave, who is pitch side with one of the racing team. Massive thanks to Amy and Angus bringing all the commentary to you here at Lit Sevens. I'm here with Coach Wayne from Racing Foundation. It's amazing what you guys have created over the years. Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're pleased with what we've done. We've got a big heritage of the side, you know, from uh, over 40 years, nearly 50 years of uh, rugby from when I was I was a lad. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're excited about what we continue to deliver in our, with a real focus, what is now DNI, but we've been DNI for many, many years. Uh, diversity and inclusion, because some people might know what it means. It doesn't mean drunk under the influence. <laughs> well, that diversity point is really the key behind racing, isn't it? You pick up yeah. those kind of, those that maybe got lost in other academies, pick them up, and then almost put them back in the shop window in some way. Yeah, I think I think the challenge is that, you know, boys express themselves in different environments in different ways, uh, and because they come from different backgrounds. And uh, we've got a culture and diversity within our group that enables them to do that and express themselves. So boys who may have had their first no, now know that they can come and be part of what racing is about and put themselves back on that platform, whether it's to go and play buck super rugby, uh, but ultimately to be the best they can be, whether that's back in community rugby and grassroots rugby, and then getting back to playing again, which is where we lose a lot of players between that 17 to, to 20 year old. And that's the importance of it. It's not just that kind of athletic side, but also supporting them in that mental side of things as well, making sure yeah. that they are the complete person still. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of these guys, remember, they're, they're youngsters still. Uh, and on that basis, they're still young and they've been the best in school, best in college, best in university, or best in uh, uh, their counties. And then they're coming into uh, clubs where they may not be. Uh, and it's getting that and understanding the psychology of that as a player and how to get the best out of them. Um, I think a lot of the processes today are about it's about what we need, not what we need do to get the best out of them. So I think, you know, a lot of the academies are starting to realise that, but there's still a lot of work to be done, I think. Yeah, some really nice values behind racing. Uh, as we kick off here, what are those players or who are those players that we should be looking out for? And this is the moment where Wayne goes, everybody. <laughs> uh, well, of course, of course. Um, mostly, it's, it's interesting to see some of the boys who uh, have been involved with racing um, for a period and then some of the new boys. So we've got um, young Barney Stone here on the wing who's come out of, uh, he was a scrum half as a youngster and now he's playing flanker. He's, he's 19 now, just turned 19. Um, but he's got a great turn of step, never been in an academy, never been seen, but got a lot about him and, and easily could have been. Uh, and then we've got a lot of the other boys who have, who have come back to rugby. So uh, number 25, Dion Sankey, he's uh, coming to rugby really late, found a rugby family, now really enjoying himself. So we expect him to come on and do some. So we put a few uh, flies in the squad today, but let's hope that they can do some because they've had a bit of a tough day to start because not many of them have played together. We've The squad that we had at the beginning, a lot of those players have gone back to pre-season now. So we're giving everybody else a run out. But that's what we're about. And I think that's the key of what you just said there. Family being the key behind racing. Well, Coach Wayne, thank you so much for your time. Brilliant. I'll let you get back to your thank side. You. And we'll pass over to our commentary team of Angus and Amy. Thank you very much, Dave. Really great to hear the thoughts of Wayne there on the Racing Club Academy. Fantastic stuff that they have done. But we're underway in the actual game here. 
Akuma Beavers against the Racing Club Academy. Akuma Beavers are in purple, Racing Club Academy in black. And they've had so many exciting players through the years. Who's going to shine for them today here on pitch one? We'll find out over the course of the next 14 minutes. I'll tell you what, Amy, I'm so excited to see these guys in action. So much so. And I think we, we speak about sevens, obviously, is a standalone game with some standalone fantastic sevens players. But just that opportunity to showcase and giving younger players opportunity coming through is fantastic. And that's what it's all about, giving those players confidence to, to have a go, show what they can do. If they can do it on a seven stage, hopefully can build and see where that can take them moving forward. Absolutely. And they're dominating possession early on here. Pulling out and starting again. That's exactly what you were talking about earlier, isn't it? Of just not taking that contact and just being prepared to take some backward yards to then have a look at for some forward, some forward yards. Some yeah. really good forward yard, sorry, to cut across you as they look for the opening try of the game, cutting back inside. And the ball's down. Wasn't quite sure if he was going to get there or not. That one, that one was sort of in the air for a good 30 seconds or so. Are they going to do this? Are they not? No, it was a great finish in the end. Physicality to get over the line, beat the player. But that initial explosion of pace and change of angle from the winger. That's what set it up. Put the defence on the back foot. But yeah, we were, we're talking about the, the pull out when it happens. You've got all the defenders, you've got them over chasing. They're all coming to one side. So the space is actually on the other side. Can Do you have the ability actually to go backwards to then go forward again? Now you can tell that the international side is, uh, is preparing to come on because their team analyst is now plugging into our system to, to get all the latest info. This is when you know it gets serious. <laughs> This is where I know I'll get stick if I say something wrong now as well, if they hear me on the, on the playback. I think there's far more chance of me saying something wrong <laughs> than you. Stay behind. Hang time on the kick, but a little bit longer. So it's a fairly easy catch there, setting Akuma up. Yes. Akuma, the first real chance in, in proper possession that Akuma have had. What can they do with it? We know their coach Ross is going to be getting excited on that far touchline. We were joined by him for their earlier game. Very excitable there bound to be again. They side are having a real go here. Looking to get to the outside. Not quite making it that time. Taken to deck. Trying to get those offloads away there, but it's turned over. Racing have the ball and Racing are going to have their second try of the game. <laughs> Mikhail McFarlane. A name that I'm absolutely convinced you're going to know for a long time yet, but I can't remember why I'm convinced of it. Although after that try, certainly for his pace. Sevens is just so brutal, isn't it? You have you have the ball for a few phases and then literally one small error straight under the post, but great pace to finish that off. Now, sorry, I've been a little distracted, but it's because I've wanted to pull up this little fact sheet about Racing Club Academy. So I can tell you some of the players that they've had go through their ranks. Paolo Adogu. Not a bad option. Elliot Obatayimbo. Joel Kapoku. Manu Vunapola. Ben Loder. Quite the cast list of young Premiership stars that have come through the ranks of this team. And we are seeing some future stars, no doubt. They lead 14 points to nil against Akuma Beavers, who've already proven themselves today to be a fantastic side. Definitely don't write them off. They were down last game. And they had a storming comeback to then win. 
It was an absolutely fantastic comeback, wasn't it? It just shows such good composure, such good maturity. Some of these guys that are playing at really young, they're coming through the ranks. First bit of rugby they're playing, and actually like to have the maturity to stay composed and finish off a game, it's, it's a huge part of sevens. Penalty to Racing Club, and they go away early. Thank you, all good. Injecting ever more pace into the attack. So that offload doesn't quite go to hand. And it's pounced on Akuma. Slightly wobbly ball. Are the football skills up to it? They are. Well, the comeback begins. Yeah, we speak about good times to score and coming up to the end of this first half. If they can, if they can hold Hold uh, this okay. now. No, we'll restart. They're going in to this, into the half-time break in a really positive place. <coughs> we see the replay. It was, it came from a racing attack. The offload just didn't go to hand, and then it was all about the football skills. This is what Seven's defence is about. It is not pretty. Most of the, you can't expect. And actually, the, the, the defences that look pretty often aren't actually the most efficient, effective ones. It's the ones that where you see the players hustling in those offload chan channels everywhere. You literally don't get a sniff in attack because there's somebody always there. And that's just testament there. Just someone being there, getting the, getting the boots of the ball. Rob Voller, the try scorer. No relation to the former German footballer Rudy, I'm told. Racing. Don't get the, the ball to who they intended it to, but it still goes to hand elsewhere. Shipping it out to the left hand side. Henry Arundel style going between the two defenders was the racing attacker. And he's taken those defenders in and created the space for his mates out wide. And it's a third try. Really, really nice. Harry Charlie there on, on the right hand side, really stretching the defence, using his gas. Although the offload was slightly uncontrolled, a racing player got on it and it meant, then meant that space was open on the left hand side. So that execution to get it, get them all to the other side. Great use of space. Proper sevens, width to width try. And at half time, we go in with Racing Club Academy leading Akuma Beavers, 19 points to seven. It's been a fantastic performance from them. Up next, after the end of this game, we're going to have Hearn Airport Windsocks up against China. China, who are. Uh, Trying to get themselves sorted for their later analysis and uh, proving a complex process. I mean, they, they know it's on TV. They can just watch it. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's it's amazing. I think the analysts are absolutely fantastic for for these teams. I think the coding and all of the the speed at which they get footage to players, especially in tournament. I tell you what, all of all of the China players will have this game, well, not this game, their game after they've played it within about five minutes onto their iPads, onto their laptops, team laptops, and they'll be analysing it straight away. And it doesn't matter that this isn't an international tournament in the, in the sense that it's uh, all international teams. They're still respected, they'll respect their opposition and who they're playing, and it's, it's about getting the right processes, the same process for no matter who you're playing, doing that analysis so they're ready for the next game. But it's all, it's all about those quick turnarounds. So we, we talk about the turnarounds with sevens and the players, but it, it's also the staff. It's the coaches having that quick turnaround, but also the analysts having to generate all of this information really quickly. So quickly then, just before the second half starts, as, as an individual, you know, after a game, when, when you receive your analysis, what sort of things are you looking out for to take into the next game that might only be 40 minutes, an hour away? Um, well, I mean, it's obviously 
it, it can be literally anything. It could be a trend in the game that something's gone a bit wrong or something's actually gone really well and how can we, do we need to tweak anything or do we need to keep doing the same thing? Um, but it's very much for us anyway, we focus on trying to, to move on from that game, bin it, so you're trying to quickly learn as soon as you can and then that game's gone and then you're on to the next one. So actually it's also the speed at which you analyse it so you can then refocus because you don't have time to dwell. Okay, right. So you'll be Ready? looking to pick out sort of a, a couple of key pointers and then and then kind of park it as fast as you can. Really. Yeah, I'd say normally obviously you're looking at at what you could have done better. Maybe it could be that oh actually our kickoff wasn't working quite right there. We need to just change our our start point, or it, it could be that okay us, we got turned over on the scrum a couple of times. What can we do to to change it next time? I'm I play in the in the forwards and sevens, so hence why I'm saying more kind of like scrum, line out, kick off kind of stuff. But obviously, if, if you're backs, it could be your set play move. Or it, obviously, it can, like the possibilities are endless. Like it, normally, it's just looking for common themes. And obviously, you're looking at sort of team, team and unit stuff by and large. In, in those tight turnarounds, are you looking at things that you as an individual can do? Or is that something that you, you're going to deal with at the end of the day when you've got more time to assess yourself individually? Obviously, you'll look more in-depth once the tournament's over, but it's also important. If you, if like, there's so many different scenarios that you can analyse, but it could be the case of literally being being on the edge. What what decision did you make and was it the right option? And actually, how could you do it better next time, de defending, depending on what the defender's doing? So, um. It, it, yeah, it, it can be a bit of everything, really. But the important thing is not to dwell too much on the mistakes, because you do have to just bounce back, as we are seeing from Akuma. And is that our Super Seb <coughs> captain leading the comeback? It is indeed the man, Se Seb Reese. Try scoring machine so far today here on pitch one. You want a captain that leads by example, and he's certainly doing that. I mean, if anyone, anything's going to inspire his team, other way, please. Other way. Getting that quick try. Okay, you got 10 seconds to take and also that awareness of the, him, him literally tiptoeing around that touchline, keeping himself in field yeah, I'm good. prior to scoring the try. So great bit of skill there. I'm very impressed. You see, well, well, you were actually managing to pay attention to the game properly while I was, I was having my nose moment of, of trying to understand analysis properly. <laughs> Habitual now. <laughs> the way it should be. The way it should be. The comeback is on though from Akuma. Their second try, and it was Seb Reese that got it, but straight bouncing back. Our racing academy. <laughs> Harry Charler, or Charlier, perhaps. On the attack. Fantastic strength. Thought them all would be called, cool, but the referee calls tackle. So Akuma have the chance to spread the ball wide. And the line break is on. Can he level the game up? He might well be able to go around the outside. Not quite. Fast ball gets the offload away. It's not him again, is it? I think it I might think be. I think it is. <laughs> Seb Reese, always on hand. Super Seb, at it again. What was it? Go look at him on YouTube. Seb Reese. Oh yeah, what was oh, it? Okay. Something to do with a hill. It turned out I was too old and out of touch to know what the <laughs> reference was. I didn't have the heart to say it. Yeah, I know. Right, it's all right. Running uphill, was it? <laughs> Two-point game, game, then. As we see the replay, fantastic running down the left-hand side, but that offload off the deck into the hands of Reese, who has enough pace and power about him to burst through the would-be tacklers as he receives the offload as well. Tell you what, he has got a huge engine as well. I don't think he's no, come off fine. the pitch. It's literally, I said that he's probably off. No, I, no. I think he has, but you'll know if he's on because he'll be scoring tries. Yeah. I think he has had a little rest now, but I mean, he scored the first Release one after half time. He just keeps going in the right place. You say in the right place at the right time, but it's really hard work to be in the right place at the right time, I'll tell you that. Inside. Involves an awful lot of running that never ever gets rewarded until the exactly. time it does. 
Akuma in the backfield, looking to go the length, possibly going the length again, one on one with the sweeper. Big pass out wide. Defence does well to swarm back. And buy a bit of time to reset and in fact get the turnover. End to end stuff. Here on pitch one, another penalty. Penalties going this way and that. The game is level at 19 points apiece. I'm happy. Two minutes left to play. It's a race now for the corner. Akuma not even bothering with the corner. Let's race under the posts. Matt Dandy. So good. I mean, from that initial kick from racing, you saw that the, the kick chase was extremely disjointed, which is an absolute dream for that counter attack. So although you had initially an isolated attacker, he had so many options to pick because of the disconnected defense. You can if you want. And then they just, although they got the turnover, they managed to keep the ascendancy, turn it over themselves. And then it was just that clinical, clinical hands. And then that work on the edge to just draw in that last defender. Great work from that one in attacker. Great pace as well from Dandy. I, th I thought he was in a foot race to get into the far corner, but he just got himself around the outside and then just realised, oh, I've, I've got this. Definitely, and it is, it's actually a really key skill to have the awareness of where that defender is on you and actually, because sometimes just by changing the angle, it actually helps you because they're, they're having to work so hard on one angle, a slight change, even if it is perceived as like a harder direction towards the, the try line can just put a defender off a little bit. Huge towering kickoff from Akuma. And in the excitement at Dandy's try, we've forgotten the most salient point of all, which is that Akuma have overcome the deficit. They now lead 26 points to 19. The comeback kings are at it again. Now this is going to be a test now, just to stay defensively strong. They've got to defend this line out. They've got territory on their side, but we know that that doesn't mean too much in sevens. I feel like these guys like being behind. <laughs> they like coming back. They've turned it over, though. Can they put some icing on the cake? We're into last play territory. And they have put the icing on the cake. Akuma Beavers. That is fantastic, Bay. Lit up pitch one. Yeah, I've got time there. What a yes. comeback. Absolutely incredible. As I said, I think, I think they like being behind. They like the challenge and they've done it again. Same deficit, yep. 12 points in it. And they've done exactly the same thing, although even more now they've got the final try as well. So an I even bigger apologize. victory. And I know we say that, you know, a couple of tries really in sevens, it can all change in an instant. But it wasn't that that was the score. It was that racing were in control. They felt like the dominant side. And Akuma have just completely turned the game on its head. Completely. You talk about turning, changing momentum. How can you do that? When you're on the back foot, when you haven't got control of the game, maybe it's one of those games where everything seems to be going a little bit wrong. How do you then generate that momentum again? So we talk a lot about kind of, I mentioned that word, super strengths before, so kind of having that focus. But a big one that we use, and I think probably a lot of teams use, is that next job mentality. It's just forgetting about what's gone, Obviously, making little changes if you need to, but focusing on the next job in hand. Okay, there's a scrum, there's an opportunity to reset. Can you reset your mind as well as your body and then just focus on that next job? Indeed. Now, up next on pitch two, big game. Hearn Airport Windsocks are taking on China. And we are just about to hear from an absolute legend of the game who's one of the assistant coaches with China. It's Dan Norton. He's chief speaking to, da to Dave. <laughs> well, don't say that he was lying. He certainly wasn't, Dan. Dan, you're here representing China. I mean, it's an amazing to have an international team here at Lit Sevens. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's been an amazing couple of uh, weeks for us. Um, the team's been over in the UK for about two, two and a half months now, um, playing on the Super Series um, and other tournaments around the UK. So, yeah, it's been really good for them. Um, and yeah, getting to know the players, seeing what they're really about. And, um, yeah, it's good being here in the, in the scorching English weather, <laughs> as it's always like this, um, and playing some good, some good English uh, rugby. And what's it like for you to kind of take the coaching role now? I mean, obviously a legendary player yourself, but to almost take a different role with a completely different setup now. Yeah, it's been, um, it was a different approach to the game, seeing it from a different side of the, of the pitch. Um, 
and yeah, it's kind of just it was the progression of obviously being being involved in sevens. It was an, something I was interested in, mm -hmm. um, and the amazing opportunities like this with, with China and the opportunity of rugby in, in Asia. And when you've got a population of 1.4 billion people, you hopefully you're gonna get at least seven players out there <laughs> who can play sevens. And we're, we're finding a few of those now. Amazing, and to see the growth as well that you're providing with China to create a Super 7s team like this, a Rugby 7s team like this, that must be a big achievement for yourself too. Yeah, definitely. Um, again, working with Ollie, working with Tom, played with them a number of years ago. Um, so yeah, it's nice to be here with, with guys I know. Um, it's been a, a challenge, but a nice challenge at the same time. Um, you know, being able to be working with these guys, having them across here, giving them exposure to what 7s is like over here. Um, and then now it's for us going back over there and then prepping for the rest of the year in the Asian series uh, tournaments back end of the year and then next year the Olympic qualifier and what everybody's all excited about the Olympics in um, the year after. And let's look at it from the other point of view here as a team going against China throughout this competition. It must be incredible. I mean, as a player, how would have that felt for you going against an international team at this level? Yeah, you want to get one over them, don't you? So, um, <laughs> yeah, we've tried to explain to the players, obviously, the, the standards that they're playing against and obviously the intensity other teams are bringing. Um, we've lost to the Ramblin' Jesters a few weeks ago in one of the tournaments, so it was nice to be able to get a win over them today, but at the same time, we're just trying to grow and progress each week, and again, for a lot of these guys, it's a very unique opportunity being here in the country and being out of China, a lot of them for the first time, so um, yeah, just getting this exposure, this opportunity is great for us as a program. Well, this is definitely one of those Mutz watch games, so Dan, I'll let you go back to Thank your you side, and much. we'll go back to our commentary team. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dave, and always great to hear from Dan Norton. It is China in the red about to get us underway against the Hearn Airport Windsocks, receiving the kickoff in the white and amber. Glorious sunshine here, a dry pitch, which means a fast pitch, and even a rehearsal kickoff as well. It's all happening here at the Knit Sevens. I feel there's definitely been um, a kind of a notch up when the, when China has been involved. We've had the analysts around, everyone's a bit more serious. People are actually stretching as well. <laughs> <laughs> There's been one of those classic warnings on the PA system. Can you please not warm up on the pitches? <laughs> You're slowing the game down. Well, if you are just tuning in to watch the international team, great to have your company. A very warm welcome to a very warm West London. Absolutely delighted to have you here. The thing with having an international team as well is they're all lined up on the halfway line, which means they're blocking our commentary position. So we will do our very best for you here in the sunshine as China get us underway. Bat that kickoff back beautifully. And they're going to have the first attack. Working it out here to the left-hand side. Great bit of pace on the outside. And the offload too to Drew in. Gets the big fend away. Sam Walker takes that right hand. And China straight on the score sheet. I mean, firstly, can we talk about the height of that kickoff that he managed to get to tap that ball back? It was huge. I mean, we didn't didn't worry about um, the wall in front of us of players because it jumped right over them. Um, but then you could also see there keeping the ball alive on the end, but also really, really savvy from from the player that passed the ball, just obstructing slightly, keeping the line of his run, which meant the defender found it harder to get to that that edge player. So I mean, he didn't need it with that fend, but. Um, just kept the defender away for that extra second. Great finish in the corner. Conversion unsuccessful. China 5. Hearn Airport wins Sox 0. There is actually a lovely breeze blowing across and it's welcome to because we'd be in serious danger of scorched earth if not. I can't remember it being this warm in London for quite some time. But yeah, it's blowing into the face of China which if you're putting those big restarts up is perfect. Definitely get some height on that ball. Give players time to get underneath it. I Go say, again. I say being an expert kicker. Not. <laughs> well, that one hasn't gone 10. Too much breeze there. Yeah, maybe it's a bit stiffer than we realise. So, Hearn Airport Windsox. Great name for a team. They're going to get their first touch. Tapping it on the halfway line. And away we go. Sam Kenner putting it out to the left-hand side. And Billy Roberts. Taking them inside the China half for the first time. It's Sam Walker, big pass off the left hand, and Dan Bohr out here on the right wing. Gets tackled by the try scorer, Drew in. And China win the penalty. Well, China have come to play, haven't they? Aggressively trying to get some tempo on the ball. That was Mai Chong. Wanted to get his hands on it. And he's kicked for touch. Sorry if you and Angus have spoken about this today. Where were you on kicking for touch in sevens? 
<laughs> well, good question. It depends on how your line out is, really, isn't it? But at this stage, I guess it's it's a good. Um, if you want to play the clock down, definitely a good one. Okay. I think generally, I mean, the first option okay. with any penalty is is to go quickly. Um, I think any team would say that. And I know um, that Nort's um, Biggs, Ollie will all be saying the same. Like, go quickly if you can. But actually, to get. Oh. <laughs> We can interrupt this one. <laughs> <laughs> I love a move straight from the lineup. That was He Tao. Hearn Airport Windsox just expecting the ball to come off the top. It opened up for him, and that's a great finish on 40 meters out. Merry Christmas. That was lovely, wasn't it? Here we go. Let's just watch it again and, and just take it in. Oh, it's a bad read, isn't it? Sam Walker expecting the ball off the top. He flew out of the line and then he out. Didn't even need to put on the afterburners, did he? Really good awareness, though, there as well, to know that there's no players around him. He can just take that on. Oh. After that picture-perfect textbook, brilliant kick-off to start the match where he pumped his tyres right up. <laughs> <laughs> the next two have been fluffed. Shows he's human. An airport windsock nil, China 12. Heavy carry there from Billy Roberts again. He's been the go-to man, dragging a couple of players along with him as he gets over the game line. Holding. Then holding on for a bit too long, the big man, and this time China do go quickly. Up over halfway, making it look easy as well. <coughs> Holding the line into the 22. In airport Windsox just struggling in the contact zone. China dominant third try. Side by side. This is what we found with, with the Windsox in the last game. They've got some really good physical players, but they just don't quite have the pace that some of the other teams have. So it's how can they use their strengths? How can they manipulate China, who have obviously got pace to burn all over the park? How can they kind of manipulate their game? Concede. Injecting the pace, going quickly, getting round that first defender. Once you miss the first tackle, it makes life so difficult, doesn't it? Yeah, we talk about the whether it be attack or defence, the first five seconds or, or even two seconds of the speed of the game on, on transition, on turnover, is so important. Can you get connected in defence? Can you move the ball to where the space is or just attack right down the guts as China did there so well? Three shots fired, three tries for China. This time deeper with the kickoff, and Sam Kenner fields it. Now Josh Sanchez, a bit of a line break from him. That's a crumb of comfort for her in Airport Windsox, who are under the pump here. China turning it on in the sunshine. Dan Boer up to halfway. China turn it over though. Good contest for the ball here. Entry 14. That's another contest that Hearn Airport Windsocks come out on the wrong side of. It was Billy Roberts giving away the penalty. Little kick ahead now. Where's the bounce going to go? It's going to stay in field. It's dotted down. Great gas from Tia Tuin. The weight of that kick was just perfect, wasn't it? We talked about this is a, not a big dead ball area. So to get that to just hold right there, great skill. On a hard, fast pitch as well. No margin for error with the kick. And this time, the conversion successful. Changes being made for China. On comes number 11. That's Shan Xiong. Off comes He Tao, the number three. And when you're 24 nil up after, what, five minutes, this really is a chance to experiment with some combinations, get some lads some time on the pitch. Definitely. I think as well it's also getting the mindset right. We spoke about staying ruthless. Can they maintain this level for the whole game? Because the easy thing is when you to just to relax a little bit when you're getting that far ahead on the scoreboard. So Chia Chung will get us back underway after that lovely kick to set himself up for the meat pie. Again, that's fielded a bit deeper after leaving too short. China a bit more conservative with the restarts this time. Not as competitive now. Hearn Airport Windsox needs something. They're not going to get it there. Dan Boer loses his footing. Seven minutes on the clock. Another decent carry there from Sam Kenner. As you mentioned, they've got plenty of power. This time they've won the penalty. 
And Josh Sanchez goes quickly. He looks to have a bit about him. Well ridden contact there from Dan Bort. Now over there on the left hand side. Ernie Airport Windsor closing in on the try line here. This is the closest they've been. First venture into the China 22. There's the delayed pass. Another heavy carry from Dan Bort. Now Billy Roberts gets the ball away. Stay on that help. Oh, lovely offload out of the back door. Billy Roberts. Ball's loose. China have picked it up. And looking like they're going to go the length here. Hao Shang has beaten the final defender for Hearn Airport Windsocks. China have absorbed the pressure. It is a brutal, brutal sport. And Hearn Airport Windsocks are finding out exactly how brutal by a ruthless China. You were, you were willing them over the line then, weren't you? They, they did really well. Like we said, they found a way to, to use their strengths in this game where, where China are dominating. But, oh, literally one loose ball and that, that turn of pace and then off they go. Let's have a look at it here. That was the loose ball. And it's strange how it works, isn't it? When momentum isn't going your way in the game, even something as simple as a loose ball, a 50-50 where everyone's got the same chance, always tends to go in the way of the team on top. <laughs> it does, it's cruel, it really is. But like we were just talking in the last game about how do you create momentum back? Like, obviously China are very favourites to win here, but can the Windsox keep going, keep pushing, and get that try that they really do deserve? Well, they've had one opportunity. They could not convert it. China, in fact, I can't remember them missing an opportunity in that first half. No, they've been extremely cl clinical. I just, I would love to be in this team talk with China now with these voices. I think we'd all learn something right now. Well, what would you want to hear then if you were in that China <laughs> team talk now? I think firstly, um, applaud them for the, the great first half. It's easy to forget sometimes actually to do that like, actually really good job. Um, but like I said before, it's like, can they now be ruthless? Even with changing a team, changing combinations, can they still keep the foot on the gas and still keep performing, keep getting those points on the board, or at least give a solid performance in the second half and not drop off? Well, the referee's whistle is gone, so the players will be making their way back out for the second half. A difficult seven minutes or so coming up here for Hearn Airport Windsocks. They trail. 31-0, first ambition, main ambition has got to be just get over the whitewash, get some points on the board. And 100%, like I said, we're all willing them over the line. They've they've done some really fantastic play when they've had the ball, they just haven't had much. So it's about keeping it. I mean, look at, they've got some absolute units there, yeah. creating some great physical carries and some absolutely splendid offloads. So let's just hope a couple will go to hand and, and they get the, the points that they so deserve. Well, they're going to get us underway in the second half. The Hearn Airport Windsox. Josh Sanchez, ball in hand. China getting ready to receive. They've got one lad getting ready to be lifted. That's Hao Shang. We're in number eight. Could go to him as well. It's a contestable restart. Up he goes, tips it over the crossbar. And Zhuan, scorer of the first try, places the ball back. 31-0. China inside their own 22. And winning Number the penalty four. there for the high tackle. Big tempo here. Ball way. Taps and goes. Maisie weaving, then powerful run to get through the first tackler. Take China up to the 10. No scores yet in the second half. This is the first attack for China. Real loose pass there. That was Sam Walker up out of the line. Looking to close that passing channel and doing well. Oh, big late shot on Drew N. But China can come away with it. Shan Shun tearing away up the left wing. Desperate chase coming away from Tom Veneroso. He's not going to get there. China under the sticks. They've gone the length. It's another, well, ruthless execution, really. It just shows how simple rugby can be. That was just absolutely excellent. Hit on passing exactly where you want the ball. Nobody had to even break a stride. And when you get that right, when you get the defense on the back foot, you just it's so hard to defend, yet so simple. Well, what's interesting is when Sam Walker came out of the line and there was that one pass that wasn't perfect from China, it actually stood out. Their core skills, very, very high level. 100%. I've got no doubt these, these guys will be extremely well drilled. 
It'll be something that they do day in, day out. You can't get bored of these these soft skills that you just got to keep keep doing. Well, Angus has just walked past, smelling like holiday. <laughs> Offside ten. Sm smelling like coconuts and desperately trying Offside. not to be a pale man who falls foul of the sunshine today. He will not be Can the only one, ten? especially given the uh, the level of vests being worn around. There are going to be some chronic, chronic vest tans at the end of today here at the Lit Sevens. It's the tape tans I like. There's there's definitely a few headbands <laughs> yes. that are going to leave some marks. Oh, and that's you for the rest of the summer then. <laughs> here come Hearn Airport Windsocks up the left-hand side. Not a lot of space, but a lot of power here from Billy Roberts. He tears away. This will be the try. And it's apt that it's gone to that man, Billy Roberts, because he has carried with aplomb in the first half and finally broken through in the second. Completely so deserved. And like you said, so glad Billy Roberts was the one to get over the line. He has carried like a boss. He is a unit and he showed that he can shift as well. Hope the lungs are doing OK. He's, he's waving. I don't know <laughs> if it's for a sub <laughs> or, or whether it's just he's waving to, to wave at his mum that he scored. I don't know. Oh, he's either waving for a replacement or the oxygen tank. Either way, great finish. And a great conversion as well. Josh Sanchez splits the uprights. Oh, it's a lovely step there from Sanchez, wasn't it? Once, then twice. And China will be disappointed with that. I know another thing that they would have mentioned at half time would be to keep nil on the board, not get scored against. But too much from the Windsocks there. Yeah, Ho Shang missing the tackle. Interesting, isn't it? Because Roberts had stepped. He'd lost a bit of momentum. He's been particularly dangerous when he's taken the ball at pace, but showing that he's light on his feet there. That's a better take. Hao Shang, the man who missed the tackle with the safe hands. Rock form. Rock here. Guo Bong trying to go quickly. Ref having none of it. One of the most frustrating things as a player, going quickly and then get pulled back. But I mean, oh. it hasn't stopped him. <laughs> He sees the gap, he sees a slight dog leg. Well, Guo Pong was brought back the first time. That allowed Hearn Airport Windsox to reset the defence, but honestly, he has taken the mickey there. That is serious, serious footwork from the number nine. And I understand Rocky is married to Anastasia. We see the outside defender just gets slightly ahead, just gives him that read, and then he's got all that pace just to get on the outside. He makes it look so easy, but it's not. It takes that awareness, skill set, and pace to finish. Yeah, Tom Veneroso was left stranded there by the man to his right who went rushing out of the line. Airport wind socks up. What you were saying there, just, just as he was dragged back, someone who likes to introduce pace to the game and the ref drags you back must be the most frustrating thing. It really is, because you, you're taught to go quickly, to add that injection of pace and, and ca catch the defence off guard. And whenever you go back, it just invites the defence to be set again. Penalties being given away almost at will now. Hearn Airport wind socks tired because they've been up against it for most of this game. Inside then out, big handoff and a big tackle. The two 11s going up against each other. Dan Ball winning that particular exchange. Carlos Snell tackled, bouncing ball, picked up by Ho Shang. There'll be another try for China. They're up over 50. This is astonishing. So ruthless, just hustling the whole time. Any loose ball, they're the first ones to it. It just pays off. That hard work, when it really is hard work, pays off with the points. And this is where you realise how long a game of sevens is as well, because people who are new to the sport, they're like, what, seven minutes a half? Is that all? Don't. It breaks me every time. I'm like... Oh, yes, I know it sounds not a lot, but you tried doing it, okay? You yeah. tried playing even three minutes, try playing, even a minute, and I bet that you'll be out of breath. Then multiple times in a day as well. That's the challenge, and actually, um, one-day tournaments like these, so challenging. How many, they're not getting that long a break in the grand scheme of things, and they're having to go again and again and perform again and again. In the sun on a hard pitch, as that's a lovely clean take from the restart, and now Bol Wei is going to stroll in 57 points, nine tries for China. And you can see by how quickly they want to go here that they want to restart and they want 10. 
and I bet the coaches will be challenging them in different ways. So when you're when you're so dominant in a game, it's it's finding ways that you can still challenge yourself. Can you be the first back set? Can you be the first every set piece? Can they still get exactly what they need to out of this game when they have so dominantly won and performed? They've scored some great tries as well. It's been a pleasure to watch. Unless, of course, you've been in a white jersey with amber shorts. <laughs> Deep restart in airport wind socks. Can they finish on the front foot? Get that second try and add to Billy Roberts's score midway through the second half. Oh, they might do, you know. How about this for a burst of pace up the right hand side? Inside, then out. Now the chase is on for the corner. China chase back and force the knock on. Brilliant defense from Drew Venn. Even 59 points on the board, still chasing back and making big plays. Oh, both teams going right to the end. It's so good that the Windsocks had that heart and desire to still get the try. Oh, we wanted them to score. Not quite, not this time. Well, they did manage to get the one meat pie. However, China dominant. Big victory. Nine tries. Hearn Airport, Windsocks seven, China 59. Well, that is a particularly difficult one for Hearn Airport Windsocks, but the opportunity to play against an international team is something I'm sure they'll remember once they get their breath back. Well, let's hear from Dave now, who is pitch side. So I'm here with coach Ollie. 59 points, nine tries. That was an incredible performance from China. Yeah, I mean, we're good, we're delighted. We just need to keep with our discipline, keep that momentum, but good performance from the lads. And it's really good to see what you're developing with this side here. Yeah, I mean, there's talent there. It's just game understanding that we need to keep working on with them all the time. But you know, that's what it's all about. That's why we're playing in the lit sevens. And it's great to have some uh, opportunities around out there. And how is it to play with so many different abilities in lit sevens as well? You're playing regional sides, you're playing past champions as well. That's a good test of character for the China side. Yeah, but we can only play um, play against what's in front of us, right? And, uh, you know, the, 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 so again, the variety of um, competition that we have is critical. And, uh, you know, we're just thankful we got through the group stages now and onto the cores and hopefully semis. Absolutely, and you can see on the sideline here that all the team almost working for each other, even if they weren't on the pitch, all cheering for each other. It was amazing. Yeah, I mean, they're a great group, great group of guys. And we've been there a long time, two and a half months now in the UK. So we've got another three weeks left and then uh, back to China to get ready for our Asian, Asian series. And as you said, the quarterfinals, hopefully semifinals on the way. Any tricks up your sleeve ready for that? I oh, know, we just got to focus on what we do, right? I mean, that's the, the critical part. Do the simple things really, really well, and uh, the rest will look after itself. Well, Coach Ollie, thank you for your time. I'll let you get back to your team. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. So, you join me again. Angus Savage, joined by Shona, who you've heard from before earlier on today from Hong Kong Football Club. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. The team's doing really well today. Been, we, a, been a good day? Yes, we've won one, we've lost one, and we know that Wasps are good competition, so we're looking forward to this game. So they are indeed Hong Kong Football Club against Wasps in the women's social. Wasps have won two from two on this pitch so far. Hong Kong won their opener on this pitch as well. I think. Word steady, please, ladies. Yes. Yeah, you did. You did. Yes, we did. Thank Set. goodness you're here to keep me Ready. right. Step over, step over, ball out. Hong Kong breaking around the right hand side, stepping back in field. A great start for Hong Kong. Try given. And that's Monty. If we have a Kiwi on our team, we'll do pretty well somehow. I mean, having a Kiwi in any team from behind. is a great option. My great regret in my rugby life is that I've played with so few Kiwis. That's why I'm always on the losing team. So how have the other results been? You obviously got the first win. How'd the second game go? 
Um, not as well. We got two tries to three, I believe. So it was quite close. It was back and forth, this side of the pitch, that side of the pitch. We did well, but I think a little bit of fatigue is hitting in. And we lack a little bit of cohesion because we've not been training as a team. There's a lot of us that are ex-teammates that just happen to be in the UK. And we happen to be in the UK on holiday. So I think some of us are just even met today. So we're kind of just getting to know each other or replay again with each other. So I think the more we play with each other, the better we'll be. Has the social started yet, or are we keeping it strictly business at the moment? Well, I'm not well. playing, so a little bit for me, but <laughs> um, no, I think we're going to still try properly play a bit. And oh, then yeah. we are in the beer pong competition later. So that's, that I think, when we'll take, <laughs> we'll be a bit more social. Naturally, Rock. naturally. Ball out. Wasp with the ball. And with the ball, with a plum. Storming through the middle go Wasps. And much Pitch like in their previous game, going Pitch a try behind, behind proving not a problem at all for the home side as they come bouncing straight back underneath the posts. Conversion won't go, but we're level at five points apiece. Wasps with a fantastic response to that try from Hong Kong. Go Wasps! Go Wasps, kicker! Keeping in control of my team sheets, apologies there. with the little scuddy kick that was a real feature of their previous game. But Hong Kong doing well to get the ball back, hold on to possession, probing down the left-hand side. Touch there. Just nudged into touch. Touch, wash ball. So who's, who's impressed through the day in terms of the Hong Kong players? Um, definitely Anna please, Burkett. Ladies. She's our speedster. She's on the Hong Kong national um, setup. Also, Lydia's been fast. Monty's been there, on the ball all the time. The Kate Palace, she's also on the Filipino national setup. Out, so I say eyes are on them Stay all the day. Just a few then. Some, okay, some everyone good players. Then. <laughs> some good players. That's what I'm taking from that. Hong Kong loaded. A little bit of a scrappy passage, a ski whiff line out. Day five. Brings us together for a scrum down. Give yourselves room. Crouch, bind, set. Steady pink. Ball out. It's a long. Come Hong Kong, offload, out the back. Back in field. Get some ball. Use it, back feet. Ball just spilled. Referee a judge, it went backwards though, so the offload comes in and now it's Straight countering down on. the left, but the ball goes loose, so Wasps have it. Slightly scrappy affair at the moment. But away goes the superstar, Brandy Akpabome. Steps around the last defender and she is going to go the length. She has been a star from the moment she walked onto the field this morning. And she continues to be so as the afternoon ticks by. Brandy Akpabome knows what she's about. And sometimes you come up against a player that you just realize there is not a lot you can do about. And I guess for the girls out there at the moment, that's what they've got to say to each other, isn't it? It's just, she's brilliant. What can you do? Yes, just try to chase her down. But if you can't, you chase her anyway. 
just keep chasing. So Wasps from 5-0 down, 12-5 up. Almost repeating blow for blow their performance against Queen Bees earlier on this afternoon. Hard to believe it, that was two hours ago. Time flying by here at Twyford Avenue. Hong Kong taking the direct route, but it's ripped free by Wasps. And they're breaking free. Storm, storming towards the line. Olivia Girani gets herself across the line, calls the big one saying, get me off, get me off. I'm done. She needn't worry though. Because the referee has said it's half time after this conversion. Was the leading 17 points to five. You wouldn't put it past them to make this 19. Such has been the kicking of Charlotte Burns throughout the day. This one just pushes right though. So we do go into half time with Was leading 17 points to five. We see a replay of the try here. It was ripped clear in the tackle by Girani who then went storming through. And at this point, it was as much about the lungs as it was about the legs. And the lungs just about had enough for it to get all the way to the try line, the little half a fen towards the end. And almost immediately, she's turning around and looking for the substitution. There she goes, take me off. 17 points to five at half time, then tough one for Hong Kong so far, but a great start. What can the girls do in the second half to turn things around? Uh, like you said, we're a little scrappy, so we'll have to fix that. We have been in their half quite a bit, so we just have to try keep staying in their half. Wise words, stay in their half, keep the ball. Simple stuff. Well, it's a simple game when you do it right. In Hong Kong, we don't have a seven set up, so we only ever play 15s. We only have a bit of sevens on the lead up to the Hong Kong sevens, the famous tournament. And so I guess some people are more used to sevens in the team than others. So a lot of people normally, you know, play in a forwards kind of a mentality, like myself if I were to play sevens. The forwards mentality is, uh, is the approach to sevens that I like, keep it tight. Don't test the lungs out too hard. Back underway then, Was leading 17 points to five and again deploying that low skiddy kick that they've been doing throughout the last couple of games and working it to great effect. And it's because of this reason, it forces a bit of panic play and then the kick comes in and now a chance to counter. And it's the other danger lady in that Was lineup, Jasmine Chun. Storms through, under the post, and Wasps are absolutely flying. It's so hard to deal with kicks like that. Yes, and that's the player we were um, looking at as well. And we've played against her. She used to play in Hong Kong, and she used to play against her rival team. So we knew to keep an eye on her. Who's the rival team? Valley. Oh. She had a Valley jersey on, just chilling out there, and we're like, ooh. Oh, no. Oh, we can't be having that. I think she did that on purpose to us. Well, we can announce it on the live stream that I've, I've a, f a far greater preference for Hong Kong Football Club than Valley. <laughs> for a start, I've been to it as opposed to Valley. Well, that's why it's the same in front of me anyway. Hey, you've got a great pitch, basically. I love it. Oh yeah, skyscrapers all around. Yeah. People do say that when they first get there. It's a great pitch. Tackle release. Rock in, that's five. Was Turn it over. And they're looking for another just Tackle hold release. short. Acrobatics on the floor. Which side will the ball come back on? Comes back on Was side, but the referee gives away the penalty. And Hong Kong go quick. And that's Aileen, that's Aileen Ryan with the quick thinking. 
making about, say, 30 meters. A good 30, 40, yeah. Working hard. Hong Kong trying some different things. A little wave from a few of the uh, few of the other male sides walking past. I'm no expert, but I'm going to say a social team on that front. It's Hong Kong. That was a try by Monty in the corner. Not out of this one yet. Oh, Hong Kong. Monty Heslop. With the try on the right hand side. A lot of bucket hats around today. You've got one on. There's a fair few around. Yes, our um, costume for later today is tie dye. So, you know, I'm not so used to Primark or anything, okay. but someone said that's a place to go to find what you want and they'll definitely have tie dye. So that worked. They, they will literally have anything you could possibly think of. Won't necessarily be good, but they'll have it. Other brands are available. Tidy finish that from Hong Kong. Not giving up on this one yet by any stretch of the imagination. 12 points behind. Two and a half minutes to go. That's a lifetime in sevens. This game is still winnable for them. Taking the direct approach through the heart of the defence, they try to go. And again. Really working hard through that fringe of the ruck area. Now they move it a bit further wide, but then cut back in. Straight back down that same way. We are seeing some proper 15-a-side rugby here from Wasps. Back inside, working that same channel. Hong Kong, let it come. Back feet, let it come, Hong Kong. Penalty, <laughs> Wasps. Eventually, Hong Kong run out of patience and compete at a breakdown that wasn't on. After this, by the way, we move to the men's social, London Japanese against Fine Rugby Now, and Booby Buckets up against London Liquid Sevens. And then we're into the knockouts. And Wasps are going to be heading to the knockouts in the women's social, surely, as they cross for their fifth try. And a Pick try that is probably going to be enough to seal this game for them with two minutes left to go. The door had just creaked open for Hong Kong, but was slamming it shut. Two minutes. Again, we see the offload out of the tackle and then that step back inside time and time again we've said it all day the offload such a killer move you need one more put there you're good you're good play on so showing it hopes of a hopes of a win in this one probably drifting away but well good we, rest of the day to come anyway we knew this would be a tough one anyway good competitive one so it is what we expected in it, in a way. But it's a great story to have been on holiday, rallied the troops, gone, I think there's a sevens tournament we can play in, let's all go have a go. Been worth every minute so far. Yes, especially since we don't have a proper season at the moment in Hong Kong, so you know, really want to get out there and play because we haven't in a while. Absolutely brilliant. Day five, crouch. A, one of the best five, stories of the day. Set. Daddy Pink. Go. Step over, step over. To my Reset. left, Dave is getting into the spirit of things and having, ball, having a little dance to the Let tunes in the background. Good driving, but it never came. It's that kind of a day. Step over, help you, scrub off. Scrum Hong Kong. Crouch. Can they finish five, with a flourish? Set. Well, 
perhaps not because the ball comes back the on the lost side. No, the referee's going to have us attempt. I don't want to free kick anybody. Let's just one. step over the ball. You, uh, you, your, your, your prop accidentally kicked it forward, but I took it as accidentally, so we played on and still didn't come out. Yeah. <laughs> free giving people the benefit of the doubt. Crouch. So the way set. that Hong Kong Football Club got introduced Very to this tournament out. is just by the tournament shooting us a DM and someone in our team asking other teammates and ex-teammates if we would possibly yeah, free, if we'd pink. have enough people, and it was a shot in the dark well, and it worked it out. So Full time. that's how <laughs> we ended up here. The DMs pounce again, huh? All over here then on pitch one. Wasps take the victory against Hong Kong Football Club. 27 points to 10. Wasps have gone through their pitch one series of games unbeaten. They're going to top Pool B in the women's social. Two more games here on pitch one before we head to the knockouts. Up next, we move back to the men's social, London Japanese, against Fine Rugby Now. A fantastic performance from Wasps. They've been absolutely glorious throughout the day. The cheerleaders are out on the pitch, but on the side of the pitch, Shona has trotted over now to go and have a chat with Dave. I'm here with Shona at the side of the pitch. As Angus just said, you're everywhere at the moment, Shona. I mean, it was a losing effort, but there was a really lot of commitment there from the ladies. Oh, yes, for sure. We're out here to have fun, and it's been a good day so far. And as we mentioned a few times on commentary, it's an amazing story. You really have just brought everyone in together from different locations to play here at Lit Sevens. And that's really what it's all about, coming together for a celebration of Rugby Sevens. Yes, and actually I've been really surprised here because I bumped into someone who told me they used to live in Hong Kong and we must have played together when we were kids. There's a referee from Hong Kong. There's one of China's um, coaches from Hong Kong. It's just like, what's going on? I wouldn't have expected this over here. <laughs> it's a melting pot of community here at Lit Sevens in a way. Yeah, it was, it's great, and it's the sun's out now, and it's beautiful. Great day of rugby, just it's great. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, what's next for the Hong Kong side? So, a losing effort here to Wasps. I mean, Wasps—they're the hometown team here. It's always going to be difficult anyway. But like we said, we, we saw flashes of brilliance from Hong Kong. There's still a really strong side there. Oh yes, if we had trained together, I'm sure. We'd have had more cohesion, mm. but we have it in us. You know, we, we're here to have a good day and we just get running. And is that something that's quite difficult for the Hong Kong side? Because being located in so many different areas of the world, not just the country, is that always taking a bit of time for your side to kind of get used to playing with each other? Well, if I'm not wrong, this is probably the first time that we've done something like this for our club, just to see if anyone's in a particular side of the world <laughs> that can get a team together. We usually just go, you know, do the usual tour as a team to somewhere. Sure. So maybe we'll see if we could do this again some other time. Amazing. Well, Shona, thank you so much for your time today and uh, good luck with all the remaining games you have left here at Lit Sevens as we head back to our commentary team.
So, apologies for that, everyone. I've just been rustling around finding some team cheats for this one. We're back in the men's social competition. London Japanese up against Fine Rugby Now, who are, of course, the company behind Lit Sevens, the London International Sevens. And I'm joined by Amy and Donald. Angus, how are you? You well? I'm not too bad at all. How are you? Man? Angus, I'm great. I've got some very bad news for you. Um, I'm currently here competing. Lovely role. Happy to be here. But this actually isn't my team, so get still commentator. I've, ju I've just noticed, by yeah. judging by your uh, your lanyard, that you're yeah, in fact from Booby Buckets, who are on next. So we were told you we were playing at three, so maybe a bit premature, uh, like <laughs> me as a child. And hey, hey, I'm joking. We can't say that publicly. Um, but you're happy to stay, but I'm happy to leave. I'm entirely up to you. I'll leave it in your capable hands. You're more than welcome to stay on the mic, or you're more than happy to rest I that, mean, that listen, beautiful you... voice and give yourself 20 minutes to go and get yourself ready for the big one. I, mean, I think my voice will continue to get worse. Uh, happy to stay on. It'll be croaky by the time my voice play, but happy to stay. Perfect. Well, here we go. We've got Fine Rugby now. We're on the left-hand side of our screens in the dark shirts, and on the right-hand side of our screens are London Japanese. And we're just waiting, I think, for a ball. No, we've got a ball. I don't know what we're waiting for. We're waiting for something. So, Angus, you can correct me, but I'm pretty sure the Fine Rugby boys have been having a great day out. They've won two of three, I believe. See, every time we get a guest on, they know more we, than We us. literally get showed up every time. No, Remember, no, we, are, we are stuck here, so you are our, you are our encyclopedia. You tell us uh, what, what else has been going on today. No, so it's, been, it's been a great day out. Honestly, the sun's been Back fantastic. Right. The people, the vibes, it's immaculate. And yeah, from what I've seen, if my memory serves me well, uh, the London Owl boys are having a great day out. They've won two of three. If they win this, they should top their pool and maybe miss out on topping the entire league based on us. But listen, <laughs> we've still got a while to go. There you go then, heard it here first. I'm not sure his day was going too well as he got absolutely smashed, but they Ooh. kept hold of the ball. Dirty bit of flair, if it gets the off load on, or it could be an unlucky day, but unlucky son. Oh, he's got, oh, knock on boy. Seven. Cheeky goose step on there. Oh, hey. A massive, massive start that. That tackle was huge. Oh man, honestly, dangerous stuff there, dangerous stuff there. It's one of those you just need to shake it off and get up for dignity's sake. Just keep going. <laughs> yeah, it didn't hurt, didn't hurt, didn't hurt. It's fine. He kept hold of it in his defence. Well, that is trouble, is when you get absolutely smashed. You know, trouble is, I've still got to look after the ball, <laughs> and all I want to do is curl up in a ball. I got winded so badly the other day. Honestly, one of the worst. I fell into a knee, and I was rolling around, and I felt so pathetic. But it's one of the worst things ever when you get winded. It's so bad, because it's just not having air. <laughs> it's, it's, it feels so pathetic, but it's not. Oh, that's a finish and a half. Skin the defender, inside, outside, straight over. Ricardo Barres, oh, I like that name, Ricardo Barres, with the try for London Japanese. I think the name is as flair as his finish. That was fantastic. That was great stuff to see. The, the look of a sort of like late 80s, early 90s, sort of uh, varsity match kind of a player. The, the shirt, slightly baggy, but well tucked in. Sort of slightly mop haircut. That long flowing, some like hookily in here, you know, yeah. Could it's be like it's a good ploy because no one thinks you're going to have the gas when you go that way, and then you do. No, very true. We see the replay here. It was a clean execution, obviously big scrum, got out there very quickly, and obviously straight out wide. And I guess Barrett, he did the rest, eh? Oh, no chance. Bit of a goosey. And Bob's your uncle. He did well because the centre there, you can see he slightly cut down his face. He tried to... Tried to create something and potentially just drew a couple of extra defenders, but the confidence there to Winger to still know that he's quick enough to have a go to finish. Great work, great finish. Absolutely brilliant finish. And a high hanging tower and kickoff from London Japanese. A great kickoff, but an even better take. Fantastic take. Will Benyon, or Bainan, I think it is actually, that took that and fine rugby now. Going to look to put the pressure on a bit. Oh, inside. Oh, help him on the inside. Oh, unlucky. No advantage. When you take the outside line, you've got to be so careful either not to get isolated because if you're running away from your support play, but also you're going to that touch line it means that you've kind of you've got a line break or you've got to at least make a really positive collision there and you just kind of worst nightmare really into touch. His teammate's going to be kicking, kicking him a little bit, swearing a little bit at him. Don't go into touch him on the edge. I don't think it's it a free is kick, yeah. One of, one of those unforgivable ones, I always think, isn't it, where you end up going into touch when you, you could have done something about not going into touch. 
It is. It's just easy turn over the possession um, possession for the other team, but. Oh, that could be high. Looks very high. Thought so. No ref. All right then. Fine rugby now. Trying to get some width on this one. Bouncing ball, but it goes to hand eventually. Cutting back in oh, field and finding carry. a little bit of space. And finding a little bit of pace as well as space goes Josh Cooper. Fine rugby now through Josh Cooper. Level the game up. And they're underneath the sticks. So they are surely going to go in front. Great finish by Cooper there. Fantastic finish there. Cooper the wheels. You can see if you've got the, that defensive yeah, markup. So if you're marked up player on player, there's not obvious, no obvious space. You've got to basically give it to somebody to to use their strengths to beat someone to create something. You can just see him having go back at himself using that footwork, and he definitely created something there. Almost looks as though he wasn't necessarily trying to create something. He was just trying to get the ball in field and just push and probe and see if he could get on the front foot. And then thought, oh, I think I can do it actually. It quite often does come from that bouncing ball as well. Everyone kind of stops a little bit on a bouncing ball. It's the first person to react. No, just backing himself. When we speak about creating something, it's not necessarily about thinking for others. It could just be for you as well, which you did in this instance. And then the ability to go from kind of walking pace to max pace in three steps. <laughs> Pretty impressive. Oh, a bit of footwork there. Oh, strong in the carry. Gets it off there. Not much going on there. They recycle it right. The gas on these wings from London Japanese are it's unbelievable. Making huge strides down the right-hand side. And they've got numbers left if they can get the ball oh, through. Oh, that's Surely, ref. Surely. No breakdown, oh. I think, so he's still on side. Clever use of the laws to stay in the passing lanes. Oh, strong carry and the offload, and it's straight through for number 14. Fantastic finish. All oh, bit of wheels, but he gets his ball down. Fantastic finish there. Good offload, opening up the space, and he puts it straight on the poles. Max Murray with the try. All came from that intercept after the massive London Japanese break. London. And I think I'm right in saying you're probably a more of an expert on the laws than me, but I think because there was no breakdown, there is no offside line, despite the fact that so much has, has gone on in the intervening period. So he's clear to make the intercept. Completely. And that's one of the things we work hard on doing is actually staying high and keep staying high, putting the pressure on. Because like you said, unless there's a breakdown, you don't need to, but I think London Japanese here will be kicking themselves. They had probably a three on one, if not a four on one, but they just got a bit too excited. They didn't hold their feet, didn't get quite enough depth, which could have been an easy walk in try for them. And you just show his transition speed. Um, and then fine rugby now are suddenly under the post just from, just from that pressure they put on. Yeah, they'll be hurting from that one because the try was on and it ended up going the other way. They're showing some nice touches in attack, the London Japanese. Playing a brand of sevens that's fairly pleasing on the eye. Just got to see if they can find some results from it. They had that early try. Can they push for another before we go in for half time? Oh, forward pass there. It's, it's quite oh. old school, almost, how they're playing. They're kind of looking oh. for the width to width, trying to find that little, little gap when kind of waiting for somebody to give them a read. You yeah, see. it's kind of classic sevens. Yeah, it? exactly. Which we, you don't see classic sevens as much anymore. The game's evolved a lot. I'd say quite nice to see, really. Always very pleasing to see. Half time, Fine Rugby now lead 14 points to five. Now, talk to me about Booby Buckets. So the Booby Boys are having a great time. Obviously, two weeks ago, they won the uh, Worthing Seven social scene. Obviously, coming off the back of that win. So, yeah, obviously, the same sort of team sheet. Lost a few new players. About three boys have come in. Three were out of COVID and injuries. Uh, but no, good bit of form. We've had a great day out so far. We won the first game of the day, 54-0 uh, against the Old Actonians. And just coming off a 24-12 victory against uh, Nomads. So hopefully, uh, going on against uh, London Liquid, the boys will find some form, bit of flair, and we'll you know, top the pool.
your command of your team stats is outstanding. <laughs> no, I mean, as player, coach, and just an inspirational leader, we do our best. That's all, that's all we can do. <laughs> the question everyone's asking, though, is where can I get one of these visors? Oh, these visors. Lovely that you asked that. So currently, if you are out here at the festival, there's a booby stand right next to you, the Bearback Salsas and by the DJ booth, but also they're available online. So boobybuckets.com, get yourself a visor, get yourself a bucket hat, and you'll be looking fantastic this summer. The next couple of days is going to be a scorcher, so get yourself some good headwear, get some beers down you, it'll be fantastic. <laughs> Can't you believe it? Couldn't have said it better. I'm getting involved. I want also one of the um, the bum bags. Oh, they are good. So I'm, pl I'm, plug I'm plugging you big here. Who Come needs on. a handbag? We've got bum bags. They look fantastic. Multiple colours, black is simple, white is simple, pink. I, do, I have to give you a thread. You know, I have to literally give you the inch. You take that mile. I love it. Go sell them. <laughs> this is basically an unpaid sponsored ad and we love it for <laughs> movie buckets. I, I, can't, I can't believe how much how much you've got out of this. This is incredible. Oh, I just gave I mean, He's on for another game as well. I commented on the game and I've done a full sponsored ad having a great time. For those who don't know, can you talk a little bit about who your founder is and, and why people may have seen him? Guys, so our founder is a great bloke called Chugs Wallace. I mean, Chugs is a very strange name. His actual name is Oliver Wallace. But when he was young, apparently he was very, very sentimental and his mom called him Cuddles and Hugs. And the name Chugs has stood the test of time. That is absolutely wonderful. I love that story. And for the few people People who occasionally dabble in some very toxic TV at 9 p.m. <laughs> Chugs was on Love Island very, very briefly last year. Uh, didn't couple up, uh, just obviously was there for a brief cameo. And he's our founder, heck of a bloke, and he loves the movie Bucket's name. Just there to plug visors. <laughs> oh, entirely. Listen, visors, bucket hats, you tell me. I'm going to plug all day long. Well, we're back underway on the pitch and find Rugby now are in possession, leading 14 points to five, of course. Oh, great offload there. Strong carry, does he power through? Leg drive, leg drive, could be a finish. The ref calls it. Held oh. up, phenomenal defense there by London Japanese there. Phenomenal stuff there. Ooh, someone's injured there. So we don't have the rule in sevens of the goal line dropout. We're still old school. I like that though. I, like, I, do, I, I quite like the, like the goal line dropout though. I like a goal line dropout, but I like the sevens is different. Don't you think, though? Okay, here's here's an opinion. I don't know. If we you like opinions. if you um uh, yes. if you work hard to hold up a try, why should you be rewarded with a five meter scrum? I agree with that. I mean, may uh, I ask? Not, you should not be rewarded. Sorry, there's yeah. in the attacking team. Yeah, may I ask? My, my answer to that is a forward. I think obviously as the attacking team there, you were very close to finishing off. You haven't lost the ball per se, so the five minute scrum gives you another go at obviously your failed attempt, but you haven't lost the ball. But think how hard it is to hold up a try. It's quite a good skill. No, it takes a lot of strength. I mean, obviously defensively, coaches obviously will praise you for such phenomenal strength for ground. But I think obviously, you know, I agree. People, I like the debate. I with, a lot, with a lot of people not being into rugby, and I think having attacking play always been. No. Is the compromise to both of those opinions? Oh, entirely. Oh, footwork speed. As clinical fine finish. Rugby now. Scorch through. That is an outstanding bit of finishing and pace yep. from Henry Poon. <laughs> and Poon quickly takes it over. Two points on while, and other scores 19 to 5. But. To go back to our point about goal line dropouts, does the goal line dropout not offer the same, the compromise basically between this that is my argument, argument, which is that it's a reward for the defence, but the attacking team is still more than likely to get the ball back in a very attacking position. Uh, true, I'm obviously with a, with a draw line drop out, you're obviously going to, you know, kicking the ball back normally around the halfway point. So obviously so opening up the then. game, meaning that, you know, the game is a lot more open, but I think any attacking team would rather have the ball on the five metre line. Would you agree? Oh, you'd rather the ball on the Entirely. five meter line, no doubt. But as a compromised position, I it's think not a bad one. A more open rugby, the drop kick out gives you that as a viewer and also as a team. It's broken up defence, you're more likely to score again. So, yeah, I think both sets of arguments have a strong debate on their side. I think you know the game will evolve. But I think oh, unlucky knock on there. London Japanese had a chance to get a good bit of momentum there, but unlucky a knock on halts that. And it'll be a scrum for first RR. Yeah, that's the one. Find rugby now. There we back go. In the game. We're back in the game, team. One for you to think about. What are your opinions? Write them in the comments <laughs> on YouTube. We want to know. Goal line drop out or scrum. But as we are now, it's Find Rugby Now 21, London Japanese 5. Amy Watson's on media extraordinaire. <laughs> Sparking debate, left, right, and centre. Oh.
Oh my word, he's having one. Oh, he cuts him open. Oh, he couldn't. Oh my word, he could find space in the closet. Look at him go. What a finish. Oh, foot in touch. Oh no, that I was just about to say, I think that would have been finish of the tournament so far. That was sensational. I'm heartbroken for him. That was almost fantastic player. He carved up three defenders inside, outside. Bit of footwork, bit of gas. I thought he put it away in the corner. Stitched him one on the highlight. Inside, outside. Oh, surely. Oh. You know, that's tight, you know. Eagle-eyed from the touch judge. I would love a TMO there. That was a very close call. But I'll give the touch judges dues. He was closer to that than anyone else in the entire postcode. No, very rich. Obviously, to be fair, speaking as obviously on behalf of the buckets, the officiating this entire tournament has been great. So in this scenario, we'll give the touch judge the benefit of the doubt. Oh, they take it quickly. Fine rugby now are starting to play with real ambition here. It's like that try before has just oh. sparked them into total life. Not that they were going too slowly beforehand, but they uh, feel like they fancy this now. It's interesting just looking at the body language of the two teams, like you said, not just finding around, but have, have the heads gone down slightly of London Japanese? Just don't get the quite the same vibe of energy. And actually, that's really important. We talk about faking it till you make it kind of vibes, like staying with your chest proud. Like, even if you're really tired, can you just play those games with defence? Let, don't let them know you're tired, you know? Advantage, high tackle. And Japanese Ooh. passing the ball into the ref there. High tackle. I thought the ref had given uh, them a penalty for it, but no, there was a high tackle beforehand. The ref's not been that harsh on himself. Japanese working Strong hard. Strong carry by Latin Japanese. Second advantage. Penalty advantage. Now the boys can play. Let's see how they use the ball. Let's see how they utilise it. Go short side. Oh, he's too strong, too big, and fantastic finish by the London Japanese boys. It's not Russ over. Mold with the try. I mean, surely two minutes left, they could pull off a comeback. We've seen Stranger Things. Oh, entirely. Heck of a series as well. Stranger Things on Netflix. Heck of a series. <laughs> I must say, I think I'm probably one of the only ones not to have watched Stranger Things. Nor have I, actually, to be there fair. Nor have I. It's on the list. I sadly uh, had no intentions of watching it, but I do have a female a female sister who said we're going to watch this today, and that was you, the you've daily got a female watching. sister. That's correct. <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, I had to specify. I wasn't too sure. <laughs> no, it's good. We talk about that ability to still still turn it on. I was just saying about the body language, but you can see that will now lift them. Black. Can they get another one in? Are you captain? Potentially a you can't for now, bit you too are. much to do that to pass, you had to tackles, get the win, no more, but. Please. You never know, as we said, strange things have happened and watch this space, could come back, could okay, be on. Deep kick off. Deep kick, they're very bold choice given the amount of time left in the game. Ooh, what's happened here? Ooh, offsides, unlucky for the Japanese. That would probably make it an unwinnable game with a minute left to go, but strong showing and strong fight from both teams today. It's one of those kick yourself moments, you've just got momentum back. And it's something so preventable as well. Just having that discipline to just stay behind the kicker. Instant momentum change straight away. And a lot of the time, particularly at the, the social level, it's the difference between being used to playing with a proper touch judge. Strong and playing carry with one of your finish. teammates holding the flag. Completely, but look at this flare. Running onto the ball. <laughs> Support lines there, change of angles, everything you want in a sevens game. And that seals the deal. Some of the rugby that Fine Rugby now have played in this game has been absolutely brilliant. Just playing with that sense of, of freedom and flair. Fantastic. I'm, as a general spectator, I'm loving their work. As a potential quarter-final opposition, not too happy here, but we'll see how this goes on. Eh? We'll see how it pans out, eh? You boys can take on anyone, no? Oh, trust the BB boys. Well, we, we can do what we can, hey, but it could be one heck of a feat. These boys are playing some fantastic rugby, and that is full time here. Yeah. Well, the BB boys are going to be up next. Ladies They're facing gentlemen, London Liquid Sevens, fantastic. but here in the build-up to that, we are fine rugby now took the victory.
against London Don Japanese. Donald's going to go back behind, in front of the camera now. He's going to get his face on show, I think. Am I being sent away? Off I go, you're, apparently. <laughs> you're, you're being sent to be on screen. That's how much we love your work. So, it's goodbye from myself and Amy. It's been fantastic having your company all morning and, and plenty of the afternoon as well. Dave Rogers and Rachel Burford are going to take over from us, but first we're going to hear from Dave and you know who. So big thanks to Angus and Amy there, bringing us the action all day long here at Lit Sevens. I'm joined by the man you just heard on commentary, Donald. What did you think of that last game? Listen, fantastic game. Honestly, both sides pretty gave their all. But I'll be the boys in the green and the green, the green and black were just too cool, too clinical, and fantastic win for the boys. So now we move on to your team, Booby Buckets. Booby Buckets, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> hold your hat. It's going to be a blinder of a show. It's going to be a blinder, is it? Oh, the boys on some good form. Literally two weeks ago, winning the Worthing Sevens, and now back here, two wins under their belt. Hoping to top the pool. Wow. Should be fantastic. And of course, you've got uh, Chugs from Love Island in your side as well. Chugs was the founder of the Booby Buckets, the founder of the team. Great man, great heart. Hopefully, he carries the boys through to a strong win here. So, who else is in that side that we should be looking out for? Who else can get those points on the board? Today? All right, at the moment, I think our player captain at the moment, Josh Class, having a great tournament, led us well. Joe Moriarty and uh, Alec O'Connor. Fantastic tournament, and they've played so so well. Those are our three talisman, but our rolling subs give us a bit of depth and range that you know other teams must be wary of. And what are you a more defensive side, attacking side, or just a bit of everything? I think I think very much expansive attacking play. Literally, we love a bit of flair, love a bit of open width, and then on defense, we just you know shift and pull. We don't want to press too aggressively. Just see how the game. Let the game come to you on defense. You know. Well, Donald, you yourself and the whole team definitely styling and profiling. We'll see what you can do in this game as we send you back to commentary to our commentary team. You'll lose my face, but see my voice, booby. Let's go, boys. <laughs> Thank you, my chairs. <laughs> Take it with me. But listen, the game is oh strong kick off there. The boys are like, let's go, but they're working hard. Wasco, our social sec, carrying hard there. Big support lines. Ooh, a bit, a bit risky there. Looks like out there. London Liquid attacking hard. The boys oh, behind Ed Gurney nice pushing cutout. through. Ooh, massive take there. Let's see how the boys recover this back on. Yeah, right. Nice use of the space here on that defensive side. Is looking to spread the play, but. I think the Booby Boys want to obviously settle down a bit, obviously get a bit, get, get, get better control and then see how the game comes to them. Now they're carrying Ed Gerling, big strong carry, doesn't doesn't like to pass much, likes to just root one rugby straight down the middle. Ooh, unlucky for the lads there. The prize, we're back, we've got one more game, <laughs> we're not gone yet. Oh, you just couldn't get enough of me, they came back for one we, we more. We came back for Donald. They thought they were on their <laughs> way, they thought the Booby Boys are like, we'll stay for one on. Tell what? you what, these kits are, are similar similar colours when they all merge against each other. That's I, right. I think I know a guy that can tell them apart. Yeah, it's fine. I, luckily, I'm he also an, knows a few I'm names. not an optician, but if you don't have 2020 vision, this might be hard to see. But if you're careful, the lighter blue are the mighty booby buckets, and on the left, the darker blue are the London liquid. Thank you for the clarification there. And this advert was sponsored by Specsavers. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, the booby boy stealing over. Jay Carvey carrying hard. Cheeky offload. Ooh, Elliot slows it down nice and easy. Carrying hard needs a bit of support there. Fantastic clear out there. Booby boys might be playing with a bit of flow and steez here. Boys going wide. Tyler's man, Joe Moriarty. Is he too big? Is he too quick? The answer to all that is yes. And all he goes, hopefully under the polls. That's five points for the booby boys. Are we having a great time? I'm having a great time, I mean, are you? I'm a bit speechless, to be honest. I don't I don't think I can add to that. Amy, I won't <laughs> lie to you. If you just come on, join the ride, you will I will carry you here. The booby boys are gonna do wonders here. Joe, unlucky not to get the two points there, but good to start with the boys. Nice early try. Definitely, so, they're here to show up, they're here to play. So great, great rugby to watch. Great you the with and Joe Moriarty, bit of his session, just obviously put the wheel down and he was straight hammer time, finished there. 
So, who are the who are the lads to look out for? So, Joe Moriarty, the boy just scored there. He's had a great tournament so far. Bit of flair, bit of aggression, great head on the shoulders. I think, obviously, Charlie Firth, he's our substitute 10, the boy of the 10 right here. Good eye for the game. Very patient, not too fr frantic, which you love to see. And, yeah, I think, overall, those are two of the four big players. We are slightly resting our captain. He's had a great two games. We put a lot of pressure on the Nomads game because Nomads, we've played them a few times. Great team. Uh, but now, listen, obviously, not would it say our second string side, but strongly, largely our bench team. So a good team here. Yeah. I hope we take the win here, yeah, but you never know. The bench team might prove you wrong. They might, might turn themselves into the starting team by Ooh, the end of this. As, a, as the manager coach here, yeah, I trust these boys with my life. Eh? They can do it. They can take us home. Oh, they play quickly. Big Ed Gerling. He doesn't, oh my word. Does Charlie Firth have the wheel to take the tackle? Can he make it? Firthy, what a tackle by Charlie Firth. He works hard. We lose the ball. He worked like a starving child to get that back there. Fantastic work on defense. You love to see it. Amy, any thoughts? <laughs> it was absolutely fantastic cover tackle. I was just going to say that that first play from London Liquid, it was, you just saw how if you offload before you've won that collision, that's where you go wrong essentially you've got to win that collision first you've got to fight you can't preempt an offload it's got to be something that naturally happens um but just no just fantastic work right he got the angle there to get that defensive cover Ooh, after a lovely there. intercept and now it's a chance charlie to first going out wide hope there was no As obstruction Donald will tell you. <laughs> apology there i got two carried He's away excited. don't worry you carry on i will do my absolute best now we have wasco carrying strong we hope they get a good clear out there oh fantastic there by london liquid but the baby boys are just too strong wasco bit of flair bit of momentum strong carry funniest coming i must tell you there so obviously the boy who just obviously gave away the intercept we have a running joke in our team that he can't pass and have him giving that away is a very much on brand well, he's definitely not going to pass again now, is he? I think he'll go route one rugby straight down the middle. Imagine, oh. imagine being called out on TV that you can't pass. Ed Gerling, I was talking to you, sir. I hope you play this back. I was talking to you, my boy. Now the B-Boys take the quick tap here. Let's see how they use it. Ooh, attempted flare there, but not much going on there. Oh, good recycle. Charlie Firth going out wide. Now we have Wesco. Easy, son. Easy. Oh, dancing about. Marcus Smith, can you see this boy play? Marcus Smith, can you see this boy play? Eddie Jones, I hear you won today, but if you want to win the third test, call up Wesco to this last game in Australia. He might win you the whole series. Fantastic finish. Bit of footwork, bit of flair. Too big, too strong. You love to see it. Get in, my son. Oh, he's kicking as well. Wow, not a one dimensional player. He can do it all, surely. He can do it all. Donald is here all day, team. Go find him, funny enough, by the booby buckets. A shock horror, I will be there. Didn't I don't know, we, be, we, might not, we might not let you leave the commentary. <laughs> oh, I won't lie to you. Issue with my commentary, it might be at times a bit one-sided, eh? Hey? So, I mean, obviously, I want both teams to get a fair shake, but when the boobies are on play, you can't stop them. Look at him go. Yes, my son, carry. Two fans, three fans, bit of a skip. Go on, my boy. You love to see it. You absolutely love to see it. OK, so flip on its head then. Let's get some London liquid. Liquid London? Liquid London? Li London, London liquid. Liquids. London liquid. London sevens. liquid. Liquid London. Um, let's flip on its head then. What are London liquid going to do to counter the tremendous booby buckets. I personally think, honestly, I think with the way our boys play, the best way would be to slow it down. We love a bit of a loose, scrappy game. We love a bit of uncertainty, both you know, in sort of structure. So if you can slow it down and make us think, you'll probably find a lot more cracks in our system. We haven't extensively gone through defensive platform. So I think if you slow it down and you set up structure, that's when you can crack the booby defense. Heard it here. Structure versus unstructure. Let's hope someone from London Liquid Sevens is listening to this stream live and relaying the message. Also, P.S. to any other coaches who may be listening, I was lying, that was false news. Don't follow that, please. Thank you very much. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, London Lincoln have the ball. Let's see what they can do with it. Oh, strong carry. Would have loved a great hand position. Would have been great for an offload there. <laughs> strong shots for use it. Oh, the, the booby bucket boys are biting too much. Not the structure they were originally taught. Let's see how they... Hold on. Ooh. Liquid do look quite threatening when they get the ball in hand. It's just that they've only really touched it two or three times all game. No, funny, funny enough that you say that, Angus. I think the way Booby have managed to win most of their games is by hogging the ball. Uh, I think, obviously, for us, we know that 
attack the best defence. So if we can sting you the ball, we will do that all day long because, goodness me, we don't want any threats our way. Only thing our boys can tackle are, you know, pints at the pub because, goodness <laughs> gracious me, I would hate them to be defending, eh? <laughs> Lovely try in the corner there. Defence into attack. And I think, for me, it's just looking... It's, again, that f they're winning the physical battle, which means that every single 50-50 is going booby Bucket's way. And it and then they've got the pace to, to execute. It still seems to me, I don't know what, what you think, that London Liquid are preempting a little bit and instead of just kind of having a go and winning that fight and then seeing what comes off the back of it, kind of almost trying to play to a structure as opposed to just relax, have a go, play what's in front of them. Yeah, it's almost as though because they've not been in the game, they're, they're, they've got certain things that they want to do and they're trying to get them all in, but they've only got two possessions to try and get them all into or something. Exactly that. Half time, fantastic. I was just thinking, guys, obviously I'm in a great mood, my boys are playing well, <laughs> but taking that away from it, this is a gorgeous day. Like, let's see if this could not happen on a better weekend. The sun's out, the crowds are just fantastically. And, like, funny enough, though, obviously with Boris Johnson now resigning, Booby Buckets now have the best 10 in England. <laughs> because Mark is in Australia, so Booby Buckets. I wondered where enjoyed. you were going with that. <laughs> <laughs> the number 10 strongly is in the Booby Buckets, man. You have to love to see it. We are going political there for a minute. <laughs> Nicely. <laughs> all safe in PC. We have all safe in PC. Well, 19 nil at half time. Booby Buckets lead against London Liquid Sevens in this final group game of the day before we head into the quarterfinal stages where it's all going to get very serious all of a sudden. Knockout rugby. We love knockout rugby. Pressure think, added. Obviously, with knockout rugby, boys tend to go into their shells. Not as much flair, continuity, safety. So I think the games will be a lot closer, will be a bit less frenetic, and we'll see like a long series of both, both sides trying to hold onto the ball for as long as they can. It's interesting to see how teams do react under pressure. I think, like you said, some teams can thrive, some teams, or not even teams, it's players within that team. I know that we look a lot on kind of how we are under pressure, how can we deal with that? And how can we actually create that in training? Like, I guess more more for the open teams and the, the social teams, the social teams probably here for slightly different reasoning, but for those who are here to win and want to perform, do they do work under pressure, create those scenarios? Back off, blue I mean, Amy, you know the old adage, Coal is made under pressure, but so are diamonds. But some people react differently, some don't. So hopefully it plays well to your strengths. You dig deep and just dig deep up. Oh, good news is, Donald, you've, you've joined the cliche club. We've all got one in so far today. So, Ooh, so well, welcome to the team. Diamonds or built under pressure is the one that I go with. Oh, I'm disappointed myself, but I'll take it. I will take it. Out of curiosity, what are the other cliches that you two have dropped today? Uh. Oh, Six. game Hold of two halves. Nil, nil. <laughs> nil, nil. No, what have we had? Mm. Great pressure there from the nine. That's that, See, that's the aggression that Booby Bucket showed in the first half that we're starting to see from London Liquid. Can they keep pushing the pressure on, making it harder for them to play? So, I was saying earlier that Joe Clark is our captain. He's now on the field here. He'll try to stabilise the attack. You see him delegating even without the ball. Now he controls it. He is literally the tempo and how our boys play off him, so it's vital we have him. And there's our founder, Chugs Wallace, trying to carry. Loses the ball, but he's doing his absolute best there. Oh, Chugsy, that's a swing tackle, boy. Careful. Great hustle by Chugsy. Oh, off his feet. Unlucky, son. Good heart, but unlucky. Poor execution. Not from the penalty, well, I think, no. guys, at this point of the game, I think London Liquid have nothing else to do but just go for it. Literally, the games are all in their hands. They must just put pressure and see what happens. Make Booby crumble, I think the game can be easily, easily theirs. Hopefully not though, but easily theirs. Well, they're giving it a go here, keeping the ball alive and now stabbing it through. You don't see a grubber often in the sevens game. Has he done it well? Oh, bless him. That's a fantastic finish. Oh, I can't even hate that. That's fantastic. Harry Chubb with the key to open that defence. We've seen some really good kicks, kick to scores today. Really, really good. They've been finished so well. In fact, I think pretty much every kick I've seen to score has been has been finished off. And I think that's that's because a lot of these teams are playing with that seven up, that aggressive defence, which means that if you can get that chase on, get on the front foot with that chase, you're going to react quicker than that defensive team. So 
quite often, as long as you can control that at the end. I mean, I'd be interested. Success. You've been here the whole day, obviously watching more rugby than I have. Have you seen a lot of teams playing with the sweeper? I imagine both teams, or most teams are playing very much seven heavy. Has there been much sweeping going on? Are you trying to get ta tactics from us right now? Oh, no, no, listen, information. I, no, no, listen, I just want our viewers to have the best insights they possibly have. I have no agenda here whatsoever. Oh. But if you can share, that'd be great. In, in fairness, very few sweepers, I'd say. I'd say, yeah, majority seven up or, or a very shallow sweep, if anything. Palm on. Palm in, guys. Well, I think, I, I think with the way the, obviously speaking from a booby perspective, we didn't want to have a sweeper in case of the turnover. We actually have seven on attack. The sweeper might be a bit delayed. Now, obviously, playing six against seven on attack. Oh, you can't stop him. That is Austin Wallace, who is Chug Wallace's little brother. But he's a big boy. Oh, bit sturdy, bit frigid, but great, great carry. If the B-Boys can keep it inside, they'll have a better position here. Oh, strong fend off. Does he move the ball? Does he? O'Connor, go on, my son. Put it away. No, he does it still. You love to see it. Somebody stop that boy. Come on, boys. Come on. We reached out with a penalty. You scraped him around the neck. That is the very one. Austin Wiles, you played for Park. He's the younger brother of our founder, Chugs Wallace. Same as the one over there. Very, very, obviously the 50 bounds game plays you know, our flank and eight. Very sturdy carrier. We thought we'd put him into the seven side for a bit of muscle and aggression and looks like it's paid off. It and it turns out a little bit of pace white. as well. Ooh, you'd be surprised, a bit of a dark Light horse tackle. there. Strong carry, look at him, aggression, staying strong in the carry. Obviously the boys recycled well. And then O'Connor, too big, too quick, looked up, bit of a dummy, inside, outside. No, sir, you can't catch him going that quickly, can you? He's a lucky boy that he scored that because there were four men outside him all going, I want to try it. I'm not saying I'm his coach, but if I had seen that happen, there would have been big fights. Oops. Ooh, baby boys get it back on a free kick. Let's see how they use it. Austin with another big carry, unlucky then. Touch there. Was, was that, that a potential knock-on? Knock Intentional? Touch. No, it wasn't. Straight outside. Fair play. Knock-on into touch, guys. So, scrum knocked on line. into touch. We're going to have a bit scrum of debate about whether we scrum want there. a line-out or a scrum. Everyone's got a chance to catch their breath. Scrum Donald guys. sucking in the big knock ones on here. Warming up for the next one. No, listen, obviously happy to get White the right. clean sweep in the group. Obviously, okay. now we're going to the quarter uh, the quarterfinals and the playoff. The quality of Everybody rugby as a whole done. will get up. The intensity goes up as well. So it's got to keep our cool heads. Crouch. We'll work up the same time. We'll see Fine. when our next game is. Obviously, get the boys well hydrated because it's well toasty here. Then on to the next one. Stay behind the ball. We would love to go back to back on two women wins, but you know, rugby is a very difficult sport. You can't predict these things. I was actually no, up, Worthing Sevens. So I saw that victory. We'll scrum back here. And were the BB boys impressive in that final win there? They, they, well, they won, so. Yes. <laughs> Looks like we have another fan in the box here. We love to hear it. We love to hear it. Sorry? Hey, all neutral here. I've already, what, what team <laughs> did I start to be part of earlier? You, you literally became one of the hammers. They just were infectious energy. I couldn't help myself. A little bit like Donald here, so maybe he he will sway me, but no, I'm trying to stay neutral. <laughs> well, I mean, I won't lie to you. In about 30 or so minutes, you'll probably be wearing a booby backs visor on your so, cap, I mean, and I, I think I, your allegiances will be clearly <laughs> set there. Clearly. I can't deny that that might be true, but I'm enjoying stay neutral on these games it's great to see both sides giving everything they've got and the boot boys oh he thought about going inside obviously the pass wasn't too great and obviously it'll be a line out for the langwood liquid sevens into the final minute of the game london liquid can't win it from here they're 26 five down to the booby buckets but can they finish with a flourish like we said earlier as well we don't i mean some people might donald might but state of these pools points mean something here so even if you don't necessarily win this game the difference between losing by 10 or, or losing by 15 could could be the difference to different teams going through so that's why in in the pool stages you fight for every single point you've got no, Amy, you're entirely right there. Obviously, before this game on, the Booby boys were almost guaranteed a place in the quarterfinals, but we still wanted to win here, just placing us better for the... Knock obviously, there are no weak edge. teams in the knockouts, but obviously, potentially the weaker side. So, lay obviously, down, lay down, lay down, every down, win, all points matter. So, could see the London boys still show some fight here, but I think Bob's your uncle and the Booby boys will be taking this win. As you say, though, you know, the, it's it's a seeded tournament uh, for, for the knockouts. So, 
every position where the, you know topping your group isn't necessarily enough. You need to top it well. And O'Connor putting the icing on the booby bucket cakes and he ends it off fantastically and the boys will be taking the three through. points home. It's the last play. And that is indeed the last play of the game. I must just say with my final thoughts, obviously I may or may not end up back here. I want to say, obviously, Angus and Amy, thank you for having me. It's been great to see my boys win from the back of the commentary stand. Uh, maybe back here I might be stuck in the action, but obviously thank you very much for having me. Donald, it's been an absolute pleasure, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> it's been fantastic. What did the kids say? Never a pleasure? No, never a chore, always a pleasure. I think Angus and Amy, I agree with you right there. It's been nothing but more but joyous. Donald, it's been an absolute pleasure. Pleasure. Go and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Enjoy the knockout stages. I think we can safely say you're through to them. Have fun. Sell lots of hats. Got to control my boys. They might get too many white claws in me after forfeits. So I got to keep an eye on my boys. But no, fantastic. See you guys later. It's been a fantastic show. Thank you for having me. Good stuff, mate. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Booby Buckets win that one then. 33 points to five against London Liquid Sevens. We are now about to enter the quarterfinal stages of this tournament, which is where officially now, we've already made our unofficial exit. We make our official exit now. It's goodbye from myself and from Amy. Amy, it's been an absolute pleasure to be alongside you in the commentary box. Likewise, absolute pleasure. And taking over from us, we have Dave Rogers on lead and alongside him, England legend, Rachel Burford. Great shift, Angus and Amy. Take your rightful place at the bar, the barbecue, the pitch side, whatever you're doing for the rest of the afternoon. Great to have your company as always, and great to have your company wherever you're watching around the world. Now it is time to go pitch side. Dave has got another very special guest. Who have you got with you, Dave? It's going to get very awkward with two Daves now, isn't it? We have got Mike from Nomads with me. Oh, Chungy, I'm so sorry. So I'm so sorry. So thank you so much for joining us. That's quite I mean, right. The setup that Nomads have, it's, it's really quite impressive, isn't it? It, uh, it was, but we're, uh, we're in a rebuilding stage at the moment. Um, the pandemic and uh, certain circumstances took, took a lot out of it. So um, the, the Nomads that you knew at the top of all the leagues and the top of all the um, tournaments is, is kind of gone. And now we're rebuilding from the start. But teams have this, don't they? They go through those cycles over the peri over periods of time. But it's a legacy that you guys have built that's also so impressive. And that's the important key here to remember. Yeah, so it came close to us uh, disbanding. And and uh, I have a lovely lady called Faye Wood who who brought us back and uh, fought for the, for, for the brand. Um, and it's all coming back slowly. It'll take two or three years, but hopefully in a few years' time, we'll be back up the top where we were. And the great thing is, as well, is that values behind it. You were just saying there how it was fought for the team to keep the team alive. And that's great. That just shows the community that is behind the Nomads name. That's right. I'm, I mean, the reason we're called Nomads is because we just get players from all over the country come together. Usually, we, we, we go on tour. We meet at the airport and we go. And there's boys from public schools. There's boys from comprehensive schools. There's people who, you know, just play social rugby. Mm -hmm. There's people who played elite, you know, championship rugby. And everyone gets together. We go go abroad and have fun. Nomads being nomads. And that's quite unique, isn't it? That almost meeting at the airport and going straight on tour. There's no kind of free prep at all. It's just going straight for it. That's it. That's it. Literally handing out kit at, in the airport terminal and off we go. And that's a great opportunity for people taking part in that as well. There's, yeah, and, and, and it's, it's, it's good because there's times where you wouldn't get um, private schools, uh, students mixing with, uh, you know, comprehensive. And that's it. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you so much for your time and massive good luck right. into this game. Well, I'm hoping we're going to come back bigger and better every year. Well, we can't wait to bring you back to Lit Sevens 2023. Brilliant. Thank you very much. No problem at all. Thank Cheers. you for your time as we hand back to our commentary team. Cheers, Dave. Always a pleasure to hear from satisfied customers here. And the Nomads are out on the pitch. It's quarterfinal time and they face the Ramblin' Jesters for a place in the semi-finals. It is top of Group B against four, sorry, top of Group A against fourth in Group B alongside me. Uh, we'll start with Rachel Burford. It gets serious from now on, doesn't it? It's knockout footy. You lose, you're out. And in the sunshine, it's that mix of wanting to lift the trophy and wanting to enjoy the rest of the day. Yeah, it's now at the business end, isn't it? This is where the fatigue comes in, more pressure with the knockout stages. But both teams have had good form over the day so far, so looking forward to watching this one play out. 
And Tess Brown, a rover, is with us as well. You are in the Rambling Jester's kit and you've had a, well, you're injured. Is that a good thing or a bad thing with a day like today? Well, having seen how hard the ground is, potentially not the worst thing, but the girls have performed really well so far today. So really looking forward to uh, watching them smash this one. Yeah, two games, two wins, but it's not been particularly easy, <laughs> has it? No, I think we got two yellow cards in one half in one of those. So uh, four minutes with six players will uh, do that to you. So any excuse to have a rest in this sunshine, even though it's a short rest when you pick up a yellow card in seven. So rambling jesters in the quarter jerseys, nomads in the black and red looking to pull off. Well, it would be a quite spectacular victory, actually, because they've not won a game yet. They've scored a few tries. It's a bit of a, a meeting of the minds in the middle there with the officials. Oh, they've got smiles on their faces, so obviously they're enjoying the sunshine as well. We'll be bringing you all the way through until all of the trophies are lifted here at Twyford Avenue. Pitches have been in perpetual motion all day. Great tournament, and we'll be bringing it to its conclusion. Ah, that's what we were waiting for, the third official. I'm not going to lie to you. I'd expect him to be faster than that in those yellow boots. <laughs> well, at least he's come matching today. <laughs> he's actually the referee. It's good to know things like that don't go unnoticed. <laughs> matching boots and jerseys. OK, finally, we're going to get this one underway. It is the first knockout fixture. This is the only women's quarterfinal we'll be bringing you live. The rest are happening on the outside pitches. Oh, rock, paper, scissors with the referee in the way, so I can't even tell you who's won it. London International Sevens, Women's Open quarter final. This is the top standard. And after all that, Chesters were shaping up like they wanted to kick off. And the teams will stay at the same ends, and Nomads will get us underway. Small squad for Nomads, just eight players to choose from. And underway we go. Jester's receiving the kickoff, moving the ball out to the right-hand side. This is Treco, looking it to get to the gas on the wing. There's a foot in touch, suggestion of a high tackle. And in fact, the high tackle was given. Oh, the tap and the go. There's a big gap opened up. And Courtney Treco scores the first try with the first attack. Good start, Rachel Burford. Yeah, excellent. You can see from Jester's what they're trying to do. They want to move the ball to the outside channels to really stretch the defence and then just deal discipline on the high contact. But again, playing at that high tempo, Trico not waiting at all for Nomads to get back and get set, takes them on their back foot and then manages to get five points for her team. Yeah, Courtney's uh, currently the Richmond women's captain, so she's had a great season uh, steering the ship from number 10. But as you can see, she's got a bit of pace and footwork herself, so finished off that try beautifully. Just as five nomads nil, early stages of this quarterfinal. Just as strike first in that quest for the semi, plenty of hang time. On that restart, and it's gathered clean as well, but Nomads have managed to get hands on it. Look for a second, like Jester's had won that ball back immediately. Just over a minute gone here. Look at all that hustle and bustle in the Tackle background. Brilliant tournament, this. And two great teams looking to continue their adventure. Carried forward by Tashana Good. Ball's popped out the back. Someone's going to need to get their hands on that. It was Amber Howell. Hard yards being made by Nomad. And every yard is hard out there. 30 degrees sunshine baking down on these players. Oh, good carry. Up over halfway. Now the chase is on and Nomads are going to break clear here. Well, what a response from Nomads. It's great patience from them, you know, just picking around the rucks, forcing Jesters to come in and make the tackle, and then just a simple 1v1, a bit of good footwork, good strong fend out, and manages to find a bit of space. You see there, just get tight around the breakdown, they've just opened up. Ready to go. And then she's got Hold a long on, way please. to finish, but pins her ears back and gets all the Hold way on, to please. under the sticks. Freeman's gone. Yeah. 
brilliant about that as well is I spoke to the Nomad team manager before the game. He's had the team sheet in his pocket all day and he's on given it to me, soaked tent. with sweat, without a number six on it. So I've just sent somebody out on a mission to find out who scored that brilliant try. And we'll do her justice next time she gets her hands on the ball. But here come Jesters again, looking for a two on one on the outside. Oh, that is a brilliant fend. And rammed in Jesters, strike straight back. Tell you what, your team can go forward well, can't they? They love it. They love the speed around the outside. And Lizzie's been on great form. So this is actually her first start for Jesters, and she's doing brilliantly. Yeah, she had two brilliant breaks Sorry. down on the outside just to really stretch that defence. But all came from a penalty set piece. Really well oiled. This Jester team isn't new to travelling around on the circuit. It's a little wrap around and then finds the speedsters and she backs her pace. Just here, you just see the little link, short line coming through and lovely little hands here, draws the defender in, just makes that edge defender just gamble. Lovely little step inside. Great acceleration on from that. Yeah, Hannah Dinage. Just got caught flat footed back on her heels yeah. and once yeah. you open the door. Yeah. Just in front of us here, we've got some kind of ball boys game attach. Everyone wants to get involved okay. here yeah. at Lit Sevens. But just as 12, Nomad 7 here in this quarter final. Two chances for Jesters, two tries scored. They're deep with that restart. Oh, and the offload attempted was intercepted by Emma Monday. And now Rambling Jesters can come again up this right hand side. Here's Musk, the try scorer, straightens up, gets the offload away. Courtney Treco goes through unopposed for her second. Jesters third, and they are lethal up the right hand side. For a minute there, you thought the mystery six was going to go through after that great kick, kick off receipt from her, but gives the offload, gives the ball back to Jesters. What I love about this is just the way that they realign, they adapt to now going from defence into attack, which gives them the whip and the space to be, to be able to attack to the outside. And that Trico, double effort here. She moves the ball to the outside, knows where the speed is. See here, just realigning, quick hands through, but doesn't give up, doesn't think that the game's over. Follows and supports on the outside and then finishes the job for her team. Yeah, really good awareness, wasn't it? Because when you've got someone hanging off your shorts, it's always the temptation to pump the legs, but looks up, sees Trico on the outside. Brilliant try. Same way on the restart, that one dropped right on the 10 and Nomads do well to bat the ball back, but now it's a bun fight and it comes back Jester's way. Again, they're working the ball at the right hand side. This usually means bad news for Nomads and I think it's going to again. Well, two for Treco, two for Lizzie. And at what point do Nomads just stand everybody defending the right-hand side? Because it is glorious stuff here for Jesters. They're marching into the semi-finals. Yeah, they're a dangerous duo at the moment. Everything down this right-hand side of the pitch is coming through the both of them. But the hard work done from the restart, putting pressure on Sophie Sham, getting the ball back for her team. And then again, that recycling, getting some depth to be able to attack to the Great outside is really key. But here, just the desperation around the loose ball talked about it already, but realigning and shifting the ball, finding the space and finding your speedster. And these two play. are working so well together. And what a finish again from Lizzie. Four tries then for Rambling Jesters. In their third game of the afternoon, this quarter final. Deep from the restart. Nomads let it bounce. It's taken by Anna Martinez Bailey and now taken up to the 10. Oh, but turned over. And this time it's Rambling Jesters up the left hand side. Well, they're making it look easy. A stroll in the park. Trust me, it won't be in this heat in these conditions. But Rachel Burford, have they blown an opportunity yet? It has been so clinical from Rambling yeah. Jesters. Yeah, I think it's all from the restart. You talk about sevens and the possession that you need, and every time they're putting the pressure on. 
right from the get-go, which allows them then the opportunities. Just Nomad's too slow to secure their rucks, which gives the ball back. Great turn over there. And then just shifts to the outside. Yeah, Dunker Sloot gets her first of the quarter final. Five tries, you've got to be happy with that. That's uh, that's a place in the semi-finals all but guaranteed. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. And as you can see, Noah was getting a bit um, a touchy, giving Liz, Lizzie all the uh, all the glory. So she thought she'd nab one for herself. And I believe that's like her fifth or sixth try today. So speed on both sides and the girls are executing ruthlessly so far. So pretty good halftime performance. I think we'll take that. Rambling Jesters, 31, Nomads, seven. Well, we've got this short break at halftime test. So give us an idea of, of what the day's been like for Rambling Jesters or what the summer's been like, really. Well, it's been a very hot day. This is definitely <laughs> the hottest day we've had this summer. But um, no, it's been really good. Um, the girls have taken to it well. They've really kind of developed the game plan throughout the day. We've got a few new players in the squad today. So just bringing them in, um, getting everyone used to the shape that we want to play and attacking that 15 channel in the wide channels is precisely what we're looking to do and getting that depth as well. And it's really nice to see that the girls have absolutely nailed it. Got kind of two games out of the way, had some difficulties, obviously got some yellow cards, um, and now really coming into their own, peaking just the right time, really. Well, you say bringing new players in then, what's the selection process? Well, <laughs> it's an invitational side, as with most women's sides, so there's a lot of, um, there's actually a lot of competition at the moment because Jesses have done so well. We won the Super Series last year, obviously, didn't compete this year, but and you know, the kit is great, so that's always a positive. It is a good kit. We like any kit with quarters, don't we, Berth? <laughs> yeah, you don't need to convert us. <laughs> Gets mistaken for Harlequins all the time, actually. <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah, definitely. Especially when you're winning. Nomads receiving the kickoff in the second half. 31 points to seven here. And Nomads Back receiving the ball, looking for that second try. Black your ball. So Nomads, a Sean squad, which is hard work at any time, especially when it's hot and dry like this and when you're playing against a team who are continually taking it to you, like Rambling Jesters are here. They've got their foot on the throat. They're looking to go up the right-hand side again. This is where the danger is. And here is Lizzie Musk, two tries for her. Working the ball back to the middle. Great composure here. Sophie Shams pulling the strings in the middle. Now working it out to the left-hand side. And this time, Jasmine Gibbons will add her name to the ledger. Take rammed in jesters up to 36. And put another nail in the poor nomad's coffin. Yeah, for me, around the breakdown is where jesters' urgency in comparison to nomads. They had two turnovers there and then just the work rate off the ball to be able to then move it, both Hill and Sharm in the middle there, just distributing the ball, putting the ball out in front for their winger to be able to go on the outside. This will be a really confident start to the second half. Well, Lauren Ebeling with the conversion. Certainly had the line, did it have the length? Another good finish, though, up the left-hand side, Jasmine Gibbons. Conversion did have the line, did not have the length. So just the five-pointer there, but it's all relative at this point, and it will be Lauren Ebeling to get us back underway. Again, choosing to go deep, and Ramblin Jester's closing up, and Nomads, no one really attacking that ball. Now Amber Howell stepping back in. Can they make a line break? And the Martinez Bailey were in 13, getting driven back, and Jester's still hungry for the ball. Turned over by McFarland. Back into the 22 they go, looking for the offload, finding the offload. It is too easy. Yeah, disappointing for Nomads there. They're just playing so tight that it doesn't ask any questions from the Jesters. They can keep their line. They know their spaces between one another. And they just keep forcing them that, pushing the pressure on. The space, and then the skill error comes in. 
And again, we've talked about how Jester's urgency around the breakdown, urgency to re realign, and then somebody straight on a bouncing ball, and then you've got a support player on the shoulder as well. It's a really, really strong start to this second half from Jester's. Yeah. Well, let's talk about turnaround time then, because to win any tournament like this, these one-day tournaments, recovery is at a minimum. 20 ball. past four, the semi-final is scheduled for. That'll be what? About half an hour turnaround? That's wild. Yeah, that's it's a tough ask, but I'm sure as coach Tess next to me here, we'll have great <laughs> recovery <laughs> protocols in place for our team. It's probably, probably look to see some um, players coming off in a moment just to try and rest some of those legs up. They've pretty much game. secured themselves into the, next, into the semi at 20 past four. Yeah. But yeah, it's tough going, these one day tournaments. Real quick turnarounds. I mean, seven's hard enough over three days, let alone just in one. She's been quiet for the last minute or so because she's been trying to order 50 kilos of ice from Uber Eats to get the ice baths going. But we are back underway. Yeah, that one knocked on by Sophie Jones. Scrum here. Scrum. That's the first one of the match, isn't it? Yeah, 11 minutes in and we're seeing our first set piece. But great opportunity. Everybody loves the scrum because now it ties in five players around the scrum area that could open up for the outside Crunch. backs. Bind. So Faye Robinson Set. to put in. Right, like those non-matching socks for Ramblin' Jesters. You were right, it is a great kit. But now with those backs on backs, Jesters looking to go all the way across and there's Ebeling and eventually has to check back. Wasn't quite enough space on the outside, but that's the composure, isn't it? Not making the moves when they don't have to. Here's Sophie Shams inside to Jasmine Gibbons. Gets the offload away. That might be the pick of the tries. It's a hat-trick hat for Courtney Treco. <laughs> coast to coast. And rambling jesters. Well, treating it more like a Barbarians game with a try like that. That was a wonderful try. See, moving the ball to the outside for a minute there. I thought Lydia Thompson was on the pitch the way that she was swerving in and out, ebbing. But then just moving the ball back to the other side, we talked about that work rate in the middle to realign, to give yourself the depth to move the ball to the outside is so important. And here Sham just puts a bit of pace on it, pulls and drags the defenders across, lovely little late switch. And you've also got the short line coming on the shoulder there. We've talked about Courtney Treco being on shoulders all game, and that's why she's running in for a third try there. Well, she's not got over the try line, but Sophie Shams has played a massive part in the 15s game, really versatile toolkit. I've seen her play back row, I've seen her play full back and on the wing. She is showing that full display of skills today for Ramblin' Jesters. Another good leg drive here from Amber work, Howell. It's not been from lack of trying for Nomads. So, Suze Franks and then Amber Howell again. Is there a try here for Nomads in the second half? They did score Thank a great you. one in the first. Momentary lapse from Jesters and a little bit of brilliance from Nomads. Got them over the whitewash. That's a good turnover. Holding. Uh, time off, injured player around the head. It's Nomads being really direct there. Trying to go really tight through the, through the channels. If you go tight, you've got to bring support with you. You've got to be able to secure that ball. And Jesters were just so patient, just allowed the tackle to happen and then pounced on top of the ball. Ebbin. Big blow. Eblin, no. sorry. Gets over the ball. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we get you up? this is something that we don't like to see. Well, we do like to see this. Injured players getting back to their feet. And it is Amber Howell getting the applause. The time's up now. It's last play. However, what this does mean is for the remainder of the game, and this is the last play, which is relief for Nomads, because they'll only have six on the park. So Jester's looking to hit the half century. But they're not going to get the chance because it's knock-on advantage. Advantage over. Well, it was knock-on advantage. That might be the shortest one in recent memory. And fair play to Nomads. They're going to play to the full-time whistle here because they could kick the ball off and end it. Instead... Off the leg, play They're going to try and get a meat pie to finish. Tackle, roll! Fair play to Jesters. 
They're not going to let that happen. Penalty Over. here for Nomads. Play on, that's fine. Tap and go by Suze Franks, up over halfway, out to the left-hand side. The pass there by Duffy. Okay, knock on there. And that knock on will end it. Rambling Jesters march to the semi-finals. They've beaten Nomads by 48 points to seven. A brave effort by Nomads with only seven available players, but Rambling Jesters go three from three, and that actually takes them up to 98 points scored in those three games as well. Tess, we'll let you go to your team shortly, but you must be pretty happy with how that went. Yeah, really happy. I think uh, the girls performed exactly the game plan that we set out, and uh, now it's going to be into into those ice buckets for uh, for 10 minutes before the semi-final. Well, maybe we will see you for that one as well, but go and enjoy the sunshine and celebrate with your team. Uh, Rachel Burford, too good, too clinical. Pretty simple, really. Yeah, I think Jester's just really well organised, moved the ball really, really well from one side to the other. Really clinical around the breakdown, looked after the ball and then defensively just stayed really patient. Every time they didn't have the ball, it didn't force anything, but they were putting so much pressure onto Nomads that was forcing the errors, getting the ball back and then they were able to execute. You know, a couple of areas that they're going to want to make sure that they're even sharper on is probably making sure that they go for those restarts because they're right on the money. They're, they're going to be coming up against the stronger side in the semi-final. So making sure that they can secure that kickoff receipt will be really, really important. Well, we will be returning to the women's competition for the semi-finals, but now we move back to the men's quarter-finals. It is Akuma Beavers versus Seven Dwarfs. In what colours? Uh, beavers and dwarfs. Be beavers will be pink. Orange. Orange. Yeah. Men's knockout rugby underway here then in the Lit Sevens. We're into the quarterfinals in the women's competition. We've just seen Rambling Jesters make light work of Nomads here. We have Akuma Beavers versus Seven Dwarves. Beavers about to get us underway in the purple and pink. Dwarves receiving the kickoff in the white shorts, the blue jerseys with the orange sleeves. Expecting a tasty one here, Rachel Burford. Yeah, both teams have had good form coming into this game so far. Oh, knockout rugby does something to you, but uh, you know, there's going to be some tired bodies out there and it's who can kind of withhold that pressure, that fatigue and that tiredness throughout this game. It's going to get themselves into a semi. Big high kickoff off the left boot and it's taken on the full. What a start here. And the offload as well. We're going to have a try with the very first play. Seb Reese is going to be on the end of it. It is a picture perfect beginning. That might have been the fastest try scored at the Lit Sevens with seven seconds only on the clock. That's how you execute the restart. They talk about possession is king in restart in, in sevens. And it all starts with the restart. What a great take in the air. It was Charlie Treasure, wasn't it? Who got his hands on it first. And then the support play on his shoulder. Unsuccessful conversion. Always a big ask with a drop kick from out there. But let's take a look at this right from the kickoff. Yeah, the seven draws have got the sun in their eyes. So, but look at that for an offload as well. Off the floor, back door. What a brilliant start for Akuma Beavers. And in fact, it was Lucas Blue. Got my sixes and my nines mixed up there. But either way, great offload, great hand. Seb Reese dots it down in the corner. Yeah. 
And they've gone for that same effort again. This time with Seb Rees, the scorer, who tips that into touch. It'll Final be a four. first touch for seven dwarves. When your opponents get the restart right, this is a very, very difficult game. Oh yeah, it's so hard because then all the momentum's with the, the opposition and you just feel that you can't get yourself into the game. But now this is an opportunity for the Seven Dwarves to strike. Well, looking at the Seven Dwarves team, I don't know if they've got any Brazilians, but there are three in the team that have just got first names. So let's see how they go. This is Elliot Brown. Looking for the short offload, instead it opens up and a bit of crossing there. So the flying mullet can't really spread his wings. Obstruction, unable to make the tackle. God, that is some lid, that is, isn't it? Crikey. He's right back on the defensive work now because Beaver's looking to put the short tackle. line in for Rob Voller. Hands on ground is your first action. Offload Hands by on Jake Kane, sorry, action. turnover by Jake Kane. But illegal says the referee. So Beavers, oh, throwing the dummy, then the footwork, and then Liam Driscoll adds the second. Oh, this is lightning feet from the number four. I think Seven Dwarves there didn't know what had just happened, thought that they had won the penalty. So everyone kind of looking at one another and retreating slowly. And then Driscoll just sees the opportunity. Little step one way, little step the other. What I love is got two hands on the ball, so that manipulates the defenders to just here. Just hands on the floor. You've got you've got to be able to hold your own body weight. So the referee, right call. Cool. Then here they're kind of just walking back, unsure of what's happened. And then Driscoll yeah. just sees the opportunity. Two players. He just drifts on the outside. Gives too much work for the inside man. Little guys through big gaps. Great score. And again, it is that left footer hanging in the breeze. That's not quite going to go 10, but it's taken a touch of seven dwarves. So Akuma Beavers could have won it back, but now dwarves finally with their hands on the ball. That's not a great pass, though. And Collade, one of those Brazilian players with only one name. Next job, boys, next job concedes the scrub. Quick set off, Not really go. seen Seven Dwarves with the ball much. When they have, they just don't seem quite as organised at the moment. Forcing a few passes Boys. there. It's just gifted the opportunity back set. to Beavers now. Yeah, and it comes from Driscoll, but a good scrum there from Seven Dwarves. They've turned that ball over now. What can they do with it? It's Kalade again at the left-hand side this time. Oh, bats the first defender away and gets away from the second. Pumps the legs, pumps the arms, goes for the corner and scores a try full of power, full of pace and full of quality. Maybe that's why he's only got one name because he's got the pace like that. But, you know, he'll be taking all that glory. But all came from the set piece from the scrum. Really strong turnover. Such a key area to have a scrum because it opens up so much of the field, an opportunity for a one on one. Yeah. Now he's got his team right back into this game. Unsuccessful conversion, 12 5 the score. Let's have another look at this. Had a lot of work to do here, didn't he? Yeah, initially it was well defended, but just there. But that's number 12 trying to hunt him down. Trying to chase him down, but look at that good, strong form, sprinter form to the end. That's what they always say is when you're in the contact area, never give up the fight easy, because you might just break through. Yeah, it was Rob Voller he beat, but Voller did well to stick with him because he forced him to touch the ball down wide. Backwards. Kept it at a five-pointer. Now, that's been knocked back, and it's straight back here with seven dwarves. And it's this man, Collade, again. Oh, he's lost it forward that it's time. Picked up by Charlie Esdol. Kuma Beavers driving the legs. Great power there from no. Charlie. Playing into the breeze in the first half. It'll be a welcome breeze as well. Oh, cut him back across the line. That's number nine, Harvey Graham. to go around the outside there could be an option on the inside here instead Seb Reese oh gets away from the tackler and Seb Reese glides in and he has made a very difficult try look very easy indeed 
Yeah, lovely bit of play from Reese there. Again, should never have really got through there. He was well marked by two defenders. But his support play on the inside just then made the defender second guess where he was going to go, which then opened up some space for him to get through and punch through. And he had the legs to finish it. That's his okay. second try. Third for Beavers. And that's another frustrating one yeah, for Seven enough. Dwarves because they've done well to get themselves some territory, some good field position as that conversion goes over just before half time. But yeah, they coughed the ball up and then Beavers didn't have to work too hard to score that try. No, it's just kind of backing off. And at some point you've got to make the decision where you're connected with your team to then go and make the shot. But they're both last defenders just sitting off, which just invited him in. Four tries in that first half, three of them for Beavers, two for Reese, one for Driscoll. Kalaid with that 70 meter effort. All the seven doors, but they've got it all to do in the second half of this quarter final. Akuma Beavers 19, seven dwarves seven. Just looking at that flag blowing just in front of our commentary position. I mean, it'll be welcome out there, but you don't really want to be playing into it, dear. No, definitely not into a second half, and especially when you've got a scoreline that you've got to catch up on. But what you can see with the Seven Dwarves, when they do have the ball, they have been dangerous at times, but it's about being able to get hold of that ball and looking after it. And the Kuma Beavers have just been so relentless with their restarts, gaining the ball back, any opportunity for a spilt ball. They forced the error and managed to get more possession. They've been able to convert that into points every single time. Well, it will be the Seven Dwarves who kick us off in the second half. Cast your mind back to the beginning of the first half. Akuma Beavers scoring with the very first phase. If Seven Dwarves can emulate that or do something similar, then we might a semi-final on our hands. Angus and Amy earlier were talking about commentary cliches. I'm going to wheel one out myself. The next score is really important. <laughs> Sure, that won't be your last one either. No, no, no. We're on for the next couple of hours, aren't we? Strap in, everyone. Referee going through a few final checks. Puma Beavers all stood pretty deep, waiting to receive this. Aaron Asiri. Doesn't he look smart with his shirt tucked in and his socks pulled all the way up? You don't see that a lot in the sevens these days, do you? Very traditional. Yeah, you often see the traditional 15s players. They always play with their socks pulled up. And then the pure sevenists, or the purest sevens players, shall I say, often have the ankle socks on or rolled down at least. Also, what's great about this as well is the uh, camera just to our right is the one that Dave's been doing all the interviews on, but people think it's live, so they all duck underneath it. <laughs> I even did that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will have a second half eventually. The referee's doing his boots up. There's rugby happening all around Twyford Avenue, every pitch in perpetual motion. But we'll be bringing you all the games for the remainder of the day from pitch number one, the showpiece pitch here. Women's social, men's social, and the open tournaments as well. well oh, a ball. God, you need a ball, don't you? Of course you do. Just those basic things that you need to play rugby with. Yes. Oh, do you see that spiral from the touch judge? He's been waiting all day to get an opportunity to do that. I know. Sweet connection. Chop that up, put it on the socials. Beautiful strike. Anyway, second half, away we go. Bit flat. And Seb Reese takes it on the chest. Lovely pick up off the toes there. And then the step inside from Jake Rogers. Offloads that one to Lucas Blue. Beavers still inside their own half. With this lead. Oh, and a missed tackle again. That has been the story for Seven Dwarves. You miss one tackle, you get punished. Yes, the brutal part of Sevens. One missed pass, one drop ball, one missed tackle, and it can convert into points and put your team under a, man, a huge amount of pressure. Felt that the intent 
from the Sevens Dwarves came out with their defensive line, seemed a little bit more connected. But then just one slip of a tackle leads to five points. Just here, just quick shift, lovely Four, little feet, three, steps six. back, gives a little show and go like he's going to go through. He should never be getting through that gap. He's got two men on him. Just head down and go. Ollie Melwood with the try. I mean, yeah, I did just run on the pitch and find <laughs> that out. Yeah. <laughs> the beauty of social sevens. Up it goes then. And then tip back. This time they've got the right footer on the ball. And seven dwarves. Oh, that's a lovely pass off the left hand to set the gas loose on the right hand side. Rides the ankle tap. Oh, that is some score. Seven dwarves. When it goes well, it goes really well. What a finish that is. I honestly, when he got ankle tapped on this hard pitch, I thought his teeth were a goner. But he rode that so well and finished it. Yeah, just the response you won after just conceding some points, but all from the restart. Lovely tap back, wasn't it? Just everybody alive to it. A lovely little break and then support on your shoulder. Just here, just manages to dart through. We just talked about missed tackles being so critical. Just puts his head down. Oh, and you think he's going, but what about that? To keep his balance at full pace. And then dot it down. And I'll give you a cliche, they're now back in the game. They're back in the game, you bet they are. Oh, now this is a contestable one. Really well dealt with by Charlie Treasure, just outside the 22. Jay West pulling the strings now at number seven. Beavers making a lot of sideways meters and find themselves in their own 22. Oh, Dwarves forcing the knock on. Scrum in a great position. 10 minutes gone, still bags of time. They do need three scores though. 16 points the difference. I think Driscoll's just trying to find some space and managed to hand off quite a few players. But just not being able to retain the ball. Oh, look at that power from the scrum for Beavers. Off the toe into touch and then taken quickly. Here's Collade. Dragged to the ground by Zach Rodber. And then they get the ball away quickly. Well, they needed three scores. Now they need two. 26 15. It's all happening very quickly here in this second half, Rachel Burford. With yeah, Seven Dwarves know that they need yeah. to play quickly to get back into this game. So lovely, just taking the, the line out real quick, transition in the middle to shift it to the outside to the speedster. Here, so just here, like... recognises really good. You can see there that Akuma Beaver's just waiting for the line out to be set. Yeah. Okay, he's been so minutes. strong, being able to get that ball away again. Well, that's a second try in quick succession for Charlie Estol. And he didn't rush, uh, sorry, he did rush that conversion because that one's not particularly important, but they are going to need at least one at some point. Well, they might need two here because this is a decent foot race. Oh, like a grease deal. Well, Calais gets back in the end and he's over the ball. Taking a natural call on the ground to prevent the turnover. I tell you what. After he's been clattered from behind, I think that is a pretty harsh call by the referee. Laws of physics doing for the ball carrier there. Oh, that's a good shot as well. Tom Devereaux. Turn must roll away. Well, here comes seven dwarves. Very much game on here. Well, especially Collade can get away and he can. He's got a man in support of him. It's Elliot Brown. Brown racing for the post. Brown getting to the posts. Seven Dwarves, a different team in this second half. 26-20. Yeah, we talked about possession being really critical and they've had the ball and they've taken opportunities. But what about that desperation from them to chase that back? 
and then quick shift to the outside and this Khalid 46 22 time is off we've got a player down not particularly a great ball to handle but handles it so well managed to get an offload out lovely little step and a bit of a physicality fight there against the nine 26 22 he's already yes. smiling he knows that he's in and they're <laughs> right back into this game now <laughs> he loved that fen didn't he it was the right hand to the chest that put the smile on his face water off thank you have we got the ball back time is off 26-22, what a game we have on our hands. It was 19-5 at half time. This restart's gonna be so important for Kuma Beavers to keep hold. Still over a minute to go. Another great spiral, you love to see it, you Come really on. do. Dan Goldstone. Palmed back, bouncing, bobbling ball into the 22. That's a really good pickup under pressure. Akuma Beavers on the ball, but inside their own 22. Now, this has been a part of the game where Seven Dwarves have missed a few tackles and put themselves under pressure. And Beavers look to relieve the pressure by putting boot to ball. I mean, it's unorthodox, but that's a good kick. Yeah, good option. You know, they had seven in the front line. And you can just see that they're hassling them, trying to force the error, force a penalty. You know, where did we see this in the first half? It's almost like it's taken seven dwarves, seven minutes to get into this game, to really bring this physicality, oh, organised right. defence. You know, and all pressure is on Akuma. Yeah, Jake Rogers. Make sure there's a hooker. With the clearance kick, he's made. You need well, a hooker, two metres. That's part of 50 metres there, isn't it? Up over halfway from deep inside his own 22. No hooker in the channel. Oh, and they've conceded the free kick, Beavers. So you chose to with the clock quickly, ticking towards no 14 minutes, just a I reminder that our clock is not linked in with the referee's watch. But this could well be the last play. How decisive will it be? Seven Dwarves looking to keep the ball alive. Has that gone forward? Yes, it has. Is that the end? Oh, it is. What a way to end it. Spirited comeback from the Seven Dwarves, but their tournament comes to an end. Akuma Beavers just about hanging on, Rachel Burford, and booking their place in the semi-final. Yeah, it was millimetre stuff in the end there, but really good comeback from the Seven Dwarves. You know, they'll be disappointed with how they started that first half and had a real uphill challenge in that second half to get back. But they'll be proud with that effort. But Akuma Beavers, you know, from the start, they were excellent. Maybe that second half just dipped off and switched off at a few occasions, which they can't afford to do come semi-final time. But yeah, they'll be pleased with their performance and to just close it out in the dying moments. A full time in the quarterfinal then, Akuma Beavers 26, 7 Dwarves 22. Brilliant game and more to come. The next game on the pitch will be the women's semi-final, but most of us in the Sevens world are looking forward to the Grenada Sevens. That's in December this year, and Dave is with the team to find out a bit more. To Rachel and Dave for giving us all the full match commentary. Absolutely right. I'm joined by Emil and George here from Grenada World Rugby Sevens. I mean, what a tournament it's going to be this December. Yes, uh, we are very excited to be putting on the Grenada Rugby World Sevens. Uh, first time that we're moving the event there. Uh, it used to be in Trinidad, moved to Tobago, Barbados in 2016. And uh, COVID put paid to that. Now we're opening for the first time in Grenada. And you're the biggest competition in your region as well. Well, the longest running, not necessarily mm. the biggest. Mm. Uh, it's around for over 35 years now. Um, the fact that it's not in the original location is beside the point. It's great that it's almost a touring competition around that region as well. It helps build that legacy behind it. That's correct. And, uh, you know, essentially it's a sports tourism event. So mm. it, it's not focused on a particular sport, uh, a particular country. Um, we can take the, the tournament anywhere. And uh, that's what we're proving now with Grenada. And that's the important thing you mentioned there, George. I'm going to pass it over to Emil for this one. It's not just a sporting competition, is it? It's a sporting tourism competition. Of course, absolutely. And that's because, I mean, what can we say about Grenada? It, I mean, it's Grenada amazing. Grenada is just that gem in the Caribbean. I always tell people Grenada is a package deal. Mm. It's not just Grenada. It's Grenada, Caracol, and Petite Martinique. So when you come there, you get, you get the Isle of Spice and you get three islands. And that's the thing, isn't it? Talk us through exactly what we can find in Grenada. What are those hidden gems? Well, what can't you find? That's the question. <laughs> because 
One, we are the world's first culinary capital, so we actually have that award. I always tell people, Grenada has the keys to unlock any palate in the world. So, you like seafood? Yeah, I love seafood. Exactly, so we're right <laughs> up your alley. Um, not to mention that we have six chocolate factories. I say we are the rum destination because we have four rum factories. Actually, one of those rum factories has the oldest water wheel in the Western Hemisphere to date. Wow, and this yeah. is the thing, it's not just the food there, it's the adventure that's okay. there to be found. The adventure and the people. The thing is, we have granite angling forest and it's amazing. You can go look for trails, you can hike to the, you can hike up Mount Pakwa, you can explore the waterfalls, you can go to the, to the underwater sculpture park. Yeah, Amazing. you can do a set of things. We have it all. So it's not just a tournament. It's a whole. It's a whole holiday in a way. In it's one, a whole it? holiday. <laughs> so we're sea, sand, and sun, and more. That's how I describe it. And that more being ever so much more, George, as well. So what makes not only the location, but what makes your tournament completely unique? Well, one of the major things is that we're offering more prize money for the women's competition than we are the men, double in fact. Wow, so is that an area that you're looking to grow for your competition? Oh, definitely. Women's rugby is the uh, fastest growing sport in the world, mm -hmm. uh, on sec sector of our game, but also sport in the world. And uh, as we see now with the growth of, of uh, women's college rugby in the States, the professionalization of the women's sport in, in Europe and in the UK, it's, it's a sector that was obviously a, a good area for us to focus on and uh, we believe that where women go the families will go and obviously the men will go as well. And this is the thing, your tournament that you got together, some massive names of clubs that are taking part already from countries all over. That's correct. Uh, we have some returning teams from uh, from the UK, Rugby Across, Ponty Butchers, Apache Sevens signed up for the first time, uh, Border Reavers, the original uh, before, uh, creators of the game Amazing. and we have uh, some top teams out of the US as well. Uh, every year that we've had the event in Barbados, some one of the players, at least one, has ended up on the USA Eagles Women's. And if we're a team here today, we're interested, we're already sold by the messages that you two have given us here. How can we get involved? How can we book our tickets? How can we book our place on that plane to Grenada? Well, the first thing you do is you pay your entry fee. Uh, right now it's £335. Um, with that, each team that registers gets a the use of a complimentary five-seater vehicle for three days. Um, we've went to a bunch of hotels and got different package rates from them. Um, we're working with British Airways and the Grenada Tourism Association to put together holiday packages and reasonable flight packages as well. So we want to make sure that the team teams can get from the UK to Grenada in one shot at the best possible rate. This is amazing. This is something that I've not really heard of being done before in the package in this way. I mean, this must be incredible for you, Emil, to bring people into the country like that. Of course, and I'm welcoming each and every one of those players, their families, their friends, any associates they want to bring as well. Yeah, it's a really good thing for Grenada. Um, one of the things we're doing just beyond the sea sand and sun school, and, and we're a beautiful destination, but we're trying to realign Grenada a little bit and broaden the scope of what we do as a sports tourism destination. Mm -hmm. So that's the, hence the reason why we're hosting this tournament. And I mean, this is it. You guys have so much good sport happening around there as well in that of region course. of the world. So it just makes sense in a way, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. So finally, guys, give us one final parting message to us. What could we expect to see? What is in store for us at the Grenada World Rugby Sevens? Well, uh, in addition to the event, which will be taking place at the National Cricket Stadium, so a lovely facility. Beautiful, it's massive. If you haven't seen it, honestly, look it up. <laughs> uh, around the stadium, we will have an arts and crafts village, so you get your traditional foods, you'll mm -hmm. get to buy traditional crafts. So we brought the culture to, to the participants, so they don't have to go looking for it. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to have a number of events alongside that, carol singing competition, um, a charity golf tournament, um, I was speaking with the uh, Emil's boss earlier this week and um, they're planning to put on an island tour for the teams that come wow. in so they, they, they can get to experience it in a realistic and holistic manner and not just come to a rugby tournament. We've all been to tournaments where all you see is the hotel, the training pitch and the field. Mm. You want to make sure that when they come they get to experience true Grenada, pure Grenada and then play in a pure sevens tournament. Well, guys, thank you so much for your time, and I believe we'll throw to a video now that will show us more of what's in store when we head over to Grenada.
Well, Grenada 7, 2nd and 3rd of December. Dave catching up with the team there. Great to hear about this wonderful sport all around the world. But while we wait for the action to continue here, then let's hear from another of our partners, the VO Cameras.
Well, the action continues then. Hammerheads against seven. Fantastic in the women's social. Dave Rogers here, Rachel Burford alongside me in the glorious West London sunshine. And it is knockout rugby from now on in the quest for the four trophies that are up for grabs. Men's and women's open and social tournaments. This is in the women's social. Well, it comes at you pretty quickly, doesn't it, Rach? We were wondering if we were going to have a break. Then all of a sudden, two teams are on the pitch. The game has kicked off. That's what Seven's all about. Catch you off guard. Hammerheads and Seven, fantastic. Seven, fantastic in the blue. Looking to score the opening try down the left-hand side. Great cover tackle to stop good mid Leila going in in the corner. That's a nice handling, keeps the ball alive here for seven, fantastic. Now Meg Mambe, she's brought down and seven, fantastic, working it up the left-hand side again, two on one on the outside, and this time they do score. Fantastic patience and persistence. Hammerhead defended well, but eventually the door is knocked down and seven, fantastic, score the first try. Yeah, they've been in fine form. Seven's fantastic. The French side, but just really good. Well worked Take team. Ball out. retention Seven. from the line out. Moved it to one side yeah. of the pitch, yeah. which then made all of Hammerheads over chase to that far corner. Play back a couple of phases and then they end up with an edge. And a simple 2v1 down the short side to finish. But again, they just seem to want to keep the ball alive in the contact area, taking them on, but then just pulling out of it not conceding and going to drown too easy and then it just gives them the the extra player on the edge and a lovely finish there yeah and margot added the conversion the ball go. seven fantastic seven i'm ahead nil no seven fantastic french team so are we going with fantastique or should we just stick to stick to what we know Oh, that is volleyball style from the restart. Beautiful dig. Now Hammerhead get to go, or did Touch get there. to go, until the touchline beats them. Never misses a tackle, that touchline. Marks now, marks now. Yeah, just going down a bit of a blind alley there, and you've got two defenders on you and the try line. You know that what they're going to try and do is to push you out into touch. But initially, really strong from the restart. Oh, Mon -Mon Meg with the lift bouncing ball dealt with and now seven fantastic can come again looking for space around the outside they've got space around the outside lovely shift of the ball in the hands who amid Leila's tackle but gets the ball away to from our go is going to get her first try under the posts to make her own conversion even easier two opportunities two tries and seven fantastic looking good you kick back through yeah, their skill level's really good, isn't it? Just being able to move the ball, shift it from one side of the pitch to the other, which then makes it really difficult defensively. But Meg Teron came across, brilliant cover tackle, manages to bring her down, but the strength of the French, being able to ride that tackle and offload out of it, then allows them to go in for another score. Oh, she's missed that conversion. Maybe it's because he made her take it from that side of the <laughs> sticks. But here, just brilliant cover tackle. I think it was actually... Healy that makes the tackle, but then manages to still get the offload away whilst being brought down by two players. Just shows the strength and the physicality that they're bringing. But it was Gul Midlela with the assist there. She scored the first try. Well, Margot missing that kick from under the sticks. How important will that be? Fantastic 12. Hammerhead nil. Hammerhead on the restart and stretching the legs. Good offload in the tackle, keeping the ball alive well here, Hammerhead. A little bit of confusion there. Kira Deeks eventually getting the ball away. It's a bit lateral before straightening up, and that's an excellent carry. She's made, what, seven, eight, tackle. nine meters that she had no right to make. That is a bit loose, though. And that allows Seven Fantastic to recover well in defense. While slowing it to a standstill. 
After making those three metres, they've conceded, what, 30? And then the penalty, Hammerhead. And Seven Fantastic have gone quickly, gone really quickly. Coral Julie will get the third try. And after all of that hard work for Hammerhead, Fantastic Seven yeah. score a third try. Superb work by Julie there. Just recognises the quick tap and the opportunity to go because Hammerheads aren't getting back. They're not set. You see that fatigue came in for Hammerheads. They're moving the ball but not going too far. That makes it so hard uh, on the lungs and on the legs. Through. And Julie just does the quick tap, quick thought, quick action. Catches Hammerheads on the back foot. That's a better conversion. Through the uprights this time. Sorry, yeah. 19 nil they lead. Just wonder if Hammerheads watched, can just stretch. I'll watch, I'll watch for okay for me. Seven's fantastic a little bit more. Okay. Stress that defence, make them overwork. They might create some opportunities and some gaps for them to get through. At the moment, they're playing right into this physical yep. Seven fantastic side by playing Please. too narrow. Thank you. And if you play really tight, then you've got to look after the ball. Five minutes gone. This will be a chance for Hammerhead because that is a mistake from the restart. So it'll be a free kick. Just looked a little bit short of ideas in attack, Hammerhead, didn't they, when they were back inside their own half before conceding the penalty. That's McBrien wearing number eight and shifting back in. Oh, how's this for a turn of pace? Again, they've got to this point. What happens Knock next here for Hammerhead? Oh, they cough the ball up. Looked like it might have come off the over. toe. It's a smart little nudge in behind. It's going to go end over end on this hard pitch, though. Are we looking at 50-22s today? Ball's still live. Touch judge seems to think not. Well, they're going to have a conversation about it. Or are they taking us to half time? They're taking us to half time. That is a stark reminder that our clock on the live stream is not linked in with the referee's watch. So as we get further along in the tournament, if it's close, if it's on a knife edge and your team's winning, don't get too excited because there might be some meat left on the bone. But at half time here in this knockout game, it's Sevens Fantastic 19, Hammerhead nil, and the French team pretty good for that lead. Yeah, they've been really strong from the get-go. You know, ball retention and possession's been really key for them. And they've been really, really good when they've got the ball, moving it to the edge, stressing the defense of Hammerhead and then taking their opportunities on when they present themselves. But they're playing with great intent and tempo. And that's really what's doing Hammerhead at the moment. For me, Hammerhead, to get back into this game, they need to be more decisive on the ball. Move the ball early, really try and draw and pull. Seven's fantastic out of the line to force an error to then be able to try and take some opportunities that they might present to them. Well, we're at that stage in the day now where there are only a few teams left, quarters, semis, finals. But what I'm looking at here is the social side of it. The teams that have been knocked out, they're all over there in the bar. There are some people with their shirts off who are, well, many of them very much in the body positivity movement, it must be said. Um, is, that, is that a dinosaur over there, Bert? <laughs> I think it is, yeah. Looks right in the mix of the beer tent, it seems. But as well as the great rugby, lovely vibe here, isn't it? Yeah, I think social sevens is so important, you know, throughout the summer to keep people engaged in the environment. And, you know, so many players will know one another from other tournaments. It just has that great vibe around, a feel about it. And it helps that it's 28 degrees. Oh. Probably not for those players who are on the pitch right now. <laughs> I'm glad we're in the shade. I'm glad we're in the shade. There are some serious tans on that uh, Hammerhead lot in particular. I am not in that crew, let me tell you. You'd be crispy by now oh. if we were in the sun. <laughs> Goodness me. Either way, wherever you're watching around the world, I hope it's sunny where you are and you're enjoying our coverage of the Lit Sevens. We're certainly enjoying bringing it to you. We'll be taking you all the way through to the finals. Myself and Rachel Burford, two-time Sevens World Cup. There's two Sevens World Cups, isn't it? It is. And how many 15s? Four. Oh, goodness me. Six World all Cups. All backwards. Six World Cups. Of course, we're all very much looking forward to the Women's World Cup in the 15s tournament later in the year, as well as the Commonwealth Games coming up in the sevens. Amy Wilson-Hardy, who was on comms earlier, she'll be playing for Team England. But all of our concentration, today at least, 
is on this competition and this is the second half. Seven's fantastic in the blue. 19 points to the good. Looking to stay alive in the tournament, but this time Top it's goals. there to, to get beaten by the touchline on the far side. Notice that with their stash, they've gone for the visors, not the bucket hats. Where do you Mark stand? Now. Oh, I used to be a visor girl, but now I'm a more of a bucket hat girl. <laughs> yeah. That was really good from Hammerheads there. Just seemed to have a bit more about them in this second half so far. Well, here they are on the ball then. Need that first try to mount the comeback. They've gone for the chip in behind, looking to unleash the gas. But they have taken on Leila, who's shown her speed a couple of times in the game already. She dots 22. that down. What's scrum? Yeah, the Reese was on the chase. Not a bad option, okay, sees just, that the sweeper's over on the left-hand side, so there's some clear yeah, space. No, we've been watching Seven Fantastic today, huh? and their defensive front line is really sevens. good. So a nice little nudge in the back there, just that little bit too much on it. You spoke out. earlier a little bit about the breeze that's going downhill. Just need to take a little bit off it next time. Yeah, with the breeze on a hard pitch, you're asking a lot for that ball to hold up. They should get it back here, and they have. Taken in by Prothero. We'll look for a second like it could open up there, but Margot Dussain really makes the tackle. Important tackle as well. Oh, that pass absolutely whipped on. And a Burkitt. And now, still on the ball here, Hammerheads, but going backwards, Heather Rees. Over halfway. Finding the pass, but seven fantastic, not really being stretched yet. And they've managed to slow the ball down too and turn the ball over. Great strength in the contact zone. And then once again, the hard work is undone by one missed tackle. And seven fantastic get their fourth. Surely that is the game over. And Mambe Meg adds her name to the ledger. That dreaded look Mumbe Meg had on her face then when she knows she's got to go the length after putting in a huge defensive set. That's when your lungs are burning, your feet are burning, the quads are on Thank fire. You. Yeah, Thank you. And then to be able to transition from defence into attack. You know, the hammerheads, they've got good ball retention, but they weren't really making any ground. And then when they did, they didn't have the support in play, which allowed for the counter up to come in from the sevens fantastic. And then the quick transition turnover. 26 nil. Well, let's have another look at that there. This hammerhead's too high over the breakdown. You've got to get low to secure that ball. And what about that lovely little footwork, little left to right. And now she's thinking, anybody with me? I've got to go the length. And fair play to hammerheads. Player then tracks back, so makes her have to accelerate even more all the way to the line. Made her work for that one. Yeah, good finish by the forward. That's come off a hammerhead's hand, so will be a sevens fantastic throw in at the line out. Spark now. Basque Melanie thought about Spark the now. quick one. Matching the Spark. boots with the jersey. Got a lot of respect for that. Players think about these things. They have to in this day and age. Menantou Marie is the hooker. That's a lovely ball to find Colette Lea in the midfield. She finds a nice pass and then the bump by Maelik. It's a great line and I think Hammerheads have got their mind on the post-match pint, haven't they? Yeah, it's a bit of a hard ask to come back with three Thank minutes you. left, but what a lovely set-piece play there. Just such a great short line. It's so hard to recover from, especially when you're backing off slightly, thinking about that outside channel. She just cuts a hard line back against the grain. End up grabbing at shirts here, but just simple things straight off the line out. Lovely feed. But here, as you watch, just shifts it. Just that little delay, slight delay, then then makes the centre jump. Then all of a sudden, the winger's got to try and make a decision and come Stay in. Behind. That delayed pass was beautiful, wasn't it? Lovely ball in behind. Yeah, when you've got the ball in two hands, it questions the defenders, and they're not sure what you're going to do. Oh, and that's a big tackle in midfield as well. Margot making it still with hammerheads. Now, as commentators, we are impartial. We are straight down the middle, and we always aim to be. However, 
in situations like this. Backwards. I hope you won't mind if I get fully behind hammerheads here because I really want them to get a score before the end of the game. It's done. Fantastic sevens will be progressing in the competition, but it's been a long and mostly good day for hammerheads. It'd be nice if they could finish on a high. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the effort that they're putting in, they're not giving up at any Off moment. It. And still, they still want to play with tempo, which is great. You can hear a couple of them saying, let's go, let's go. Yeah, they want something to celebrate before the Lock end. Knock on advantage. Oh, but a Nothing big coming. tackle. Tell you what, these sevens, fantastic girls. 33 nil up, but still dishing it. Yeah, they want to be okay, relentless. Girls. They want to send a message for that next game, that team that they're going to be coming up against. And we talked then about Hammerheads not wanting to give up there, but sevens... Fantastic. Also not wanting to give them an opportunity, wanting to make sure that they know that their defensive set is settled. All good. Well, next up, Crouch. we've got Obelisk versus Fight. Surrey Exiles. Set. Stick with us for that one. That's in the men's social competition. It's seven's fantastic. Looking to finish with a try and a conversion that could take them up to 40. That's a lovely little dab in behind and the turn of pace as well. They're the first to the ball. Of course they are. They have been throughout the game. That is some of the best protective headgear I think I've ever seen in rugby. Yeah, I think it's something to do with her nose. Potentially it may have had a broken nose. It's just protecting that. But I think this is excellent. You know, we're seeing such variety from Sevens Fantastic. The way that they've scored their tries through the middle, round the outside, and with a boot to ball. They're definitely going to be a threatening team going into the next game. Yes, they are. Well, they're up over 40. That is full-time light work for Fantastic Sevens. They have beaten Hammerheads. This is a replay of that try. What a kick that is. Yeah, we talked a moment ago about Hammerheads kick and just the soft subtleties to it. Light touches to get through to give your winger the opportunity to gather. But lovely little vision as well to be able to see the space in behind. But what a really strong performance, which really sends a message for them going into the next game. Well, Ormeline scored the final try. That was one of many. Hammerheads nil. Seven's fantastic. Four to, well, 38 to apologise. Said 41, but yes, 38 is the correct score. Regardless, they are through to the next round of the competition. Somewhere between light and shade, we're going to hear from Dave and Amy. Come on, guys, tell us a story. Certainly sunshine here and a little bit of shade, I suppose, Amy. I mean, what an incredible semi-final that was. 41 points for the Fantastics. That's real dominating performance since that final. Definitely. I think, like we saw them in the first game of the competition, they were here to perform and they certainly delivered their 41 <laughs> points. So good. And just watching them celebrate now, it's great to see. And that's some, got to be some great momentum heading into that final as well. Definitely. I think everyone's a confidence player, right? You get kind of the air beneath you, you're getting those Thanks tries scored, good. playing some really good rugby, really it only, good. only means that you're just going to keep that confidence going. And obviously there'll be some nerves come the, come the final, but I, I hope to see the same again in terms of that cohesive performance that they're showing game in, game out this morning. Well, that's it. You've yeah. been here all day, part of the commentary team as well, but you must that's be right. impressed with some yeah. of the again, aspects of play that you've so seen. Good. Definitely, yes. actually, over all four of the, of the tournaments, that? there's uh, been some thanks. really, really good sands of rugby. I think even, I say even the social, more just because of they're here to more have a good fun, <laughs> but there's been some great skill on show. Um, and I just think now we're getting to the business end, you're really seeing like the true sides because they're coming mm. up against opposition that they're really well matched to. And it, it kind of brings out the best of everyone. We spoke a little bit before about sinking or swimming, dealing with that pressure. And I mean, Seven's Fantastic definitely delivered there. That's it, we're starting to see more of a level playing field as we get into these, the business end, as you call it, from <coughs> earlier rounds where maybe there were a few blowouts, these teams that are, you know, only just formed against these teams with legacies behind them. But now we're starting to see those teams even out a bit more. Definitely, and I think we've got to remember as well that some of these teams play 15s all through the season and they don't, they're don't they not seven specialists. And I think, I mean, I don't know too much from them coming over from France, how much sevens training they do, but they definitely, with the sevens fantastic and some of these um, 
teams going into the semi-finals and the finals, you can see that they're better drilled in sevens as a, as a game. It's a different game from 15s. They're spreading the ball. They know how to play the, mm. the space they're playing in. And just, I think, like the speed over the board, it's, it's so exciting to see both over the women's and the men's game and the physicality coming with that. And it makes really exciting rugby to watch. And actually, you make, raise quite a good point there. Is it quite difficult to adjust from 15s to sevens? Can you always tell when there's a squad that's like, well, you're a 15s team, you just happen to have a seven side and then compare that to you are purely a sevens team i think so i think and the gap's just getting bigger actually mm. um the games are separating in in a good way i think like although there are transferable skills of course um, just the way you kind of play the game is very different and you could like you said you could have the best seven team uh, sevens 15 best 715s <laughs> players on the pitch but because they don't necessarily know how to play the game the little ne nuances that kind of make good to great I'd say that's where they probably miss out a bit and I think in the latter stages they probably get get told a get seen a little bit get get a bit found out by some of the teams that are well drilled in in kind of the more of the sevens mm. game I mean, that's a great thing about this competition. Fine Rugby now, Lit Sevens, bringing all these regional teams together, international teams together from all over the globe. There's South African representation here. China, of course, have been taking part. Teams from the US, teams from all over Europe. It's, it's great to see not only those different levels of teams, but also different styles. 100%, and, and that's so great. We've, I think Seven Fantastic, uh, they're leading the way in France. I think I'm right in saying that. So to have the creme de la creme of France come over <laughs> and play some of the best teams in England, it's, mm. it's fantastic. And also, it just adds a bit of variety. You get some of the top teams, like your, your Jesters, your Akuma Beavers, um, the Hammerheads that you've just seen there, they get used to playing each other. So yeah. suddenly having a different team to test themselves against is a, a really positive one. And it's great because I think sevens for me is all about that travel side as well. On the international level, obviously, it's about traveling around the world. That's a big part of the game. So it's great to see that transferred as well in the, in the kind of the amateur level here. Well, that's why we have, why we have Grenada sponsoring us for this little exactly. It's all about that international flavor. And of course, China earlier on, I was speaking to Dan Norka and he was saying that actually it almost works against them in a way because people see, wow, it's the, in, the international China team are here. People are going to raise their game for a big game like that. 100% there's no expectation to win when you suddenly, we were saying, imagine if you saw the pool and suddenly you've got an international team there <laughs> and then you see that they're coached by Biggs, Norts and, and Phillips, then you're thinking, oh gosh, what have I got myself in for? But at the same time, you've got nothing to lose. Um, I think it, it's great. And I mean, being an English rugby player, I know what it means <laughs> for everyone mm. to up their game against playing us. Because so, sure. everybody wants to beat England <laughs> and everyone seems to hate England. So it is, it's, it's ad, actually, it'll be a really good challenge for China because it's actually added pressure for them. Like they've, they're expected to win mm. a lot of these games. So to then keep that performance nice and high, great for them, but also like you said, great for the, play, the players and the teams that are playing against them. And that goes for some of those big names that you've mentioned there previously as well. So as we head into the business end of the competition now, what are those thoughts what are those messages what should these teams be telling themselves as they're psyching themselves up for the finals we spoke earlier about how seven tournaments are great because it's an opportunity to progress throughout the tournament even when we get really tired that last game i mean some these teams would have played like five six six games i think by the end of today which is is a big ask a huge ask and it's really hot so it's about how do they keep the standards how do they keep moving forward when they're tired when everything's getting a bit of a blur they can see that pint at the end of the pitch ready for them afterwards but how do they stay composed um, but at the end of the day when it comes to finals it's about finding a way to win and I think you just want to see that grit that determination eyes on the prize and just finding a way the best teams aren't necessarily the ones that play the pretty rugby at the end it's finding that way when the going gets tough to keep working and winning and getting that score right end of the scoreboard we mentioned motivation there as we're heading towards the business end you can hear the party is certainly <laughs> starting here at Lit Sevens me and Amy are going to go and join the party for a 100%. moment or so go and check it out <laughs> as we see what else is to come here at Lit Sevens 2022.
So we're almost ready for our next game here at Lit Sevens 2022, brought to you by Find Rugby. Now I'm joined by Emil from Obelisk, and uh, what have we got in store for us with this game? Well, it's a big game. The boys had a tough start to the day. Kind of took a while to get into their groove, but the semi final, the semi quarter final we just played, some of the best rugby they played all day. They smashed it. So I think they're in the groove now. They're feeling this one big time. Yeah. So almost have to warm up in a way, and then yeah, now they're going. Yeah, it's now, like now, a train now, now they're going. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're ready for it. They're ready for it. They're, they're hyped up. They're, they're going to smash it. Yeah, definitely. Amazing. And who are those players that we should be looking? Looking out for with this one, um, Sam, Sam, the winger. He's 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 got wheels for days. Fair, all of these boys, they're all quality players. Yeah. No, none of the yeah, they're all, all the same. They're going to smash it. I've, 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 I've got the most faith in them. And they've sure. really been enjoying the day here. At yeah, we love really this. It's, it's a lovely day. They've enjoyed the atmosphere. Got the music going. Can't, can't really complain. It's all good. Amazing, amazing. And there's there any final words of encouragement that you'd like to send to the guys on pitch? Um, just the best of luck, and I think they're, they're going to do a job for sure. <laughs> and with that, we'll head over to our commentary team. Rachel and Dave, take it away. Some data gathering has been done. Great news, everyone. Great news, Rachel Burford. Great news, Rugby Sevens public. I've just about got some team sheets, I think. This is Obelisk versus Surrey Exiles. We are into the semi-finals of the men's socials competition. Speaking to the players, there'll be nothing social about this. This is serious, serious business. Obelisk in the white with the black shorts and the black sleeves. Surrey Exiles in the hoops. Quite Richmond-esque, actually. However, those black bits are actually navy. It's the light that's killing you. But uh, Obelisk going through their final preparations. Sorry, going for the more traditional huddle. Where are you with that kind of stuff, Berth? Do you like a huddle or do you let everybody go about their business? I think it depends. I think for a game like now, about to kick off, I think you probably need a little huddle just to settle some nerves, say your last few things, and then get on with it. So it is Obelisk in the white jerseys to kick off. Win this game. You get the chance at glory here at the Lit Sevens. A warm welcome to you wherever you're watching around the world. Great to have your company for the business end of this competition. I tell you what, this might be the social competition, but there are some big units out there. Oh, and a big challenge, and what a take that is from Obelisk. Goodness me, Sam Smith somehow gets a hand on that, and Obelisk on the front foot straight away. Here's Archie Dunhill looking for the man outside him. Oh, and it's dropped with the try line beckoning for Dave Cecil. Lightning start there from Obelisk. Yeah, everything seems to be going right, right from the initial kickoff. Great contest in the air. Just that final pass, just a little bit too eager on the outside, just gets a bit flat, and then the pressure of the pass becomes harder. What about that? A great start so far. Tim Riddler wearing number zero. Getting it in from the line out here. First touch of the ball for Surrey Exiles. Still nil-nil, but they're pretty lucky to be in that situation. That was a chance gone begging for Obelisk. And now a bit of width on it here from the Exiles. They call themselves Surrey Exiles. They haven't gone too far, have they, as far as West London? But a high tackle there. One of those non-malicious ones that you have to punish. See Surrey Exiles not forcing any play, just waiting for Obelisk to make a decision to come out the line and then take their opportunity. And now there's been a bit of back chat and they've been marched back another 10 metres. This is a great striking opportunity okay. now. Well, Dave Cecil has had 90 seconds to forget because firstly, he knocked the ball on into touch with the try line. And then he's chatted to the referee, conceded 10 and has been sent to the bin as well. So Obelisk making a decent tackle there. It's a really determined leg drive from Salvador Gomez. Oh, and a great line as well. Surrey Exiles bursting through. 
Finn Parker in the white boots. His first touch, Surrey Exiles first try, and what a try. Yeah, that was an excellent solo effort there. Lovely little step on the outside. Parker White there just sees a gap, accelerates through it. You know, with a man down and in the bin, there's going to be spaces somewhere, desperation in attack. But here just moves the ball, shapes to go on the outside and then steps and sees the 12s over chase slightly. So it just invites him into that hole. He's got a free run in. Deep restart, Surrey Exiles making obelisk work for the meters. Oh, that's Vice been knocked knock on. on. Max Lufkin just about gets away with it and then puts the boot on the ball. Now we've got a chase. Look at this for a, oh, the pickup as well. Sam Smith gets on it. Has he grounded it? If he has, it's a brilliant try. Sometimes you get the bounce, but you have to make the catch. And Sam Smith, glorious finish off a great kick. Oh, they're a thing of beauty when they bounce up right. But how about that? He timed his run well, waited for that bounce to stick up. But what a great way to write a reply. Yeah, we're playing with six players. Good opportunity to put boot to ball, knowing you've got some wheels on the outside. Instead of having to fight the contact area, put it in behind. Big old foot race. Well played, Sam Smith. Now an important drop goal. Decent strike, but the wind catches it and he sends it into the crowd behind the goal, 7-5. Just un under one, just under. Just soft little touch there. Can see that the defence actually comes Sorry. up and gets in his uh, eye line. So knows that there's some space in the background. Now. What about that? Perfect timing. He'll say that he timed that perfectly for that bounce to pop up. But what about that as well? Fighting right over the line. Fair play to the number 11. Yeah, it was Vince Parker on the chase. and. You know, that could be an important intervention in a close game. Yeah, it's always important to chase kicks back, chase tries back, try and keep the kick as wide as you can, because it could come down to a two-point margin. Really good game. Four and a half minutes gone on our clock. A reminder, it's not linked in with the referees. Surrey Exiles winding the footwork, looking to keep the ball alive, putting themselves under a little bit of pressure, stop and go there from Vince Parker, who chased back, just starting to straighten up now. Oh, that's so good from Parker. That is so good from Vince Parker. Sam Smith gives chase. Parker keeps going. That's the battle of the gas men, and he's dropped it. Oh, Vince Parker drops it, and Sam Smith goes 2-0 up in their order. personal battle. Oh, fair play. Sam Smith doesn't give up. He's just scored on one at the other end, and now he's just been able to okay, stop the it. opposition yeah, from getting a now. try. Oh, How about that? It's not over oh, until that ball there. is grounded. Everybody else sat back on their heels and watched. And the arm went over. Yep. Oh, but the penalty has been given. It is Surrey Exiles' ball and they will score. <laughs> Tom Fahey will dot the ball down. That's such a shame because that was such a beautiful run from Parker. Slipping through so many tackles. At no point should he have got through the line when he had four or five defenders around him. He won't want to look back at that replay. <laughs> that little one-handed shift he did to get rid of the defender was so good. And again, one of the things we know and love about social sevens is regardless, oh, here we go, have a look at this. Just here, ball in two hands, look at that. <laughs> Just almost puts the ball around the back so nobody knows who's got the ball. Makes the defenders stop. And look about this. He's almost there. He thinks he's there. He's just about to dive over. And what about that? He targets the ball there. Goes for the ball. Slaps the ball out of hand. And then it was tapped by Riddler. Found Tom Fahey. Gets rid of his opposite number. One of the hardest places to defend is on your try line. You can't afford to miss it. A tackle there. Good take from the restart. Darius O'Reilly was underneath that one. Shoveled out to the left-hand side. Tiptoe in there from Dave Cecil. Obelisk Sevens chasing the game again. Seeing how dry the pitch is. Did you see that puff of dust come up when both players hit the floor? 
It's just because they're running really fast. Yeah, of course. <laughs> like, like Roadrunner and Wiley e. Coyote. <laughs> Surrey Exiles 14, Obelisk 5 at half time. It is a two score lead because both have been converted, but all to play for in this second half. This is a really, really good game, Rachel Burford. Yeah, it really is. At the moment, it's kind of tit for tat. One minute, Surrey Exiles are on the scoreboard and under the sticks, and then the opposition write a reply. But Surrey Exiles have just been a little bit more clinical when they've got the ball in hand, managed to retain it for longer periods of time. But it's all to play for. I like it when these little battles, these individual battles just appear because you know, we don't see a lot of these teams and, and they're social teams. They're good players, but they don't always know each other a huge amount coming in. So we don't know where the battles are. But this Vince Parker versus Sam Smith, that has been really exciting for seven minutes. Yeah, it has, hasn't it? You can see a little internal battle between the two of them. Both of them going from one end of the pitch to the other, whether that's defensively or in attack, putting some real showboating material on display for, for their teams. Excited to see them both light up again in the second half. And both teams are out for the second half. Surrey Exiles playing with that breeze. I'm not saying it is one of those gale-forced December wins. However, it will make a little bit of difference running. However, it will make that, uh, that restart, that hanging restart, a little bit more difficult. So I wonder if Surrey Exiles might go a little bit deeper with this one and rely on the chase. Exiles 14, Obelisk 5. Away we go. Obelisk. A bit of confusion as to who is taking that ball. It does come back with a white jersey and then turned over by the Exiles and a good leg drive. Wearing Max Lufkin as a backpack before placing the ball out to the left hand side some serious power in these Surrey Exiles boys now they've got some width to play with if they want but instead they go back up that blind side Mark Grimshaw taking them even closer little attack up the blind side Diego Garcia tackled into touch and a good tackle as well yeah really physical every contact whether that was a carry or a tackle in both teams trying to assert themselves physically in this second half, early doors. Here, some great yes, shots being you. put in, but equally, some and, of those uh, carries, sure the channel, three yep, or four players on, hanging off them, uh, and still leg driving to get in inches channel, closer towards the try line. Important line out ball here for Obelisk. Do not want to cough this up. Instead, go smart. Not taking any risks. Now, is there some space on the outside? Another good physical battle. They've got themselves up to the 22. <laughs> Sam Smith did not fancy that at all. He's done enough sprinting in this game. <laughs> Instead, sends Rob Cecil into the contact zone. Need a bit of an injection of energy here to Obelisk. Could it come with this particular attack? Oh, it just might, you know. Ball to ground. Referee happy enough that it's gone backwards. Another good tackle. This time on Dave Cecil. Here's Max Lufkin again looking to put that boot on ball for his man Sam Smith, who's only beaten by the touchline. He loves putting the afterburners on, doesn't he? Yeah, they obviously know they've got the wheels outside instead of taking that contact, just kicking the ball Nine through just a little bit too much on it. Just looking at Sam Smith with his hands on his head. Just to try and get some extra air in those lungs because so those for little us. bursts for these quick guys really do take it out of you. Everyone else, 10. Here's Gar says. Not particularly clean ball and not particularly clean on the reception either. Darius O'Reilly looking to cause the chaos. Now, Surrey Exiles, every time they're on the ball, it's taking time out of the clock. That is a lovely pass to put Vince Parker into space. It is that chase again, and Sam Smith wins it again. Lovely offload, though, getting the ball away. The 360 spin in front of the big crowd. That might just be the best moment of his rugby career. That was a lovely little interlinking of play there. Just takes it right to the line. Can see the defender's going to pop in and try and take him out, and then just gives that lovely offload. But we talked about that battle, and it is still alive with White and Smith going head to head with one another. 
But what about the support play? You know, often in, in sevens, when you make a line break, you need somebody with you because the sweep is going to be in place or the desperation to get back here. But look at this, right to the line. Little basketball offload. Hunting him down. Excellent tackle. Goes low. But what about this? Keeping the ball alive. Got to have your support in play here. Knows that he's not going to get on the outside. Oh, Lovely cut. little spin. I mean, Julia would be happy with that. Well, I hope the cheer from the crowd behind that goal came across on the live stream because they absolutely loved that. 21-5, big ask now, particularly because Obelisk have coughed the ball up again. Ball's gone backwards, it could open up here. Again, it's gone forward the second time. Three minutes to go, Obelisk running out of time. Yeah, Obelisk, they're just playing a little bit too tight. Early on in the first half, they stretched the ball, which made Surrey Exiles get into a few all sorts of pulling them out of shape defensively. And you go quite narrow against a physical side, you're going to come up against problems. Mark and you 10. end up under Left pressure and forcing nice pressure. And stable, boys. Forcing errors Cups. like the forward Mind. pass there. Set. All right, scrum time. It's Tom Fahi. Mine's Edgy O'Reria. Oh, he's had the ball ripped off him, though. Great upper body strength from Dave Cecil, and then the backdoor offload is a beauty. All right, Obelisk, they can play too. Corey Holland there, brought down just outside the 22. Big pass off the right hand, Ferreira. It's a two on one, they have to score here, Obelisk. Are they running out of space? Oh, Ferreira <laughs> couldn't find the pass. But has he got the ball down? Yes, he has. Well, that all seemed to happen in slow motion. Yeah, I'm not sure he even knew where the try line was. But it all came from Cecil, a lovely little line break and offload. Again, just keeping that ball alive. It makes it so hard defensively. But here, look, ball in two hands, making the defenders not sure where to go. Right, he manages see. to pull them both in. Thank God he got that down. I tell you what, I'm not sure he did. 21-10. Well, 10. whether he got that down or not, that's definitely a penalty try. Getting tackled by your neck. <laughs> Well, I think uh, Surrey Exiles might consider themselves unlucky because he definitely dropped that ball, but also lucky because, as you said, more like something out of WWE than Rugby Sevens. But Obelisk still need two scores here. 21 points to 10. One minute to go on our clock, but even though it is relatively accurate, it's not spot on. So if Obelisk get one quickly, they might still have a chance. But the ball in the hands now of Parker. Needs support, hasn't got it, but slips away from the tackle Mine's before the ball slips out of his grasp. Keep your eye on the referee now. He still thinks there's time left. He's so electric on his feet, isn't he? Just when he's got the ball, just waits for an opportunity to see a defender just slightly switch off and then attack that shoulder. A good defense. Again, another Mark's ball here. rip to get the turnover. But they need Three, to respond quickly two. now. They need to get a try quickly if they want to have any chance in this game. Crouch. Tom Checkley to put it in for Obelisk. Set. Winner of this game will be back on this pitch as part of the live stream for the final. Oh, here go Obelisk. It's opened up for a second. Big chase coming back, so he has to put the brakes on. There's Tom Checkley. Just to get the ball away, though. If Obelisk score here, are they going to have time? First things first, they need to score. Oh, there's a man in acres of space on the right-hand side, but the ball doesn't get there. Oh, now it might, though. Decent turn of pace, but again, they run out of pitch. They run out of time, and Surrey Exiles book their place in the final. Three tries to two, 21 points to 10, but a really entertaining social semi-final. Absolutely, uh, at the end of a really hard day as well, to see that kind of talent and that effort from both teams, it's outstanding. You know, toe-to-toe, end-to-end -to -end stuff, some silky skills and footwork on display, and some excellent defensive efforts. Certainly were Surrey Exiles 21, Obelisk 10. That is the full-time score in the men's semi-final, and now,
Dave is pitch side with a defeated but hopefully happy member of the Obelisk team. Big thanks to Rachel and Dave once again. A meal it just wasn't meant to be, but a really outstanding game. Yeah, I mean, the boy, you can see the boys put all of they could into it. Mm. Sam Smith chasing back for that try. And I think the yellow card really just kind of disrupted the flow of what we were going to do. I think we came out just short at the end. They Honestly, they put all they could into it. They've, we can see they're all knackered and yeah, I'm a bit gutted to be honest, not lost for words. And I mean, to be honest, that score probably a little bit unfair because yeah. it was really close and there was yeah. moments of brilliance from yeah. both sides. Yeah, completely. I think, yeah, like, like I said, they put all their into it. They come up short and I'm, I'm sure they were gutted and I'm gutted for them. But yeah, I know they put everything into it. So hopefully on but, to the next year. But what an achievement to reach the semi-final here at Lit 7. So you can go home with that with yeah, pride. Exactly. Yeah. I'm sure the boys are proud of themselves, but they, they will be gutted that they kind of fell just short of the final. Um, but yeah, on to the next, and yeah, hopefully we'll come back stronger next year. Absolutely, absolutely. Use that motivation to move forward. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, Emil, unlucky for today. Thank you so much for joining us. I'll let you go and speak with the rest of the no side. Worries. But thank you for your Thanks time. very much. Have a nice evening, everyone. No worries. And we'll pass back over to our commentary team here at Lit Sevens. It is semi-final time in the men's open competition here at the Lit Sevens. The French team, seven tees against Akuma Beavers. We saw them cruise home in the quarterfinals. The Beavers, the seven tees, one of the French teams who've really impressed today. I mean, the expectations are high throughout the day, but for a semi-final, this is massive. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's business end. They both want to get into that final. It's about how physical they can bring to this having such a long day in this heat on this hard ground what have they got left in this semi-final to push through to the finals well akuma beavers kicked off in their quarter final and scored with less than 10 seconds on the clock they're receiving the kickoff this time and 70s win the ball back they're going to get the chance to attack first and straight away attacking with purpose what about that for a change of pace pass goes to the floor well, regardless of what happens with this play, that is the most offensive mullet in this competition by quite some considerable distance. Oh, my dear. Hey, players are always looking for a way to stand out. Sometimes they use the boots and sometimes they go for a hair. But what a, quite electric there from, from the 70s. But now an opportunity for Akuma. First touch then for Akuma Beavers. Whipped off the left hand of Rob Voller. Manages to stay upright in the tackle as well, allowing his support time to arrive. Now Reese, the bounce pass. 70s drifting well in defence, no gaps appearing just yet. Two man tackle and a man in at the side. Concedes the penalty. Liam Driscoll goes quickly for Akuma Beavers. Conrad Lipinski we saw him on. look pretty dangerous, but they turned it over. Tackle! Flying mullet back into the contact zone. Advantage over. 90 seconds gone, still nil-nil. Both teams with a touch on the ball, but now 70s looking to launch the attack. Oh, what a carry that is! Getting rid of the defender. Seb Reese ends up on his backside. Now a bit more space with that beautiful looping pass Forward that's pass. gone forward oh, such a shame love seeing those balls over the top to a winger waiting eagerly to hit onto it and you can see that 70s have got really good width in their passing the ability to move it from left to right but that's Let's not breaking down up, the Akuma guys, Beavers at the moment they're staying really strong defensively balls in play a lot isn't Quilt. it <laughs> this is going to be a Boys. long buster goodness Set. me High tempo. Oh, that's a terrible Three, pass out of the back of the scrum. Akuma Beavers getting away with one there. Yeah, just notice a couple of passes that have gone to ground or not quite where they want it to go, which allows for, fan, for 70s to be able to readjust. Just critical moments, those finer details, making sure that they're on the money with their passing. 
And again there, just an unforced error. Which has led to a simple turnover. Well, we'll have a scrum then. Two 70s in a good position as well. Coming up to three minutes on our clock. Did we have a bit of French from the referee there? Did he say Sava? Get on side. Oui. Crouch. Bind. Set. In it comes then. Nobody up the blind side here for 70s. Bit of pressure coming on Matt Delcourt. So he gets it away to Titu Kazedepa. Another pass has gone forward. Akuma Beavers recover once more. Still nil-nil, halfway through the first half. It does feel a little bit like Beavers are living life on the edge here. Quick scrums, please, come on. Yeah, but You've they're forcing the, the errors. Sides. They're making 70s try Quick and do it. those big passes. Crouch! She's making them slightly Crouch. eager. There is a slight breeze as well going down the pitch, Set. which is just maybe pulling the ball forward. But it's been good intent defensively. Spews out the back and it's messy again. Liam Driscoll didn't want to take responsibility for that and takes a low tackle there. Max Blanc, the man who makes it. That's a nice offload though. Lucas Blue getting the ball away and trying to get Beavers onto the front foot. Crashing through there goes Blue. This time a couple of penalties from 70s and some momentum here for Beavers who still find themselves inside their own half. Liam Driscoll ships it on one more. Now they're looking for a foot race. Lipinski gets the better of it but can't quite win the foot battle. It's Lenny Favre. Serious gas there though from Konrad Lipinski. But now with it opening up, it is 70s who are the favourites to score first. The sweeper is in. One man to beat here for 70s. Liam Driscoll forces the error Mate, and it's still nil-nil. Oh, that is astonishing. And then 70s turn the ball over again. And we're going to take time off here. Surely we're going to go back for the knock-on. The referee and his, and his assistant are going to have a chat here. Let's so I'm happy in. we've got a grounding. Yeah. I'm happy with the lead up to the grounding. Yeah. I'm not sure if there's a deliberate knock on first. I have not seen any knock on. Okay. I have not seen anything, so for me, I have nothing to come in. So we stick with the on field decision, which is a try. Well, well, well. <laughs> try time. Finally, the deadlock try. is broken. Referee wasn't sure if there's a deliberate knock on. His assistant saw nothing. Let's see if we can make head or tail of this move. Yeah, interesting. Did you see that with the chase back from the sweeper, the French player on the outside who was, could have literally dotted the ball down, but wanted to get it closer for his kicker to the try to the sticks. As we can see that this is such a tight game, but on the replay, okay. This, this was what could have been the easy touchdown. Doesn't touch the ball there. And then from this position, great work rate back as well from Scrum the Beavers to get back. No knock on, great counter up through. Absolute mayhem, absolute mayhem. Yeah, especially when the lungs are really hurting at that point. Elapse in concentration. Well, the most relief, oh, that is a brilliant take. And then taken out in the air, Contact superb the air, from Seb Reese. And he looks like he's winded himself. He's gone straight over Time the top off. of the man. Referee was reaching for his pocket there. Yellow card's been given. Thoughts on that, Rachel Burford? Yeah, rightly so. You've got to make sure that you're taking care of the person who's in the, air. in the air. He's not making any attempt to go for the ball. And what a great take. Thankfully, he's OK. Still a minute of this half to go. Akuma Beaver's chasing the game now. Seven points down, but one man up. And that's Lucas Blue again with the go forward, but so well turned over. Luca Mino, and then turned over by Akuma Beavers again. Oh, look at that, straight through Rob Voller. First venture into the 70s half, yields a five pointer for Akuma Beavers. Okay, and just down. before half time, it's game on. Down. Yeah, lovely stuff from Akuma Beavers. Calm down. Plays ripped in the tackle. 
so it's a contest for a tackle must be brought to ground. 70s just asking the questions of the referee of how they managed to get that ball back but utilizing the extra player that they have being really quick and direct on those turnovers gets them right back into this game with another minute yet to play with six players on the pitch. Well 77 Akuma Beavers seven. Yeah just a strong fight in the air I think 70s think his knees to the ground so that should be a tackle and it must release We've just you've got just got to keep to playing to the whistle don't ever switch off until you hear the referee's whistle go great finish there well, we've got time for one more phase of play can either of these teams make it count 70s seven akuma beavers seven that's not gone 10. Such a coach killer, that simple to get it to the 10. Now this gift 70s the ball back, allows them to wind down that clock as well. Still 20 seconds remaining on the yellow card. 70s, it's Luca Migno. Did a good few years with Bath University and Buck Super Rugby. As that one is passed into touch, which will take us to half time. It is all to play for. No. 77, Kuma Beavers 7. Well, there's still a conversation happening here between the referee and his assistant. And in fact, a penalty has been given. Have seven, but you can now have seven. Perhaps you maybe they brought now. the player on. Because we put the time off, so you can come back on. Maybe during the play. Too many players. Yeah. <laughs> Had too many players on the pitch, brought him on when he was, should oh. have been coming onto the field. So it's gifted them an opportunity now. Discipline, discipline, discipline. The wait for half time continues, and Akuma Beavers might have one more go at it here. They were 7 0 down. No, no. 7 all now, and the referee gave them ample opportunity. Discipline really costing 70s here. They conceded a try when they were down to six. We should have had half time, but they've conceded two penalties since the clock has been in red. Will it cost them on the scoreboard? Here come the Beavers. Liam Driscoll on the ball. We're in number four. Manages to get it away. Finds the try scorer, Rob Voller. 70s players pouring through in defense. Now they do find the touchline. The referee does blow for half time. And a very eventful half comes to a conclusion. It does. You can see the fant sorry, 70s are getting frustrated and then disciplines creeping into their game, which is allowing Akuma Beavers to get back into it. But the strength and the discipline of their defensive sets to keep them out, to force errors and to push them into touch has been outstanding. And it's all to play for in this second half. Really good half. I mean, only two tries, both of them converted, but so much, so much incident. Kuma Beavers have only really had one opportunity, and despite the fact they opened really strongly those first three or four minutes for 70s, really they've only had the one massive opportunity as well. This replacing the final of the men's open competition. See those pitches all around the place getting a little bit quieter now as this competition comes to a climax across the four tournaments that is still in motion. The women's and men's socials and the women's and men's open will be taking you all the way through till close of play. Good game, good game. Interesting how 70s discipline really started to crack as Akuma Beaver started to turn the screw though. Yeah, when fatigue gets in, you start, you know, there was a couple of penalties in at the side, high tackles, that's from fatigue, you know, getting lazy, not getting yourself back on side fast enough. You know, the desperation to try and close players out often can lead to that ill discipline. But you can see the physicality. It's an area that you can see 70s are targeting is the breakdown, the counter-racking, getting in and under the ball. They pushed them off a few times and managed to turn the ball over. It's an area that I would have thought Akuma Beavers would have spoken about in their half-time huddle. But as we've mentioned throughout the tournament so far, how critical possession is and restarts. Be interesting to see whether they go for kick short to compete. Or are they going to kick long and try and keep him down there? Well, that's Jake Rogers. He's looking for Seb Reese. Puts in a good hit on Kazedipat. No! The ball is secured for 70s. 
They look to put some width on it straight away. That's Luca Mino off the left hand. Oh, lovely step inside. Straight away, looking to put width on it from one touchline to the other. Our 70s. Touch. It's a touch. But if you keep putting touch, width on it, touch. that's what happens. Yeah, exactly. You've got to use that touchline as another defender. When you know you're not going to get on the outside, put the brakes on, step back inside or recycle, pull the ball back and play to the opposite end. Well, an overthrow from Driscoll. So Max Blanc picks it up and now Mino again. Oh, that little goose step, then the step inside, up over halfway. Lovely footwork here from Luca Mino. Still going, Mino, eventually brought down by Driscoll. Really important tackle. Now some field position, attacking from deep here for 70s. They've got two on two on the outside. So Florian Makaya into the 22. Seb Rees slows things down. Bouncing ball and a good defensive effort there from Rob Voller. Does not release the ball, so 70s can go quickly. Space here on the right-hand side. Mino has to pass it. And 70s will stroll in for the second try. No, you've taken it over. Oh, no! On the line. There's no try. No try! Oh, what is going on? 22. He's gone over the dead ball line. We've talked about how shallow the dead ball area is. That is criminal. It's so disappointing. The amount of work rate that this team had just gone through to retain the ball, to keep it alive, keep recycling. Manages a simple 2v1. Just pull it down. But fair play to Jake Roger there, not giving up the fight, giving him a shove over the line, knowing he's aware of where the line is. Oh, Tituan Kazedipat has had a shocker. Oh, wow. Strolled in. He'd done everything right up until the key moment. And now they're back just outside their own 22, and they've knocked the ball on. Anton Decourneau. No! Oh, and a bit of needle. Tell you what, Cyril Corneau no, could no, be no. in trouble here because he's arrived late. Jay West, I think, was giving it some spice for a coup of beavers. Yeah, it's just frustrations coming out, isn't it? But it's quite funny looking at Jake Roger just done the, the great work on the dead ball line, but he's only just returned to the, to the line of his team. A little bit slow to keep up there. Obviously, from that huge effort to keep that try out. Well, it was a big effort and now a big opportunity. Real battle at the scrum. And seven T's come away with it. And that was no, Cyril Corneau, the man who joined the fight late. Referee happy to let the children play. It's loose here for seven T's, but that could be dangerous for the Beavers if the defensive line starts to break up. Oh, there's a missed opportunity there on the outside. Just needed to shift it early. Is there some space out here? This is Decorno, the man who knocked it on on the other side of the pitch moments ago. This time he puts some air on it. Chasing back to do here for Akuma Beavers. Ruben Contin, a lovely dummy from him. Takes on two men for the Beavers, but one of them makes a tackle. It's Jake Rogers again. His lungs will be on fire, the amount of defending he's had to do. Here's Kazedipats, the man who had to dot the ball down but couldn't manage it. You let go of the ball. Patience required here from 70s. It's something that's let them down so far, but now Ruben Quantine pins his ears back, gets the offload away. What an offload. And this time, 70s do dot the ball down. <laughs> Just. <laughs> oh, well, I'm never committing early to a 70s try again. It's the third time they've been over the whitewash, the second time they've dotted the ball down. Time to restart two minutes. Kick, kick okay, we need to get the ball back. Still two minutes of this one to go. Here's Luca Mino to slot. Time off. A simple. I said we need to get the ball back. It's your responsibility. Yeah. Just great patience in attack. Just moving the ball from edge to edge. Tiring out the defence. Hard work continuously to work, especially in those middle channels. But really fair play. Akuma Beavers making 
cover tackle after cover tackle and eventually they run out of numbers and 70s on the shoulders and finish. I like what the referee has done there because he asked Luca Mino to convert it from the other side of the post. When he refused, he said it's your responsibility to fetch the ball and stop the clock with two minutes to go in a one score game. That's good refereeing. Now, this kickoff reception is massive. It's come back Beaver's way. There's Lucas Blue again. Great decision there. Knows he's not going to get around the outside, so steps back in. Tackle! Oh, they're release! Body's committed to this. You assist tackler, you must release. Not only on Shomon was called to release, so he's conceded the penalty. Jay West taps and goes. It's Limpinski up over halfway. Beavers can't get the ball away. Another penalty conceded here. Seven tees. Well, with the ball in hand, they look sumptuous, but discipline cost them. Now Blue hits the line hard. Gets away from another tackle. Lucas Blue. Oh, it's been booted into oblivion with the try line beckoning. Oh, Lucas Blue did so well. Such a powerhouse. Runs such a short, hard line. 22 or scrum here. Just tries to keep the ball alive. Gets bumped by the opposition, which actually propels him forward five metres. So unfortunate, but the desperation from 70s to get back. Lucas Blue is thick with about five Cs, isn't he? <laughs> oh, well, here comes 70s. They've got a two on one. This one would surely put it beyond doubt. Matt Delcour slips away from the final tackle. And Akuma Beavers having looked as though they might have the chance to equalize and now staring down the barrel. Yeah, lovely finish from Delcourt, but that's the brutal reality of sevens. One minute you could be looking like you're gonna be scoring and then a simple error, a simple mistake completely turns it on its head and they can feel themselves pulling away now. We will have time to restart the game, but I don't think there is enough time for Beavers to score two. Yeah, so Julien Blanc nearly lost his footing, but kept his composure. Not an easy thing to do when you're tired, you've been knocked off balance and been able to maintain your body weight upright and then get the offload as well and to make the decision at the closing stages of the game. Again, they've kicked to compete. And they're all offside. Clement Quiru, the man who was well, pinged in the end. Oh, just coming into shot here, the ice cream van. I bet he has done a roaring trade today. Now, Akuma Beavers, last throw of the dice for them. They're going to finish on their own terms. There's Jake Rogers, big competition at the breakdown. Lucas Blue over the top of the ball that squirts out of the back and 70s making life difficult. Jake West sees half a gap, but that's soon closed by Max Blanc. It's scrappy here for Akuma Beavers. Oh, lovely chip over the top though. Can he gather it? Yes, he can. Go on, stroll home. Stroll home, Rob Voller. That is a brilliant individual effort. Stick that on the highlights reel. Yeah, he's had some game, hasn't he? Chasing back cover tackles, scored one earlier as well. And what about that for a bit of individual skill? Sees that they're all yeah, up flat up. defensively, so there's no space in front. Lovely little soft touch over the top, just enough. And still has the wheels to finish and pull away. 21-12. The kick is good. Is there time to restart? There isn't. Akuma Beavers. Adventure is over, but let's take another look at this. Yeah, just soft touch on that right foot. Just enough just okay. to get over the sweeper as well. He's a tall man. There is no stopping in there, but great vision, great execution of the skill, right at the death of the game. And then to convert his own try as well. They'd be disappointed to not be able to come away with the win. But some outstanding battles throughout that game. Brilliant semi-final and 70s march on. They'll probably have to improve their discipline if they are going to lift this trophy, but they have got past Akuma Beavers. 21 points to 14. Still loads more great rugby to come. But first, a message from our partners.
So a big thanks to our headline sponsors here, Elite Sevens, Grenada, World Rugby Sevens, and Vio as well. You can claim your discount today, £200 off, just being involved with Elite Sevens. You can check out more about that at shopvio.co. We'll pass it over to the glamorous assistant over there. And I'm joined by the wonderful Amy and Angus as well to talk us through what we've seen so far. I mean, that last game, something we've been mentioning all day is a really small area to score that try in. And they overshot it on that one. Oh, he's not going to live that one down, is he? <laughs> Literally. I think it's one of those, again, that pressure moment when time comes where you've got to score, can you hold it together? And he just lost sight of it, kind of not lost his head, but as in kind of lost the pressure of the defender coming up. Just meant that he just didn't quite know where his feet were. And, uh -uh. <laughs> and that's the thing, isn't it? When it's a high pressure game like that, you're going to make mistakes along the way. Yeah, you certainly are, and you know, I feel, I feel, I feel almost bad because I preempted it. I went on my long monologue earlier on today about Will Carling's messing it up in the mm -hmm. middle of sevens all those years ago, <laughs> and then we see the exact same thing. But sure. it is, you know, it, it's part of the game. It does happen. You know, I was going to say we've all been there. I actually haven't been there, but <laughs> lots of people have been there. It does happen. Just, just stuff like that happens. But the pressure, as you say, is is massive now. Like people have come along, they've had a big old day, they've had good fun, mm. but then you get to those knockout games, and it's like. Yeah, we kind of want to make this worth it. We really do. And, you know, you put your own internal pressure on. There's a big opportunity for some guys out there today. And that's the thing now, isn't it? You come and join the first group stages. You couldn't see how you're going to do. And then, as you say there, you start winning a few. You get some quarters. It's like, OK, maybe we can take this seriously now. I know. I wonder what is that point where it goes from kind of being here for a bit of fun to suddenly actually you've got a shot. I Don't get me wrong. I think some teams will come in and be like, mm. we are going to win this 100%. Sure. But there's always those couple where it's like, oh, yeah, actually, this is working. Our team's doing well. We're gelling today. And then sometimes like you have bad days, you also have good days. And then it's interesting to see which teams come out on top. And that's the thing. I think that last game was definitely two of those sides that believe they probably could go to that next level. But we're almost ready for our next game. Uh, Wasps being one of those sides that we've seen all day long dominating what can we expect to see Angus? Well Wasps have been I mean we spoke about it all day we had them on the on the live stream three times this morning through the group stages they were absolutely brilliant so they're going to be great. Well you heard the whistle behind us we'll pass back over to our commentary team Rachel and Dave. Taking it right up to the wire great to hear from you guys everyone's still enjoying the rugby here wild dogs in peas against Wasps wild dogs in the purple Wasps in the you guessed it Wasps guys for a place in the final. And they'd love to do it on their home ground as well. Wasps, they were dangerously close to the touchline there. That was only going one way. Yes, yeah, just needed to put a big left foot step in, step back inside. But good intent early on from Wasps. Their home ground, they want to make sure that they're getting to the final. That's the first line out, so I tell you what, that is a lovely pickup going the wrong way. And now an attack here from Wasps and a meaningful yeah, attack wait, wait. as well. Up to the 22. Competition at the breakdown. Everyone stacked to the left hand side here for Wasps. Backward. Wild Dogs dishing it in midfield. Backward again. And it is back with Wasps again. Brandy Akpobome looking busy in the first minute or so here. We're in number five for Wasps. Great turnover there. Take away. Sorry. Go back on the screen for you. Player down for injury. Oh, head injury as well. Late in the day here, these players have gone through a lot of rugby in very testing conditions. Yeah, final game. You've got to try and find something for finals, getting yourself up for it. Good work there. Good ball retention from Wasp, but the entire back line was so flat that if they managed to move the ball, it would have been really easy for the Wild Dogs to defend. But some great work from the Dogs in the breakdown to get a turnover. Now this is the first opportunity that we'll see Wild Dogs with the ball. In it comes then. Wasps putting on the pressure at the scrum, but Wild Dogs doing well to get the ball away. Now, can they release the gas on the right-hand side? Yeah, good cover tackle. Charlotte Burns. And competition at the breakdown as well. You come on the side now. Come on the side. 
Oh, good work from Walsh, just sh showing their physical presence around the breakdown. You've got to secure the ball. Double players in. Here's Charlotte Burns. Good hands from Burns. Get ready, snap. Thank you. Wild Dogs competing at the breakdown and winning the ball at the breakdown. They've turned the ball over so well, Wild Dogs. Now, what can they do with this turnover ball? Well, they can get around the outside. This is a foot race. There's only going to be one winner, and Wild Dogs with a brilliant try will turn over ball. If you can execute from it, is a lethal weapon, and that is exactly what Wild Dogs have done there. She's left the ball there, though. She's obviously new to the seven scenes, but what about that for some wheels? Brilliant transition from defence to attack. Quick turnover, adjusts her feet to get to the depth, and then she just turns on the afterburners, and she's gone. When you know you've got a weapon outside like that, you want to get the ball to her as early as possible. And the conversion's good too. Wild Dog 7, Wasps nil. Just lovely hands. Simple things done really well. It looks really easy, but it's hard to be able to draw defenders, move the ball on. But how about that for Gash? Just backs herself, got the ball in the right hand, so she's got her right hand there, ready for offend if needed. But she's that quick. She pulls away from Wasps. Probably the second time we've seen the ball in the Wild Dog's hands and they've managed to convert the pressure into some points. You're not happy with her leaving that ball there at all, are you? Well, thinking about it, because the referees are making them kick the other way, so I guess yeah. it's OK. Restart then, gathered well by Wasps. Again, it's Charlotte Burns who's underneath it. Gets the offload away. Oh, some good fans here. Jasmine Shunot. Loose offload in the end, but showing that great right upper up. body strength to get rid okay, of defenders. Player. Presenting that ball again, needs to stay away from that touch line. That's the second time she's found herself isolated on the left-hand side. Yeah, you can see what she's trying to do. Quickly pick the ball from the ruck quickly, the trying to catch that last defender unaware, there. but really strong strength there from Wild Dogs. You know, knowing exactly where that touch line is, you always use that as an extra defender. Let's go. Thank you. Hopefully that'll be the last time that she gets pushed out into touch. Straight. Well, that one not straight. Okay, scram call. In fact, if they were temping bowling, that might have gone into the next lane. Not straight. Yeah, it's quite a challenging throw. The line out throws. See there, she opted for a pass in instead of the traditional hooker throw. But a big opportunity here. Just looking at the wild dogs. Their pack is pretty tall, pretty strong. It's be interesting to see how much pressure they could put on this scrum here. And they win it back. Well, Wild Dogs, that physical battle, particularly at the breakdown at the set piece, they look serious. And then Miss Tackle opens the door on the left-hand side again. Lovely offload to keep the ball alive here for Wild Dogs, leading 7-0 in this women's social final. Then Wasps rip it back. Real physical battle out there. So much attrition between these two teams. Now surely Wasps just need to put the width on it. Oh, it's all really sideways. Needed to go through the hands instead of that missed pass. Potential high tackle. Referee happy to play on. It's all a little bit too narrow here from Wasps and that's been ripped. Oh, and again, goodness me. Neither team willing to give up on this. And then played off the yeah, floor, so that will be a penalty to Wasps. 30 seconds to go on our clock till half time. Just both teams got pure desperation, haven't they, around the ball? Not giving up the fight defensively, going for the ball rip. And here come Wasps then. Can they get something before half time to really make a game? of this women's social final. It's been so attritional. The physicality between the two teams at the end of a long day of sevens has been a massive credit. Well, that's got to be penalty advantage, has she not? 10. Well, the referee's got, sorry, the assistant's got the flag up here, but surely the Wild Dogs player wasn't the requisite distance. But the referee shouted not 10, I think, as she let her go. 
She probably then became onside. But Wild Dogs, just their discipline is allowing Was to get into this game and make their way up the pitch. This is a big moment. The last line out, not straight. Hopefully they go for a simple option. So it doesn't put the throw under too much pressure. So there they go to the front. And then the ball's been knocked on. Wild Dogs trying to keep the ball in field. Knocked on one way, then the other. Referee says play on. So Wild Dogs with what will be the last attack of the half. Oh, goodness me. I tell you what, if she caught that ball, then it was going to be a foot race for the line. There was space there. But there was a high tackle advantage being played. Let's go, faster. Ball happening here, isn't it? It is. We can't keep up who's got the ball. Ball rips, offloading, Stay intercepts, here. all go. go faster, okay. Wild Dogs deciding that 7-0 <coughs> is enough of a half-time deficit. Referee's whistle goes for half-time in this women's social final here at the Lit Sevens. Once again, we've got a game in the balance. Yeah, absolutely. I think Wild Dogs will be frustrated with how their discipline has allowed Was to get back into the game. You know, for me, Was have had the ball, had possession for a, a long period of time, but not being able to create anything from it comes from their depth. They've got to be able to realign, get some depth so they can hit onto the ball and exploit some of those spaces. Well, in the women's social, you know, you might expect a few mistakes as the fatigue kicks in. Unlike in the elite, they won't have played as much rugby building up to this. If you can go seven minutes error free, you're probably leaving with a trophy. Yeah, it's always fine margins, isn't it, in sevens, you know. One missed tackle, one drop ball, one pass slightly off pace can then lead to errors, mistakes and opportunities for the opposition. Especially in this heat, under this fatigue, this time of the day, right at the back end. It's all, going to take some asking. It's all calm in this huddle here, and it has to be, because, you know, they'll look to be conserving energy and just relax, try and get the heart rate down ahead of the second half. To our right here, there is an absolute rave going off. <laughs> and rightly so. They're all out of the main competition, yeah. so they're, they're enjoying themselves now. But you're right, when you're in those huddles, you know, you've got to take a minute to try and cool yourself down for one, drop the heart rate, think really clearly, listen to the messages that are coming on from the coaches and from your leaders on the pitch so you know exactly where you're going to go, what you're going to do straight from this kickoff so everybody's on the same page. Seven minutes to go. Wild Dog 7, Wasps nil. Just that one moment of individual brilliance. There it is. Got the shirts on, the shirts off. That argument continues to rage between visors and bucket hats. They're all going off there. Hawaiian shirts making a comeback. Did you manage to get one of the Quinns ones? I, I didn't. They went like wildfire, didn't they? Mm. Mm. I got one. Oh, of course you did. <laughs> yes. Why are you not wearing it today? Because I'm wearing my on-brand, very nice. Lit Sevens Find Rugby Now polo shirt that I'm very pleased with and very proud of. And we're absolutely delighted to be bringing you coverage of the finals of this great competition. We've got spectators watching via Next Gen 15 around the world, and we're delighted you could join us for this one. We've still got three finals to come after this. This is the first final of the day, the women's social final. Wild Dogs on the ball and leading by seven points to nil. Nice offload off the floor there as well. Wasps can't afford to fall off these tackles because two scores will be a big turnaround. But it's Wild Dogs who cough up the ball and Wasps come away with it. Now Wild Dogs over it again. They've turned it over. God, it's a topsy-turvy turnover game, isn't it? It sure is. One minute you think Wild Dogs have got all the momentum, really good go forward, played on the front foot. And all of a sudden a simple strip of the ball, then a quick turnover again. Oh, that's looking like the end of the road for Frankie Lee. She's limping off. I think she just on. rolled her ankle in that tackle. Back, 
here, 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 here. Here, go, go, here. It's not wherever you want, it's just here. Thank you. Just here. But the no, clock no. was stopped, so still bags of time for Wasps to get back into this. It's back, back, Wasps, back, five. And they've got the put in at the scrum. No, it's a seven. They've struggled for width in this game, Wasps. Crouch! Fine! And the last scrum that we had, Wild Dogs managed to turn it over. Of course, a big competition there as it squirts out the back. It does come back Wasps' way, though, again. Very narrow as that pass. Oh, what a one-handed pickup. Here we go. Game on. Race on. Oh, Wild Dogs making a good tackle and just that heel touching the line. She even checked to make sure she hadn't. Are you okay? Oh, and that's Tammy now for Wild What's Dogs. Has injured herself in that chase. Go, are you okay? She's out, we have to stay. Go. The great cover tackle, wasn't it? Oh, right on the touchline. Yeah, okay. She'll be disappointed with that, Akpa Bome, because Mark here. Mark as here, she sorry. landed, wait, wait, she wait, put wait, her foot down as if to not that. put it into touch, here. and it was just a just a heel or a boot lace. It was good just to see a tease of what she's got go in the faster, bank, faster. that acceleration faster, go to go. Now she has to stand in the channel. Here three. Making sure that we play by the letter of the law. Oh, a big cover tackle there, Jade Betson. Get rid of now, rid of No, no. Hey, I'm playing stay here. Now, Wild Dogs looking to secure the ball. Try and release the gas. Can't do it this time. Advantage for the high tackle. They don't want to slip off that tackle, though. Oh, really, really important intervention there from Olivia Grain. If she misses that, then Wild Dogs are two scores ahead. Nine and a half minutes gone in this women's social final. Here it is now. Wild Dogs securing the ball. I could have done with going one more left there. Please. Especially with Wasps sniffing around that turnover, but it comes back Wild Dog's way. Oh, grab of the shirt again, Jade Betson this time. But Wild Dogs do breach the Wasps' defence. And we'll go under the post for the second, just about. God, I think she was running on fumes by the end there. The tank was empty, but just enough to put Wild Dogs 12 points ahead with the conversion to come. And they are one step closer to lifting this trophy. Yeah, it's just brilliant play from them. Just being really patient, moving the ball well, looking after it, not going down easy in the tackle, and then just riding those tackles, not giving up. She had a player pulling her back by the shirt, but kept her legs driving, kept them pumping through the contact area. And then having a player right on your shoulder, just here recycling the ball nicely. They've got a four on one on the outside, but she doesn't need to move it. Here, Wasta trying desperately to hold on to her. Look at that one-handed, thinking that she's going to go for the fend. Manages to get the ball away. That's some skill to thread that between oh. two defenders. And a brilliant finish. Right, okay, right, and this for you. All limbs at the end, wasn't it? 14-0, Wild Dogs closing in on the trophy against the home team here, Wasps who might strike straight back. Here we go. First real chance they've had to score. Diligent chase by Wild Dogs. Ball to ground, but it's gone backwards. Oh, it's a little bit too slow at the breakdown. Oh, it's a good line, though. Akpa Bome again. Feel as though if they're going to get something, it might be a moment of magic from her. Now Wasps going up the blind side. Really, not go away. Needs to come to the right, but isn't going to have first. the chance because they've held on and conceded the penalty. And they want to play quickly because they know that Wasps are going to be tired after that attacking set. She's going to need some support with her though. 
Oh, it's not going to come. <laughs> it's not going to come. That's a 50 meter break, though. That's one way to relieve the defensive pressure. Release now! Well, another score here, Back and it one. really will be over. Who's got a little bit left in their lungs? There's the pass. Oh, it's just beyond the fingertips of the gas merchant. But as soon as she turns the afterburners on, that leg drive, unstoppable. <laughs> First try, third try, 19-0, surely now game over. Yeah, it's going to take some asking for Wasps to be able to come back. I mean, they've had plenty of possession, just not been able to convert it into points. But how about that for an attitude, point of view from Wild Dogs, under pressure, multiple phases from Wasps in their own 22. Gets, gets ZLMA, gets the turnover, and then quick tap, quick thinking. And all of a sudden, the Wild Dogs are in the opposition's half. And now they find themselves kicking a conversion for a try. Well, a confirmation in 30 seconds remaining. So Wasps will not have chance to win the match, but might have chance to get on the scoreboard. Bouncing pass is of it often quite deceiving in the game of sevens. It can stand people yeah. up, stop players from faster, moving please, forward defensively. She doesn't need much of an invite to go towards her try line. Free kick ten. to Wasps then. Kick doesn't go 10. Go on 10, go 10, pass. 19 nil. Can Last they break. get a meat pie on the board? Oh, scram. Okay. Last play, yeah. Confirmation Last play. then. Last play. And Wasps yeah. still looking to attack with intent. Winning on, the sorry, penalty. Sorry. Side Outside entry from Wild last Dogs. Play. Are they 10? Definitely not. <laughs> Leon, Leon's back. Well, the ball goes backwards, then possibly forwards. Didn't look like anyone knew what to do with it, but Wild Dogs still looking to put some hits in, and Wasps finally looking to get some offloads away and play some rugby. Slows down now, another big physical contest. Wasps going up the narrow side. A knock on to end it, Wild Dogs, worthy winners of the Lit Sevens Women's Social Competition. They've dominated the day, they've dominated the final, and they are the champions. They've beaten Wasps by 19 points to nil. Yeah, really well deserved as well. Critical moments within that game where they turned the heat on, you know, under pressure, and then to turn the ball over and go the length. You know, they're pivotal and critical moments in a game of sevens, and they took their opportunities every time that they were presented to them. Wasp gave every bit of ounce of effort. They had possession, but just couldn't convert it. This Wild Dogs defensive pack were too strong. They say dogs hunt in packs, and that's what they did to the Wasp today. Well, who's up for a derby? Next up, it is the men's social final. Sussex University versus Surrey Exiles.
It is time then for the Lit Sevens men's social final. Sussex University versus Surrey Exiles. Two teams who have earned the right to fight for the trophy. It's not been long to turn around since the semi-finals. We had Surrey Exiles on this pitch beating Obelisk Sevens. There were some great battles. Are we going to have the same here? Sussex University in the white jerseys with the thin hoops, the navy and gold. Surrey Exiles in the hoops, navy, gold and red. This is that part of the day where the teams sort of walk out like wounded soldiers, hands on hips, limping after a hard day on a hard pitch. But as soon as the whistle goes, it is business time once again. The two skippers going over. Just to say a quick hello as much as anything by the looks. Cam Morrison wearing number two for Sussex University. Salvador Gomez in six for Surrey Exiles, who are going to kick us off for this one. Joining us for this final and the remaining two after it. Two time England Sevens World Cup and much, much more. But we're concentrating on Sevens today, Rachel Burford. Um, I really enjoyed watching Surrey Exiles last time and they'll be looking to take some of that momentum into this final. Yeah, absolutely. They've got a couple of real sparks within their team. That that player on, on the ball right now on your screen has got electric feet, has had a couple of cracking line breaks. So I'm interested to see how he goes in this final. That is Finn Parker, and that is a high kick Backwards. off to start with, fielded by Joe Healy, we're in number seven. Sussex University flirting with that touchline. Tim Riddler can't force them out, though. Now some dancing feet on the edge of the 22. The backdoor offload is a good one. Now the first foot race of the day. Surrey Exiles searching around the turnover. They can't get there, extra but they do win the penalty. The that extra roll killing the chance. Ten, please. Yeah, really good D. Just double tackle, but one of the players just staying on their feet. And the extra roll denies him to be able to go over. Now Exiles taking it to the contact zone and the halfway line. Tom Fahey in, in and around the ball. Tim Riddler wearing zero in those white and black shorts. No one on the outside here. Surrey Exiles, not in a rush, just keeping hold of the ball. One minute gone, still nil-nil. Oh. Just see defensively Sussex there. They're not trying to engage. They're waiting for Surrey Exiles to come to them. Vince Parker going backwards to hopefully go forwards here. Advantage that looked high, high and it is high. Advantage being played. High tackle over the shoulder. Oh, the DJ's just playing Robert Miles' children. What a tune as Finn Parker leaves the ball behind. Vince Parker, he lays it off to. Now we're in number two, Charlie Crawley. Well, this is not being played at a hot pace, is it? Oh, there's the chip over the top. Now, who's going to be the first to this? It could be a Surrey exile. It could be that man, Finn Parker, gathers it on. Oh, the ankle tap stops him in his tracks, but he's still going. And Finn Parker is going to score a try all of his own doing. He's probably just checking out his knees after that oh. tap tackle from Marvin there. What a defensive effort for him to get back. But as highlighted, Parker at the start of the game, his electric feet, his tactical thinking, knowing that there's nobody in the backfield, he here, nobody wants to engage, just sees the opportunities, lovely little soft touch, then it's a foot race to get through, you're always wondering how these are going to bubble up, but look at this for a little kick on, gets the footballing feet out, and look at that for a ta ankle tap tackle, that must have hurt falling uh, down, off. but fair play gets back to his feet and finishes the job okay. that he started. Heartbreaker for Marvin. Heartbreaker. He will have genuinely believed. Oh, is this going out on the full? Just as that came off the boot, the wind picked up and blew that one dead. So Sussex University with the chance to get their hands on the ball. An opportunity to them, for them to now respond to that try. First time we're really seeing them in the middle of the field being able to attack. Here they go, oh, sending the big man forward. Goodness me, absolutely folds one and then gets the ball away. Sean Waters 
do not try and tackle him, Heil. That is a lovely shimmy and an explosion there from Bart Firma Cox. That was a naughty step on the right foot. You definitely don't want to be watching that replay if you're defending when you're literally taken out by air. But all came from this carry, getting that physical dominance, go forward. Now it makes all the defenders at six and sevens try to pull in. And then just feeding the ball off. Talked about a bouncing ball earlier, makes the defender stop. But look at this for a step. Should never really be getting through there. And then the air, his own man takes him out. But lovely finish from Thelma Cox. Okay, when you're ready, everyone's behind you. Seven, seven, here we go. Oh, and we've gone from Robert Miles' children to flat beat by Mr. Wasso. <laughs> Although, look, I'm nearly 40. If there are young people who are... Uh... Oh, here we go. Yeah, 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 Taken yeah. out off the ball. There's going to be a foot race here. It could still be Surrey Exiles' ball. It could be two. Kick and chase tries. They get the ball down. Oh, my goodness me. Surrey Exiles put in boot to ball. Did you get a number? I think we're going to be looking at a yellow card as well from the first kick. Bit of a shoulder charge off the ball, which I think made every a few players stop other than the try scorer. Looking to see what the referee's decisions was, but he was saying play on. Now they're just having a chat. Just give me a number of whoever's. Amidst all of that, he's missed the conversion. But yes, there was a big ruckus off the ball. Let's have a good look at it here. And it looked as though the referee was going to stop play. Yeah, he's taken him out. Yeah. However, rule number one, keep playing the whistle and Surrey Exiles have scored two tries from the long kick chase. Again, it is all about the second touch. Jack Rowlandson. Now, has he got it down before the dead ball? I know he has. That's a really good try from Jack Rowlandson. Tell you what, that photographer right there would have got the money shot for sure. We're going to see that on Instagram later. Hang it in the Louvre. Two seconds. Miss. Surrey Exiles 12, Sussex University 7. Really good men's social final in the offing here. Oh, has that gone 10? Oh, it will have done. Not 10. Right on the mark. And again, that's the second time that Surrey Exiles have done that from the restart. You just think that they know that there's a bit of a wind in this left corner. Maybe just put a little bit more on it just to secure it. Oh, the inside ball again. And he's left, what, three or four defenders with that step off no the left. right foot as Joe Healy. Big men with good feet in the Sussex Uni team. They're back into the 22. They've won the penalty. Get away for the jacklers to get in. Yeah, just great tempo, playing quickly, not allowing. Oh, I think he's got away with one there. He's tapped that and dropped it. Nobody wants to tackle Sean Waters. Would you? No, not at all. It is crude work here from Sussex University, but they're closing in on try number two. They will have a conversion should they score it to lead in the game. And it's going to be dotted down by Joe Healy out there on the right-hand side. Tough conversion to come, but the game is level. 12-12, great final. In line with where you are. Yeah, great response, isn't it, from Sussex. Just good ball Sorry. retention. Again, all came from that big man right. carrying right. down the front, drawing players in, and that's what creates an overlap. But the tempo that they're trying to play at, trying to catch the opposition off guard. Really important kick. Oh, it's a good one as well. Great strike. Makes it 14-12 right on half time. Sussex University uh, four, uh, edge four, ahead. So they got 14. No, you missed your second one. Cam Morrison. Uh, it will be, yeah. With what could be a decisive two-pointer in the bid to lift the social cup here at the Lit Sevens. We're still basking in sunshine as Sussex University leads Surrey Exiles 14-12. Yeah, it's been a thrilling encounter from both teams. You just wonder, was it necessary to rush that conversion by the Surrey Exiles? And now they find themselves trailing by two, but all still to play for. Certainly is still to play for, still two finals to come as well. There is a young man out there with nothing but a hat and a pair of very small swimming trunks. This really is the Social Sevens final.
He's got a special hat on as well. It's got a little windmill on top of it. Ah. A part of social sharing is all about this, isn't it? It's about the vibe. It's about expressing yourself, getting the budgie smugglers out. But the beauty of it is, hang on to this. <laughs> and then to the left of us, we've got someone just casually shoulder pressing with a cheerleader behind him being filmed. It's all happening. It is all happening here. But that's the beauty of it as well, isn't it? We've got the lads out there, as you say, it's in his swim trunks and his silly hat, but that hasn't affected the standard of the play at all. We've got some really, really good players out here putting on a show. I mean, to be fair, it's an all-over tan as well. He's really, really doing some of the right way, isn't he? Yeah, he looks like he's H2O boy <laughs> with his JD water bottle bought bag. <laughs> Sussex University then. Lead for the first time in the game. They've trailed 7-0 and 12-5, 12-7, should I say. Now lead by 14 points to 12. And Surrey Exiles will be kicking themselves because that was a pretty simple conversion that they missed. And they actually took it when the referee wasn't looking because they were having the conversation about the potential yellow card. It was the assistant referee. Yeah. I wonder if he thought they were going to go back for it and then the try wouldn't stand. So just thinking that take the conversion quickly and it will stand. But the referee still had the power, even if you've taken the conversion, to take it back. So could be an opportunity missed there. But how either team starts will be really important psychologically to stay in this game. Well, Sussex University kick us off. Surrey Exiles inside their own 22. Remember, oh goodness me, that is a bullet pass. Vince Park has nearly taken his head off. But here goes Surrey Exiles at the left-hand side. Definitely the more diminutive of the team. Sussex University was a real big unit. But there's a gap here. What can the Exiles do with it? Oh, the inside ball was the right ball. Wrong execution. Advantage over. Sussex University. With a chance now inside the Exiles half. Lovely line back across the grain. Last ditch tackle. Here's a good one. Joe Healy stopped just short. Last player over the shoulder. Oh, but it's a high tackle. Oh, and a penalty try as well. Penalty try. Penalty try. Oh, that's a harsh one. Yeah, that's a big blow. He's worked so hard to get back. You know, he's been an outstanding player for his team, Parker. Referee deemed it was too high. Prevented the what would have been a try. You don't get to see the tackle, but now that's a gifted seven points. And now Sussex are pulling away 21-12. With two minutes on the clock for the yellow card. Tough comeback now, two score game. Sussex 21, Surrey Exiles 12. And again, it's just amazing how quickly these things turn around because had that inside ball gone to hand, they may have been under the sticks themselves. Now, is it Sussex's turn to not go 10? Oh. Backwards. Okay, enough, the ball's gone. Sorry, it was a knock on. Knock on. Masters of their own downfall at the yeah. moment, Surrey Exiles. <laughs> Yeah, you just wonder maybe if he had left that ball, then they would have a free Strong kick on point. the halfway, which is a great attacking set to have. Just unfortunately, for the error there that came in, which is allowed now for Sussex for an attacking opportunity off the scrum, which can be really deadly considering that Surrey are a player down. Crouch! Bind! Yeah, Surrey Exiles with some serious defensive work to do here. Those boys stood out in the back line. will be praying for turnover ball, and they've got it. Well played, Surrey Exiles. Oh, and a dummy as well. Here we go. Has that ball gone forward? No, says the referee. Excellent work there from Nick Watson, and now Surrey Exiles have managed to score. Oh, they've turned it around with six on the park. It's Finn Parker again. Well, in fact, it's Mark Grimshaw because they've got two 13s on the pitch. Thanks a bunch, uh, Surrey Exiles. But either way, six on the park. They are back within a score. Yeah, such a huge confidence booster to break the line with a player down, which never should be the case when you've got an extra man. 
But that should lift their spirits now with a couple of seconds left on the clock for the yellow card. Back to full strength. Back but on. all came from the set piece, the scrum there. And what about this? Big old show and go. Leg drive through. Little basketball hoop pass over the top. Keep your height down for a Just stay strong in the contact area. 13 on 13. Fights his way to the try line. Really good from Grimshaw, wasn't it? Great score. So the 2.13s, Finn Parker, white boots on. Mark Grimshaw, black boots on. Oh, bouncing ball has gone Sussex's way. Knock on. It's coming advantage. And it is back Come with on. Surrey Exiles who are bursting through. Oh, good tackle. Heavy contact there, Bart Firma Cox. Going to need to release at some point, though. Got an overlap here if they can move it. That's just slowed down a little bit by Grimshaw. He finds Tom Fahey. Oh, Fahey bats the man away. Fahey closing in. Cover tackle comes in. Oh, all to play for here. Penalty, Surrey Exiles. There's the chase back by James Shack. And, oh, they've touched down. They've gone quickly. They've wrestled through. Grimshaw has got two tries in a minute. And Surrey Exiles take the lead. 22-21. Big conversion coming up now just to extend that lead for them. But moments ago, you would have thought all the momentum was with Sussex and Surrey have managed to turn it on its head. That's just wide on the conversion. But what about this line breakthrough? Manages to recycle the ball back. Uh, 90 seconds. The player's got to roll away. They've got to allow the, the ball carrier to present the ball back. And then just quick thinking, knowing that they're arguing with the referee, they're questioning what's going on, trying to get back on side. And he just catches them unawares and gets his team ahead. Look what it means on. to them. Well, Mark Grimshaw, the hero. Two tries in the second half to drag his team back into it. Oh, the hands have put that one into touch Knock there by touch. Sean Waters. Options. Looked as though that one might Scrub. have been going straight into touch. Waters. Up here. Some butter fingers to it. Yeah, it's a hard kick to take with the swirling wind coming across. And you can see in an eye line that a player is trying to come onto that ball as well. Not an easy skill to do. I do. However, a big opportunity for Surrey now to extend their lead. Do they try and run the clock down or do they look to play? Oh, you've got to keep playing, surely. In a final with a one point lead with the momentum. Converted try here will surely do it for Surrey Exiles. Change of direction from Vince Parker. Goose step once, goose step twice. Then Finn Parker looks for the gap, finds the offload. But Jack Rowlandson puts in a touch. foot in touch. White line out. Sussex University down. go quickly. The oh, and they've got away with one there because they yeah. put themselves under a bit of trouble. Yeah, just a bit too much dancing feet along that touch yeah, line. You can't flirt with it too much. But now gifted an opportunity and a lifeline now for Sussex to put it back. Well, this is it, isn't it? 10 seconds to go till 14 minutes. Advantage. Sussex University Call need a score and they need to do it from inside their own 22. Surrey Exiles, defensive discipline required. Oh, good one-handed take by the big man. Waters creates a two-on-one. Oh, out of the back door, that is sensational. Oh, Sussex University have broken the line. Moment of brilliance after moment of brilliance, and they're going to win it with the clock in the red. And it's Ben Roddick, the captain, who gets the final yes. score. But the offload out of the back door from Waters. Oh. Conversion or no conversion? I mean, if there's ever a moment you want to make up for a couple of mistakes yeah, you yeah. just did, that was it. That was a sensational backdoor <laughs> offload that then led to the line break. Heartbreak for Surrey, but here it is. We talked about the big man. Nobody wanted well, to well, tackle well him. Slips well off done. one. Right, well done. Keeps riding this tackle, but look Ooh. at that. Gets the spin on it. Doesn't even need to break stride. Right into the money. And then here, keeping the ball alive again on the inside. Two defenders there. 
probably lack of communication, tired legs, tired bodies. And what about that finish there from Roderick to win the game for them? Well, Sussex University win it at the death. They are the social champions. Talking about that offload there from Waters. Goodness me, I thought he butchered it. It was a two on one and he went on his own, but maybe he did it on purpose just to show off. If he did, I am here for it. But sensational composure. And that is a try worthy of winning a tournament. We are getting ready for the women's open final. But before that, let's hear from David Angus. Amazing final that was. It really went down to the wire. They brought themselves back into the game, but that final try then, you can hear them celebrating now. What a win. Absolutely fantastic. And do, do you know what? The best part of it for me was hearing Dave going to stratospheric level <laughs> on commentary. Absolutely brilliant. And that's it. If you can get Dave excited on commentary, this is a man that seen, has seen millions of hours of rugby. And if he gets excited, that's one good game. You know it's good. You know it's very, very good. And I'll tell you what, it sets up brilliantly, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what a day it's been so far here as well for Lit Sevens. I mean, we have seen phenomenal bits of play. I mean, you can hear in the distance as well, the party is fully underway here at Wasps Steps. See. The party is well and truly underway. Off camera, you and I have been talking about the playlist that this DJ's got going on. The party has well and truly started, but I'll tell you what, on the field, the party is starting as well. It's getting big. Well, this is it. This is the amazing thing. You can see that the player's still playing, a, it's still in game mode, but then as soon as the final's over, they're ready to go and party. But how, it must be weird for a player to see everyone in the distance party and seeing that motivation. But no, you still got a very important game ahead of you. I'm sure it'll factor in the team talks. I'm sure there'll mm. be a lot of go and earn your beer. Sure. And there'll be a lot of that. Because you know, that, that is a big part of what today is about, mm. is going and having a good laugh. Yeah. Earn your laugh. And that'll be what they're saying in those team talks. So we're on to our next game in just a few moments time. And with that, we'll pass over to our expert commentary team in just a few moments. Rachel and Dave for Angus as we head into this final. What, what's going to be going for the players' mind? Because I mean, we've seen a lot of action all day long. You see the jesters there on court, they're on, court on the pitch already. They've had an amazing day. Oh, Jess has been absolutely fantastic. And it's so great they've got men's and a women's team here. Same with Sevens Fantastic. So there's a lot of support for them. You know, not every team's got that support, but they both of these teams have got some support behind them. So it's really cool to see. It's going to be great. And that's it with Jesters. They seem to have a really kind of a rigid, powerful play. But then the other uh, Seven Tastics, they, they seem to have that flair and that style and play with a bit of pizzazz. Well, yeah, and I don't know if you could see it in the background, but I, I had a sort of glance across a moment ago and a couple of the players were dancing to the music. That tells you everything yeah. about the mindset of that Seven's Fantastic side. So they're ready to go, they're ready to party, they're ready to play. And what is going to be a brilliant final? Who's your money on if we can ask that, Angus? Oh, I think I might go Seven's <laughs> Fantastics. They've been pretty exciting mm, so far, but absolutely. hey, it's anyone's game, this. Absolutely, and with that, we'll pass back to Dave and Rachel for your final here at Lid Sevens. Cheers, Dave. Cheers, Angus. Two games to go. It is. Sevens Fantastique against Ramblin Jesters. We saw Ramblin Jesters at the start of the knockouts. Yeah, we've got a huge contest on our hands now. All comes about the fitness levels that they have, the pressure to be able to handle that pressure in a final game. We're taking that on the knees. And Seven's fantastic. We've seen what they can offer, ball in hand, but they look disciplined in defence as well, forcing Jesters right back to their try line. But sometimes that creates some opportunities. Not this time, though. Penalty for Fantastic Sevens. Mambe Meg, she scored in the semi final, didn't she? And there she is, pulling the strings in the middle there. Little step back inside by. Coral Julie and she dances under the posts for the perfect start. First attack for Sevens Fantastique, first try for Sevens Fantastique. Yeah, a huge start from them. Didn't have possession, but just kept pushing the jesters further and further back, forcing them to make decisions quickly, not on their terms, which then gives them the opportunity to have the ball back. And they've been relentless with the ball in hand. That gets them off to a great start. As does the extras. Jester's nil, fantastic seven, seven. Just see, just gets pulled back from the start, but just quick thinking, just shifts the ball early. You can see that the number six, she's scanning 
looking left and right and just the over chase there from the Jesters, which just allows her and invites her into that space. There's the restart, Jester's under it, and another good take, and of course, oh, goodness take me. It in the air. Big shot, right, taken right, in the air. I mean, you win the penalty, but you still feel the collision, and that was a big one. Good carry so there from Sophie Shams. She makes a few meters and sets the platform for Jester's. Again, seven's fantastic. Very impressive in defence. Tuck and roll away. Another penalty conceded. Margot Doucet taps and goes and turns and Jesters don't come up particularly quickly in the line. They allow Margot to dance through. The offload out of the back door is complete. And now it's going to go through the hands here. There's some width available for Sevens Fantastic, creating the two on one. And then dotting down in the corner is Leila. The referee and the assistant take a look at it. Happy enough that Gourmet Leila has done enough. Two attacks, two tries for Sevens Fantastique. That's awesome there from Leila. She's got a defender coming across to make the tackle in the corner. Still manages to dot it down as she's being tackled out. But this team, they're just so physical, so ferocious. All came from another turnover. Jesters need to be more decisive in the contact area, but a superb carry here. Offload keeping it alive, which is what challenges defenders. They're not sure that gets pulled out of their defensive system, but a simple drag across. See how hard Jesters are working there. The last defender just cuts in slightly. Desperation, but look at that for a finish. Ball in one hand, slaps it down. Well, this one won't go 10. In fact, it'll end up negative meters. So finally, a chance for Jesters to get into the Sevens Fantastic half. I just need a bit more go forward from them at the moment. They're kind of creeping back, waiting for an opportunity. But Fantastic Sevens are so well set defensively. Oh, they've coughed the ball up again there, Ramden Jesters. Looks like a long, hard day is taking its toll. And you've got Ladies, to give credit the there to forward. Fantastic Sevens. It was a knock on by Red first. It'll be a scrum down, blue ball. You know, the defensive line and the pressure that they're putting them under is what's forcing Red, these errors, forcing them to backtrack. They limit their decision making. When you take away time and space from players, they often end up forcing a play or forcing the error or forcing the skill. Fantastic Sevens are capitalising on those errors at the moment. Well, they could capitalise again here because every time they get the ball, it is purposeful. Once again, they stroll into the 22. Once again, they stroll over the line. Colette Lea adds the third. And it is all too easy for the team from France here in West London. It's a scrum half stream, just picking oh. off the back of the scrum. Managing to catch the, the opposition unaware. A lovely little play, like the footwork to get around the defender and keep the ball in two hands, keep it alive. They're really starting to pull away here from the Jesters. Have you ever watched Ted Lasso? So you know in the first episode where he takes a sip of sparkling water and spits it all over? Yeah. D commentate on this replay, then I'll finish my terrible story. Just love it there. You just see the Jesters nine comes open instead of keeping an eye on the blind. So it just gives they are an opportunity to snipe down the blind side and then everybody else is trying to recover to get across. Really smart thinking and great vision from the nine. So basically, I've just nearly done that to you. I've been handed a bottle of water, it was sparkling, I didn't realise, and I've nearly just spat it all over you. That would have been the end of a beautiful friendship and commentary <laughs> partnership right there. One minute to go here in the women's final. Jesters in deep trouble fantastic seven 17 up and good for their lead as well they've scored three excellent tries oh, i hope the dj carries on after we've finished because he's dropped shaggy now this Go. is ah oh. so hopefully so jesters can use this bit of piece of possession to get up the field and put fantastic sevens under a bit of pressure well, they're keen to get hands on the ball 
It's interesting, isn't it? Because when you're 17-0 behind, you're losing that physical battle. It, it affects your decision-making because it looked as though there was a big gap up this blind side then that a confident scrum half might have gone for, but alas. Yeah, scrum. sometimes you can go down that tunnel vision Five. of thinking, this is how we're going to attack because that might be the safe or the right route. And you lose that instinct when you're trying to chase back into a game. A oh, rare mistake from Sevens Fantastic as we tick towards half time in this women's final. Still, the men's finals are come after this as well. It's been a great day of Sevens. And I've got a feeling it's going to be a great evening of post Sevens as well. But Ramden Jesters needing something. Can they get on the scoreboard before half time though. No, that kick has charged down. Everything going fantastic sevens way. Are they gonna score from the first phase here? Oh, great defense from Jesters. Really physical. Comes back sevens way though. And fantastic sevens out to the left hand side. This time Leila checks back in. Coral Julie. Oh, this is lovely footwork from her. She dances under the post for the second time in this final. That'll take us to half time. Fantastic sevens disappearing out of sight. Julie is, you know, throughout the day has been dancing through defenders and scoring tries for fun, but just all came from patience. But initially from the set piece, Jester's had the ball, had the possession. Again, being forced and rushed the error on the kick through. But here just recycles the ball. Really smart play here, knows that she's marked one on one, not much opportunity, not much space, so shifts the ball, knowing that there's five or six jesters all around her. And then look at that footwork, stands up two defenders and then accelerates through the gap to get to the try line. What a brilliant finish. Well, she started the half of the try and finished the half of the try. And seven fantastiques. Well, it'll take a serious second half from Ramblin' Jesters to wrestle the trophy away from them. And to be fair, they've not really had a sniff, have they, Ramblin' Jesters? It's been a very, very difficult half. Yeah, it's been really tough for them. They've had some opportunities, but they've just not been able to execute. But the pressure coming from Fanta Seven's Fantastic has been relentless and ruthless every single time they don't have the ball. They're all over them like a rash. And at the moment, Jesters can't handle that pressure, being marched back, forcing the errors. You're wondering that huddle right now, just saying, be a bit more decisive, go forward, get together, get connected. Don't force anything, recycle the ball. Let's put them under pressure by building some phases. You know, 24 points is a hard ask to come back for, but they did have opportunities. It is a four score game, Ramblin Jesters, there's no point looking at it as a four-score game, though. No, you've just got to get the first one, haven't you? Yeah, exactly. Anything can happen in a game of sevens. We've seen it time and time again on circuits like today, on the World Seven Series, how a team can be up and an opposition can turn it around. Especially sometimes, you know, teams think 24 points up, we've had all the possession, we've had all the momentum. The job's done, and then that's when it can be really dangerous. Well, Emma Mundy is going to get us underway in the second half. Need to get this ball back ASAP, Ramblin Jesters, because Sevens Fantastics have shown if they spend time on the ball, they score tries. They played some sumptuous stuff in the first half, and they're going to be receiving the ball in the second. Here goes Monday. Referee's whistle goes. And that's taken calmly by Galilea. Up the blind side here for Sevens, fantastic. Smart kick as well, running out of space. And now Colette Lea pumps the arms, but she's not going to win this particular foot race. Well gathered, well chased back by Robinson. Sevens, fantastic. So over the ball, winning the turnover and taking the penalty quickly. Now, if this goes through the hands, it's a certain try, but it might not need to. <laughs> Strength from Bojino Tara. Again, variation. We saw it in the semi-final. When they put boot to ball, it creates another option, challenges the pitcher from the opposition. Brilliant work rate from Jesters to get back initially. It may be challenging, maybe a high shot there. But we talked about how ruthless they are. Just quick recycle of the ball. 
not giving Jesters an opportunity to, to recycle and get set defensively to put in a shot. And there you can't go, you can't be grabbing onto shirts. You've got to get under the ball, hit her back with a leg drive like that. Some handstands going on in the background on the dance floor, <laughs> as you would expect at a social sevens. As you'd expect. Great to have them here and great to have you watching around the world as well. This is the Go women's back, final please. and fantastic sevens. Have one hand on the trophy here at Twyford Avenue. Rambling jesters. They won't want to go out with a damp squib here. Just haven't put their phases together at all. This time they put boot to ball. Another smart kick. Think the touchline is going to win the battle here. Yeah, you can see what she's trying to do. She maybe try and banana it just so it curls away from the touchline for a speedsters on the outside. Again, a big opportunity to see. Seven's fantastic operate off a set piece. Okay. Here's Marie. Too many players on the pitch. Too many players on the pitch for Amazon Chesters. That's one thing to do when you're losing 29 0. Try and sneak an eighth on. Decent ball off the top. Marie. Out to Lea. Gets it on the loop and then. Turns on the gas. Flat pass is a good one. Ombelin. Double bandage. Double gas. Oh my goodness. Like a hundred meter sprinter. Ombelin's been excellent every time oh. she's come onto the pitch. She's had such an impact on the game. I'm not sure anybody know, knew that she was out there, but the gas and the afterburners to put on. Outstanding from the winger. But it all came from the set piece. Talk about fine margins in sevens, but it's so critical. Making sure passes are on the money. Your set piece plays are right there. The loop in, which makes the winger jump in on the centre. And just feeds the ball to the outside. And what an impact from the bench. Straight line pace like that is so difficult to defend, isn't it? If you let a sprinter like that rev their engine over 50 metres. Jester's nil, fantastic sevens, 36. Still time on the clock. Just looking more and more like a foregone conclusion what's going to happen here. Jester's up the right-hand side, but they've coughed the ball up again. They just cannot get a foothold in this game. Let's pick up off the toes. Here's Shams. Oh, some hand off that on Marie. Can we go to the open side to Ramblin Jesters before knocking the ball on? Our referee says backwards, giving them the benefit of the doubt, and they are going through some phases here and trying to get away from tackles. Fantastic seven sniffing around the turnover. No luck this time. Now, is it going to have the final pass out wide? Yes, it is. Here's Sophie Shams. Driven towards the touchline by Ombelin. Good battle for the ball. Secured by Faye Robinson. and Back towards the contact zone for Ramblin Jesters. Monday thinks about going to the blind side, but then goes open. Hi. Hi. High tackle. This is better from Ramblin Jesters, certainly in terms of going through the phases. Can they make it count, though? Shams back against the grain. She gets tackled turn on, loads. Turn on, let it go, let it go. Turned over and then told to let go by the referee. Still two minutes of this one to go. Lea with the tackle. Now Shams, two players outside her. One of those is Jasmine Gibbons. She tries to go around the outside, stays in field. Good offload. But again, possession's coughed up. That is an excellent kick. Is it going to stay in field? Oh, it just goes out. It relieves the pressure, but for a second, Colette Lea thought she was in for another. I think if you have a look at some of the players, they're pretty relieved that that ball's gone out. That was so, such high ball in play minutes then. Probably the best we've seen from the Ramblin Jesters recycling the ball and keeping possession, but can't find any answers against such a strong defence from Seven's Fantastic. Their fitness change? levels, the final game. 
of the day, but still the ability to keep putting pressure on, staying in the front line. Well, the teams are just making their way around for the men's final. We've got China versus 70s coming up. But the official photographer, Dante Kim, has just gone sprinting down the running track there. Like she's doing smugglers. Yes, yeah. Yes. You've got to make sacrifices to make art, you see. And she's just gone 50 meters to get the shot. You've got to respect it. Here come Rambling Jesters then, looking for the meat pie. Oh, here we go. This could be a special one. Oh, that. The handoff on the tackler, who was already on the floor, is one of my favourite things about rugby. <laughs> Such a brilliant run there. Seen glimpses of her so far. Right then, one minute to go, and I'm doing that thing again. I'm going full rambling jesters. Oh, has she been pulled down by the hair there? That's the card, yep. Yeah. It's a bit of desperation defensively. One out of the Johnny Hill playbook. Here go the Jesters then. Is there a try on the cards? There has to be. At the end of a long day, they've been outclassed here by Fantastic Sevens, but then they cough up the penalty. Yeah, you can see they want to play with tempo, but only half the team are playing with that tempo. As soon as you see a player quick tap and shift the ball, you've got to go and support that. I've just gifted the ball back after all that hard work and fresh legs on. <sighs> This is going to be a brilliant try. Ngassa, Maya League, the chase is coming on. Faye Robinson is going to try and get there, but she will fail. Ngassa, Maya League is going to go the length to add an extra cherry on top of an already delicious cake for Fantastic Sevens. They're going to lift the trophy and they're going to lift it in style. Looking to convert her own try. Oh. Well, <laughs> she's got two hands <laughs> she didn't in the air. Yeah. <laughs> a lovely little step on the outside. Just one day. It's all too much for the Jesters after that huge amount of passage of play. But look at the power to get through. But fair play to Robinson. Keeps chasing back. That's what you love to see well in sevens is the heartbeat. But there's a huge celebration going on from the French side. Sevens fantastic. Uh, look at them bouncing around. A fantastic win at the end of a brilliant day for Fantastic Sevens. They are the women's champions here at Twyford Avenue. And let's get the lowdown from Dave and Amy. So that final score then, what a score it was for the Fantastics. 41-0, incredible final, Amy. Yeah, you can't, can't ask more than that as a winning side. 41-0 is a bit of a thrashing, but I think you've just seen the class of this team all day. And it just shows pace all over the board, pace to burn. You can't defend it when it's when it's everywhere. And that's the thing, isn't it? Is it, the pace I think from that team has been the key point all day. But not just straight lines. It's almost manoeuvring between different moves. That's really been the key for that side. Every time I look, it's like they're jumping in and out of tackles. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, some of the rugby displayed has been absolutely fantastic. There's that natural ability, that natural flair, which you can't really coach. It's just inherent in somebody, and it's great to see them. Obviously, be given a bit of a blank canvas to explore and, and to, to use that and you can see just from some of the tries scored in that final they're absolutely fabulous. Yeah brilliant expressive side a massive congratulations to seven fantastics as we head on to our final game of the day here in Lit Sevens China heading onto the pitch now and I mean they're, they've been impressed all day long haven't they? Yeah extremely I think again they've they've you can see that they've been challenged by their coaches I've, I've liked to I've seeing them set challenges within the games as well. It's definitely clear that they've told them to get set piece everywhere, get everywhere first, which is so important. It just, when you're losing a game and you see your team set, it's so demoralizing. So to keep pushing those standards, even when they're convincingly winning. Obviously, they've had some close games as well. So I've no doubt this one, uh, a French-China affair will be um, a very tight one. Absolutely. And of course, their opponents as well have had just as long a day as China have. And when you're coming towards the end of a tournament like this, you've played so many games in one day. Fatigue's going to be a big factor in this final. 100%. But then at the same time, there's something about that, that final adrenaline, that final push that just gets you over the line. I remember the days when we used to have 10 minute finals and it, you just find a way to, to keep going. And I've no doubt these guys are extremely well drilled. They'll be extremely fit. So they're just going to keep pushing to the end. And this is the thing with the atmosphere behind them as well. You can see the party and the rave and distance with a sing-along to Oasis at the moment. They're going to really get behind these two final sites. 
Hundred percent. I think like I don't know how I feel about playing alongside to music, but it's only going to be positive. I think with some of these tunes, it's like we're in Ibiza or something. <laughs> <laughs> well, both our teams are set on the pitch, so we'll pass back to our expert commentary team for your final game of the day here at Lit Sevens. Rachel and Dave. Expert commentary team, Rachel Burford. How about that, eh? It's the London International Sevens final here at Wasps FC. West London is bathed in sunshine. We've got two brilliant teams, seven T's, mostly French, and the China national team who've really turned up here today. That's been a little habit of Chong's. When he's waiting for the referee, he'll practice his kickoff. He'll get one in. But I'm expecting big things about this one. It is the final match of a brilliant day of sevens here. Right, let's reel out some commentary cliches before this one then, Rachel Burford. Big start, good start, imperative. Yeah, absolutely. Both teams will want to get off to a good start, want to put their stamp and their mark on the game early on, the physicality and the tempo that both teams will want to play at need to be set out early. And of course, there'll be many names in the mix going forward, but China, in general, really, really big ambitions in the game of sevens. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, just look at their coaching team. They've got experts in Dan Norton and Ollie Phillips, former England internationals, know the scenes and the circuits very well. And they want to get to that Olympic qualifier and the Olympic Games. And the final is underway. Highly contested kickoff. Infringement spotted knock by on. the referee. Knock on. Knock on. Okay, first was knock on by blue. Scrum red ball. So we're going to have our first look at the set piece. Knock 25 blue, seconds in, into the game. That's China squads. They're particularly tall sides. They want to go short on the restart to try and regather. Incredible feed, please. It also puts a lot of pressure on the opposition, which can lead to errors. Now they've got their first strike opportunity off the scrum. Chia Chuin is the man putting the ball in. He's going to have a dart away. Gets it away to Druven. And then Chong. First few phases here for China, attacking from deep. Great strike running there from Hai Tao. Up just shy of the 22 in a central position. Good quick ball here, Chia Chun. Now to the right hand side, a little goose step to create some space and a foot into touch by Chong. I'm happy. Taken quickly though by 70s. They're not scared to run it from deep. And that's a lovely step inside. There's one more out on the left hand side here and he's looking for the space, keeps the ball in play. Oh, it's been knocked backwards somehow and the ball is still in play. And 70s under their own sticks, but masters their own destiny at the moment. Oh, God, crikey. Hearts in mouth stuff there, Cyril Corneau. Just about keeps hold of the ball. And again, going from left to right, right to left, using the full width here, 70s. Six before release. Florian Makaya decides that he's had enough and takes it in. Oh, you can't do that on the floor. Drew then. Tackler's got to roll away Six, no to allow to place back. But what about the intent from both of these teams? 70s just want to play it out from anywhere, juggling the ball from on one side of the pitch onto the other. <laughs> when, that, when that one bounces forwards off the hands, five metres from your own line, whew, keeps everyone on their toes. Oh, Kazet Pats. He puts the ball off the right hand side. Arminio with a gorgeous offload. And now Corno up the right hand side. They're going to attempt to keep him wide, but he is going to touch the ball down. And that is why you play from anywhere and everywhere. Exactly. Just that patience. Just keep recycling the ball. We talk about possession being king, but being able to play from one whip to the other to try and tire the defence out. And that lovely little offload backdoor pass from Mino to the outside. It passes like that often means that you've drawn the edge defender in which invites the outside channel a little bit of space that you need. No. Well, he's missed the conversion. So Luca Mignon mentioned earlier that he's had a good few seasons with Bath University. He's actually played sevens for Stade Francais as well. So serious pedigree in this game. 
And that is a gorgeous offload, isn't it? Yeah, lovely timing. You just see the number four there. Isn't sure whether his player is going to make the tackle, so has to slightly step in. Okay, behind. And then Mignon just keeps the ball alive with the offload. All right, then Chamon with the touchdown. Oh, that's a take, isn't it? Crikey, Chong gets up and keeps going as well. Wants the offload, gets the offload away. Drew then. This better from China in response here. Quick ball, good, crisp passing. And then Shilon. Now they bring it out to the right-hand side. Drew then. Draws the man, then the inside ball, back outside. Oh, they've got to touch it down, surely. Oh, if they've blown this opportunity, that is a great try gone to waste. Okay, come for question. Okay. Uh, so for me, there's no clear grounding. It's knocked on. Do you agree with that? Is he in touch before the knock on? Before the knock on, touch and play. Okay. Line outs. How about that? Desperation oh. defensively. Two players wrapping the player up to hit him out and not giving up, but some lovely interlinking play there right from the kickoff from China. They'd be disappointed yeah, to not finish that meters. off. Oh, you bet they will. As will the coaching staff. They did so much right there, China. Holding on. But they won the penalty there. Can they take advantage of this call? Oh, that is some tackle. Try saver, but the danger Off the boots of red. still here okay, leave it. for 70s. I don't have anything in that. They're defending agree? so well here, throwing themselves and forcing China back. There's nobody to the left-hand side, so they're going to have to come back to this narrow side. And Drew then, Haitao. Gets the ball away, does Haitao to Shilon, who has to go back Lee inside. Ten. The pickup from Drew then. Still no, 70, back. such intensity in defence, but it's here now with China. Drew Venn, out to Chong. Chong steps inside, basketball pass over the top, taken there by Tia Tun, who gets absolutely levelled. What a tackle, and it's back now with 70s. They turn the ball over, inside and out. They're up over halfway, and Luca Migno is going to turn defence into attack and score 70 second try after one of the most intense sets of defense we have seen in this entire tournament. That was unbelievable. You talk about ruthless and you talk about putting okay, your body on one. the we'll line. Off, that's changed. exactly what 70s just did time and time again, phase after phase, putting the body shot in, pushing China back, forcing them to the outside, forcing them to make the error. And after all of that so defensive effort seconds. and that defensive work, Gets the ball and runs the length. Absolute desperation. And so disappointed for China, like you mentioned moments before, doing so much right. Looking after the ball, keeping it alive, moving it away from the contact. But here, what about that shot? Which again, forces him to make the offload because they know that they've got too many of the 70s players around. And how about this, just in and out. Too many hey, tired legs off, no from ball. China. And what a fantastic finish. A brilliant try. But that is a deep okay. cut Time for on. China. In so many senses, not just on the scoreboard, but just in terms of the momentum of the game as well. Another good take from the restart, though. Hai Tao. Oh, Max Blanc over that. He makes a great turnover in 17th. Remember, it was discipline that nearly cost them against the Kuma Beavers. They are on it for this final. Ruben Contant. No, good counter -right. That was Max Blanc. Ah, oh, they put the width on it through Migno. Here's Julien Blanc. Out to the right-hand side. Plenty of width on it. This time it's China's turn to defend. Shilon with the tackle. Migno whips it to Max Blanc. And now Alec Rouzet, he steps inside. Release now, Red! Chinese players over the ball, but Ruben Contin is there. That's Julien Blanc. Migno on the wrap around. Blanc once again, he puts the brakes on. Now our clock is in the red. Chip over the top now, now from Kazit Bats. He's going to win the foot race as well. Is he going to get the bounce? Oh, you bet he is! Oh, Kazit Bats! And 70s are playing 
Sensational sevens rugby. They really are keeping the ball alive, moving it from one side uh, to the other. Half. They've been really yeah. spot on with their passing accuracy. Well, can you bring my water on, please? Being pinpoint, but China sevens just keeping their discipline, not okay, jumping out the line, now, making their one-on-ones is what makes Pats look up and think nobody's home. A little dink over, so great vision from the man. And then to finish it off. And then right on half time, Luca Mino hits the beans on toast, so doesn't add the extra two. All right. Just here, looks up, sees that nothing's on, sees that there's space in behind. He's got one man to beat, just beats him to the ball, just slightly. And how's your luck for a lovely bounce up to your hands like that to round off the first half? Cast your mind back, it was that same man who dotted the ball down over the dead ball line in the semi-final. So he's more than made up for it there. Yeah, I'm sure he's very aware of where that dead ball is now. 70-17, <laughs> China nil. That might look like a lopsided score, and it is. But China have had a little bit of territory. They can get one score, can get some momentum. This one isn't over yet. No, it absolutely isn't. We've seen them be excellent and direct with the ball. They're particularly good off kickoffs. But being able to maintain that possession around the breakdown, the 70s, extremely physical side when it comes to defensively. We talk about that try that they scored, their second try, it all came from that defensive set. They've got to look after the ball around the breakdown. They've been able to shift the ball and then follow that pass to look after it. It's just where China just getting short by numbers, which allows for errors to come in or for turnovers to happen and is what's got 70s into this game. But plenty of talent out there Plenty of opportunities that they can create if they can just capitalise and turn that pressure into points, they'll be right back into this game. Well, seven minutes of rugby to go at the end of what has been a long but brilliant day here. The fine rugby now, London International Sevens. Teams from all around the world, spectators from all around the world as well. Thanks for coming on the journey with us today. Is there one last twist in the tail or will 70s be leaving? with the men's open trophy. Certainly good for it. Again, we talk about taking their opportunities. They've only really had, well, they've not really even had three because you can't call that second try an opportunity. They have made something out of nothing and very often that is what makes for brilliant sevens teams. But China, one thing they have done well is receive the kickoff, so they we're going to have the first possession of this second half. They put some width on that. I tell you what, I thought High no, Town might have stepped into touch second there, but referee's assistant a lot closer than us. There's Tia Chun. On the wraparound goes Drew Venn. They like that on the touchline. And they made some good meters there. Luda brought down. Yeah, standing really deep in attack of China. Hard to get to the game line. That's a nice line cutting back there from Hightow. He's tackled by Matt Delcourt. Coming up to the first minute of the second half gone. China still scoreless, but spending a good amount of time on the ball here, but it won't come to anything unless they can get some points on the board. They're up over halfway. Nice flat ball and a really good tackle. Big hit from Shomon in the middle of the park. That goose step again. Another big tackle. Ball's gone forward. And there you go. 90 seconds of possession comes to nothing. So 70s on the ball. That's our Elon Shomon. Lenny He's Favre. on the side, the winger. Big boot from Julien Blanc. That is a cannon of a left boot. Touched. Such a shame with all that possession from China. Thank you. But just too easy for 70s to defend. You know, they're trying to move the ball from one side to the That's other, yours. but you've Make got sure to go straight. Channel. You've got to be able to suck in the defenders. Just hold them up slightly to preserve some space on the outside channels. But just all became too easy for 70s to just drift across to get the possession back from a forced error. So China with the ball from the line out inside their own 22. Nice little shimmy inside there from Chong. And they're going to play from their own try line, just like 70s did in the first half. 
Don't want to cough up possession here. And again, with 70s defending high, they do get in behind. They could create the opportunity. More good tackling from 70s. It's been their defence that's been one of the most impressive aspects of this final performance so far as we approach 10 minutes. Again, China happy to go through the phases, but at some point they're going to have to breach the defensive line. Taken in by Chung. Now Lu Da. Off the left hand he goes. Again, China creeping their way up to halfway. Until the error comes in, which... If you spend that much time on the ball, you're only ever the next pass away from that error, aren't you? Exactly. We talked about their skill set's pretty high. Shifting the ball from one side of the pitch to the other, but okay, you've got to be able to do damage to the defenders. Just again, 70s being really smart around the breakdown, just leaving it after each tackle. And they're so quick back to their feet. So every time China are faced against seven players on their feet, which makes it really hard to find any space and opportunities. And that's where error creeps in from fatigue. That ball spits out the back, 70s on the ball. They've hardly had a touch in the second half. Haven't needed to though, as Luca Migno takes on the man, gets the offload away. And again, 70s going backwards to go forward. Kazetipats, the man who scored that great try from his own kick ahead. Luca Migno offloads to Max Blanc and Blanc gets away, then puts his head down. Scores try number four for 70s. And they have got some difference makers in this seven on the pitch and there's one of them Max Blanc who surely puts the game out of reach and Max Blanc just pulling the pulling the scoreboard further and further away from China you know all came for some just fancy footwork slipping off defenders yeah, you've got to be more impactful with your tackles to not allow for easy offloads and to move the ball and keep it alive because that makes it even harder to defend from Pulls players out of position. Just here, just dancing around. See a soft tackle there. Doesn't complete. That has to bring in another defender. Same again here. Two uh, defenders on one it. player. And then again, just pulled out of shape. Lovely fend and an acceleration to get away. Lovely finish from Blanc. Time on. Yes, yeah, that natural realisation that you can get away, isn't it? Just putting your head down and backing yourself. 70s, 24, China, nil. Gu Pong. Diving catch just takes all the momentum out, but Gu Pong recovers well. Yeah, those little errors just allows for this 70s team to reconnect defensively. And we see how organised they are and how physical they can be. Everything has to be on the money to give yourself an opportunity. Well, now some width, but look how well 70s are covering in defence. Now Luca Migno is the final man back. Here is some serious gas, but Migno forces him wide. And another error from China. It's good defensive work from Migno. They're running out of ideas here, China. They're also running out of time. Just one minute to go. Such a shame. They just wish maybe pin your ears back and you might put the doubt in the opposition okay. defender coming across that he's not going to make it or he doesn't fancy the workload to do. But they managed to turn it over. And again, 70s just punishing China at the moment with all these errors. Punishing is the word, and they're looking to go again here. Oh, slipping off the tackle. Cyril Corneau gets around the outside, gets try number five. Everything they touch is turning to gold. If you look at each try, which one's you come from a turnover or from pressure now. built? Yeah, yeah, they're okay. really punishing China every time there's an error or mistake, they're straight on it. You know, in the semi-final, there was plenty of errors, ill-discipline, and they've certainly entered this final. Clearing all of that, probably had a few conversations okay, no. post that game about what they needed to get right from the start of this game and all the way through, not giving the opposition an opportunity to come back in. And they've been outstanding. They have been outstanding. The conversion is good. And 70s have cruised home 31-0 in the final of the London International Sevens here at Twyford Avenue.
Worthy winners. There are smiles on the face of the China players. They know they were soundly beaten today. This was the final try. Again, Luca Mino was instrumental. But they look so full of energy. That was the ball from Kazid Pats. Then round the outside goes Cyril Cournot. It was a desperate chase back. But once he was in full flow, there was only going to be one result. Fantastic try to end a fantastic day to the team from France. Worthy winners here. And they have defeated China 31 points to nil to become the London International Sevens champions here in the glorious sunshine. Well, let's get the review from pitch side in the sunshine. Look at the glorious people in the glorious conditions. Rachel and Amy are there, but pulling the strings is Dave. Big thanks to Dave there for his expert commentary throughout the day here at Lit Sevens, brought to you by Find Rugby. Now I'm joined alongside two England internationals in the form of Amy and Rachel. Rachel, you've been commentating all day long, and that final, what a final it was from 70s. Yeah, they were so clinical right from the get-go and, you know, really punished China at critical times within the game. You know, their defensive effort, I think, is what you talk about defence win games. Their attack was really red hot, but the defence was even hotter. The time where, you know, when they're so desperate, keeping them out time and time again, you know, that chips away at you as an attacking side. So for them to continue throughout that game with that amount of pressure, turning the ball over and then converting it into points, you know, it's a really strong convincing win for them. And, and you know, they'll be really pleased with coming from France, come over here, they want to go back with victory. And to play with that tempo all day long as well. It, they're just never going to get worn out by the looks of things. Yeah, I mean, both <laughs> teams there try to play with so much tempo. And, and, you know, after playing however many games today, at the end of the day, this scorching heat you know it's tough but both teams absolutely brought it probably saved their best to this game you know they had a bit of a wobbly um, semi-final so to see them lift it again in a final stages is really really impressive and amy it's just been an incredible day both for the men's and the women's competitions as well we talked about earlier that fatigue throughout the day but there's been some expert bits of play that we've seen on the live stream Definitely, and as I like alluded to before, it's been across all four tournaments. There's been some absolutely fantastic play. We speak obviously about the speed of sevens, but the physicality. I mean, watching that game, I was shuddering at some of the hits going in. It was so good to watch, and I think although it ended up being quite a big scoreline, I think both both the men's open and the women's open, the te the play from both teams was just it, it caused a great spectacle. And you saw actually the party go and stop. And they actually watched the yeah. rugby, the, the partying wasn't good enough, the rugby was so much better, so it's great to see everyone getting involved in that final. And it's been a real nice clash of, you know, different styles, but also different professionalisms as well. You have players that are like, you know, arguably playing, you know, at professional level, and some of the just rocking up, still starting out, all teams at different levels, and it's a really nice mix. Yeah, it's really good, and I think some of the, the best tournaments around, um, around the globe are that lovely mix of social and elite competitions and Lit Sevens have done such a good job in, in creating that balance and it's been fantastic to see everyone getting stuck in, everyone supporting one another, no team is bigger than another team, it's just about being that big rugby family and, and doing what we love, playing in the sunshine. So from both of you, let's hear those closing words and Rachel, I mean, it's just been an incredible day hasn't it? Yeah, I, you know, love social sevens. Like you say, you've got all that going on in the background, but some people putting their bodies on the line, putting everything out on the pitch as well for their teammates. And it's just such a lovely mix, such a great environment to be in. The vibe's great, the sun's out. What more could you want? And this is what sevens is all about. And so many players know each other across the circuit. They've played one another before. And, and that's what makes it that real family feel and that real enjoyment because, you know, last week I might have played against you. I might have even been in a team with you. So that's what's so great about being a part of social sevens. So Amy, those final words from you as well. I mean, we've had over 50 different teams compete from the likes of Asia, Europe, Africa. I think we've had pretty much the whole international world here at some point. Definitely. I mean, I can't really top what, what Rach said just then, um, but it is. It's about bringing everyone together. It's like this common language is, is rugby. Oh, how cheesy is that? But it's, it's so true. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we've had a few today. We've got to keep them going. I think it's being part of the commentary team. You come out with the cliches. Um, but it's just so good to see smiles on faces and people doing what they love. And, I mean, it's made by, thank goodness, for once, England Absolutely. has delivered Absolutely. with the sunshine. So what more can we ask for? And I just hope that the partying continues into the night and they have the best night of their lives. And hopefully you two have plenty of parties on the horizon as well. Amy, of course, good luck oh, yeah. with the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> Rachel with Harlequins next season as well. A massive good luck to both of you ladies. Thank you so much for your help throughout the day and your expert analysis throughout as well. Thank you. <laughs> so that's it from us then at Lit7's brought to you by Find Rugby. Now a massive thank you to all the organisers behind
behind the scenes, Elaine, and alongside all the volunteer team as well. Our sponsors as well, including Vio and the Grenada Rugby World Sevens Cup as well. You can make sure to go and find out more about that. But that's it from us, though, from Lit Sevens 2022. We'll see you again next year. Oh yeah, sorry, I can see I can see you again. I'm like just turn, turn. <laughs>